Right, Chester, where hopes and dreams begin for young adult sims. Unless your name is Angela Hill, because Angela, she's just been going through it with this school. She just feels like everybody is typecasting her as this weirdo sim. It's been like this all her life, from her childhood to her teen years. Everybody's always been seeing her as the weird girl, and she just feels always so misunderstood. She thought it'd be easier moving away from her hometown, San Sequoia, to Brightchester, and it's been worse. Sims are just judging her, and, and then she just ended up moving into a dorm where it's just all misunderstood Sims, and they call this dorm the Random Townie Dorm. Like, what does that even mean? Can somebody tell what Angela what that means? She doesn't know what that means, <laughs> but <laughs> she's going through it, y'all. And long story short, Angela is over it. She's like, I want to move out of campus. I don't want nobody to make these night remarks. I just want to go to class, leave this area. I don't know. I don't even feel safe in this dorm. And her friend's kind of a little annoyed with it because, you know, she's like, look, we're all together here. We're all going through it together. But Angela's like, nah, nah, I cannot do this anymore, girl. I am leaving. I found a place in the city and um, she's going to be sharing a dorm with someone there. It's San Mishuno, by the way so that she could complete her school there. Whatever happens next in her life, she doesn't know, but she's just kind of like, at the moment, it's easier to commute uh, from a city vibe and then also maybe like transition to online classes. This is how she feels and this is how she's going. And her roommates are kind of like, we support you, but they're kind of like sad because she was bringing all the personality and fun to campus. And now a part of that is gonna be missing. You know, like when somebody leaves, you're just gonna miss them. So that's kind of just what they're going through. But, you know, she's made her decision and she wants to go and she wants to go and move to San Mishuno. Yeah, I'm going to miss Brightchester. That's what Angela's going to say to herself as she leaves and say goodbye to this beautiful city. But, you know, San Mishuno's lit, okay? So it's not that much. Like, it's an upgrade low key. You know, if you're in Brightchester and you move to San Mishuno, you know it's a little too lit. So <laughs> she's enjoying the cultural food. She's like, oh my God, food is so spicy out here. I love it. I love it. It's like two months after uh, her leaving her place. It's currently summer. So she left during the spring. And currently, she just bumps into this cute guy with a dog. And she's like, hey, my name is Angela. Nice to meet you. I think your dog is so cute. He says, oh, hey, nice to meet you, Angela. My name is Norman. She's like, oh, cool, Norman. Nice to meet you. <laughs> she's just like, they kind of have this like weird spark that's just there. And she's just like, okay, well, I just want to say hi to your dog, but I'm a little scared. He's like, oh no, Uni's so friendly. She's like, oh, hi, Uni, what a unique name. He's like, yeah, it's unique, right? And, you know, she's just kind of like, wow, like, you know, I am kind of also a unique type of sim. He's like, yeah, I mean, I don't think I see sims like you, but, you know, uh, uh, where are you at? She's like, I'm in the art district. What you trying to find out? <laughs> So they're just being casually fun, flirty a vibe about it. And you know, Norman's really like a chill vibe sim. I feel like he's just kind of always been uh, one way in his life, but like he kind of is fun and chill. And he just kind of sees this like super energetic vibe about Angela. And he's like, wow, talking to her, she's just such a cool sim. This is a great first impression between them, you know? They exchange numbers. Norman's like, wow, like. I did not think I was gonna meet a girl. Like, this is the first girl he's ever flirted with. This is the first guy Angela talks to. She never thought guys thought she was cute. She just wanted to say hi to the dog Uni. I mean, yeah, Norman's cute, it's a plus. But like, for her, it was just all about Uni. And you know, with time, you know, summer, they got closer and closer. He'd invite her for movie time. They'd watch horror movies. And he's like, you can stay extra close to me. And she's like, okay. So yeah, y'all, like you can see, she just loves expressing her makeup through like an artistic form. She loves doing like, like little stickers on herself. Um, she hasn't fully committed to tattoos yet so this is kind of like just her playing around exploring with her artistic side whilst you know being in biology in school studying living in the city so norman decides that maybe it's time i make this stuff he's a little nervous this is his first ever kiss this is angela's first ever kiss 
and he's telling the dog uni did you see that we had our first kiss and then uni's like yeah i saw a girl leave me alone <laughs> Uni's tired, y'all. Leave Uni alone. Angela sharing her excitement with Norman about them having their first kiss. He's just as excited. He's so ready for a future with Angela, whatever that is, you know? It's been a little over a year since they've been dating. He asks her to move in. She's his girlfriend. You know, she was talking to him about how she was having a hard time with biology third year. And he's like, yeah, just move in. Why don't you just stop school, figure out what you want, like take a break from school for now. Just be with me. I love you, Angela. And Angela, she just kind of was like, you know what? I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm just going to pause school, give myself some time to figure it out. She has a man that truly cares about her. And he, you know, Norman, he finished school. So he has a good job. And he's like, look, you could just stay with me for now, babe. You know? You could figure out your next steps, no judgment. Angela, of course, is really happy that she's with a partner that is just so caring and kind and just gentle and sweet. Angela goes back to her apartment in the art district. She says goodbye to her roommate. Her roommate's this chill older lady who's also just trying to figure out life. Angela's trying to tell her nicely that she's gonna move out and yes, it's gonna be sudden. Her roommate, you know, not too happy about it to be honest because it's very last minute she's like where am i gonna pay for the rent now like what are you doing angela you know she thinks that she her roommate's being in a jokey tone but roommate did not like that at all angela packs up she goes back home to her man and now she's like i'm here babe he's like you are here for sure oh my god this is my dream you're my first real partner ever in life she can my first real partner too they take a selfie to remember the moment and now she gets to sleep in his place they get to be together in like a harmonious type of vibe but this is how it's gonna be like for the next two years. Welcome to the Spice District of San Myshuno. I'm just trying to show y'all. It's been two years, time jump. And now Angela has not went back to school yet. She's been in this relationship for three years. It's important to know. She literally has like, I think, about a year and something left for biology to get her degree and she just decided that she doesn't want to do that anymore that she wants to be a sim talk girl that makes content surrounding being a day in the life stay at home girlfriend i know that's like a, such a major change i know and i don't know if you can notice but she's kind of a little different too so we're just gonna go through all of this together right now but yes she's making breakfast for her man i'm gonna call him to eat his food and just let me tell y'all her personality angela's a family oriented sim she's socially awkward she loves the outdoors she is a nurturer isfj which means that she's just very dedicated and warm protector but her popular leisure activities would include cooking gardening painting crafts picnics nature walks and watching movies they're also found supporting their loved ones in their interests and activities Angela would be happy to have a child. She's indifferent to being in a romantically exclusive relationship. She's naturally domestic, a caregiver, innocent at heart, and has a fear of being cheated on. So Angela is ready for the day. It is an autumn season for now. Yes, Angela has changed her artsy, sort of weirdo girl look into somewhat of a more refined look. And yes this whole tiktok niche and just staying at home being around his colleagues you know norman's colleagues and all those people in her life now has changed her whole vibe and yes she is a proud dog mom to this dog and yes she's peeing while holding the dog so i've talked to some pet owners and they said this is a thing their pets will like literally just barge into the bathroom while they're using it so i just embraced it as angela's strange quirk and multitasking in the sims 4 kind of snapping in the strangest way of course <laughs> and yeah uni and angela are so close 
And you're going to understand that through Angela's daily activities and how she goes about her day living as a stay-at-home girlfriend. Angela definitely has to clean herself up. I'm like, girl, let's get this going. Let's get that routine for the day. You know, her man is at work. And if you don't know, he is a workaholic. And so now I'm like, go ahead and get Uni to eat the food. She's cleaning her man's plate. I'm like, girl, you need to go grab breakfast. You are hungry. So yeah, she's about to grab her meal. She made French toast. If you didn't know, I was reading over the personality while Norman was eating. And you could tell Norman's a little different. Like he just ate the food, walked right out the door after he ate. She makes every single meal for norman she makes him food prep when he's going to work whenever he asks sometimes he's just in the mood to go get something from you know the areas uh, around his workplace but sometimes he prefers angela's cooking so of course in her routine she has to walk her dog it's important for her to do that today is sunday so it's gonna be chill vibes she's not gonna do a lot of social media work she likes to sit out in the balcony so it's just like her and uni time you know uni is like her baby in a sense and of course while she is out there she wants to check out the sky she loves the telescope with her whole heart but i think now it'd be nice for me to tell you a little about norman since now he's away at work Norman has the dog lover and jealous trait, kind of has a really heavy protector provider energy about him. He is a very observant sim into exclusive romantic relationship. At the moment, he doesn't want to have a child and he is an ENTJ sim. He loves food with his heart. He's a caregiver and a lover sim. So Angela decides to skip out on the grocery store today and focus on social media. She has roughly 23,000 followers on her way to get 30,000 followers on SimTalk. So, you know, she's just currently replying to some people in the comments. She's been getting a lot of comments recently because someone stitched one of her videos. And if you don't know what a stitch is, it's like when somebody overlays your video and like kind of like reply or something. So she got a stitch recently about somebody saying that, oh, girl, I slept with your man. And she's like, what? So when she saw it and the girl actually posted, it was Norman's tattoo. And so she showed Norman and Norman was like, no, it's not me. He's denied this allegation. And he said, it's my brother Enzo because Enzo has the same tattoo as him. And they look very similar. Enzo said it was me. He said that I'm the one with the tattoo. Can y'all stop speculating about this? She gained a following from this as a result. But what could she do? You know, so she's going about her day. She already cooked a meal for her man her man's already home from work honestly angela's just kind of a little annoyed that she has to explain herself and norman knows that she's been going through this and it's not easy angela says look i'm going through this with the tiktok thing this house is a roach home like when are we gonna move out i thought we had goals in life it's like i know we have roaches but like look i'm so close like you know just give me a few more months she's like it's the end of the year and you promised that we were gonna leave this place i can't do this the landlord's not that much of an honest guy he's like look i'm the one who makes money in this house you don't know how it works you just gotta trust me i told you that we're gonna leave soon you better believe it let's just call the landlord and deal with it kind of thing so she's just like oh, oh my god i'm gonna have to call this landlord the landlord always just comes off so understanding oh i'm gonna fix the rat issue i'm gonna fix the roach issue angela is like okay great you know she's trying to come off nice because she's already paranoid about getting another social media scandal like what if she's mean to the landlord and then the landlord stitches one of her videos and says hey girl you know don't trust this angela girl she's mean and nasty this little so-called day in the life chill cute vibes with the dog don't trust her so she's very like somewhat paranoid as of late and obviously her man's not cheating it's and so you know that's going about in town he's a single man he should do what he wants and what could she do like she could just you know deny the allegations show photos that enzo and him look alike dispel the rumors but of course there's gonna be conspiracy theories against her man i mean y'all y'all saw that mouse oh lord it's distracting me <laughs> oh my God. like this place is pretty bad like she needs to get out of here okay almost every night sometimes it feels like they never go to bed at the same time it's either um you know norman working or she's just kind of doing last minute cleanups so finally though he was tired enough to go to sleep it's almost 4 a.m. and she's up and of course Uni's like, hey, don't forget me. I want, I'm supposed to be in the bathroom with you. So she's like, oh my god, Uni, you have to go to sleep, baby. It's still not morning. 
Angela go back to your room but before I go to her room I just want to tell you all some things it shows that that's her first ever kiss first ever woohoo she finds him attractive she feels hurt by him and she feels neglected because he's a workaholic and you know she just kind of doesn't feel like she fully knows where Norman's head is therefore inspiring Angela Hill to go through her man's phone so yes she saw his phone on the nightstand she grabbed it for herself and now she's like looking through his messages and she's kind of tired y'all can tell but like i'm gonna tell y'all what's the text i'm gonna translate what's on the screen for y'all so basically she found out that he closed <laughs> in on a home in Suwannee, and she's kind of like oh wait like are we investing in a vacation home first before you know or are we actually moving to sulani like that's so cool and she's like why didn't he tell me like is this gonna be a surprise like is are we going on a vacation to sulani like she's just really like wondering but like she's tired so she's like i have to go back to sleep kind of thing you know so hours pass she cooks breakfast for him norman's at work y'all know her routine time to walk the dog so she's just telling uni like go pee pee where you feel comfortable at and <laughs> She's like, yeah. by the way, Norman was not suspicious when she looked through the phone, like, thank God. So anyway, right now, she is just doing a live on her TikTok, answering some questions to the audience. You know, they're like, oh, what do you do? What's your favorite product? What's your favorite skincare? A girl in the comments says, do you know that people are calling your boyfriend Tattoo Bay and they're calling his brother Twin Tattoo Bay? And, you know, she's trying to avoid that whole subject. She's like, I have an FAQ that's on my pin post, but let's just go ahead and close that subject. I'm about to cook dinner for my man. Thank you for watching. And y'all, between you and me, we gonna have a five day time jump. Yes. So I finished Monday. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna come back to my girl for Friday. Okay. So it is Harvest Fest Day, and yes, it's also Friday. It's the weekend, and Angela's a little moody if you can't tell, but I'm about to tell y'all very soon. So first, meet Chanel and Shane. <laughs> Chanel and Shane are such a beautiful couple. Chanel is just like that loyal bestie every girl needs, and Shane is just an occult enthusiast. And you know what? Chanel is loyal to that, okay? <laughs> so basically, Norman is not here at the moment. He is at work, but he, you know, he has a family event this weekend with his family, and Angela's gonna be going there anyway. Angela calls Norman, of course, just to check on him. Like, hey, babe, is everything good? Are you on your way? He says, no, I can't. Work got me swamped. She's sad, and, you know, they're listening to her feelings about it. They're like, listen, you know, we have a lot of date nights before. One or two or three, four, whatever he's been missing out lately. You know, he's working really hard. He has that goal to get you that suburban home that y'all keep talking about, you know. And she's like, you're right, besties. Like, I really needed to hear that. Thank you so much. And they're reassuring her. They're making her feel good. And she's asking about Layla Moon, their daughter. She is a toddler sim. She, they're like, oh, Layla these days. She's He's loving the occult stuff like her daddy kind of thing <laughs> so it's really cute it's really fun of course Angel's gonna have to finesse for her little story that she's gonna post you know like the tiktok story insta story every kind of story that she's gonna post hashtag date night but like no photo of her and norman this time so yes the finesse will be very real okay and yes she's gonna be posting that first thing. but yeah she's gotta go right now it's very late okay so Angel's back home. Of course Uni's waiting for her at the door. That's her baby. <laughs> of course Norman's asleep. At this point, like Angela just did a little bit of house cleaning and whatever little prep she wanted to do. So she went to go to sleep and y'all, it is Saturday. So we're going to have a Harvest Fest family meal with Norman's side of the family. Good morning, Norman. I hope work was entertaining enough for you to be missing out with your friends. But anyway... I'm not gonna hold any resentment towards him because that's Angela's job. Norman's getting himself all done and clean. He wants, you know, to see his family. Angela made already a scramble. He's shocked. He's like, wow, she's not really talking to me like that. Like she cooked food, she's clean, she's doing everything. Like she's doing it way faster than before kind of thing. You know, Angela's kind of like a little moody, y'all could tell. Like she's just kind of not here for her man, kind of standing her up. That's how she feels. Like she's neglected by him, you know? And he's kind of like, you mad at me? Do you like what you see, babe? And she's like, of course I do. Like I'm so attracted to you. 
and he was like let's woohoo so like i feel like for him he's very physical touch and for angela she's very words of affirmation you know she needs to sit here let him say like i love you you know she needs to hear that from him and for him it's like if he feels disconnected he wants to hold her he wants to woohoo he wants stuff like that of course mixed with it acts of service if you notice he's like working hard he's doing stuff like that you know what i'm saying and she's also acts of service she's working hard to keeping the apartment that's really horrible it's upkeep you know so she's also fixing up herself working on her hair this is a mod by subset if i didn't tell you and the cream mod is also by subset yeah okay so now let's just get this makeup done so she's just applying her makeup she is going for this autumn beautiful like smoky like like somewhat glam but like effortless but like she put in effort vibe <laughs> So, um, I noticed that I was like, girl, did you put on your perfume and your deodorant? So, that's also a mud by Sepsid. I'm doing all of that. I want her to feel like she is uh -huh. completely, like, what she views herself as, you know, Harvest Fest ready. You know, they're celebrating it a day late, I believe. So, yeah, she's completely ready. So, she's taking a selfie with her man, obviously. Hashtag Harvest. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at the draper's home if you didn't notice this um is like my east african queen okay this is miss patrice okay she is um norman's mother she's so cute of course norman's father and norman's brother enzo are chatting i told y'all enzo looks exactly like his brother you think that they're twins no uh norman's the older brother enzo's the younger brother i think they have like about a two-year age gap type thing like so there it just happens that the parents gave birth to the same kid twice it happens <laughs> so i'm having mama cook all the meals but i just wanted to show y'all the draper family how they operate yeah. uh and how they work okay so y'all could tell it's somewhat of a similar dynamic between angela and norman mother's doing all the work dad and son are watching sports on the tv Miss Patrice Draper is a goofball, loyal yes. cat lover, a doer, ESTP, Luna. prefers non exclusive romantic relationships, drinkaholic, would love to have a child, alluring lover, and a jester sim. <laughs> Mr. Leslie Draper, he is a recycled disciple, squeamish, dance machine. He is indifferent to being in a romantic exclusive relationship. He would love to have a child. He's a craftsman, ISTP. He is domestic and a lover, jester sim. And so Draper is jealous, sim, family oriented prefers exclusive romantic relationship he's a good cook he's also like his brother he just loves food okay he's a doer estp would be happy to have a child a caregiver and a lover so he's very similar in traits and just how he goes about life like his brother Ooh, they're here y'all i feel like norman's like oh my god i'm so ready to have mom's food and angela's like yeah of course your mom throws it down of course mom is like to her husband go open the door be nice to angela you know how awkward she is okay <laughs> so y'all if you don't know i'm using the floor yellow save and this is a new crest and yes the family the draper family lives in new crest of course papa's talking to oh god she's being a little awkward y'all know how she is she's just you know socially awkward Norman says, Enzo, I hear you're doing well with the company. Enzo's like, yeah, bro, like, thanks for hooking a brother up. Like, this job, it's just easy for me. It's nothing so deep. Angelo's outside talking to the father. But once mom sees them back in the house, she's like, okay, let's all sit at the table. And let's start, you know, talk about what we're so thankful about this year. I'm so thankful for y'all. But I have been thinking about adopting a child and I don't know what to do or what age. But I have been in contact with an agency. Just want to let y'all know and be mentally prepared that I do want to open my heart. And that's why there's some toys around the house and stuff like that. So, of course, y'all know Sims are just going to stand up and eat or just, I don't know where they want to go. So, I accept the autonomy for what it is. I can't control it all the time. What could I do? You know what I'm saying? So she just wanted to give everybody an option. So there was beef, there was fish, there was I think even a, like a chickeny option. Like there was just a lot. So she just wanted the, everybody to feel like they ate something, you know. And no, you know when Angela's around the family, she gets a little more lovey-dovey. She feels like she feels the love 
and they make her feel safe even though she's a little paranoid she's just saying look everybody's leaving nice comments about our story norman says well you know everybody knows that enzo would be our brothers and that should stop the speculation you know my love i love you you don't have to worry about any of that that's a thing of the past she says yeah yeah today was a good day hanging out with you he said it was a great being around you and here they are slow dancing in the moment just oh they're so in the moment mama draper is in the background loving this <laughs> my little boy found it real nice girl like she loves angela so much i feel like she low-key likes angela more than her son i think it's because mama draper has no daughters having angela in her life just is kind of like that daughter she always wanted to have but i also think it reaffirmed her feelings to want to have a girl you know so i think that's kind of what's pushing her to adopt a child the family's dancing being all cute it melts my heart and if i don't know if you might like recognize but the father has a dancer trait and the mom's in the career for dancing so i do think that's kind of what brought them together oh i told you mama patrice loves her some angela and angela's like i think we're gonna move out very soon you know it is towards the end of the year she's like yeah i know if he don't take you out of this house you move in with me you my baby you know and she's like i love you mama patrice you're such a sweetheart it's like yeah no those cockroaches they be scary okay <laughs> she's like yeah no they scare me too so the dad's like yeah when are you gonna move out you can't let little angela be staying in that home anymore okay so he's feeling pressure from his parents and angela and it's time to go back home of course and y'all know this area speaks to angela okay she loves the telescope this reminds her of her, her treehouse. Like back home, she used to play with the treehouse, and now she kind of has that balcony area that's somewhat of a treehouse yeah. vibe for her, you know? Mm -hmm. Norman is like, babe, we gotta go to sleep. You've been here for hours. <laughs> So they go to sleep, y'all, and it's about the next day right now. Norman gives her a little kiss. I thought that was so cute. Anyway, Angela's saying, it's Sunday. I love you so much, Uni. You're my baby, Uni. You know that, right? I know. They're in the bathroom together. We got to get used to it. This is their little funny quirk. So, of course, she's going to have to take care of herself. It is the morning. She's doing her hair. You know, the usual routine. Y'all know Angela's routine, okay? <laughs> So Enzo is using the bathroom. I noticed that Enzo is more comfortable using the bathroom. For her, she just doesn't mind applying her creams, but like she don't really like doing number one or two Axel around him, you know. But she got a call from her with parents, Bruce. and they're like, Lady "Oh, hun, how was the har harvest Head fest with the family?" She's like, "It was good, it was good. Long Thanks for checking up on me." How sis? You know, she's so busy these days. Well, she just doesn't answer frenzy. my calls. Well, and they're like, "Yeah, you know, she's going up in her career. You know, she's been too busy for us even." So she's talking to her younger siblings too. She has a teen brother and a child sim sister. So she's just also checking up on them, asking how school, are they doing their homework? Are they listening to mom and dad? And they're, they basically the kids are telling her, grandma and grandpa stopped by. Oh my God, it was so fun. I wish you came by too. She's like, oh, I missed out. Oh my God, I gotta visit y'all soon kind of thing. She hasn't been home by the way in the last two years. She keeps telling them I'm gonna come by and they don't really have an incentive to visit her too but hopefully that changes very soon so it's sunday she did some grocery shopping right and then now she's ready to go visit her best friend's apartment and she brought uni with her her best friend this is her dog and the dog's name is sweetie the dog's kind of new to the family i'll be honest with y'all and you know they're kind of asking her like can you bring uni sometimes just so that the dog could be like there's other species of me out here kind of thing you know <laughs> <laughs> so obviously like she comes to the house and like she just catches chanel and shane just being so lovey-dovey it reminds her of just yesterday how she was with her man she sees the daughter layla moon she gives layla moon a candy this is by a mod by subset if you didn't know and you know chanel's like hey, like, hey girl <laughs> how was that visit with the family and she's like it was good going out to newcrest it just i don't know what it did for my relationship i just feel like we're so lovey-dovey and she's like see we're overthinking things like you and our men are just such a cute couple and i just love that they're always so reassuring to her and you know obviously i'm sure they're like where's norman but you know norman's working 
oh selfie with bestie <laughs> so she just telling her hey girl like um i did look through his phone and <laughs> she's just being honest she's like well, hey, what would you do that for so she's just always, you know she's like i was a little like you're feel, feeling neglected she's like what you find on the phone because you know it's never good to look through someone's phone it's like you're trying to ask to look for something bad <laughs> So Angela's like, I do not want to hear that. I'm rebuking that kind of negative energy, you know? She's like, anyway, girl, I got to go home. So she leaves home and goes back home. So she all kind of feels guilty, like maybe I shouldn't have said that to my friend. And she's kind of like a little like sad. They had an argument, by the way, when she came back home as a result of her talking to Chanel. Angela feels like she wants more date nights. And he's kind of like, oh, is it, it feels like, you know, I've just been so busy. But, you know, she is right. I should put more time into that. And, of course, after the argument, Norman's feeling so guilty. And he has to break the news to her. I think they're trying to talk. You know, Norman's feeling guilty. He's like, I don't want to end it the day us being mad at each other or being weird. Also, Norman has to get something off his chest. He says to her, yeah, I'm going to Solani. She's like, you're taking me with you, right? It's like, where'd you get that idea? I'm not going with you to Solani. She feels so embarrassed. Oh my God, like, like y'all, so you see her face. She feels so embarrassed. She's like, oh, I thought it was like a couple's thing. People, I thought couples go like vacation in Solani. He's like, yeah, but no, no, no. This is just purely business. And I just wanted to tell you, we had an argument. And I don't want you to feel any sort of way, you know? so she says yeah i could understand that not the neighbor eavesdropping anyway so she's really stressed out and annoyed with him she's like you know what let me just play this video game i'm not in the mood by by you know norman if you want to go you could go it's not that like she's mad about being left alone it's just that you know he even tried to brush it off he was like oh like don't you have that social media like sponsorship to do and you know she's like yeah but you know she knows he's closing in on a home and she read his text and he's not telling her nothing and of course y'all know norman he was like let's go to bed of course <laughs> so he's like look we gotta woohoo before saying goodbye for this trip and of course the landlord knocks on the door and says hey guys i want to make sure about the roach and mouse situation lies you have not done nothing sir you are the worst landlord of all time but yeah it's Monday. angela's feeling like you know what let me just go have a small jog around this neighborhood so she's just gonna have a nice little jog. I love the city in autumn. It's so beautiful, you know? She's feeling so grateful that she lives in this beautiful city of San Maishuno. But, you know, she's just kind of thinking, well, it would have been nice to escape the cold weather and go to Sulani. So she puts a coin in here and she's like, you know what? Let me put two coins in here. I need good luck, okay? Because I just feel like lately it's been a little weird with me and my man, you know? so yeah he is having breakfast he saw that she didn't even make breakfast today that he just had to grab something from the fridge but of course look at her she just comes back home first thing she does is grab his plate starts cleaning like it says <laughs> and her man's doing some you know work emails and stuff like that and he's just replying to stuff he told her girl you don't have to make me lunch for work today uh, you don't even have to make dinner today she's like okay so he's like i'm not gonna be coming back home like i'm taking my luggage and me we're going to work for a bit then i'm gonna go check in and fly to sulani so yeah that's literally like how he left y'all <laughs> i could not believe him look at my girl working on her housewife aspiration Anyway, she's making herself breakfast right now. She's like, oh lord, I gotta make myself some food by myself. I love making food with me and Norman and mine. I hate when he has to go out of town to travel. He doesn't go out of town like often. I feel like he goes once per season. Now it just feels like it's the second time this season, you know? But what could she do? She's just gonna have to be okay with that, you know? He's making that money and going out of town is more money to make. So she's doing her little sponsorship stuff you know uh, editing that video getting it ready to upload to her tiktok she saw and then her neighbor knocks on the door she's just like hey girl i haven't talked to you in a minute and you know angela's familiar with all the neighbors it's enzo who don't really know these sims even though he's the one that's the extrovert her little introvert self she knows everybody 
when her neighbor asked her how is Norman, she just like after that she was like good. But when she went home, she just started crying. Like she was under her bed for hours, y'all, like crying, crying her eyes out because what is going on with Norman? Like why is he just I don't know why is he not the guy that I fell in love with? Why do I always have to tell him something? Like why do I, why doesn't he tell me something? So there's just a miscommunication of their love languages. So she just ends up going to Chanel and you know she's like Chanel I understand what you were saying it was wrong for me to look through his things now he's in Sulani and he's not taking me but what do you think if like I go to Sulani like what do you think of that do you think I should go she's like of course surprise him tell me you kind of knew apologize she's like don't I look like a stalker and she's like maybe but you know what that's your man and I'm sure he's gonna love you for your weird stuff trust me I've done some crazy stuff with Shane too before we like moved in and had a baby you know I feel like that's what she's whispering to her of course, you know, Angel's crying. She's leaving Uni behind with Chanel, so she's gonna miss Uni. So, you know, Chanel's telling Alayla Moon, oh, Uni's staying with us. So, Auntie Angela is just crying because she's gonna miss Uni so much. And Alayla Moon's like, oh, oh my god, I love Uni. I'm so sorry, Angela. Auntie Angela, you know, kind of thing. And Auntie Angela's like, yeah, I'm gonna miss my baby Uni so much. Oh, you know? But yeah, y'all, let's say goodbye to Uni. Oh, bye bye, Uni. It's Tuesday. My girl's at the airport. She has checked in. She's asking the person, like, okay, so is there any last minute tickets to Sulani? And the clerk at Air Sulani said, yes, there is. There is two more seats at the next flight. And my girl was willing to sit 10 hours in the airport waiting for a flight. Like, she oh, wants to get out of here yes. as fast as possible. Flat I don't know why she went the olden day method. Filling. She could have just bought a ticket online. But, you know, Angela's Good desperate. Day. Desperate calls for desperate measures, right? So, she's going to enjoy this nice tea. It's a chilly day out here. And, yes, I know she's sad. Because, again, she's just confused. And she just wants you know to escape and have fun like norman it is time to board the plane angela's about to step out and go to sulani so yeah y'all she is in sulani now uh, oh. and y'all angela is furious oh, no. she's seeing her man flirt with another sim like how dare you norman uh-uh you wrong, Norman. Maybe I'm misunderstanding. Maybe it's just being friendly. Like, uh. I guess not. I guess the F not. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm not ending the episode like that. <laughs> Y'all. All right. We got to talk in the comments. I'm so sorry. I left it like that. What the hell is going on with my Sims? <laughs> It's starting to make sense. Ooh, Norman, you are caught red-handed. Angela's feeling a lot of emotions at once, and I feel so bad, like, oh, Angela. She felt played, and one of the few asks in a relationship for her is loyalty. If there's no loyalty, there is nothing. Maybe if Norman asked for an open relationship, she would be okay with it. But to go behind her back? She hated him. She hated herself. Now that she has this knowledge, what will Angela do with it? Angela's sitting out here in Solani alone. You know, she sees this easel out here and you know, she is kind of okay with painting. So I don't know why, but like all the painting supplies out here to motivate Sims to do something, it just kind of made her feel like, let me put my sadness into art. She's thinking drifting love caught the love of her life flirting with another. Are they joking around or losing interest? First betrayal from life event. Angela has been cheated on for the very first time, hopefully the very last. No matter what happens next, she knows that this experience will never be forgotten. That trust will never be complete or as naively as it was given before. Damn, why does this art feel so lonely? Oh my god, like she is heart broken i feel so bad for her and you know she's feeling like this painting is relaxing her that she's outdoors and she's just kind of like remembering a part of her past that 
she doesn't really like associate with at the moment but i don't know it's kind of cute seeing her work on this well now it's time for her to come to the hotel room because they got her room ready she it, it needs to pee so badly so she's just gonna pee at the butler's quarter and this like lot has like a lot of staff and there's about six other sims sharing this lot with her and then another one with the uh, butler but yeah they're all eight together so yeah she's just crying she's taking a shower in the butler's thing i was like okay you know what girl whatever the butler's very nice and kind anyway so oh angela damn you know at this point i guess angela should just drink right that's what some sims do right like they're just sad so sad they just want to sit down and have a couple of drinks and um this sim is the bartender of the hotel well it's a villa resort but yeah you know what i mean <laughs> so she's just taking some drinks and you know she's just kind of thinking about her whole relationship it's all picturing her mind but Angela has had one too many and she just falls unconscious like I feel so bad she couldn't even make it to her bed that's how tired she is oh Angela it says messed up from drinking Angela has one or five too many oop I'm so sorry Angela <laughs> so I'm like okay let's get her luggage out shout out to Ashley please I did not know about that luggage if it wasn't for her not her knocking out for a second time help at this point, Angela's just gonna fall asleep on the floor. Like, she can't even make it to the bed. She is messed up, okay? That's what Base Mental said. <laughs> oh, Angela, I'm so sorry. God damn, you going through it, sis. But damn, the views, though. The views. Oh my god, it's sunrise already. I guess we're gonna have to start your day, Angela. I know you're tired, but maybe you could go to the bed or start your day, whatever. I don't know, y'all, but I just feel so bad. Damn, she had a tough night. Uh, excuse me. I know that Angela was going to other rooms to use stuff, but like, oh, I'm about to use one of your bathrooms. Like, y'all better know. So the group that's actually here on the trip, they're actually a group of friends, and they're like all like married and engaged to each other. They're very cute, but Angela is just too tired, too drunk to even know what's going on at the moment. So I'm just like, you know what, in my mind, the butler was like, Madame, we have a, you know, face mask and a nice bath ready for you kind of thing. And so she just kind of was sitting there and enjoying it. And she's starting her morning routine. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Today, Angela's just not in the mood to try to wear outfits, put on makeup. She's just kind of crying. Like, I don't even know if y'all noticed she has tears in her face. The only thing she got energy for is for her skincare. So she's just going to do that. And let her day just go like she's just gonna like live oh okay that's one of the people okay i see you miss talented angela's eating some french toast and she's just thinking about herself like what am i gonna do what on earth am i gonna do about this and she's like damn but this french toast is good y'all there's like a staff there's entertainers there's cooks <laughs> yeah this lot is really busy at this point, Angela's just gonna have a little bit of a, you know, small mask with listening to music, relaxing, and yes, she's still crying, y'all. She literally has tears on her face, if you could see, like, and she's gonna take another drink, because why not? <laughs> oh my gosh, she's checking her social media account, and y'all, she is finessing, okay? She's, like, basically captioning her photos, and she's getting ready to tell sims that she's uh -huh. doing this stuff she doesn't want nobody to know that she's out of sand my shoe now because ah. she feels like you know what i have one leg up norman doesn't know that oh. i'm out here so oh, yeah. i'm gonna do my thing and figure out what on earth he's doing out here you know so yeah she got ready oh, and she's about to go you. downstairs and grab a caprese salad because it's fresh it's nice it's oh. yummy <laughs> Angela feels like though she's just not digesting food right and something just clicks in her mind like oh my god me and Norman have been woohooing unprotected no no I'm gonna have to check I'm gonna have to check that I'm not pregnant I don't think I would be goddamn what's going on with that no no 
pregnant she is pregnant oh, on spooky day <laughs> she's crying obviously like she's conflicted look she loves babies she loves being a mom and the idea of doing that one day is going to be amazing you know she was taking care of her younger siblings for her parents she was babysitting you know what i'm saying so like obviously angela is familiar with just being around family and all that and having a baby and being a mother one day like that's just so like in my mind her archetype like she's mother okay but her baby daddy is weird and so i feel like a part of her is like maybe maybe norman is not the guy like maybe that was just a mistake and he wasn't really doing that y'all by the way shout out to what a great day what a great day made this loading screen for me what a great day is so talented but yeah i feel like she's probably thinking yeah no no norman maybe he's not cheating on me like let me just go make sure okay and so she goes and she's spying on him oh god yeah he definitely is cheating and she's just like what the hell oh this fool he's really cheating on me Looking like a fool Oh, all those nights alone in our bedroom You said one thing and did another, didn't you? No, this I refuse to So sorry, Angela. I did not expect this man. And not only that, it's so tough because Norman just texts I love you every few hours. And she just has to say I love you too so that he's not suspicious. This is so hard on her. Feeling like she has to be sneaky to get information for herself because he's being sneaky. And she just had to find him with a bunch of women. Like he's probably on a dating app. And this is kind of just too much why me all i ever did was love and care for that fool cook food for him made sure i looked great made sure that i'd have something to be busy with quit school because you know what he suggested it i did all of this stuff for him and what do i get in return you know what angela's just gonna have to go out because this is her favorite place she needs to go experience the food the culture, the vibes of Sulani. This is her dream destination. This is like a beautiful nightmare to her. Like, this is like the most beautiful place to be, but like, she's living a nightmare. Angela hears like some drum sounds, like some sounds that she's not familiar with while she's on her way to go to the washroom. She's hungry AF, so after she uses the bathroom, she's gonna go ahead and try to find where this sound is coming from. And yes, it seems like the locals are having their own little thing. Like, what are the odds? I feel like she's probably seen this event on TV, like the Solari Grand Event of the Year, the festival. She's sending a reply to chanel because chanel's like spamming her like where are you where are you where are you and she's like okay i'm in sulani she's like okay because like i was gonna start calling norman like 50 times too she's like please please don't contact him i we're good we're just like everything's good just don't worry i'll tell you everything when i come back please don't say nothing just please and she's like okay i won't say nothing dang angel's wearing some lingerie and this is like stuff she kind of prepared for her man and i feel so bad because like she's just so sad she's like every little thing is reminding her of him obviously she's not even like still yet to mourn the relationship but she's just really going through the emotions and then on top of it she's pregnant like girl damn but she is happy about being pregnant. A life within from pregnancy. Sometimes Angela is overwhelmed with delight at the feeling of her baby growing within. She can't wait to, for it to be born. Oh, Good morning, Angela. Wake up, sleepyhead. Wake up. <laughs> 
she's thinking about the baby per usual like she's probably thinking my whole life is so different i love this baby so much and now it's like oh my god the first day that i actually know i'm pregnant wait i was drinking a lot oh my god i have to make sure everything is okay and safe but you know what I think what's safe is to be sort of stress-free, at least in this moment. I won't let stress get to me. Two seconds later. Dang it, I thought that bath would change her emotion, but I guess not. And you know what? She's not a high maintenance sim, so like what am I thinking? Whatever, she had breakfast and I guess she's witnessing a marriage like not the roommates just saying you know what we're gonna have a wedding here like let's elope you know or you know i don't know if they're her roommates but you know what i mean the people she's sharing the villa with and the butlers entertain like oh this is nice what a romantic spot oh congrats to whoever the hell y'all are like that could have been me and norman <laughs> you know what let me distract myself with a good swim or like a back flow or something. I just need to, you know, float. Oh hell no, not the newlywed saying they're gonna tan naked. Oh my, <laughs> oh my god, okay. Anyway, so she's just gonna go ahead and really just lounge and relax for, I don't know, hopefully the next rest of the day, sorry. I'm just shook. Like, the newlyweds are out of pocket. Now I feel like the butler has to clean that area up. But yeah, my girl is loving it. Yes, girl. Relax. Well, I think Angela might have tanned. Oh! <laughs> this tan is so good on her. She's texting Norman back. I don't want a video call. Uh, I just would like to just chat. Um text yeah please like i just feel so overwhelmed i have a sponsorship that i'm supposed to be working on and he says oh well with who she is at her final day almost here i believe so and she's just gonna tan again just to make sure that her tan stays a little longer i don't know if that's possible but yeah she's just gonna relax enjoy herself and yes she's still crying y'all like look she's this is kind of like what could she do like she she's devastated so i'm just gonna let her live in that emotion so that once she's like healed like obviously there's gonna be pain but it's not gonna like sting or like attack her out of nowhere or that, because it's something she bottled she could say she experienced the emotions she knows the pain and she got to live through it hopefully but yeah look at the vibes oh my god Chanel calls Angela. Hey girl, I've been trying to reach you like the last few days. I know that you and your man are like cuddling and stuff and having the best memories ever. I don't know what's going on at this trip. You ain't updating me, girl. Like, what's the tea? And she's like, oh, yeah, girl, I'm good. Everything's good with Norman. I don't know what you want me to tell you. We're good. I mean, I told you you don't have to call me a lot. Like, I get it that we talk every single day, but when I come back, we could talk. Are you okay, Angela? What's going on? I mean, I did think it was a little weird that you're not posting on your TikTok either. You're not posting anything really on social media. Well, where are you anyway? Like, what's the tea? I don't have to post everything on TikTok or social media. Like, what kind of person do you think I am? Just posting my whole life for the world, huh? Like, that's the kind of sim I am. Anyway, tell me how's Layla Moon and Uni. You know, I love the little Uni updates. I feel like Chanel could tell her vibe, like, what's going on? Why is she talking to me like this? You know, she's just trying to keep calm and not argue with her friend. Because, like, this is her best friend. This is somebody she loves with her whole heart. She says Layla Moon's okay. Uni's okay. Everybody's okay. And she doesn't want to say, are you okay again? Because Angela, once she just gets in this emotion, it's just better to <laughs> let her come to you. That's what I'm trying to say. So Angela's kind of like, great, everybody's good. That's all I wanted to hear. Thank you so much for calling me. And uh, she's like, when are you going to come back? She's like, a day or two from now. Thanks for talking to me, Chanel. Take care. Angela says to herself, maybe I shouldn't have been so harsh to her. The real reason why I'm even disappointed or angry is at this one guy. The guy that I love. Norman back home in San Maishuno. Girl! Oh my days! You're back in the city? Like, it never happened? I'm just, I'm just playing with y'all, no, for real. 
<laughs> I'm so annoying. <laughs> no, but yeah, she's back. She's back. Sand my shoe now. Yay. But she's not that happy. She's gonna go to sleep and we're just gonna meet again tomorrow. Okay, today's an important day. So Angela needs to like get out of her emotions. Like for real, I'm not playing with y'all. She has a really big sponsorship. And you know, like I said, she's about to get her 30K and she got contacted by like a really good Sims company to like do. Oh, I feel like I'm whispering. Like I'm turning around like, <laughs> what the f am I doing? No, but for real, she has to do a sponsorship for Zoomers. So she's supposed to do like an ad for them and she's kind of practicing her lines and what she should say to Sims at, to buy Zoomers. She has a special code and it's called Angela25. So y'all, it's so exciting for her. And yeah, she's going to be go ahead and do that. So let's look at the ad, how it looks like. Mmm, I'm craving Zoomers, okay? Yes, your girl Angela loves a little Zoomers and they're so quick with the delivery. All you gotta do is just drink a glass of water, boom, they're knocking on your door. Or if you wanna try another method, talk to yourself in the mirror yes that's the perfect way to kind of get your confidence up. you look at yourself you say the words you let your ears hear it. everything's good but yeah they're on my door right now so i gotta go answer like i said very fast delivery hi i'm angela thank you so much for bringing the food and never forget to tip the delivery person i ordered a vegetarian poke bowl because that's just what i was craving and for me it's like my meatless monday option so i definitely just wanted to do something different with my zoomers delivery because i always deliver like something fish or chicken and i just wanted to try something different and this was really good i totally recommend you to get this from zoomers and of course i have to get my water in like period so angela oh. is in Ooh. chanel's home she's trying to bring oh. uni back home oh, hey uni <laughs> hey my baby i love you i love you you miss me you miss me like i feel like she's just doing all of that <laughs> Body Chanel's grabbing. like, oh my god, you look so good. That tan is everything. And she's like, yeah, girl. Oh my god, next time we need to go on vacation together. Oh my god. Like, they're just kind of chatting, having fun, catching up. And so she's like, it's time for us to go. And I'm happy that Chanel didn't press her about what happened. And they could always talk about it next time. Hey, Enzo. It's me. Yeah, Angela. Of course, who would it be? Yeah. Yeah, you know how you always said that you were going to help me in case anything happens when Norman's out of town. Yeah, well, something happened and I just need help. I don't know how to fix it. Can you help me to fix this issue? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're at, okay. Yeah, I can wait for you. I'm editing anyway. So Angel's going to edit while Enzo's on his way. He said he was at the gym. So yeah, she's just going to do that and get her video up for TikTok. <laughs> she's like oh my god i need to get more jobs <laughs> hey Enzo, are you around the corner because i'm kind of almost done editing yeah okay cool i'll see you so yeah he's on his way he's gonna be at the door and she's gonna talk to him hey angela it's been a hard workout for me so how are you doing and like, i'm good i'm good how are you how about and he's like i'm good it's been really hard at the gym though like it's just oh they're just making me like lift all this stuff anyway but she's like yeah but i need to talk to you about my your brother cheating i already told you i explained it to the world it was me what i gotta talk about this okay how many times am i gonna explain myself it was me i'm a single man i could go about town she's like yeah single man Ooh -hoo -hoo -hoo. all right all right can you get the charades because i know the truth do you not see me i have a tan on me and i want to ruin every single relationship you ever have i'm gonna tell sims that you're just plotting with your brother and la da 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 do you want that because i know everything and i'm gonna come after you Enzo starts pacing around, but you know what? He confesses the truth. Yes, my brother's cheated on you. Please forgive him. He didn't mean it. And it was just... Uh, uh, she's like, what? it wasn't one time. What do you mean? It just... Uh, 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 like, stop. He's like, no, but please forgive me then in the scenario that I allowed that to happen i should have told him to tell you the truth and she says yeah yeah i don't really care about all of that at the end of the day you and your brother was plotting and y'all were treating me some sort of way like i was good to y'all i was good to your family and i never did anything to deserve this i didn't deserve to be treated like this and you know what and so i'm gonna spare you from trying to ever destroy any of your relationship but I will never forgive you, and so I need you to know that. 
you're gonna have to live with this for the rest of your life that you were trifling like your brother and Enzo's like I understand I do deserve to live like I'm not a good son I'm so sorry for my involvement in this and I hope you could forgive me Angela I mean I know I said it again but it's all I could say I just feel so ashamed well you could leave the door is there I have one more thing to tell you Enzo I want you not to tell Norman our conversation I want you to keep that a secret you owe me that at least and I might forgive you for your involvement okay yeah sure uh I'm sorry Take care, Angela. I hope I see you again. Angela thinks to herself, boy, <laughs> if you don't leave me alone. <laughs> so it's the next day, 6 a.m. My girl is making herself some soup. I feel like that's kind of what's been like good for her to eat lately. And what she's been able to tolerate a lot more, something more easier on her stomach. Anyway, Norman's coming home today, so she's just preparing herself, and yep, oh, the food's almost ready, Angela. Let's go quickly. Let's finish this up. Some things never change, <laughs> but she is moody, <laughs> and she likes the perfume that she put on today. Good for you, girl. Good for you. But yeah, let's clear out this closet. She's done. She's done. She's out of here. Yeah, she's going to break the news to him, and yeah, so she's going to clean it up, but then I noticed, like, he, did you notice that she only has one closet space? I thought that was like women's clothes. Like I was so shocked that like he had her in like one space of a closet. I'm like, okay, I'll, let me take this, let me take that, let me take this, let me that. Uh, yep, yep, okay, yep, her phone, okay, yep. Y'all saw that. <laughs> I know it's a little quick, but you know what? And she's not in the mood in the mood to walk her dog. I know that like, she has like a routine. I feel so bad for Uni, but I think Uni would understand. So Angela is dead set like on moving and I really feel like you know what well, why not so I want to shout out Ocean because I believe I never knew this box existed <laughs> until I watched like her series Love Sick and I saw that the boxes I think they're from Evergreen Harvest Pack oop and so it's about to be homie y'all y'all see that he's oh oh he's here oh my god 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 <sighs> okay Angela are you prepared your man's here oh wait what oh hell no he's taking a shower first oh he's definitely acting like a cheater like i've seen this in the movies <laughs> i am so weak oh my god you're such a classic cheater reminds me of that reddit story i was listening to and the cheater was like oh like any other cheater i got caught that's exactly how I feel like Enzo, sorry, not Enzo, Norman's gonna feel. Anyway, he's probably looking around like, what's going on in this room? Like, why is it empty? Wait, why is her stuff not here? What is going on? Maybe she's just moving stuff, you know? She did have that project that she was working on for TikTok or something. And he's like, what's the meaning of this, Angela? Where are their boxes? Are you recycling? Oh, heartbreak fueled fury. How could that sim betray Angela like that? Ooh. How dare that sim show their face from feeling furious with someone nearby? Dang girl. Why did she, she automatically got angry when she saw him? I guess she's going to have to just tell him straight up. She's, oh, he's like, hey, so what's the meaning of this? And she's like, oh, I know what your filthy behind was doing while you were in Sulani. And I saw that you were kissing and you were tonguing and you were doing all this other stuff with other ladies. It's like, excuse me, I was doing business. And she's shook. Like, it's like, what are you trying to say? I'm a cheater that I would do something like that? How dare you betray my trust, Angela? What is wrong with you? I told you it was my brother and he's a single man. And yeah, I was just busy business, like taking care of stuff. And I was doing file work. I was sending emails. She's like, that's stuff you do at home. And he's like, well, I was doing it there and more. You liar. You liar. That's what she said. <laughs> Bullseye. <laughs> He's like, excuse me, Angela. What is going on with you? She says, I know you were messing with so many girls. I can't even count. I know you were. Uh, no, I wasn't. I was business tripping. And maybe I went to the beach. And if you think, she's like, oh, well, wait one second. Look at this. Not her showing the receipts. That's my girl, Angela. <laughs> Show him the receipts. So yeah. Is that not you with a bunch of girls? Is that not you? No, that ain't me. That ain't me. That 
<laughs> that's and so it's just like no it's not because i confirmed it with your brother and so and he told me that he has not been in sulani in fact that other scenario where somebody came out and said that they slept with you it was really you so at this point he has to confess he has to confess it's I, this is maybe how he could save the relationship and she's like yeah i knew it but after what you're gonna confess you are crazy norman how dare you gaslight me to this extent you are really trying it with me like i cannot with you like she's just like oh no angela don't cry she's like you broke my trust angela's partner cheated and uh y'all angela's packing up she goes deuces like my dude bye 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 like i'm so over it like goodbye that's what she feel like she's saying like yeah you know it's definitely not me but it's you you know you caused the demise of this relationship and i'm over it norman's like no don't do this to me baby i love you i do everything for you i made so much money she's like oh really i know that you bought that home in sulani i know everything i saw your texts you are deceitful you bought that place as a bachelor pad i know everything you're trifling you were trying to go there in sulani and manage a double life on me i know everything okay he says, no, no, I was going to surprise you the new year. I was going to get you this home there. And we were just going to beach life in the new year. I promise. So she's like, you're going to just cheat on me for four months consecutively. Like, it's not making sense. It's like, please just let me explain myself to you, please. So y'all, let's look at the relationship panel, though. So see, first ever kiss. Oh, it says separated for them. Failed at relationship. Furious about cheating. Festering grudge. And Norman still feels deeply connected. So he wants to work on this. So I feel like he's going to look at me, baby. Look at me. I'm gonna fix this. I'm gonna make it right. Just please, just give me a chance. Please, I beg you. I beg you. I beg you. I beg you. Like, he's just like begging, and she's like, no. You already broke my trust. I'm over it. Don't act like you're better than me. Please, I'm begging you. This is a man on his knees, practically. I wish there was on the knees animation fragging. <laughs> she's like, no. I'm not gonna do it, okay? And you know what? I'm even pregnant. He's like, pregnant? <laughs> he's shook he doesn't want to have kids y'all know that t from last episode at this point he's just like please let me just like prove to you that i'm worth it i can do this now i'm thinking i don't like dishes and cooking y'all saw that bubble but yeah she's just like sitting there i guess kind of like maybe a part of her sphinx thinking because for the baby like let me just hear him out you know so he's like yeah let me just do something let me cook i don't know what i'm cooking y'all i'm just throwing stuff together i haven't cooked in a minute like this girl has been cooking for me for a very long time i'm so nervous okay I, I, this is grilled cheese it should be easy it's natural you just throw bread on a stove what is this honey <laughs> oh no that's horrible quality why the plate look like that <laughs> okay she's gonna eat it she's gonna be polite and you eat it too okay he is enraged oh my god i'm trying to have him not have a heart attack on me what are you talking about oh he's like disgusted like what the hell did i <laughs> oh he's thinking i gotta clean the plate for her not her craving rich food now that she's eating this poor quality meal i guess she's thinking uh this relationship is just like that dish poor quality Norman is like you can't leave me and I think he knows that Angela is just not budging and that she wants to move out and that she, her mind is already made so keep throwing that tantrum Norman so Norman says you will be a single mom because you know what I come from a two-parent household I can't do this single parent thing okay you gotta be your own parent you know she's like oh this kind of stuff we're talking about Norman uh, it's officially over for real I, I can't believe I have to break up with you twice. He's like, what is wrong with you? Then I'm not going to acknowledge your baby. That's not my baby. I don't want to be with you. And she's like, I'm not. I'm the one who broke up with you. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, Angela's furious about the cheating. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's bitter about the breakup. Of course you are. You're the one in wrong. Anyway, so she's just talking to him. And she's just telling him, look, I am pregnant. It's your baby. Don't ask me some dumb question about whose baby it is. Because I've never cheated on you. I've basically been at home. Oh, she got the breakup blues. A relationship coming to an end is a sad event for any Sims life. 
first permanent separation from life event well you know how it is you always believe that things can last forever you can make promises you believe other sims promises and then life happens it draws a distance between beings that were so close it fosters conflict where they used to be only just peace Oh, okay, it begins to weariness into a love that seemed eternal. And one day, a couple breaks, like Angela's. Oh, she feels like she should go. Me and that person just don't go get along. It feels weird being near them. She just doesn't recognize him. My hopes are away from leaving a cheater. Angela will mourn a love lost. Angela will be wrecked with self-doubt and fear of a rival taking over her future partners again. But Angela will not stick around to see the face of the sim who betrayed her. She is leaving that cheater. I know that's right. Period. Oh my god, sorry. I'm proud of her. She did what she had to do. Y'all need to send love to Angela in the comments. Oh my god, I'm gagging. How dare you not acknowledge our child? What are you talking about? This is our baby. We wanted a baby. I we talked about it. He's like, yeah, but <laughs> somewhere down the line, that's your baby. That's not my baby. I don't want to do this single parent thing. So how am I going to manage to take care of the baby? He's like, well, you followed me to Sulani. We would have had a baby. Everything would have been good. And we would have been happy right now. But you accuse me of cheating. He's like, you cheated? What is wrong with you? I saw you here. Okay. <laughs> and he's like, I don't care. I'm getting tired and you know what I'm just gonna give you something I'm gonna give you some money I'll send you some money don't tell nobody about this and I'm gonna keep sending you a lot of money every single year and she's like really that's how it's gonna be he's like yeah don't tell my parents don't tell Chanel and Shane don't talk to nobody leave the city tonight and she took that offer so she's gonna go to the Sulani sorry, San Maishuno airport and leave San Maishuno forever because he said I'm gonna send you 50k simoleons a year and you're gonna get it at once and you're gonna be good and you're gonna be well taken care of you and the baby for the rest of the baby's life Angela's so disgusted like who is this guy but you know what after having that nasty argument he even like said some really mean things to her like oh i'm the one who helped you get a makeover you were a weirdo with, when you first met me and now look at the woman you are today it's all thanks to me like he took credit for things that just wasn't his and so now i feel like angela's kind of like triggered so she went to the hair salon to get a makeover for herself and she's just gonna go ahead and get this change for herself so the salon lady was like hey you gotta put this do rag on and take care of your hair it is a different style and it's a little bit like you know she's just like okay 24 hours protect the edges and you know because she did do her hair color i could give you all that and she dyed her eyebrows so she has to take care of herself not, not too much sunshine you all know the the gist so she has to take care of herself be safe and you know she says thank you so much i am nervous but you know what i'm gonna take this journey for whatever it is Angela checks into a hotel, her and Uni are asleep and it is pretty late for them. They have a flight early in the morning. So let's go and check on Norman. Norman's asleep in his bed. This is his first night without Angela in the apartment and Norman's having a nightmare. He has a dream where Angela is blasting him on social media. Oh, a nightmare? Mmm, Norman, you deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> no but yeah he's really going through it he's like oh my god norman's a bad boyfriend and he's like oh no no i need to go check her page what i'm blocked norman is shook okay what is going on what how dare she block me you know so now he's figuring out like maybe i should go on my alt account so he tries to log in he's blocked there he's like what the hell how's she blocking my original account and my alt account oh you are not playing games angela you probably blasted me why am i blocked i need to go ahead and make a new account so he's trying to make a new account check with his email you know the verification steps so he's like okay now i'm in he finds out that okay angela is not blasting me but she has only one post on her account and it says i'm gonna deactivate my account in a week and he's like why is she deactivating her tiktok what the hell so he's just like okay hey, the apartment's nasty i need to take care of it myself like i can't believe i'm doing these chores and i'm hungry and i need to eat so you know what he's just gonna eat that nasty thing but then you know he's like oh this is nasty i can't so he tries to call zoomers and yes he saw angela's you know thingy like her sponsorship so he's like you know what like i'm gonna take advantage of it okay i'm gonna go call zoomers hey zoomers i heard y'all have a, a discount angela 25 and while he's waiting for zoomers look at him 
Oh, you miss Angela autonomously looking at them. Are you trifling it? You are trifling. Now she's gone. Now you're like, okay, I'm having nightmares and I miss her. Oh, oh, Norman. I guess the saying is true. You don't know how good you have it until it's gone. Eating stink food, vacuuming, nightmares, roaches and rats. The struggle, child. It's the next day and Angela has to check in. She is leaving San Marcino for good. She's decided that she wants to go with Norman's, you know, terms and condition, I guess. Because she feels like, you know what, for the sake of the baby, there needs to be some sort of peace. I guess I just have to be the mature parent. So, yeah, she's about to step out and travel and go somewhere far, far away. And now Angela's arrived. Hey, are you in there? Uh, hi. Nice to meet you. Hey, auntie. Do you recognize me? Angela, is that you? I could have recognized you with the hair and the shades. Oh, my God. So, you know, Sicily's excited like that. Yeah, that's my big cousin, Angela. What are you doing out here? And then she's like, uh, you know, I'm visiting you guys. They're like, tell the truth. Angela says, can I come inside and talk to you guys? They're like, oh, okay, cool. They just went in and gave her the biggest hug that you can have. Like, the warmest, kindest, loving hug. And Angela just started, like, crying in their arms. They knew something was up. Before we go to Tartusa, let's go to Norman's family home. He tells his family the news and his dad is not here for it. What do you mean you and Angela broke up? Everything seemed okay the last time I saw y'all. And Norman says, yeah, and then it's not. And he says, I need to know what happened because I don't want to believe that y'all could just break up like that. And Norman's pretty annoyed. I'm your son. Why are you getting mad? And Leslie's like, that's a good lady. That's why we're mad, okay? And the mom, I don't know why she changed her clothes, but she, you know, she was also chiming in. And she goes, yeah, you know, I love me some Angela. Can you guys work it out? And he was like, yeah, work it out. Apologize to her. No, I'm not going to apologize to her. I don't want to talk about her ever again. And um, the mom's like, what is going on? There's something that happened and we want to know. And she's like, my poor Angela. She just started crying in a corner. I was like, girl, sit down. Dad asks Enzo, do you know? And I was like, yeah, do you know? And Enzo's like, no, I don't know nothing. I'm sorry, y'all. And the parents are just talking. They're like, we could try to call her. Let's try to work it out. Norman's like, what on earth? Like, why are they picking her side over mine? So he comes up with something. Hey, y'all. I just want to tell you guys the truth. She cheated on me. That's why I just didn't want to embarrass her and change the image that y'all have of her. And they're like, what? Cheated, son? Really? What would make her cheat on you? And he says, well, you know, I was working a lot and I'm just so busy with work. You know, you know how it gets. Like, people get lonely and they just do weird things. And the parents just start consoling him. They feel bad. We're so sorry that happened to you, Norman. I just, I, I should have known. I should have, you know, but I do feel like, you know, she was kind of alone. And you know, he's like, really, mom, you're still picking her side? Mama Patrice says, no, 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 dear. I love you. I'm sorry if you made, if I make you feel that way. I just, I just feel like sometimes, you know, when someone's alone, they do do stuff out of character. Like, he's like, yeah, but that doesn't mean I have to stay with her. I had to dump her. I'm like, oh, Norman, the nerve. <laughs> and I feel like his parents low key, like they're buying it, but they also kind of like, really? Like, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like they're just kind of like, they'll have to let it sit on them. And, you know, he's like, I have to tell y'all one more thing. She's like, okay, uh, out with it. Cause at this point, I don't know if I could take any more band news. And he tells them, I'm moving to Sulani. They're, they're like, yeah, yeah, stop, stop. Just cause she broke up with you, you're gonna go somewhere else. It's like, no, I already bought the place she was supposed to move with me. But why Sulani above all places? And the parents are just heartbroken, like, damn. We lose Angela and now Norman's moving far away. I just feel so bad for them. Norman wants to go to Enzo and talk to him and just tell him how he really feels. Norman says, hey, so you had to spill your guts out to Angela and you could even want to warn me? He's like, yeah, well, you're lied to the mom and dad and said that she cheated. Uh, it sounds like fair and square. And Norman says, you know, what kind of brother are you? I give you a job. I give you a whole lot of stuff. You're a loser. You live with mom and dad. And Enzo's like, oh, shut up. You're the loser who's cheating on your girlfriend and who's trying to use me. 
and I'm sorry that I did not want to get used in that last moment. I let Angela talk to you, you know, and he's like, well, I don't want to talk to you ever again. And and so did not like that. But, you know, he's like, I don't want to talk to you. He's like, really? I am the one who's innocent. And he's like, of course, you're going to have to act like the victim. I'm done with this, Norman. Enjoy Solani, bro, alone. And Norman is just sitting here thinking, ah. I don't have to deal with the winter in these kind of cold climates. I'm w moving away somewhere warm and nice. Goodbye, new crest and cold winters. Hello, Tartosa, and nice beachy winter. Welcome to Tartosa, Angela. So before we talk, I want to tell you all the tea. Angela has wonderful chemistry with her aunts. I'm gagging. I mean, I'm not shocked, but I'm shocked. Now Angela telling her the whole tea. He was cheating on me, and I'm having I'm pregnant right now, and I have nowhere to go. But I just felt like you were the best person to talk to about this. And Auntie's like, yeah, you know, I kind of went through difficult moments in my life too, so I can empathize. Angela tells her aunt everything. She tells her about the money that he gave her, and that she accepted it, and that she left. She told that she closed her TikTok because you know he made her feel like as if he took credit for that kind of success she has and you know that she is a weirdo to him now and she just told her aunt everything her aunt shook like wow your mom talked to me and she kind of told me she had a feeling about him and but she didn't want to feel too controlling of your life so she kind of let you figure it out for yourself she's like yeah but i didn't expect that we were so close she's like you know hun maybe i should just grab you a cup of tea let's settle down let's talk more angela says please don't tell anybody about this i don't feel comfortable talking don't talk to mom don't tell nobody about this so aunt grabs her a cup of tea she says dear i'm not gonna tell nobody about this but hun you have time right now to figure it out so i'm gonna tell y'all about auntie Brittany malloy's traits and all her info auntie Brittany malloy is a bookworm animal enthusiast and a foodie she is a craftsman istp she prefers exclusive romantic relationships her favorite movie genre is family movies she does not want a child right now and she's very responsible auntie shows angela the room she's staying in the room looks like it's meant for a child so auntie Britt says oh i'm sorry i never got around to fixing this room it's her room automatically angela knew it was her cousin's room she just assumed it was a her teen cousin Cicely's room, but this was Rosalie's room. Auntie says, I saw her two summers ago when I dropped Cicely off. She's so stunning. You saw her recently, right? And Angela says, yeah, 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 I saw her over the summer. And Auntie Britt was like, well, I'll go ahead and make some food for you and the baby. To understand the story of Rosalie, maybe I should take y'all a little back in time. When Rosalie first moved to Tartosa, she hated it here. She was so sad. She talked to her friends back home in Evergreen Harbor, and she already went through a move before. She left San Sequoia to Evergreen Harbor, and then she has to move again to Tartosa. And like her mom would try to comfort her, like, hey, hen, how are you doing? And I was here on the computer all day. And Rosalie would just be like, yeah, I'm just trying to catch up with everybody. Everybody's just moving on with their life. And this is just me on a computer trying to catch up on their information and their life like it's like well you know you can make other friends go outside and have fun here and it was just like yeah so i could just be here at, like an old lady and just do boring stuff like, that's what people do here in the city tartos it's just a retired city like i don't understand why we couldn't move somewhere else or something a different part of evergreen harbor and she's like well hun i didn't want to work as a lawyer anymore and she's like why you just don't want to be with dad and you're just punishing me and you want me to wait away from my dad kind of thing and so Brittany is like no I, d I promise it's not that I just need to change I mean she wanted to be away from him but you know she didn't mean for it to be this far and so you know Rosa is like I want to go back to my dad she's like no you're not you're gonna stay here young lady she's like no I'm gonna leave you one day and you're gonna not be you know expected now kind of thing you know she's like excuse you young lady don't talk to me like that I am your mother don't say that please don't say that i love you so much and like while she just like cuddles her and stuff rosalie still like she knows her mom loves her but she just feels like her mom is like 
you know cutting her life back something like that like you know what i'm saying she just feels like she's missing out always and the city's just so boring she's not getting used to it there are some kids but it's just you know a lot of people who are on vacation that's kind of what this destination is where it is and she just hates it here you know so she decides you know what i want to call my dad dad i miss you so much i just hate it here all people do is just tan and maybe like just go to the park but like not a lot of sims are there unless they're like out of towners i miss evergreen harbor so much i want to live with you dad i don't think i could do this a life here and so the dad's like you know what when you age up to a teen you can move with me like automatically your birthday you could move she like, promise he said i promise honey when rosalie aged up she left her mom and it was Cicely and Mama Brittany alone and Mama Brittany you know it was hard for her this change she would cry in Rosalie's room praying one day Rosalie would come to her senses and come back and see that maybe her dad isn't this great guy that she pictures in her mind and let's go back to the current reality Yes, Auntie has two daughters, Cicely and Rosalie, and little Cicely's room. Y'all see how it is. That pink highlighted room. <laughs> it's the next morning though, so she's like cooking with her mom. Like, mom, we gotta cook the best food for her and make her feel home, you know? And Cicely is trying to welcome her cousin in. She loves her cousin so much and right now angela's awake she was crying all last night by the way so yeah auntie's cooking breakfast she's trying to make sure it's the highest quality meal she wants her niece to be really happy and not feel sad good morning angela let's start your day i was looking at her box by the way and i just noticed that it glitched y'all don't put photos in there okay they're gonna make your photos pitch black and you're not gonna have your photos anymore so i had to learn my lesson the hard way by the way auntie made a spinach frittata and angela's liking it now i'm not gonna lie and act like i know what every food that a pregnant woman should eat child so i'm not gonna do that <laughs> Ooh, looks like auntie wants to sit next to her what do you want to say auntie Britt? i know she's gonna say don't worry she's gonna tell her hey hun like i have a gardening club that i would love for you to join us i wouldn't want you to stay home all day she's like okay you know i'll join y'all and she's like yeah the clothes you're wearing is perfect all you just gotta do is just show up <laughs> so she's like it's always I mean, oasis springs you know it's the one of the closer cities here in the warm climate regions in this earth let's just say okay so she's like but before we go you know you're a pregnant lady so i need you to like just do a little bit of walking around the area and i'm using a mod where it allows two sims to walk with each other child tell me why she took the dog with her though like i didn't even tell her to do that i don't even know how to do that like her bond with uni is something else it's cute though i love it i love it it's like, like i said their unique quirk but man this world is beautiful auntie's part of a gardening club and yes she in my mind she definitely is a gardener too she used to be a lawyer once upon a time and she's not a lawyer anymore so she is working as a gardener and that was kind of like her dream career and when she saw that there was a posting for some reason like she was able to get it and she's from a warm climate region anyway so like this isn't such a major change compared to like the other place that she was at evergreen harbor and she had her own trauma as to why she moved there so it's funny that angel's kind of like repeating that form of history hey Sumin, how are you doing uh, that's what basically angel's auntie saying she's like i'm good but like aren't you planning the wedding like she's like yeah yeah i am but you know she's like aren't you supposed to go out to meet your fiance and she was like yeah you know but my niece is here so he told me that we could go ahead and change it to the spring and yeah so not the wedding but like their meetup because they've never met before that's the tea okay so i'm gonna have the best friends take a selfie let's do that <laughs> oh they're so cute bestie let's take a selfie oh they're so cute Sumin's from the gallery and the other garden club sims i just searched garden club or something like that they popped up y'all <laughs> but yeah auntie and niece selfie of course so back home right now and cicely's living her best life i'm like okay cicely go do your homework because i know you want to get that a so bad and oh wow she's feeling really tense I guess all that socializing kind of like, you know, because she's introverted, might have done a lot to her, you know? 
So anyway, I'm just trying to make sure the cat eats. They have a pet cat. I didn't even talk about the pet cat. I found the cat from the gallery too, Trail. <laughs> Auntie made a yummy classic truffle risotto, y'all. And I think this is from the Granny's Cookbook mod. Y'all, look at the place she's serving. Like, Auntie, okay, I see you. So Cecily's like, how's the garden club stuff? She's like, good. But they're both moody, though. And she's like, how's school? She's like, good. <laughs> Auntie's like, oh my god, two hormonal ladies. <laughs> she's just enjoying her meal, though. Angela was alone in silence. All she needed was one good cry. She covered her mouth in the pillow and cried. Cicely was taking a shower and she felt like she could have sworn she heard something. And it didn't make her feel comfortable because the last time she was hearing cries from that room was Rosalie's cries. So she tried, even though she, whether she was young, she still felt uncomfortable by that. And she knew there was something, so she's trying to talk to Angela, like, Angela, can I come in? I want to talk to you. And of course, Uni had to distract. <laughs> but yeah, no, she really does want to talk to Angela. And Angela's like, look, I had a bad relationship thing, and it's just, I feel like my life is over or something. And she's like, no, it's not. You have so much more in life to offer. Your ex is trash anyway. And she's like, you're right, he is. Are you okay with me moving here? She's like, yes, I love you so much, Angela. And while I don't remember you so much, I do miss you and I feel like you haven't talked to me in a while. And she's like, well, sorry for being harsh in my tone. I love you. She's like, I love you, but I'm so sorry. I just, I need to cry it out. And, you know, she's like, well, let me just show you something out here. And they're looking at this photo of the Starbucks. She's like, what is that? She's like, you don't remember? And Angela looks at the photo and she's like, hmm oh my god i made that art and cicely's like yes you made it for me when you're when i was young and i was like so obsessed with starbucks beyond belief and you made me a starbucks art and you're so thoughtful she's like yeah but i'm not the girl who just randomly paints stuff anymore like i'm i'm a grown woman she's like what's wrong with painting you know and she's like, yeah, but there's, I just feel like it's not for me, maybe. She's like, are you sure? You loved painting so much. And, you know, during this time, like, Tartosa is a beautiful place. Like, you have so many areas to do it. And she's like, yeah, no. Cecily just starts crying. You're the one who inspired me to want to paint sometimes. Your passion for painting really just made me feel, you know loved and i understood what was having extended family through you and you know they chatted all about that you know she was like tartosa is a place to live in like you know your hobby becomes your career a lot of sims leave the busy cities this is when i realized that sicily is definitely different from her sister rosalie she probably like really loves it here versus how rosalie felt but let's just like go to the next day you know kind of thing because Angela, I feel like she just doesn't, I'm not going to say it's preachy, but like, I feel like that's how it's, she might think of it. So let's just give her some time to marinate. So Auntie made a honey banana toast. Auntie's a foodie and she throws it down in the kitchen, okay? Auntie snaps, like she really does. And she's just dancing, living her best life. I'm just looking at her traits and I notice she has a fear of getting cheated on. I'm like, oh yeah from her last relationship i mean like her last serious serious relationship of course she probably feels that way like her ex was cheating on her non-stop like i know norman kind of like we're gonna talk about how his development changed but like i feel like her ex was a little worse like I, I, there, I, there should be no like olympics of cheaters but if there was one her ex is the worst <laughs> sicily hun have a nice day at school so Cicely's gonna go to school right now. Bye, Cicely. Enjoy. And Auntie is talking to her man. She's flirting with him. They met on the internet and he proposed to her and she just said yes it was something different for her so you know she was she's in love she wanted something different from her ex and hun this is absolutely different okay so now she's like angela we gotta go to the doctor and i want you to go get yourself tested and angela's like okay you you're willing to go to my appointments with me and her aunt's like yeah of course what are you talking about so let's go ahead through the realistic birth mod and you know get an ultrasound Angela is meeting up with the obstetrician and she's just checking. She's like, you know, you're doing well so far. You seem healthy. Blood well, tests came back. Everything is good. Your urine sample or whatever, you know, whatever they be doing. 
<laughs> so yes. I was like, oh my god. Oh, I don't know if it's like even possible to see through the first trimester Under child, barb. but the mod does allow it. So oh, that's how tiny her baby is right oh, now. So she's like, you just gotta walk around. And her aunt's like, yeah, I make her walk every single day. And she's like, yeah, you know. And the lady's like, there is a pregnancy group that uh, meets up at Oasis Springs I could connect you with. And auntie's like, yes, actually, one of the garden ladies. Um, are, is part of that group and i was gonna connect her there she's like yeah well you're doing well then just continue to be stress stress free and tartosa is a great place so yeah y'all my girl is enjoying the tartosa like oh it's so beautiful out here but yeah let's go to this pregnancy meet because apparently my girl is here so here's all the ladies i think it's called like new parents i think the club and it, the leader is malak she is, was once upon a time a doctor you know she's married to johnny zest a fun fact and you know she's just like we have a new student here and i would love for the new student to introduce themselves and things are going great sims are just talking about their fears their worries their husband they're just like their kids uh, you know is it their first child are, are they a single parent are they in a two-parent household and yeah they're just you know look doing their own little club stuff you know <laughs> And, you know, Angela is talking to a fellow single mom, by the way, and it's actually her second child being, like, her own, uh, on her own, and, you know, she prefers it that way. She's like, I don't care if they want to be in the child's life or not, like, I'm a great parent, regardless. So she's like, oh, okay, that's great. <laughs> yeah, so I think, I think, I don't know if there's any other single parent, but I do know, yeah, like, some of them are married, some of them, uh, I think they have, like, they're, one of them lives in Tartosa, the one who was dancing on the table, which scared me, because I was like, why on earth are you doing that, lady? But, like, okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Let's have a time jump and go to the second trimester. Angela is hanging out with the new parents. Today is casual fashion day. So, yeah, they're all, like, talking about how it was difficult to dress up. And, you know, obviously, as you know pregnant women in my mind they are just talking about all of that <laughs> and maybe the worries and the fears and the judgments if sometimes they don't try or they try too hard or you know just all those stuff and they're just all talking about how it's a relief that they get to have a club like this to talk to other sims and you know she's just like yeah you know i'm so happy and i'm just you know my kids drive me nuts you know some of them are again not new parents they're just a new pa like the club's name is new parents but like some of them have more than one kid some of them it's their first kid some of them it's their fourth kid like so you know she's just angela just talking like she's being more comfortable with them you see how confident she is in her speech like i'm so proud of her yeah and so i think it's great that they have each other and if y'all notice the one in the white is the one who's in the gardening club too so she's in two clubs the new parents and the gardening gals so Miss Malak is telling them they're gonna have a potluck soon and they're talking about what food is appropriate, you know, consider all the trimesters and cravings. But it's time to go back home, y'all. And Auntie is cooking a nice barbecue chicken. The ladies are enjoying the food. And of course, the cat had to join in, child. Delilah Meatball lives up to her name. Like, I know that Sicily is the one who named it. But like, the fact that like you always be eating human food. <laughs> anyway so she's catching up with her man she's like you coming to town tomorrow right we're gonna meet for the first time oh my god i cannot believe it you know i called off work and everybody is ready to see you and so she's calling her parents to like oh yeah he's coming he confirmed with me and they're like oh love we're so proud of you we're obviously scared but like if he's anything weird just call us we're gonna come and the, her parents, by the way, live uh, in Willow Donna. Creek. They moved away Axel, from San Sequoia. Uh, I doubt he's a weirdo, mom. Stop. <laughs> That's what I feel like she's saying. And Angela, during this time of her first trimester, she ended up actually trying to paint. If y'all remember, she actually did paint, and it did make her feel relaxed and stuff when she was in Sulani. And she did used to paint, yes. When she was a younger sim, she was really into painting. But, you know, with time, she obviously... Obviously was into biology and she wanted a biology program and she just wanted to do something in life in that area and she had this whole picture in her head of how her life's gonna be 
and it's not the way it is and so you know what she's like why not during this time of my pregnancy let me go around town and start painting stuff so like y'all look like come on anybody would want to paint in a location like this but her favorite type of painting is a landscape painting so she'll actually take a photo of something like paint from reference and it's like a landscape so yeah oh my god i can't believe it's already the next day y'all auntie is ready to whip it up uh, sicily's trying to pat herself with her little makeup whatever powder she has and she's just trying to set it in you know she knows what she's gonna wear everybody knows auntie had them pre-prepared last week they had like a fake you know welcome home type thing for him you know so this is like girl you ready you and the baby she's like yeah we're almost ready don't worry so how about you how are you feeling she's like i'm okay i'm happy for my mom that she's in a relationship how about you though how's that pregnancy meet up she's like it's good and she's like you're so fun to be around i really enjoy spending time with you i hope you feel that way and auntie's like right now making her dessert i guess this is kind of like what she likes to make a sprinkle donut i'm assuming because you know what i'm gonna do that for her so i decided it's time to set this food up but i noticed it doesn't really align right but i wanted to show you all that let's have auntie work on that makeup she is a baddie not a saddie though but like ever <laughs> she's like hey where are you at or like are you in town yet and he's like yeah 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 i'm here and she's like okay well can you please uh you know tell me when you're here because i'm so excited to meet you so she's like girls let's sit down let's prepare herself mentally and you know she's kind of worried about how sicily will react like i'm not gonna lie mom's a little worried and she's like look you know and also she's worried about angela like you know the heartbreak like are you okay with this you know she's like yes i'm okay i'm happy with it and, you know angela i'm not gonna say she's over the heartbreak but she is in a better place mentally she's able to do stuff and like i said kind of live with her hobby and see if it would ever turn into a passion career for her Oh my god, they're meeting for the first time, Mr. Hess. Oh, of course Cicely's interrupting her mom. I'm kind of worried that she's going to misbehave, you know. And Uni is also kind of misbehaving, but you know, she's like, how's the drive? He said, everything's good. She's like, oh, where's your son? He's like, oh, he's out here one second. He's going to come in soon. So she's like, okay, oh. Oh my god, it feels like a dream. Like, I've, I've dreamt of you and now you're really here. Not that I'm dancing. <laughs> oh, well, the son's here too, y'all. His name is Duncan, and oh, Nico's telling him, son, we're finally here, please behave. I don't know why they're dancing, they're so annoying. <laughs> so I was like, sometimes I'm like, y'all just like, sit down together. But, you know, the autonomy of so on some of these objects is like, you know, a lot, so I could only understand, you know? So, I'm like, finally she's sitting down and introducing herself to the son. So Lee said, you better not break my mom's heart. She's such a nice woman. <laughs> that's so weird stop behave oh my god but yeah y'all you know what at this point i don't want the food to expire it's been sitting out here for like a good hour so let's have everybody sit together and eat and i noticed by the way like watch look at this y'all why the why the kids all leave it <laughs> <laughs> they said they want to give the adults private time like okay i'm gonna let them go you know usually i get annoyed when they don't want to sit together but i thought that was cute that they wanted to respect them and give them their own private time i thought it was really cute <laughs> So the girls are talking and I feel bad like girl include Duncan in the conversation like he's bro okay and I'm like Cicely like be nice to him and Angela like tries to introduce herself but it doesn't go as well as she would hope and Cicely's like girl it's so hot I mean how do you feel about the weather here and Duncan's like yeah it's really like humid like the jacket I'm wearing I can't believe I should have just went with like a really small t-shirt and the couple is also talking here and he's like i got you this she's like oh it's so beautiful oh you're so romantic he's like you are the best uh, sure, sure. painting i've ever seen and mind you mr nico is actually into painting himself so that's kind of fun to see and they got deeply connected and he got adoring sentiment so they sat outside to be you know a little more private she's holding his hand oh <laughs> she's like wow like you know he's like yo you are my soulmate i love you so much 
Vinny's like, you're my soulmate. I love you so much. I have such a burning love for you. It will never go away. And, you know, he says, yeah, I love you too. She's like, I love you. I love you. They're just like saying, I love you so much. Like, <laughs> And then, you know, they go for the kiss. At first, she was kind of trying to say maybe she's going to go for that formality route. But child, they woohooed that night. Okay, so yeah, the girls are taking a selfie. Of course, cousins for life. And Duncan's into his fitness. Of course, of course, Duncan. You go ahead and enjoy your fitness. And of course, the couple went to woohoo. You know, formality ain't for them. They love each other. They're going to get married. That's all that matters to them. And now we're in Cicely's room, child, and her light is just, so <laughs> it's really pretty, but it distracts me. And he's sleeping in Angela's room. But y'all, we're going to have to fast forward to the wedding day, which is basically a few days away from now. Like, Auntie was like, what's the point of you guys going back? Like, let's just do it now. My parents are willing to come. You know, whoever comes, comes great. I love you. Like, why do we have to wait? So let's go to the wedding day for real, y'all sitting in the front rosalie even made it you know what that's a good daughter at least she sh he, she showed up britney's parents showed up and she was waiting for her sister to show up aka angela's mom but she's not here sadly angela's plus one is malak and you know what y'all i had to put them in post i'm gonna not lie they didn't want to behave and sit down so i had to put that code to get them to sit down and not move <laughs> but the wedding is beautiful okay they're all so nice and behaved. But y'all, there is an extra member here. <gasps> is that Angela's mother? Oh no, she knows her daughter's pregnant. And I'm ending the episode right here. Huh? So this is the next morning oh, no. when Mr. Hess came. Auntie cooked a feast for everyone and everyone sat around the table as she announced to them that she's gonna get married and that there was a cancellation at her favorite venue and that she was gonna bring up the wedding to this day because why not they love each other and them being together makes more sense than ever angela is obviously very hesitant and wanted to leave because she didn't want to face her grandparents or her family yet however auntie guilt tripped her and Angela couldn't abandon her, especially at a time like this. I mean, y'all, a last minute wedding, okay? Y'all, not only that, Cicely had to call her sister. She was like, Rosalie, mama is here. She's about to get married. Like, I mean, Mr. Hess. Like, oh, she's just like, Rosalie, like, come on, just say your sentence is right. I don't know what you're saying. She's like, mom's getting married. You have to come within a few days. And I don't care what you're going to do. I'm going to be like, so disappointed if you don't come. And, you know, Duncan's like, okay, like, I guess I'm cool with it. Angela's kind of like thinking, should I? I escape you know <laughs> should i hide in a hotel and come back and her auntie's like you know like i need you honey i need you and you know what could she do flash forward to the night before the wedding where grandma and grandpa come to the house and they join the household because they are ready for the wedding they're also waiting for rosalie to come too however she said that she's going to be in the, there by the morning because her flight got canceled again don't forget she is experiencing a winter so you know flights can get canceled delayed so that's why but yeah grandma and grandpa are very surprised to see angela is expecting they are disappointed that they couldn't have her come to willow creek and stay with them like you know that one summer where she was staying in the attic when she was a teen and she was like oh is grandma grandpa I'll come by soon you know they were definitely shook i don't know if you know but her grandparents are both doctors grandma's name is justina malloy she loves the outdoors pro dog lover indifferent to being in romantically exclusive relationships uh the mastermind intj home turf caregiver jester sim and a fear of death grandpa cliff malloy perfectionist loyal clumsy does not want to have any kids anymore prefers exclusive romantic relationship he is an istj domestic sim and he's a caregiver he also has a fear of death angela similar to her grandma and loving outdoors she's similar to her grandpa for being domestic it's the wedding day auntie and the girls are preparing auntie says her sister isn't rsvping so it may be best that grandma and grandpa won't say anything until you're ready to talk mm -hmm. look at auntie isn't she so cute she's the baddest and she knows okay i love the wedding dress color that she went with it definitely defines just how much of her the love and the aura she's been giving lately 
Angela says, so my mom's not coming. Auntie says, well, we're not on the best of the terms. I expected it. Angela felt guilty and Auntie tries to reassure and says, I know, it's okay. It would have been nice for her to show her face. Uh, Angela says, at least Rosalie's on her way. We got one of two of, you know, like the awkward invites. And Grandma and Grandpa are already here. So let's just keep it fun and calm. Auntie Brittany, look at her. She just seems so happy on her day. And, you know, she's just like, Angela, thank you so much. I know how hard it was for you to be here. And she's like, don't worry about it, Auntie. The venue is beautiful. Everything's beautiful. I love you so much. Rosalie's catching up with the girl. She's like, oh my God, Angela, look, I haven't seen you in a minute. And what's that in your belly? Like, oh my God, girl, you didn't even want to talk to me about it. You just want me to find out when I'm here. Like, I'm, I thought we were like besties low key. You know, we were partying last summer kind of energy. <laughs> It seems like sisters Rosalie and Cicely have the jokesters dynamic, which is a new uh, Pax family dynamic feature. Love that for the girls. Cicely's catching up with her father. He's like, okay, you coming to me for the summer? She's like, yeah, dad, I'm going to be visiting you and I'm going to bring Delilah meatballs. <laughs> and he's like, okay, but that cat kind of be annoying. And she's like, okay, dad, but I don't care. She's coming. <laughs> Seems like Mama Britt was eavesdropping on the conversation, but Rosalie interrupts her. Mama Britt says, I'm so sorry for how things turned out. I wish it was better. And Rosalie says, no, I want to apologize to you, Mom. I wasn't trying to, like, live the life here. I wanted to always find faults, and also moving away was just really hard. And, you know, Mom's like, I know. It wasn't easy for me to leave like that. And however, you know, it's for the best and look at how it is right now. And Rosalie says, you don't hate me, Ma? And Ma was like, how could I? You're so badass. Look at you. And, you know, Rosalie's like, well, Mom, yeah, you're looking at a, like, future scientist. Like, practically looking for a job, got some interviews and stuff. And her mom's so proud of her. She's like, yeah, no, I love that you're doing, that's your dream. And I always knew that you loved science. And, you know, she is a geeky sim, so I thought that was so cute. Rosalie's traits is party animal, creative, and as she grew up, she's starting to like the outdoors, but like for partying reasons, not to go fishing and do this chill life, okay? She's a city girl at heart, okay? I'm gonna tell y'all the whole team. <laughs> it seems like things are getting better between the mother-daughter duo, and I love that for them. I hope that they keep the, in contact, keep this momentum going. Auntie Britt enjoyed the air in her balcony. And she saw her ex was waving at her and she waved back she is no longer that woman the woman who was broken the woman who ran away from evergreen harbor and she is ready for this chapter in her life to walk down that aisle to marry the love of her life nico hess and looks like addison made it after all meet angela's mother she is at the wedding venue huh? and she knows uh. everything she runs in a panic okay like look at her just running from back there y'all y'all saw her <laughs> oh my god she is sneaking away she's like i don't want nobody to see me she basically i guess like fight or flight mode she's shook by how she reacted and i think she also has the paranoid trait which probably just really oh, shows i don't know why she did oh, that and she just starts crying oh, like how did i not know that how am i finding out about my own daughter my own my baby oh, my baby angela oh, my she just starts crying and breaking down into tears Broken i just felt so oh, bad for her <laughs> and you know in this moment i think that mama addison just she just couldn't face her daughter and she knew that her daughter was hiding for this for a reason you know a part of her really wants to just walk to the wedding so you know what she's just gonna give herself that courage to walk back go to the venue go to angela comfort angela no 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 i'm gonna run back home i can't do this i can't you know she's hiding this for a reason i have to respect that well, I guess we still have to have a party. I mean, like, what could we do? Mama Bear didn't want to show up, and she got scared, and she ran away. And I think y'all could kind of understand maybe where Angela gets that from. <laughs> where she gets that, like, you know, maybe somewhat fight or flight response to, or maybe for her it's fully, you know? So I just wanted to show y'all that the garden gals are here, the couples are here, everybody's here, the friends are here, the entertainers are here. Check, check, everybody's here, having fun. 
and uh sadly angela's like whole family couldn't even make it anyway because it's exam season in san sequoia i mean they all like literally it's summer is right around the corner for summer break they have to work hard and you know the wedding was last minute the wedding was supposed to be in summer and you know auntie Britt decided to do it in the spring so what could she do you know what i'm saying like mama um addison couldn't bring all the kids anyway so anyway though let's go and cut that wedding cake y'all i think i'm doing the base game one at the wedding pack ones i don't know why i don't think it worked for me for some reason i had her even bake it but for some reason it just was weird but anyway i thought it was still cute you know they got to you know cut the cake together cousins are hanging out not the dad here wearing casual clothes like he was all dressed up and now he's just like crashing the event I was just looking at him like, if y'all know if Duck Mr. David, um, you know, Rosalie's father. <laughs> Aw, cousins, aren't they such cutie pies? He's just like, oh, look how far along I am with your pregnancy, you know, she's... <laughs> I just feel like, you know, Angela, Angela's just very excited about her pregnancy, how much she's growing. And y'all, of course, a wedding is stressful. But, you know, they enjoyed the night. They're about to go to their honeymoon, like, right ASAP. Like, I'm telling you, Auntie Britt is not playing around. So, Auntie Britt asks Angela to come upstairs and to sit with her. And, you know, Auntie Britt basically is like, you look so beautiful together today, you know. And Angela's like, no, you look so beautiful today. Mr. Hess is perfect for you. And Auntie says, he is. You know what? I noticed something at the wedding. I noticed Mr. Hess's son was checking you out. And Angela's like, no. <laughs> I'm focused on my pregnancy. Like, I don't want to do any form of dating. And, you know, she's kind of like weirded out. But, like, why, out of all the people or Sims or whatever in the world, why Mr. Hess's son? And Auntie's like, what? So when I separated from Cecily's papa during Rosalie's pregnancy, I was going on dates. Just go on a date with him, okay? He's going through things. And Angela's like, wow, Auntie. Like, isn't he like my cousin in a sense? And Auntie's like, no, he's Cecily's stepbrother. A step cousin isn't a thing. And I have gift cards for the restaurant. It would really go to waste. It's literally ending by the time the honeymoon is over. So I think it would just be fun if you go for me and, you know, Duncan. Like, you and Duncan do something because tonight Rosalie and Cecily are going to do things. And I just don't want you guys to be alone and just bored while the girls are just doing their own thing before Rosalie has to go back, you know? And she's like, you're right, you're right. I mean, we all just go or i don't know but you know she's like auntie i also have one more thing to tell you and yeah she revealed to her that i am going to be moving and i found a place here in the city and it's up for rent but it is quite a bit of money to put down for it so you know auntie's like oh wow really and she's like yeah really but let's go send them to their honeymoon which is a rabbit hole child but if you have the mod for my little miss sam i just sent them there and look at him he just got a photography skill like not him taking photos already <laughs> and mr has son by the way duncan was actually staying to um upgrade parts of the house because he's good with his handiness skill so you know i just bought him some upgrade parts to go and upgrade around the house and look at Cecily just dressed up to have fun and Cecily found a music concert a little up uh, let's say the outskirts of the town and she wants to go with her sister and yes it's late night but you know what it doesn't matter because Rosalie's in town and and you know Lil's just gonna have fun kind of thing sister to sister time think of it like that you know oh love them bye girls oh so Duncan is right now, you know, just fixing some stuff. And I don't know if I told y'all, but they did take a selfie, which I'm going to insert for you right here. He even took a selfie with Cicely. I thought that was really cute. Actually, I'm just going to show y'all the selfies in general. <laughs> well, I had fun. I'm not even going to lie. My Sims were dancing. They were it was really cute how they were all interacting, being cutesy. Loved it for them. Angela asks Duncan, do you want to go to the restaurant tonight? I mean, everybody's just out, you know? And he says, sure, let's go so they go to the restaurant and it's like a fancy restaurant chow <laughs> if you noticed she kind of went with like an artsy makeup vibe kind of like what she used to do when she was younger she was just experimenting like again like i said she's kind of like in her experimenting with her face she wants to like blend her real weird girl and tiktok vibe but like into one sim which is her you know and you know, she's conversing with duncan and it just feels like a really nice 
time to hang out with someone and she's just wondering why did auntie say like something like he's sad or something where like that he has, has a story to give to and that i'm sure duncan's thinking that too like what's her story like i know she's pregnant but i really don't know you know anyway so let's go and get them some dinner i think he would want to you know a drink and let's have her get some water and I feel like Angela's been like into the soup, so I'm gonna get her a soup and I'm gonna get him a cute pizza. So yeah. Here's a shot of the food towel. They did not want to sit down, so yeah. <laughs> but they decided to talk on the water fountain area outside. Duncan says, It was nice. Thank you for being cool about Mrs. B's shenanigans. Angela says, yeah, I am sorry about my aunt, but I guess we got a free meal out of it. So Angela's like, I think you know why I'm here, right? And Duncan says, you're hiding from the world like I was. Angela says, doesn't this feeling suck? Hiding? Duncan says, it sucks and it hurts so much. My ex divorced me suddenly and refuses for me to see my baby all over and her family sides with her. Angela says, that's so awful, I'm so sorry. Duncan says, thank you, I only ever told my dad and I've been staying with him ever since. Angela says, can I ask what caused the rift between you? And Duncan says, she says I abandoned her and I never did. I was trying to protect her from overstressing because she was a high risk pregnancy. She thinks I bailed on her, but I honestly was experiencing some fears at that moment. I fainted and she didn't know what would cause that i didn't either until i went to therapy and i found out it was deeply subconscious as like f and i just oh i'm so sorry this sounds super complicated he says yeah too much to unpack on a first day as friends and she talks about her story with enzo i feel like they really got to chat without all the families there and they realized that this is the development of a very beautiful friendship while Angela was talking, she made a self-discovery on a personality trait, and I was so shocked because I'm not even ready to talk about th this this episode. We're going to talk about it next episode. Duncan has family-oriented, bookworm, cheerful, would love to have children. He is the doer, ESTP, indifferent into being romantically or not romantically exclusive relationships. And he has a spa membership, a jester sim, and he's a sage sim. I also think he's a foodie. Man, I loved filming these scenic shots of Tortosa. Oh damn, this place is beautiful. I can't believe I'm saying this out loud, but this is a lot that I made. I've never made something. Okay, I'm not going to say it's out of scratch because it was a shell and I just remixed it into a restaurant. And I just wanted to show y'all the sisters hanging out quickly. And I saw that alien family, which was I was kind of interested. Like, who are y'all? <laughs> What's the tea? <laughs> but yeah, y'all, I was really like so proud of how I built this restaurant. Please tell me your thoughts. And obviously, I don't know how to build. So like, I'm trying. I'm trying, y'all. So it's like a game built restaurant. So you could play games and you could eat. And it's like a patio style. So I don't know how I came up with this or why, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the sisters playing uh symbols i believe this is this game i feel like after the concert cecily was like sis oh. you said the city didn't have games you said the city is boring well i got a place to show you and she showed her my lot okay thank you cecily for bragging oh, on me okay. child <laughs> but y'all we're gonna have to fast forward to the third trimester and we're here and you know mama Brit you know she's been vacation with her man she is back she's enjoying herself like i said it's weeks after her honeymoon but she has to go to the hospital soon she's like honey i have to leave and i love this animation i know it's from the realistic birth mod but i'm gonna let every couple nap together like this but yeah here's the home she's living in and this is a lot that i got from the gallery and it's called like luxury like rental or something like that oh y'all had to remix a little bit of it but this Y'all, if you ever wanted to know a Sasha aesthetic, this is me. Desert luxe vibe, okay? I'm originally from a desert country. And y'all, well, my country is desert and something else, but y'all, anyway. It's still, like, I love the desert vibe. I grew up in a desert country, even, like, for part of my high school years, let's say. <laughs> anyway, she's like, hon, we're about to go to the hospital. But yeah, I'm gonna show y'all a tour of this home. I love this build. 
here's a mini tour of this build and y'all yes i just love this i want to learn how this builder made this i want to make more builds like this and even for my own personal safe app for like offline gameplay like me you know off camera sorry but yeah now here's like a record player i added that some of the stuff you could tell like i probably added it because it's like some cc items especially if you know like, a lot of the in-game objects you probably could tell and yeah like i thought this shower place is absolutely so beautiful and the kitchen i just love that like sandy like neutral vibe about this place and oh my god y'all like that blush like sandy pink like please police you know what i'm saying <laughs> so yeah here's like the desert lux you can find you can see it right super like modern super futuristic and desert like vibe like that villa lifestyle child i'm trying to live in a villa too okay one day manifesting it <laughs> but yeah here's upstairs and look the telescope makes an appearance finally <laughs> but yeah y'all i just wanted to show y'all i guess as a pregnant sim you cannot play with it i don't know but yeah y'all here is really beautiful and and then here is a nice baby room that she could have her baby in and then here's just like my faves like you know Nicki minaj and i love me some sweetie and i had to turn this on so y'all could see it like look just cute like what if she has a baby girl and then she could have that in her room like i don't know we'll see we'll see what she has <laughs> And here you could tell like some of her clothes are cutting like somewhat funkier colors, more different from her super like neutralish vibe when she lived in the city. I feel like she's been playing with the color purple especially and you'll see that throughout the episode. Toys R Us and Sanrio. Oh my god, her little old TV. Oh, like retro, whatever you want to call it. And then, oh my god, she could do some painting on that. Wow, yeah. Auntie helped her with the, you know, shopping for the home and putting the items together again it took a lot of money for angela so i'm not gonna lie probably like you know invested a lot you could tell like if you see how much money she has in her house i think she has about 20k simoleons yeah she put about 30k into this so you know she's been saving for a minute and you know yeah ciao <laughs> i'm not saying she's making bad money moves but you know tartosa isn't cheap like it's a place where sims retire or they go on vacation it's no in between and if you live there you are just you know really lucky that's what a lot of sims are like you know they're like oh my god you live in tartosa oh you must make good money <laughs> and i feel like that's what auntie Britt does she doesn't make her own money i mean look at her home it's really cute yeah. we're meeting up with dr corinne and dr corinne's like so how are you are you being safe she's like yes yes she's like all right let's go check on the baby and if you remember angela prefers not to know the gender of the baby and she said that if she ever had a baby shower she would love the gender of the baby to be revealed at that event so auntie Britt kind of has something up her sleeve but i don't know it's all allegedly and they're looking at the baby she's like you know uh you could be up for a natural delivery very soon and she's like yeah yeah i'm seeing right here your baby's like literally about to do the flip head thingy the upside down y'all i don't know but i heard babies have to have their head downwards again i've never had a child and you know so i wouldn't know but i'm gonna just be saying some words to make it sound like i know what's going on in this room <laughs> But overall, you know, Miss Corinne's like, keep walking around, you and the dog, you know, the same old stuff, you're doing pretty good, I believe in you, blah, 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 you know, the nice doctor thing that they say before you leave. So, Auntie's like, look, you gotta do it, just stop, come to my house, and I have uh, something to tell you, so she's like, oh. So she goes to the house and she's like, mm, what's that smell? She's just walking and she's like, why are all these Sims in the backyard? She's like she couldn't, she didn't even realize there was music on something blasting. She was just walking through the house and surprise, Angela, happy baby shower. Uh, look at them celebrating her and celebrating the life that she is creating in her belly <laughs> uh and y'all look there's something pinks does that mean there's a baby girl on the way is there a single baby is there doubles or single shot if y'all saw the ultrasound you already know <laughs> me thinking i could finesse it 
But yeah, y'all, the new parents are here. The garden gals are here. Like, look at that. All the Sims are supporting her. And a lot of them gave birth. Only one Sim is pregnant other than Angela in the group. But y'all, look at them. Just in harmony. And, you know, like, if you don't know me, how I play my game. I like my sims to live like in like climate regions so like for me sandy climates and warm regions are all like somewhat more closer than say example like Tartosa and Willow Creek are not close to each other you know what I'm saying they might share a body of water or something but they're not close to each other so anyway they're just chatting with her and you know catching up telling her how she's doing y'all that's the lady who's still pregnant and look at them autonomously talking to each other like and it's summer months, by the way, so Angel's really close to the birth. Oh, wow. She got pregnant when, y'all? Like, in December-ish, right? Or like, I, don't, I don't know, like, around the early winter. And now it's, like, early summer, so I think she might be giving birth very, 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 very soon. You know, but she is expecting to give birth midsummer, not early summer. So, still soon, though, like, summer is summer, right? So, she's doing her little nightly, like, swim. And I don't know if it's, like, allowed to do that, but she's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the next day she is making some food she likes living on her own lately like she's getting used to it of course like her auntie does come by and give her some food she'll stack her fridge up but you know she's cooking for herself this time this is not cooking for a man that she is babying or you know what i'm saying like how she was treating him like again she is domestic but there's a there's a line between it being healthy and somewhat toxic and I think that Angela was kind of doing a toxic where she was kind of like mothering him, you know? She might have done a little too much. <laughs> she maxed her skill. Yes. I feel bad. I have to talk to Uni Chow. And I tried to take a photo of Uni. And like, Uni's like, you're not giving attention to me. You're giving attention to that baby. <laughs> and I was like, okay, you know what? Let me just give Uni some food too. Like, yeah, y'all saw that? <laughs> There's going to be some competition. I'm not saying Uni is being mean or anything, but I do feel like, you know, third trimester, she's probably not the same sim she once was. And she's making some important phone calls, checking up on her people, you know, her, she's calling her mom, and her mom's keeping a casual on the call. She's calling her grandma. She's trying to make some calls, just trying to make it seem like it's not suspicious that she's like, quote unquote mia child you know <laughs> so she's gonna try to do a walk around the neighborhood and y'all the walk here is so beautiful child i did not notice a dog pooped y'all saw that but you know what let's act like it doesn't exist i did clean it up don't worry but like i did not know uni needs like a talk like honey outside is for pooping not the inside and if it is inside i need to get you a doggy thingy but yeah oh y'all look uh, absolute beauty and i wish some of these areas were functional i don't know like i don't know sometimes i understand why if the sims 3 had those functional building things where people would press it and then it'd be like a grocery Tommy's store or something i don't know how i'm saying it rabbit hole buildings i think is the correct term yeah i could understand the whole reason for it now when i see tartosa i'm like i need rabbit hole buildings <laughs> oh Hey, Auntie, I wasn't expecting you today. And Auntie's like, yeah, you know, I'm going on vacation. Don't forget that. And she's like, yeah, I know, you told me. You keep telling me. She's like, well, yeah, I have to go. I just want you to know, you know. You're not giving birth anytime soon, but I'll be gone for a couple of weeks. And so Angel's like, yeah, don't worry about it, Auntie. I know. I'm not giving birth anytime soon, so you don't have to worry. So, again, my girl Angel's trying to make some food. And she's making garlic dough balls this time. And I was really enjoying watching her cook this. Like, just in general, watching Angela cook. Like, I know that she doesn't want to be a chef or anything. I think cooking, cooking is a genuine hobby that she likes. And I think it comes from, you know, being somewhat like one of the older siblings of her family. And just being that responsible and having to take care of her siblings, especially during her teen years. Angela is wearing a hydrating mask while reading a book called Reel Her In. She's reading a romance related book and you know she misses some romance of course you know like any young sim would read a book like that right right okay <laughs> so the garlic dough balls are ready and I saw that she didn't really finish her plate and I'm assuming maybe she's not eating as much as she 
can maybe this trimester so i have to keep an eye on her sometimes to eat anyway i noticed that she started playing with this guitar which i don't even think it's a skill she had but maybe she played with some guitar when she was younger but i don't know i could see her being more of a violin sim than like a guitar sim but you know this is a, a by the way a home that somebody else once owned they did leave some other stuff and that is one of the stuff they left behind fun fact i don't know if i said that this is not a house that angela owns she is renting and just put a lot of the stuff in here and of course they own like the kitchen and all that but y'all look at the sunset i had to stop saying my sentence to look at this oh my god y'all tortosa just uh y'all <gasps> she's in labor oh hell no oh hell no she needs to make a call auntie i am in labor i don't know how on earth this happened i'm gonna have to go to the hospital oh my god kind of thing you know so she's calling uh another sim like hey can you come by you know i know we've been developing a relationship all these months and you're so kind i would love to have you there in that moment so she, you know the sim was like i'm gonna meet you at the hospital don't even question it so she decides to go to the hospital yeah poor angela she's so scared and yes she is taking melak her you know coach whatever you want to call her she's gonna take her to the hospital with her because i feel like medak is someone to trust in this kind of moment if it's not your family and you're alone somewhere you know if you're in a pregnancy group and the sims that you're around i feel like medak would be somebody you trust you know and yeah medak's trying to talk to miss corinne which miss corinne showed up as an assistant and i feel like medak was like girl assistant my foot you're gonna be doing this dang surgery okay <laughs> oh my my god like how on earth but miss fleur it was also another doctor dr fleur was like listen i could be the doctor for the surgery and you know angel's like no like miss corinne has been my doctor all these months and she's like okay look just trust me i will do the epidural if you tell me how you feel from my experience and if you feel good then we'll continue with me and when angela did it she just felt like crap and the epidural wasn't that great and i just felt so bad for angela like she needs her doctor asap and her water broke y'all look at read this mood lit poor angela angela began doing some breathing exercises as the doctor instructed and angela's really worried again the doctor she's comfortable with is not here but she finally came by and she was like look i could be a doctor okay too okay but they had me working at the front you know the front person wasn't working there but they know that angela made a lot of fuss and I'm gonna do it, okay? I'm here. I'm here, Angela. And I'm like, finally, chill. <laughs> so Angela is ready to give birth. And the doctor's like, look, the moment I start telling you to push, you gotta push. And Malak is right next to her. And oh my god, Angela, it's okay. But you know, honestly, in that moment, Angela was thinking of her mother and her father and her sister her brother and her other sister just her you know nuclear nuclear family she was like oh my god i can't believe that i did all this without them even knowing it like you know those kind of thoughts you have like will they hate me for not telling them oh my god but then again you know she feels like her family somewhat self-absorbed like she just has all these thoughts and then when she gave birth she found out it was a girl and the doctor says what do you want to name her and she said i want to name her melak and melak was shook like what to my name <laughs> and melak means angel and you know angel's name has the name angel in it get it haha -ha. so i don't know i just thought it was really cute seeing that this new parents click is here the gang gang the squad whatever you want to call them and one of them actually brought their baby and the baby's name is carrie so by the way um her name's jada the mother and they're just all talking the doctor's all asking like how's she doing you know the doctor did the super efficient baby care fun fact i was shocked that they could do that anyway they're all just talk chatting angela's kind of like dazed but like you know she's thinking about her family and her auntie's like i'm taking the first flight like auntie's like literally around the corner by the way she's like trying to make it to the room hey us just talking about your auntie that's kind of creepy 
<laughs> but yeah, Auntie's talking to her best, like you know, her bestie, one of her friends, like you know, from her guarding, guarding gals. I want to say bestie, but you know, very good friends. And she's just catching up with her. It's like, oh my god, is that baby Carrie? And of course, she said hi to um, Malak too, and you know the other members. And I just thought it was so cute. I just thought, oh, it melted my heart seeing this moment of just the. Uh, I don't know how to say, it, but like seeing a community around Angela. And that, you know, they say a village raises a child. And just having her see her own village. And then Balak asked to be best friends after, you know, the baby's named after her. Like, of course, you were there for Angela in these important moments and throughout her whole pregnancy. Like, I'm going to get emotional. No, but <laughs> for real, like, I'm really, really proud of how this turned out. <laughs> Let's have Auntie have a moment with Melak too. And they're, oh, Auntie Brit. She's like, Melak, that's an interesting name. She's like, it is. But you know, that's the doctor's name. That was hanging out with all these months. And, you know, she really motivated me. Auntie Brit's like, oh, that's really nice. That's really nice. I feel like she looked, he was like, child, why she didn't name me, you know, Brittany or, or Addison? Like, who's this Melak lady? <laughs> Oh lord, but y'all, she is pumping her breast milk, and if y'all play with the realistic birth mod, this is called the lactation update. This is Angela's first ever baby, and I'm not gonna lie, breast milk has kind of been a, sorry, but you know, breastfeeding, what it's called, breast pumping, it's been a smooth journey for her. You know, I know Cheryl, like my other sister, if y'all watch the, what's it called again, a cult baby challenge, it's so easy. And with Angela, it's also a breeze so far like i'm feeding this baby breast milk and when she turns into an infant i could still do the breast pumping oh my god this this mod is absolutely excellent okay i love this mod anyway though angela has to go to the park it's been a week like y'all saw of her being a mother getting used to her own life and the ecosystem and all that and you know her grandma justina is staying with her by the way for that week and she's gonna be staying with her like actually a few more days she's gonna leave <laughs> But yeah, yeah, Angela's been anxious and, you know, she's been anxious because, you know, Auntie Justine's pressuring her to go back to San Sequoia. She's like, dear, what are you doing out here? Really? Your family's gonna, knowing that you don't have a kid. Like, you know, she just kind of gave her that strict love, which ended up getting her the strict dynamic, which oh, it sent me. But anyway, my girl's making a little cute painting. Uh, who is that? <gasps> Y'all, do you recognize them? Do you recognize them? Oh, that's her friends from San Myshuno. What are they doing out here? Shane and Chanel? Uh, one second. Oh my God. Oh my God. I, Angela, she's thinking, I'm living outdoors. I'm painting. Well, girl, your friends are out here. You know, the ones you were hiding from all these months. The one you ghosted, you know? Like, girl, she kind of goes to her family and her best friends. Ah. Uh, <laughs> oh my god oh my god i'm shook i'm literally like trying to like measure the distance like could she really see them she can't and then after she put her stuff in the inventory she went from like happy like i did this painting for sicily and her friends and just chilling at the beach vibes oh my god is that my old friends what are they doing out here like i'm so far from this city i don't understand i need to hide i need to go i need to sneak away and like you know her gasp for some reason shane recognized it and he was just like angela he's like hey angela and i'm like yo 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 get, get her get her from me and i was like catch angela okay so i was like oh let's press catch angela <laughs> oh my god i feel so bad she was really trying to sneak and she got caught and he's like angela is that you and chanel's like huh Angela and she's like oh hey guys and she's like where the f were you all these months what the fuck Angela you ghosted us and Angela says um oh, sorry and Chanel says what happened between you and Norman he wouldn't even talk about it and he seems guilty of something but he moved away to see how much you know and she's like yeah and he cut us off he said we were more your friends and Chanel says well when you disappear we start to hate him anyway and we knew he did something for you to leave like that and Angela just felt so guilty, like, in her gut. And she was, is fighting back tears inside her. And Chanel says, what happened between y'all? 
So then Angela explains everything to them. And Shane's like, you had a baby? And Angela's like, yeah, she's with my grandma right now. And she was like, oh, I'm so sorry, hon. And Angela says, well, please don't tell him. And he's like, well, Shane and Angela, he, we don't even know where he at. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know? And yeah, you can tell Angela's just so uncomfortable. She's scared. A trait popped up for her, and it said paranoia, which is a trait that her mom has. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it to her. I, I have five traits mod, right? But then this pack also does extra traits, right? So I don't know if it's like seven traits, child. I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway yeah so she's being paranoid to say please don't tell please i'm gonna lose everything for my daughter you know because she told about the money they know everything and they're just kind of look look we we don't even know where the dude at calm down we don't know where he is and look she know the way that she's just like calms her friend down this is what angela needed during her time away too which y'all y'all <laughs> of course <laughs> And they're all comfort her. They're talking. And oh, I love this for Angela. And you know, they're still going to catch up. They want to talk more. So Chanel just says, hey, like, you want to see my baby, you know? And uh, do you ever want to catch up like that? Or is this just like a one time thing? And they end up having dinner. And um, Chanel, by the way, like, you know, she explained why she's here. Because if you don't know, her and her man just eloped. I'm going to show you all the receipts. They eloped. They got pregnant. They want to do a honeymoon yes, yeah. with the baby moons. They want to do all of that together all on this little island, okay? <laughs> and not only that, but Layla Moon's about to age up very soon, their daughter. So they're just kind of like, look, like, I cannot believe he did that to her. And, you know, Angela's in the bathroom. Like, she ha she hid from them after that. But she does keep in contact, and she does keep her word on that. Anyway, she went back home, and she tells her grandma what happened. And grandma's kind of like, look, see, this is what I'm telling you. This running away thing, it's not working for you. I really think you need to consider this oh, yes. i need you oh. to consider to go back yes. home to san sequoia to say goodbye Lord, to this place this is like a dream it's uh -huh, not yeah, yeah. real uh, you know so you said goodbye to everybody oh, all of a sudden oh, you cut everybody off like gosh, what are the people in your life gonna think this was the most important year in your life don't you want the people you love to be there and angel says like you know but i feel like mom and bros and everybody they just all care about themselves more than me and i feel like that they just don't love me like that and i just feel so neglected and i just didn't i don't know me if they cared wouldn't they have found out grandma said this is a dream honey i need you to go back to reality do you think angela could leave all of this i don't know i mean she doesn't really have a real income the paintings kind of sell but like she is living off that norman thing but what if norman cuts her off like it's true there's so much to consider dear like i don't know She's going to have to sleep in her own area for the night. And I know realistically you're near pregnant. You're probably supposed to sleep in like your bed. But child, she want to go sleep on a chair. But yeah, you know, grandma's talking about this every dang meal moment. They're sitting next to each other. Part of the reason why Angela went to the park. But she did not know she was going to run into her old friends. So grandma's like, okay, you're going to go? And Angela's like, okay, okay. I'm going to go back to San Sequoia. There. Is that enough for you, granny? And she makes a call to her husband. She's like, yeah, she's going to go back. And I'm going to be going back to you. Hun. I miss you so much. Like, I can't wait to go back. So I had to send her away because it's the next day, by the way. I didn't get to tell you all that. And, of course, she had her bed back. And she let Madak sleep in her bed with her. I think that's so cute. But, child, the baby is crying. Help her. And I know Uni's like, learning to sleep through all the noise. <laughs> Oh my god, but Uni is a big sister. Hey, I'm Sasha. Welcome to my channel. And this is a bonus episode of my Growing Together Let's Play. So that, you know, y'all could understand it's not a very storytelling episode. And it's just following Angela's life before she has to move away to San Sequoia. So look at just the, what kind of life she wakes up to, like amazing. And there is Malak asleep, and Malak will age up into an infant for this special bonus episode, cause I actually had it planned. Who the hell entered this room? Oh, so, Uni, why, why are you out of this room? Anyway, basically what I was trying to say is that episode five, where it is basically in the storytelling format, I had 
basically mentally prepared that Malak was already aged up. So this time around, I thought maybe y'all could just see one more final episode of the Tortosa Life. And this is very spontaneous. I am literally recording while I'm talking. Usually I like to give myself time to like process what happened talk over it while i'm recording mentally but like really allow myself to talk properly once the episode airs and like i said this is a machinima slash let's play series so i get to have time and more freedom to work on uh you know what i'm saying how i see the angle for the store she wanted to sleep on the side of the bed don't know why maybe malak likes that let's just act like the pillows between her legs maybe she's just you know but yeah maybe she also wants to protect Melak from this side i don't know it's just adorable though let's just take a photo even though i know it looks a little glitchy but you know oh she's thinking of swimming first thing in the morning that's cute all right girl good morning let's go ahead and take a shower she does have her period and she had to actually order pads um and it's gonna come in the mail soon so uh she's been like suffering so she just takes showers as much as she can when she feels like you know if y'all ever been been in that horrible situation you know okay baby girl uh, good morning i love you malak my little princess oh. if you don't know she has a pregnancy coach named malak and she ended up naming her baby after her she liked the name she thought the name was very interesting and if you don't know malak is married to johnny zest it's just random like it just happened to be like that i embraced it oh well malak's feeling better she's like oh i was uncomfortable because i had a big boo boo <laughs> Oh, she needs to clean this. Now you're hiding a bottle here. Angela. Oh, new boo. So cute. I think also she's going to have to go and pet her dog before she cleans that up. Because I feel like Uni's looking like, girl, I'm here too. You know, I'm the oldest of this family. And absolutely <laughs> work on her awkwardness. Yeah, she is socially awkward and paranoid. You know, it's it really stems from her teen years, which actually is going to be talked about in episode five. Okay, Malak, baby girl. Oh not only saying i'm i'm coming mama i'm coming mama <laughs> hi baby good morning what a fire outfit do you want to pick let's go check your other outfits do you want to wear something else today let's go and check all of uni's outfits Ooh, uni i think you want to be a rosy baby today don't ya oh my rosy baby uni okay we're gonna have to go take a walk but y'all the house is dirty i'm not even gonna lie to y'all i'm not gonna play like it's clean last night she hosted some of her friends from the pregnancy club and she really got close with one of them and one of them had like given her a whole sentiment i'll read it to y'all it was so sweet she goes i'm glad you don't think my llama jokes are getting old i just feel like you get me and they're both single moms and they have amazing compatibility it says she's a stay-at-home mom so basically this girl story is that she was a teen mom so she has already one child basically her grandma was raising her i don't know what happened to her parents maybe she just her parents died or something but like it was like her grandma and her and her baby and then uh right now she's a young adult and she has two more babies and a lot of the girls in the club have twins like it's not even funny like their families like all gave birth like the you know there's a kind of like a bug i think where like the probability of your sims having twins is a little higher than usual and long story short it really showed in the club i think it was like three of seven members have twins or if not four of seven which is a lot uh, like the probability is a little too high chat oh my baby i'm so sorry not for feeding you no nope, the baby saying when are you gonna feed me oh girl she probably was so embarrassed all right again this episode is casual let's play format i don't know if i'm gonna be doing machinima type cuts i won't lie to y'all i don't yes, know what i have planned lady. i'm just going with what my heart tells me yeah this thing i don't understand the mechanics why they don't want to stand here the pets like she doesn't know this is a whole object but she is a dog too so you know oh her mom's calling her so let's just act like this text says hey baby girl i'm thinking of you i love you and i just wanted to you know say that i'm thinking of you and you know angela's like i'm thinking of you mom too i love you you, you beat me to the text kind of thing you know so i'm gonna go ahead and have her clean around the floor she needs to do both floors i don't want malak to be sick but yeah i definitely want to have like an event again today because i want y'all to see her friends and just life with her i definitely need to also update this photo for one with malak her daughter 
not her looking at this photo i guess after the call with chanel she was really thinking like yeah wow this was like a girl who was sad who painted this like i'm not that girl anymore and then here's some photos of her with her friends and yeah this is just a great you know sis support system yes even her dog is her friend okay don't they're companions okay <laughs> hey baby girl so i'm gonna have my baby girl take give her a walk because so let's go on a walk uni i think my dad could be okay for a few minutes uh, you know i feel like she has maybe let's act like a baby mom monitor and you know i actually decided not to decorate Malak's room like that because i feel like the next home she's gonna decorate her home um i thought it would be just simple decor for now because she literally if you don't know she did give birth to the baby suddenly and her grandma was telling her like don't make a home of the city move back to your original hometown so now she is planning for that you know she has to paint um you know she's into landscape painting and stuff so yeah her baby daughter is okay right now her name is milak hill and my girl's name is angela hill if it's your first time you're meeting her i'm sorry if i didn't introduce her name right to you and yeah she's gonna be taking her dog out for a walk i mean y'all this place is such a dream like i think y'all need to have a sim live here yourselves like if you never did give it a chance and you'll see a different sort of gameplay and i actually learned to like enjoy a slow lifestyle for my sims like i'm so used to that busy san my shoe no life for my sims sometimes and i don't mind even like a busy sort of suburban lifestyle but ever since i played my cottage living save it has opened my eyes to so many possibilities with the gameplay and really enjoying my game for what it is like this may be boring to you but it is nice like i get to just study the details that they made for these areas you know like maybe i could make her stop by and try a cake kind of thing like just really enjoying the simple things you know all right so she's gonna go ahead and vacuum here hopefully malak doesn't wake up from the va vacuuming it is 2 p.m again it's just a really chill day like i could have her swim and stuff but i want her to actually just go out with the single mom in the club uh one of the girls yeah this girl if you don't know emma i think i want her to go out with her they could just hang out and just do something so let's go and travel with emma let's go to my restaurant the grand bloom the build i made <laughs> let me plug myself in <laughs> no but for real oh my god yeah, so this is going to be a short video. Again, it's just you seeing my girl kind of like behind the scenes. If you ever want bonus episodes of just chill ish vibes you could request it in the comments. Sometimes I do feel pressure like when in between episodes that I want to produce it so well. I don't want to just release something half half i want it to be like 100 percent for you you know so i feel sometimes like it, i'm taking a little bit more time than i want to on episodes and also one of the reasons why occult baby challenge has been pumping out videos is because i want my you know angela and all my other lps who you know don't get to have much slots to free up that space for myself so that's kind of like the goal in mind don't worry by the way malak is with a babysitter i'm gonna go ahead and reset these chefs because so they could go back into the store automatically but yeah if you don't know this is a build i made and long story short it's like a gaming thing and you get to have a patio food so ew i hate when waiters do this not at my lot Oh, she's thinking about, are you going to go into a relationship anytime soon? She's like, girl, no. <gasps> oh, auntie. What? Not my auntie here. Is she meeting up with a club member? Y'all, this is literally my girl's aunt. Like, for real. I think it's rude if I don't say hi to her. So I'm going to go ahead and comment on how it's a beautiful day. Hey, girl, give me one second. I just spotted my aunt and I want to say hi to her. Hey, auntie. It's such a beautiful day today, right? She's like, yes, it is, my dear Angela. It's like they're matching. I, I really do think that it's an interesting friendship developing here. <laughs> Ooh, let's get a strawberry daiquiri. I got a virgin strawberry daiquiri before and I enjoyed it. So let's have him have that. Let's go ahead and just get a green salad. No, Greek salad. Because that's fire. We, we want some feta. <laughs> 
she's loyal to being a single mom if you don't know the emma story but after she had her daughter um i think it was her child oldest is a daughter she's a child sim she just saw for herself that she doesn't want to be in a full partnership if she ever got pregnant she doesn't mind if they're in their life or not and she really does motivate my girl angela to be comfortable in her own you know caregiver archetype emma shows signs of the caregiver you know what they have that in common oh emma is ambitious okay i think she's thinking about like oh I'm th I'm, i don't know i haven't worked out the only workout i get is walking my dog and i feel like emma's like girl don't worry about that your body is fire why are we even talking about this like you look so stunning bitch like i feel like that's what she's saying emma's like well i'm looking for a job though i am ambitious so it is bothering me that i don't have a job <laughs> Angela, you're so dang silly. I love that they're just playing games. It's been hours, but you know, sometimes in The Sims, time just flies by. But I've been waiting for this vendor to be here so that my girl could buy flowers. But she could buy flowers beside her house, I believe. So I'm just going to do that. All right, my girl was out a little too long, but she's back home. She is cramping like crazy from her period. I am praying she got something okay all right so she did get her pads in mail open box open box unpack unpack and she, girl i know she's exhausted she's like i need to sleep but like no you're gonna take a shower you're gonna take a bath first uh, before you put on your tampons um, a bath with soaks because she just needs something and then tomorrow's my next birthday so i don't know where i'm gonna do the party maybe here so angela's taking a nice relaxing bath and i have her diffuser on for her because i don't know she just needs extra steam y'all i don't know if this is safe don't do this <laughs> so, so she did buy two flowers you want to see which one she got i think it's perfect for the birthday party so i feel like this one kind of reminds me of like a baby like you know very youthful and this kind of gives more mature vibes so i think i'm gonna just keep this one for here for now and then this one i'm just gonna when, I don't know if it's expiring, what, what time, but like this one right now, I'm scared I'm going to forget it. I think the birthday is going to be at auntie's home. Auntie's definitely going to set something up. So, you know, I'm just going to have her like go there. I feel like grandma's going to come out. Like the whole gang's going to be there in my mind. You know, everybody's like, oh my God, this is like a really big day. You know, Malak is asleep. The babysitter did an amazing job. Thank you so much for taking care of the baby. But yeah, I'm going to have her sleep and we're going to enjoy the views. Oh baby's crying actually before we can't you can't enjoy no views when you have a baby in the house <laughs> i know new boo oh, oh, oh. the baby's like don't do boo me change my diaper woman <laughs> she is doing a great job she has no face mask on her face right now so she just kind of has a glow in my mind she probably did put some cream on before she slept so that's why she's just glowing she got some night cream um i was hoping that you could give the baby a little bit like a nice rock before the baby sleeps because you know when you rock them they could fall asleep i'm gonna have to have mother clean this up but yeah y'all it's like literally almost sunset rise i changed my cloud mod but oh i'm gagging the clouds are clouding today yeah so y'all we are at auntie's home right now i tried to gather the gang hopefully everybody will be here i'm telling you they're traveling out the city to see malak age up and i couldn't invite all the infants only because i just feel like it might be a hot mess they're not like toddlers just walking around so only carrie's here carrie is a snuggly sleeper and she is pissed she want to fall asleep right now so i have to stand over her to make sure she falls asleep i am controlling her and her mom so here's my next birthday party this is happy birthday for the herd there let's you know pink and white is the vibe got them a goodie bag and stuff and uh, let's just imagine there's a hundred more but y'all i don't have much space so i really am working with what i have and you know auntie like she made she made orange blossom tea she got the afternoon tea like come on y'all come on auntie went all out and her husband also cooked too um yeah this one's made by him actually and he made the fruit and chocolate but pot right now here and then they ordered this one over um because they were cooking like baking stuff so they didn't want fish to you know the house is small like fish so they, but they did want like a really fresh food here yeah so this is the cake it's a strawberry white chocolate cake auntie made an excellent quality and if you don't know recently i found out about the impeccable quality and that's actually from like a treat that you could get which i want to give auntie because i feel like she throws it all the way down in the kitchen but yeah i want to go ahead and give her the stove grill master because i feel like her food is really bomb you know 
All right, I'm going to save just in case because I did invite a, lo a lot of sims and I did do a lot of setup. So I need to make sure I save. But oh, I guess he's talking about how he likes his move oh, in the city know. and that he just loves the vibes of the people here. And Angela is wearing a stunning <laughs> dress. Okay, she's feeling so fine. And oh, she doesn't like loud noises. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, they saw her cooing. So cute. She actually has an outfit. Um, Mother, can you change her to her outfit? Malak is asleep though, like there is music blasting. I wanted Sims to dance, like I said. Um, I, I love that she's talking to Malak. Malak's like, hey girl, how are you doing? Oh yeah, by the way, this is Carrie's father. If y'all never met Carrie's father, he's thinking of his wife already. <laughs> That's so cute. They're, his name is Mateo Monroe. Oh yes! Oh yes, I forgot to tell y'all. So Angela also um, told her friends uh, Shane and Chanel about this. And they were like, oh, oh yeah, we're coming. Just invite us. So yeah, I have to invite them. But they're going to be joining this event. Y'all, Chanel is here. Bestie is here. Like I said, they've been having a good relationship. She FaceTimes her every other day. Oh, Mama Carrie, what's going on? Don't put her down. Don't put her down. She wants to be carried. Like, I don't think you understand. <laughs> She's a menace. She didn't want <laughs> Look at her. She's like, I get exactly what I want. <laughs> oh, hey. Y'all want to see Curry's outfit for the party? Finally, she was able to. Oh, I'm sorry. Why is Carrie the most cutest baby? Like, look at that smile. She, she's like, literally doesn't even know that her mama's sending her to the place that she hates. I feel so bad. She's like, why don't you carry me, woman? Like, why? I don't understand what I did to you. <laughs> oh, my God. Give Carrie a nap, girl. Like, poor baby. She, she Look at her. She's like, this is the most hated place on earth how dare you put me back in there thank god i'm in the place that i love the most in the world anyway so now she's gonna hang out with her baby and her man and stuff i'm supposed to have sims <laughs> eat food like oh my god i'm scared my food's gonna expire now so i need to go ahead and call sims to meal because at this point oh this couple is being so in love and sweet y'all literally the sun is about to set like this day has went by like call your bestie over like again for some reason i'm not allowed to do more than three clubs at the same time or something i don't know but i tried to start her club to join and come here but for some reason it's not active gathering when i when i switch out like so i do this so i have the music on everybody's eating food let's just say like shane and L L like Layla Moon are on their way or something i don't even know maybe they're playing in the sand somewhere i called them I want them to be here. Oh, the fam fam is here. Oh, her closest. Like, she has the closest table. Look at Angela. I did not set this up. Some Sims are eating different food. Oh, that is so cute. Look how classy this meal is. I know it's pretty late, y'all. Again, Sims time be flying. Bye. Oh, Mava, why are you? Where are you? Not her saying she's hiding from her kid. Okay, where's your husband? Cause oh, grandma's here. All right, so the fam finally this you know the Sims that live outside of the city are here. I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, she's already thinking about cousin Rosalie. Look at her running for her life. I'm gonna have to age up Melak very soon. Okay. Oh, I feel so bad. The tacos expired. Whatever. I'll just throw it away. Thank you, thank you, baby girl, for cleaning all this up. So the gang is here. Yep, they all traveled here. Finally, she fell asleep. God, she is like, I literally actually had an outfit for her, by the way, like the mother. I did. I'm, I was so distracted with how much like this is the mother's outfit, y'all. Like she had a whole look. OK, her and her daughter were supposed to be matching. It's supposed to be cute. But Carrie has been so distracting. <laughs> I love that the garden gals are still here, but you need to send them also away. I love that they were supportive during this time. Now we're just going to have to keep it private and have family here since they're late and stuff. Thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate y'all. Okay, Milak is actually sleeping through the mess. Oh, he, now he's introducing himself to her dad. You know, like I said, they're kind of dating and stuff. So I feel like she should go ahead and I feel like she should give him a hug. He's like, hey, you cool. You cool, dude. You know, she did come back, by the way. I don't know if you know she tanned herself. Uh... 
I think a couple of days ago. Also, Angela did tan herself. The girls, again, it's summer, it's her toes. So <laughs> Angela's talking to her cousin. Oh, there's the friend, um, Cicely's friend. Grandma, I want to talk to Grandma. Oh, he got tea for himself, as he should. Duncan's also here. Oh, so cute. Oh, she's talking to Duncan. Hey, Duncan. Your outfit's fire. Oh, he's like, so what do you think of the weather today? She's like, it's chill. It's a great day to have a birthday. She's like, how's everything with your ex? Everything is good. He's like, I don't know, honestly, but, you know, it's going. She's like, cool. Oh, he's just talking about his day. Nice. Oh, Lord. Carrie, girl, you know your baby needs this. I'm telling y'all, that's why I couldn't invite a lot of inf infants. Oh, God. Everything expiring. I think now, okay, so she caught up with um, Duncan. I think she needs to talk to her aunt, uh, grandma, sorry. And she needs to tell her grandma everything, you know. Oh, these two want to slow down so bad. I knew it. I knew it. Not the ex just watching this happen. <laughs> Interesting treat. Oh my god, she ate shit! Woo! Woo! Yay! Go Malak! Happy six months or whatever. What's a simple. Please, there's a baby! Auntie with it so quick and Sicily. The chaos. The chaos. I'm so weak, y'all. What's up with the fires lately? This gameplay is wild. Okay, y'all. I'm gonna go to cast right now. Show y'all Malak's makeover. And obviously, Malak has black hair. So the blonde is from, you know, mom's hair color is right now. It's not genetic. Okay, mama just dyed her hair because she going through things. Malak, you ain't going through it. Let's go to cast right now. All right, y'all. So here is little Manak's makeover, and she looks like her father and mother. And um, her color is yellow, so I went with a lot of yellows. I gave her the sunny traits. I just feel like she's just such a sunshine to her mother's life. Yeah, but like, like I said, a lot of it is yellow. But yeah, Susu Nubu, uh huh. And then here is her party wear. Again, I haven't really like a lot in the party wear, but I'm gonna come back to that eventually down the line. I kind of went with this hot weather wear. Okay, so here's the hot weather wear. I think this is my favorite outfit, like Bumblebee. <laughs> and here's my another one I absolutely adore. She's just a sunny, sunny, sunshine baby. Okay, she is so cute with this hat. And then here's another one. And her mom doesn't really do her hair like often like that. Like she just lets it like free. But there's sometimes like in this situation and in this situation where her hair is tied up. And here is her winter wear. This is just so cute. Cold weather fits. Like, ah, oh, she's such a fashion nista. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much her outfit. And yeah, so Mava is gonna be moving back home to San Sequoia. And I'm gonna go ahead and go back in game so that y'all could see mom and baby and you know tartosa together but this is the final days i have to move out <laughs> she has no teeth right now okay she's still she's growing she's growing by the day but yeah i think she's gonna enjoy her new city san sequoia i think malak's gonna like that you know it's still a warm climate region she still could be connected to all the sims and it's gonna be amazing memories for mother and her baby girl i I'm so happy to see how the series is developing. I do wish I get to like bring out the episodes like as much as I can, but I have a bunch of series and I just everything. Oh, her first birth. We got to see it up close. <laughs> oh my God, my leg. Oh, I love her. I love her already, y'all. She's giving her a nap. So cute. So if you didn't know, Angela has lived in Tortosa and has used painting to heal a wound 
that really cut her so deep and it was the betrayal of her ex Norman. So during this time she has painted all these beautiful areas in Tertosa and used paint from reference and actually did like realistic paintings of what she saw with her eyes in this beautiful land of Tartosa. And of course her grandma was like, oh yeah, she made a masterpiece, fun fact, I was really gagged. But anyway, her grandma was like, honey, I think it's time for you to leave this area. You know, you are using this to hide from the world. You're hiding from your mother. You didn't tell your mother you had a baby. And of course she agreed. So they had a goodbye party for her her friends from the new parents club they were just acting so fun and it was such a nice final goodbye to have with them they all the ladies all went around and made a toast what's their favorite memory of angela and oh, oh it was so beautiful i really loved it just like that she says goodbye to tortosa and the last night they had a sleepover, and of course, Malek loves her some Auntie Sicily. <laughs> Sicily was definitely there for her the whole time when, you know, babysitting while Angela was away. The next morning, Angela's last day, Auntie makes breakfast, and she throws it down per usual. So they got to sit around together, and they got to talk about their memories together during this time, and it truly melted my heart. And I didn't think I had to make it in gameplay, that's why I'm kind of narrating it for you, so I hope you're enjoying me telling you the story like this Malak stopped by another time I was like okay girl like let's just take a selfie at this point you know so I thought it was cute they took a photo together but yeah goodbye Tartosa good morning from San Sequoia y'all so it is early in the morning right now and she has work in five hours as she's doing this, I'm going to show you all a photo of her and her daughter in the bathroom. She was literally using it. And just like what she would do with her baby dog, same thing with her daughter. It took me out, okay? Or oh, her left breast hurts, so she needs to pump milk for the baby before she goes to work. Y'all, here I was hoping that she can go, you know what I'm saying, doing a little bit something. But no, for her left breast hurts. I guess that's how life is. You just plan something and it doesn't go the way you want it to, you know? She's going to go ahead and pump something for her baby before she leaves i feel so bad though like she has been working very hard and it's not easy doing this all on her own i had angela try to do breast pump on both both sides but one of the sides you know that was hurting the left side worked and she was able to pump milk for her baby but the other side did not work and she's just been feeling very like disappointed in herself and i just feel like she's not in her best mood so i feel like i'm going to call her boss like a, you know in sick and say that she can't come into work today she has never called in before and it did work so i guess we're just gonna have angela stay home for the day now she's fixing up with her daughter early morning stuff. Y'all know how it is. Angela cleaned up Malak and she wants to do like a little girl's outside thing. So it's cold weather. And so of course she wants to prepare herself by wearing a sweater, put a jacket for Malak and prepare them to go out, put that bag carrier on for her baby. And you know, she is feeling, you know, sour. That's why she wants to change up her atmosphere. Y'all, Angela is here in an area she is very familiar with growing up like she's just like oh my god what is like she's like in this nostalgia in her mind she's remembering her youth days and the fact she's here with her own child it just makes it so much different that she's with her own kid here and you know what in this moment she thinks it's maybe the right time to just contact her mother angela makes the call Hey mom, yeah I know we were talking like two days ago, but I just wanted to say I'm coming home if that's okay. And her mom's like, what, you're in town? And she's like, yeah, I wanted to surprise you and is that okay mother? And she's like, y yeah, that's okay. Well, okay then, I'll be around the corner. And I have a surprise for you, so just mentally prepare yourself. Yeah, like a, like a person surprise. Yeah, all right. Let's go now and visit Angela's family home and see how life is with them and how are they gonna react seeing Angela? I mean, it's just spur of the moment. Like they didn't prepare themselves, nothing. Oh my God. 
here is Angela's family's home. Angela finally made it. And is she gonna knock? Oh, she's gonna knock. She's a little tired. Oh, and the baby was also tired too. Oh, let's see who's home at this hour. Y'all, meet Angela's father, Adam Hill. He is the king, okay, of the family. He is absolutely um, a family man. Yeah, he's a hardworking man. He loves his family. I would say that at first it was kind of more the mother carrying in this area. But of course, in the end, father has picked up his part and, you know, he's doing so well for his family. But yeah, this is Angela's father. And here y'all are meeting Angela's mother, Miss Addison Hill. She looks like Angela, a carbon copy of her. <laughs> and oh my god, she is such a perfectionist. She just believes her life should be a certain way. But one good thing about Addison is I think she doesn't project that on her kids. She's very hard on herself. She's like one of those people who gives you the best advice right but she would never give that to herself she doesn't give herself that grace that's why she's so paranoid she's so hard on herself and i don't think she's like as this like very harsh parent that angela sees but the thing is though like they are a little judgy and you know because she's a perfectionist right she has a little judgy side to her so i'm not even gonna play around but yeah that is miss addison hill but this is Angela's brother, Bryson, and yes, he has green hair. <laughs> he just wanted to do something different, you know? Y'all could see where Angela gets her little creativity side from. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but in all seriousness, this is her brother, Bryson. He looks exactly like Papa Bear, and he's just so adorable. Like, this is her brother, okay? He's the only boy in the family. And now it's time for y'all to meet the baby of the family. Why does she have brown eyebrows? Y'all, you know, I don't know if you know, but there's this weird glitching cast. So anyway, this this is Charlie, little Charlie, okay, baby girl's here, it's, she's just so adorable. Daniela is not shown here, she's Angela's big sister, Angela is the second oldest, Bryson's the third, and Charlie's the youngest. Addison says, so you have a child? Angela says, I do. She's like, uh, so how did you not tell us all these months? Uh -huh. Is it just he forgot? He's like, oh, she didn't forget us. She didn't care. She would talk to us all these weekends and act like she cares about us. Adam is kind of being passive aggressive. He's not really happy seeing Angela in this situation. Addison asks, is Norman the father? Adam interrupted. Why you wouldn't tell us nothing? She's like, dad, it was complicated. He's not in the life. What do you mean he's not in the life? I'm not going to answer any more questions about this. Like, it was just like the Bryson tried to calm everything down. Like, hey, sister, you, you look great. The short hair color, everything. She's like, really? Yeah. You know, thank you so much, bro. At least like, there's some compliments in this room. The room kind of breaks into two conversations. Addison's kind of like, Adam, I know you're pissed, but like, I need you to calm down. Like, I feel like she's talking between her teeth. And, you know, Bryson's like, yeah, dad. Like, um, I'm just feeling like, you know, Angela has just changed so much. And I know we missed out on one year. And I know one year can change a lot. But like, also, you know, the college years and stuff but it's okay you know we're gonna all catch up and then it's like yeah we're gonna catch up and we're gonna have a lot of me new memories to make i'm so sorry we missed out and so yeah adam you could see he's just still kind of like telling her like are we just gonna have to accept this for what it is and you know she's like yep so they do want to welcome her and they just are gonna be nice to angela they do definitely want to yell at her but they just want their daughter with them you know they don't want to have her kind of like hide get paranoid and stuff and i think that one of the reasons addison probably sees that being relatable to her daughter is because you know when she was younger she made a couple of mistakes and she would hide and do these things and she sees a lot of angela's actions like her and she definitely wants to kind of like maybe mentor Angela and guide her into a way of better communication and you know this came with age though like Angela is quite young so mother has learned a lot in life you know so everyone is catching up talking about what they've been up to what they've been doing angela sees her parents being lovey-dovey and it just kind of took her back to a time in her life her childhood addison and adam were always like su such a super fiery couple you know they loved family deep down they came from two good families their families love each other they love each other the one thing that kind of is missing about them is communication 
they would argue with each other and you know they would get divorced too like yes he would get mad like how dare you cut me off Addison would say it's not healthy for us to be like this it shouldn't be this hard and Adam would be like uh you know you just don't want to hear me out and I don't want to hear you out there has to be something and you know obviously when they break up they would get back together <laughs> there is no sim in this world like Addison for Adam and Adam for Addison Addison had a little bit of a tough time because she felt like she was more of the breadwinner and she wants to be a housewife somewhere down the line and you know for him he wants to be a low-key like also domestic too so they kind of had that also as a conflicting thing but he said he promised he would work more because he was actually the one staying home more so she was like okay like well we're gonna work to work at this and let's do it let's get married again and what did Addison do when she got married she invited no one to the wedding because it's a remarriage and she's just like it's embarrassing getting divorced why do i have to do this again like oh my god this is our third time getting remarried like oh my god yes they had a divorce when angela was a toddler too and now they're getting remarried again like <laughs> I'm so weak but yeah they're so in love though and I remember Angela was like so mom and dad are like a prince and princess right they always have a happily ever after and Danielle is like I wouldn't know with those two like ha! like Danielle was a very much a realist though so that's why she made that comment but yeah the parents are in love though in this moment they're very happy and you know the kids are just talking in the background like is the wedding over can we play inside like i saw something food we could play with and not a lot and you know daniela is also kind of getting mocked by angela but you know they're little kids so they're gonna obviously have their fun i just can't believe they didn't bring bryson with them like they just ditched bryson who's like a toddler like literally just chilling watching his parents slow dance <laughs> oh well happy wedding and of course with some time later they are out here hanging out but they start to feel that tension the thing that they don't like about each other like oh i remember why i didn't like you and why you bring this side of me and oh my god oh. <laughs> i am working all the hours you want me to work no you're not working that many hours i know you're not doing enough and he's like i'm doing enough as a father she's like shook adam walks away from the conversation addison says walk away like you always do adam says the reason i'm walking away is because i want to divorce you and, and addison just gets so mad it's like what the f he's we were gonna do this again he's like i can't do this with you so we're gonna have to find someone else to spend the rest of our lives adam we don't work statistically and addison was just heartbroken she cried and cried and what was worse was they had to still live under the same roof it's two years later and adam asks her to meet him and he, she should wear all red at this like restaurant that's you know la 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 and it was love day and she was just like why am i here why are you making me stand at the pier that you like broke my heart and divorced me what's going on like and he's like things have been going well between us don't you agree like we're kind of like in a better place right and she's like what and he literally just kissed her and they still like have that instant chemistry even if their bar is in the red bar which sent me but that fire is still there between them and it just feels like it was yesterday but of course addison she is growing older and wiser and she's like is this healthy for us to do he's like i love you i would never want to put you in a bad place you know that time when i walked away it was just i, I was scared i didn't want to say anything mean she's like well that was in the past i guess you know i just don't want us to traumatize our kids again and again he's like this is not we're not gonna do that we're gonna go to therapy we're gonna find the right avenues to communicate this time before we of course go down the line and she's like do you think there's a chance for us out there to really do this because i'm scared and he walked away and she you know addison got triggered she was like oh of course walk away like you always do for Adam, walking away just meant he wanted that space to breathe, come back, and recollect his emotions correctly. But Addison was one of those type of sims. She just wanted it to, like, when something's going on, she wants it to be, like, 
solved automatically you know and he turned around and he was like i'm not gonna walk away from you ever again and so while they were talking out here she's like do you think we really like could do this And he's like yes yes i'm gonna say yes all day okay like that's literally all i'm gonna say and she was like okay Addison got pregnant so this is months down the line she had a baby with him Charlie and he was like let's get married officially Addison felt her and Adam were definitely growing and they were different especially with all the couples therapy and individual therapy they were doing this was the right decision for them and once again they got married again but of course, you know, for some reason, the infants gotta always distract Sims, even on their wedding day. But yeah, that's Daniela. She's a teenager now. <laughs> and mother was like, look, I'm trying to get married, baby girl. I'm gonna have to hand that baby back to you. Angela's about to be a preteen. And, you know, Bryson's about to age up. Danielle's already a teen. Like, time is flying. Addison and Adam kept their word to each other. They were going to be honest and truthful. And they were going to communicate correctly healthily and with love and they're going to continue seeing couples therapy until they feel like they're in a better and healthier area and of course if they ever feel like they're slipping into old patterns they would go back immediately and they kept their word to this day so i guess three remarriages works for some <laughs> And if you're wondering, yes, Adam was able to pick up more shifts, was more honest about his work, and so was she. They were able to find a healthy balance, and why they're still so in love to this day. Angela's mom said that I am hosting a welcome back slash, you know, family barbecue, and I would love for you to come. And Angela said, of course, I'll come through with Malak, and y'all could properly meet her. You know, because Angela had to leave abruptly. But let me tell y'all the truth. You know what she's dreaming about right here? Like, look how moody she is. Because all that Norman talk and having to tell her family everything, she's just started having bad dreams. Oh, Lord have mercy. So the next day, Angela went to the recreation center to meet up with this paint group called the Paint Blushers. So long story short, the, her one of her old childhood friends not only is in this club, but the lady who's like the the group leader is her, Angela's childhood's friend auntie basically so angela's childhood friend i forgot her name what was it ariella if y'all watch my realistic birth mod it's like a flashback version of ariella's there but yeah long story short y'all probably met her y'all seen her maybe post on twitter if i'll show y'all her face soon but anyway yeah so like it's kind of weird like two sims that she's familiar with in this club and the girl in the blue is one of angela's friends from high school so like it's like oh my god you know she really is in san sequoia the lady in the pink she don't know her but you know she gonna get to know her soon y'all look at angela's want it says get into a relationship from being family oriented angela feels ready for a commitment there is nothing nobler what what angela that dream of norman maybe it really like talking to her family maybe like y'all it's like realistic almost until like one year of course of when the lp started but like almost one year from the breakup soon like like i'm shook she's ready oh okay angela also notice the photo she drew like it really is symbolic of her journey she really has been climbing and i guess she's starting to feel like she could see the peak angela is like kind of nervous but you know she brings it up it's been like Three weeks she's been in this club and she's just like, how's Ariella doing? She's like, Ariella's okay. Um, I kind of know what happened between y'all and I don't really want to get too much into it. I'm not saying I'm picking sides. Obviously, that would be wrong. But I just, you know, Ariella is my niece at the end of the day. And she got paranoid. <laughs> she got paranoid. She's like, uh-oh. <laughs> not my tea being spilled. Like she thought it was going to be between the both of them. And I'm gonna tell y'all that tea soon. Don't worry, I got you. Angela's high school friend seems like she really did move on in life and just grew up and became her own, like, different sim, you know? They kind of lost contact. Oh my god, not her mother in law here. This girl, the brunette hair, that's her mother in law, y'all. That's her mother in law. 
Anyway, Angela Loki doesn't like the days when she's hanging out with these two because she just feels like they always leave her out and hang out with the teacher when there's no other students because there's more students, but some days they just don't show up and then it's just awkward and she just wants to get involved and make friends, but her high school friend, she, you know, she is receptive and she's talking to her, but they're more friends because they're neighbors actually, so like it makes sense like why they're like this with each other so yeah i know it's a little awkward but angela it's okay there's other sims out there back home angela is writing a column for her job she works like towards wanting to be an art critic and i don't know if that's gonna be like her full like life passion but at the moment she saw a job posting she's a young mom she does all you know she only has twenty seven thousand some only and when i say only but like you know sometimes money just runs out when you have a baby all the diapers you gotta buy all the equipment all the stuff and all the stuff she needs to live and sustain a life so obviously you know angela definitely wants to be making the healthy choice so you know um right now you know she was remembering that hangout she had with those girls and it was a little awkward and you know she is socially awkward so she's like maybe i should just work on on my awkwardness you know so she was just working on that at the mirror talking to herself seeing how her communication goes maybe she's just being weird or something i don't know you know how you overthink I and mean, she is paranoid too right so there's her baby and i felt bad like oh my god uni needs attention too uni you're my oldest baby you know that right i love you with my whole heart you will never replace that in my heart okay honey you want to play with me uni you want to play you want to play <laughs> and while Malak is asleep, let's try to see if she can do some breast uh, milk, you know, before she was having issues in the morning, if you remember. So let's try to, like, help her, you know, see if she can find some milk. And look at- <laughs> wait, who's knocking on the door? Bryson, what are you doing in this part of town at 9.42pm? That's her little teen brother. Uh... Let's go invite him in? What's going on? I am genuinely confused. This is not part of the story. I was just trying to have her do her little night routine stuff. And he just came by and I'm going to embrace it. So hey, Bryson, welcome. I mean, nobody's... I know I just described how my home is and like stuff when you asked, but I didn't think you were going to come. So there's a person that is possessed with an owl. And he says, who? Just, and then they just start laughing <laughs> it's a tiktok joke and he's just like really <laughs> she's like oh it was one of those videos i saw in the past i just wanted to do something fun so i just wanted to break the ice but is everything okay with you and he says yeah everything is okay do you want to talk about it because you know i am your big sister and i'll hear you out no judgment of course because you know my life's a mess and he's like uh, i don't want to talk about it right now let's just listen to music enjoy the mood the vibe if that's okay and angela's like sure i could respect that music music he's like yeah music <laughs> I'm just gonna have him as a stay over. He, it's pretty late. Don't want him to travel outside the area. I'm gonna text mom, of course. Don't worry, y'all. Not him whipping out his luggage from the corner of the house and said, Can I stay here for a few days? I guess. <laughs> I guess. I'll put your luggage in your room. And I assigned him a bed. I guess that guest bedroom was a good idea in the end to keep it. Angela will not pry. She'll mind her business, y'all. <laughs> I can't use control any sim mod with Bryson, but he took a shower in her bathroom. So I was like, you know what, let me just put Malak in the room, have her go to sleep. I was wondering if there was a place to ask him to go to his bed. Because like, again, I can't control him, so I don't know how to do that. But he is here, so I guess I'm just going to have to go to sleep. He is a teenage, so sometimes, you know, some kids will stay up. Oh, he grabbed himself some dinner, good, because I made fish tacos. And there's a fish dinner from a few days ago, but I guess he wanted to eat that instead. So I literally made that fish taco for him because I thought, you know, kids it's like tacos and stuff so bryson's gonna be staying for a few days and i guess once his stay over is done it's like the time he should be going back home i didn't expect the storyline to play like this but that's interesting and different and it would be nice that she actually has somebody from the family supporting her so i'll see y'all then so bryson is staying here for the next few days he's been doing his homework managing school life and it was spooky day so angela kind of just dressed up something quickly and her sister came by which was so funny and Malak is working on her milestones. 
this girl is kind of what triggered him to start opening up he talked about how he had like realized that he is starting to fall in love with her and he wants to tell her how he feels but mom and dad are saying no she's your neighbor she might reject you and you know angela got swept into her emotions and she's like look if you want to do what you want to do bryson i'm gonna support you in this don't overthink it do what makes you happy you don't know she might be even in love with you or and if not at least maybe you guys could be friends yes it'll be a little awkward but you know you guys known each other your whole life and angela got to talk about tartosa to him it was absolutely a lovely night and angela of course won that game of symbols so now that i told y'all what angela's been up to from wednesday to right currently friday i am now in angela's family household and it's easy to just set up the event through here so i'm doing a family reunion but it's like a welcome back angela party and i invited all of angela's family to come over so y'all are gonna meet a lot of angela's family today and that's gonna be very very exciting and i'm gonna just show y'all the decor for the party so yeah, the theme is blue colors and long story short, this is a color Angela liked when she was a kid so her mom doesn't really know who the lady she is today kind of thing so she's just kind of like, didn't you always like blue? And Angela's like, uh, yeah. Like, you know, because she knows her mom puts so much effort and like they have gifts ready for her. Like what could, what else could she say, you know? So it's like a bunch of blues and stuff. She even got like a little photo shoot area for them there. Um, and then here it's like, welcome back Angela. And then it says like, Hi, Malak, and Malak spelled with a K, no C in it. But like, they never asked her how to spell the name in my mind. So I was like, realistically, they probably were gonna do it by how they thought it sounded like. So Angela was like, no, there's no C in the name, just straight up K. And they were like, oh, okay, yeah, next time we'll make that. Or, you know, like, let's just act like, you know, right now one of them just removed the C and <laughs> the K is just awkwardly like, Malak. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I had some of this decor set up. Again, this house is by the Mr. Olkin on YouTube. Y'all could watch Mr. Olkin and check out his Patreon. I will try to link everything below. Uh, yeah, this home is so beautiful. And obviously, I'm just using this parts for decor and, you know, like plastic stuff. I feel like Charlie's a little bit like a, a bit far from angela so i feel like angela needs to like catch up with charlie so i'm gonna have to focus a moment like that in the party oh yeah and then here is malak she is also wearing green so her and her mommy are matching and yes so she's just so adorable and i just wanted to show y'all a family photo that they took together though um literally moments before in my mind <laughs> and so this is what charlie is wearing so charlie done put, made her hair wet now she has to take a shower the guests are coming in a few minutes i don't know i feel like she, again she's sort of disassociating from Angela I feel like she's mad at Angela for a reason or maybe disappointed that Angela didn't tell her something I don't know or maybe she's just in her own world and she's into school and maybe swimming and playing in the treehouse because like even last time when the parents were talking if you notice Charlie wasn't there I'm not saying that Charlie should listen to her sister fighting with her parents or even having a sit down like that but she was in the treehouse just doing her own thing. So I really do feel like I need to check on Charlie, see how Charlie is doing. So let's start this event. Malak just sat up for the first time. Uh, excuse me, breaking news. This is crazy. She did that. She did that. I mean, Mama was, Bear was helping her with, you know, sitting up and stuff. But yo, she just learned to roll over this morning. And she autonomously learned how to sit up. I am it. Let's start the party. Wow, Malak said, okay, I'm going to show y'all something for the party. She saved this for the party. I'm sorry, I'm just very shook. The first guests arrived, and it looks like Cicely and Rosalie are here, the sisters. And it looks like Cicely is still tanning out there in Tartosa. Okay, girly, I see you, and I love the outfit. All right. <laughs> I can't believe they came all the way out here for their girl Angela and look Angela is just right in front of them like oh my god you guys are actually here oh my peeps <laughs> they're like finally you're telling the truth Angela love this for you and she's like thank you so much hmm? she's just sketching up with them oh yes aww I love that for the girls 
I love her earrings. She's wearing like a machine earring. She's like, excuse me. I don't know. I just feel like my sister Charlie's kind of like distancing herself. So I'm going to go check on her right now. It looks like Addison's father is here, Mr. Cliff, aka Brittany's father too. So yeah, he's here. Oh, her friend Leonie is here. Oh, I'm guessing her mother must have invited her. Angela climbed up the treehouse to talk to her sister. Hey, how are you doing? What have you been up to? Do you know I built this treehouse? Charlie is so not amused. Charlie, do you have anything to say to me? Why are you feeling like this? I thought I was your baby, the youngest of the family, the youngest sister. And like now all of a sudden she's here. And Angela's like, uh, you know that Malak is your niece. You're still the baby of the family, the youngest. She's like, oh, really? I thought she was like a science baby for uh, for and the youngest of this family. I I'm sorry. And she's like, science baby? I mean, that technology is new. I don't even know much about it. Angela was like, oh, no, no. I had this baby in my belly. No science baby. No disappearing in rabbit hole. She's like, yeah, adults disappear. Then have a baby that looks like them. So that's not what Malak is. She's like, yeah, I had a boyfriend. And she was like, oh, where's he? And she was like, he's not here anymore. She's like, what happened to him? She's like, he didn't want to be a father. So she said, how does somebody not want to be a father? Everybody has to be a father, right? If there are one, you just can't not want to not be one. She's like, oh, you're so my sis. I love you, Charlie. Charlie, are we good, sis? Aww. 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 We're good, sis. I love you. <gasps> Oh, I'm gonna cry. They're so sweet. Oh my god. Hey, smooth brain. Are you gonna talk to your big sister or not? Angela hears the sound of her sister's voice. She's like, hey, Danielle. I didn't think you were gonna be out here. She's like, yeah, come down and let's chat. And so then she was like, okay. Um, Charlie, can we use your room to talk privately? Oh, there's Charlie. Okay. Charlie said, okay, you can talk in my room privately. So they're going to go upstairs in Charlie's room to have a private conversation. Congrats on being a mom, Angela. You next, sis. Oh, I'm still too young mentally, Daniela says. And, you know, Angela was like, well, sister, how is work? And Daniela kind of felt a little slighted because she's not only about work. And... Angela apologizes. She says, oh, I'm sorry. I just, you know, wanted to ask about you and I know how much you value your work. And Daniela says, you know, work is okay. It's good. I did move to the big city of San Myshuno quite recently. I mean, we didn't get to catch up. And I did, oddly enough, meet a guy that looks like Norman. And this made Angela almost like the complexion of her skin left. Like she was just so like not in the mood to hear about these guys like obviously questions but like seeing them it just kind of like made her feel sick in her stomach oh yeah how is enzo doing she says he's okay but i don't think he knows he has a niece out there sidebar he looks better in person him and his brother i think they're just not photogenic or something angela kind of laughs at this <laughs> angela's like okay yeah like and she's like, exactly what happened between you guys? So did you run away? And Angela's like, no, I didn't run away from him. Then how come they don't know they have a family member? And she says, well, Norman cheated. I thought, you know, Bryson or someone would have told you by now. And she's like, well, everybody just knows you were pregnant and in Tartosa. But I just didn't know anything else. And she's like, well, I'll tell you the truth, sis. He cheated. And cheated and I happened to have gotten pregnant around this time and I confronted him on everything and basically he told me off he said that if you want to break up with me and try to do like a two-parent household thing it's not gonna work out between us because I am from a two-parent household and I don't want to do this kind of thing with you and if you want to be with me or you're not gonna have a you know a relationship with the baby it was kind of like he broke up with me and the baby or something it was just weird now that Daniela is getting more information, the more angry she could feel herself be. Yeah, I don't like that. And I 
gonna have to contact him and angela's like no please don't contact him i don't want you to get in between what i have as like a deal between him and i and she's like what possible deal could there be she's like well he gave me 50k and she's like 50k for a lifetime is not good like you know 50k is gonna run out by the time you you know she reaches two or something he's like no 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 it's not that he is doing it per year and she's like well i could give you somewhat of a 50k you this arrangement is not right he needs to be a parent do you think that malak would want something like this when she grows up yeah the dad who just sends money like come on we need to like do something we need to bring some action he needs to be held accountable for how he's acting i don't like this sis. and it's not sitting well in my spirit and angela is like sis i understand what you're saying and obviously i kind of want some sort of change in something in the future but at the moment i really can't do it she's like what's stopping you from doing it right now she's like well i just got into a relationship and i have a boyfriend and i don't want to overcomplicate things things are going between great between me and this guy and sis is shocked her jaw drops because what boyfriend is angela talking about she has not told anyone she's in a relationship like what on earth is going on and yes i'm ending the episode right here angela says to daniela don't look at me like that daniela is shocked can i meet him and then angela says it's complicated i don't want anyone to know to be honest between you and me angela is lying to her sister but when she said boyfriend she knew daniela would back away a bit if she felt the situation was a little too messy see daniela is a fixer she will want to get a solution the minute she sets her mind on it angela convincingly says it's all new so i really do want to talk more about it soon deep down angela wanted to tell daniela where were you all these years from abandoning me when i was a teen making me the oldest in this household having to have all these responsibilities of being an oldest daughter all of a sudden you don't even call me like that after college like you know and then now you want to be involved in my life daniela please keep this between us though i don't want anybody to be in my business like that it's all delicate and a very new situation for me and i'm still properly learning to navigate it and daniela tells her sister of course i won't say nothing at the end of the day daniela wants what's best for her sister uh oh not the mother he's dropping <laughs> Anyways, child, long story short, Daniela promises that she is not going to repeat anything that was conversed in this room. And uh, Daniela updates her sister on her life in San Maishuno that she's been seeing someone and that, you know, this guy and her have a really interesting connection. And that, yes, it's her co-worker. I mean, you know, workaholic tendencies. And so, you know, Angela says, yeah, well, I met this guy and he has quite a story. I can't wait for, you know, one day for all of us to meet kind of thing. And I'm like, Angela, don't push your sis. <laughs> because <laughs> daniela's gonna want to meet him did you hear that daniela says no mom's standing out there like should i knock again let me knock again who is it who's at the door daniela's like bryson it better not be you or you charlie adults are talking at least angela was saved by the bell she heard a knock on the door it's mom asking to speak to angela alone so when mom comes in, she says she wants to confess something to Angela. I was at your aunt's wedding, and I saw you pregnant, and I ran away in fear. Angela asked, were you ashamed? And her mother says, yes. How did I not know my own daughter is expecting? How scared you must have been to go to your aunt above all people? And Angela says, don't talk about her like that mom okay your sister did an amazing job and she was there for me every step and i needed an escape and she welcomed me with open arms you always liked your aunt more than me 
I bet you wish she was your mom, huh? And Angel says, Mom, you made this sweet party for me and Milag, and now this is how you want to spend your time with me? And her mom feels guilty. She says, I'm sorry. I guess I'm just jealous you didn't come to me. And Angel says, I'm sorry for not telling you. And I'm just wondering, how, what did you do after you found out? So then her mother says, I only told Daniela and Bryson about this information, and your father, of course. And I talked to, you know, my mom mom aka her grandma and i was trying to tell her like was there a way for angela to come back home and grandma was like well i've been trying to push her and she's gonna come soon and obviously i just wanted you to know like we're there for you we love you so much angela and i don't want you to feel like you're alone in this process and i just wanted you to open up to us i didn't want to get too much information but i just wanted to know when you were able to come back home to us i hope you understand let's go downstairs angela and enjoy the rest of the evening Mom, can you give me a few minutes? I just need a little bit to process everything. When Angela went downstairs, she saw her family gathered around and this melted her heart. But it also reminded her of a time in the past. She was feeling very small. A lot like young Angela, who felt a little left out when there was family gatherings. When Angela was a little girl, her family used to stop by more often because they were living in the city before, you know, retirement and all of that. At a young age, Angela noticed, even where they sat her, that she wasn't considered the family's favorite. Because she would sit next to her auntie Brittany, who was like the black sheep of the family, her cousin Rosalie, you know, Uncle David, and like some other like family friends. But the first family chair was like for her parents and her grandparents, and of course, Daniela. Daniela was viewed as the star of the family from not only her parents adoring her so much, every relative, it was almost like they were like, how's Daniela doing? How's this? How's that? Oh yeah, hey Angela. Like it wasn't like that per se, but like you know how you perceive stuff, especially when you're a child. So Angela felt like she didn't have that same treatment her family gave Daniela. Daniela was the star. Daniela was going to be the president. Daniela, oh my god, let me hear what you have to say. How was school? what do you have going on in your life Daniela was viewed as the oldest the first grandchild ever when Bryson joined the family he was viewed as the only boy in the family and of course Charlie was seen as the baby of the household but what was Angela to them to Angela she felt like she had no specific uniqueness or a place in her family she felt like an outcast like a black sheep and she would spend her days in the tree house looking through that telescope like she did when she was with Norman. Funny how life repeats itself sometimes. When Angela was a teen, she needed a way to stick out. She tried to dye her hair pink, but she still felt like there was something more. Yes, painting. Yes, pink hair. It did bring interesting conversations. But she needed something more. How to do makeup that makes you look unique. I need that. Hmm, this one looks unique. Yeah, that orange blush definitely helped. Hey, Thimble. Do you think my makeup is too much? Am I cute to you? Oh, I love you, Thimble. So, when Angela was a teen, it was viewed as this cute, quirky thing. But when she became a young adult, it was seen as a childish, weirdo girl. And she was heavily somewhat bullied and shamed for it. Not Angela's paternal grandma asking her grandson how to help her to fix her phone. <laughs> well, finally grandma got to meet her. She lives in Brindleton Bay with her husband. And that's her daughter, by the way, also. Auntie China and she's pregnant with her third child like that was a shocker and then angela didn't even know she had a second kid <laughs> but yeah that's her father auntie china's father and mr adam's father uh, aka angela's father and yeah at this point when i started to realize malak was being fussy i was like okay we gotta get the night to get you know going so i was like okay let's put her in that playpen and let's have her go to sleep let's have everybody eat food and then after that let's have the family meet up outside the backyard area so they don't be too loud but yeah the family was being hella lovey-dovey i thought it was very funny just seeing them <laughs> 
all the couples slow dancing like every single couple here had a kiss slow dance there's a lot of love in this room i could be honest with y'all about that time for angela to open up her gifts and everybody's sitting around the attention is on her and of course bryson as he's walking in said oh yeah that prank was for me oh sorry sis she's like okay bryson let's go check for more and like in my mind they bought like you know formulas you know stuff like that like think of it like a baby shower gift slash also like a home coming gift slash like you know what i'm saying housewarming gifts like all of that like wrapped into like a bunch of gifts that were probably randomly placed around the house okay <laughs> so yeah the family is just chatting with each other nico got to meet the family auntie Britt got her man here and y'all was telling me that auntie Britt is way older than mr has and it, you know what she probably is like five six years i mean they met on line so yeah but oh she really liked that gift okay angela i see you but yeah we're gonna have to end it all cousins hanging out with little charlie they're probably telling her don't be too hard on your big sister and she's like i'm not i just like thought that you know malak was like you know a science baby <laughs> the girls are like well love you sis love you and i thought that was so cute just all the family love back home Angela made Medak go to sleep. Angela was, you know, very tired, but she's very happy to have her beautiful daughter in her life. She would not regret a single moment. However, that night she went into reminiscing, dreaming about the past, remembering her childhood, and she no longer wanted to be this black sheep era. She wanted to close that chapter and she wanted to open a new chapter, the reflection era. The next day, Angela gets a call from Auntie China, her paternal auntie, to come by and see the family. And Auntie China lives in San Sequoia. She took over her family's home after her family moved to Brindleton Bay for retirement. And she and her husband and, you know, now kids live in this beautiful home. I'm having a girl, Angela. Baby number three. She's like, oh my god, Auntie, you're, oh my god, you're really pregnant. Oh, we love you. And then auntie's like oh you're too cute i literally got pregnant back to back here is lacy she is your cousin and she's like oh hey little cousin she's like well this is her niece Malak. <laughs> and they were chatting it really made angela feel like oh my god like auntie china is giving me attention and time and you know they were never necessarily super close like that they don't have the best chemistry to be honest but they're trying and i think that's important you always try for your family and yes they have a bunch of ducks y'all know sansa koi's known for its little ducks <laughs> So that's her son Shannon playing with the ducks in the background, just hugging them. And the girls are both taking a nap. And, you know, Auntie's like, you know, my husband and I, we're just okay. We're happy. This third pregnancy has been hard. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, three kids, it's not the same. Like with Lacey. And, you know, I had years in between Lacey and Shannon, you know. That's her husband, Lucas Smallwood. And Auntie China changed her last name to just Smallwood with him. Honestly, it's kind of tripping Angela being here because, you know, this is where her grandparents were living and now this is like China's place of residence. So obviously she's just getting used to that dynamic because while she was away to college, they moved away and retired. So it's just different for her. She's really noticing that time was moving. And obviously like Shanning who was very small and young and now he's like this big boy, you know? <laughs> Angela keeps getting a call. So she excused mm, herself from mm, the table mm, to answer mm. this call. Hey, this is so weird, but I was thinking about you. Duncan says, oh really? Because I mean, that's why I'm calling you. <laughs> have you been? How's life? You know, I have dated you about that whole weird stuff with my sister. And I mean, I'm sorry that I said boyfriend. And you know, if any more information, you could just cooperate with me, right? Nah, don't worry about that, Angela. I'm actually calling you because I wanted to ask you to come with me to Middleton Bay. I'm really nervous about going there and I just wanted to have a friend with me, somebody I trust and you know, I don't want to bother dad. So if it's okay, maybe you could come with me. And Angela says, yeah, sure, I got you, friend. Let's go to Middleton Bay. When? He's like, tomorrow. She's like, really? 
She's like, are you serious, Duncan? He's like, yeah, I'm so sorry. I know it's so last minute. I was just wondering who to ask, and I've been overthinking this. And she's like, okay, you're lucky I could work from home with this job. I'll go with you for a few days. Just as Angela was about to stand up, she heard a door knock, and it was her auntie, China. She said, I didn't mean to startle you. I heard the word Brindleton Bay and got so excited. Can we come with you? Oh my God, my husband hates going there. You know, he hates his mom and it's just, it's a whole thing. But if I could just use you as an excuse to visit mom and dad and just have a little bit like of an escape, he would so come with us. Angela felt backed in the corner. Like, Lord have mercy, this is gonna be awkward. Back home, Angela tried to finish up her night routine as quick as possible. Yes, I know, Balak didn't even change out of her outfit. She needed to pee. She needed to change her outfit quickly. She wanted to get her some fresh milk that was, you know, pumped. I know, a whole lot of stuff happens in this household. <laughs> As Angela was just carrying her child, she just fell asleep in her arms. So Angela's like, you know what, I'm just going to have to walk upstairs, put her in her bed, and go to sleep myself. I can't believe I have to go on this trip. This is spontaneous, but you know, spontaneous is not bad, right? Welcome to Brindleton Bay, y'all. Do you see how orange it is? It is autumn in this save now. Like, it's been a, over a year now since the whole you know lp started and now it's autumn and she's here in brindleton bay and my god the lighting is so perfect like i want to be here and grandma and grandpa yes this is their home and they are living you know the farm lake house type energy so let's go down and see what they're doing right now just wanted to tell y'all by the way auntie and uncle aren't here yet they're on their way they're taking the ferry angela just took the earliest one you know that uh, auntie china is pregnant she's like oh i can't go right now so they're gonna be coming a little later and it looks like angela and grandma are planting together in my mind oh not her whistling why she's so adorable she's trying to go check on Melak right now was trying to pick her up grandma's like oh my god that was so fun hanging out with my granddaughter like so yeah grandpa brendan has two kids with his wife china whose last name is now smallwood and he has his son who is adam hill and yeah his name is brendan hill and grandma's name is christy hill so this is their home by the way it's just so cute there is a security camera you know grandpa is a cop not anymore but he was a cop and his son is a cop he wanted his daughter to be a cop she ended up being one but yeah that's his story and grandma is a writer in my mind she is a naturally gifted so let me just tell you grandma's traits she loves outdoors a foodie family oriented she's naturally a gifted author and uh, vo for her singing she's a voice to remember so her husband is actually really talented when it comes to music it says pitch perfect so i feel like when he does a guitar she's probably singing you know <laughs> it just sounds like they would be the perfect cute little band for their local area like growing up or something you know and they probably fell in love like that but yeah this is pretty much their you know her traits let me tell you her husband's traits he's self-assured a genius and loyal he loves him some christy and christy is just the love of his life and that's never gonna change he is into exclusive romantic relationships only been with her never wants to look at anybody else he just lucked out that he found his perfect you know mate and yeah so he's a cop and obviously these traits are perfect for being a cop so yeah it's so funny but yeah he's a very strict parent in my mind he's quite insensitive so i feel like maybe growing up adam and china there was times he probably was like not sensitive to their emotions so let me just show you all the final family member who's like last but certainly never the least uh savannah she is a cat and <laughs> you know they wanted to adopt a cat now that they moved away they don't have little kids they still want to take care of someone you know but cats are slightly independent right so oh wow savannah is very spoiled talkative and friendly so i feel like she'll be nice to malak you know i'm a little worried but hopefully everything's good grandma was so distracted all day she didn't even realize it's nighttime she's so used to her own little routine and angela is tired she's just trying to hang out with malak at this hour and i feel so bad roll over to tummy milestone unlocked yeah she knows how to roll over already yeah so she's taking a nap while malak is just rolling around in the room <laughs> i am so weak but yeah grandma's making dinner it's a late dinner i just feel so bad um oh the family's here okay they're here finally y'all 
Oh, y'all made it to the city finally. Oh, they're going to be part of the stay over so that I don't control them. But I do know where their rooms are. So the parents are staying downstairs in the basement. It's like a whole hotel setup. Grandma was like ready for her family to come by anytime. Not the dad here though. But yeah, they she set it up. She was like, yeah, my family's going to have a hotel experience when they're in town. <laughs> like she's like, nobody's going to no ho dang hotel. It's the next morning. Shannon is talking to Grandma Christy. Know. It's so You're funny to me. Like, he helps her with her phone. I actually think they have a, like a friendship. <laughs> Aww. It's so funny. He's actually Angela's cousin when you think about it. He's her first cousin, you know? Just like Rosalie, you know? Aww. <laughs> So he's gonna make a scrambled eggs with bacon for the family, Grandpa. Since Grandma Christy is hanging out with her grandson, um, make a friendship bracelet. Yeah, let's have her make a friendship bracelet. I can't control him, so I can't make him do the friendship bracelet. I would love if he can, but maybe he could watch her make it, you know? I don't know why their animation's missing. Maybe it's because I used this object, but she is making it. Oh, Grandpappy made the food. He ain't calling no one. Call to me all. Auntie China, what are you doing? Huh? What? Where's Malak going? What? Auntie China. What? Oh. <laughs> okay. What kind of trolling stuff she did? She's enjoying her breakfast. She's trying to keep it light. I'm not going to have her finish her whole plate only because I don't want her to, but she might do it. Okay, good. I don't want her to finish her whole plate because I want her to eat at the restaurant that is like really talked about and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and feed Malak and she's going to have to dress up and get ready to go. So yeah, feed Malak the breast milk and then I'm going to leave one out for grandma so that grandma could feed baby. Oh. Oh, the love is real between them. Look at this. Slow dancing. What? Scold for eating human food. No eating human food. That's yucky. That's yucky. <laughs> Not the cat saying, oh. Duncan invited Angela to the best seafood spot in Brindleton Bay. Duncan is feeling really nervous because i just literally loaded to the lot he's sitting waiting for angela and i noticed it's because his ex-in-law is here oh my god i know that he's supposed to be conquering his fear but damn not him having to witness them he being here <sighs> i'm sorry duncan angela finally made it to the restaurant though and i love that for her she's about to sit down i feel like she kind of dressed like a little overdressed she didn't know what the you know outfit she's supposed to be wearing she really thought you know it's like a nice bougie restaurant but this is kind of like that you know comfortable place that you go to you don't have to dress too much or anything i guess i'm gonna have to control duncan with the control any sim mod i had to look at the in-laws like what's going on like i could not set this up you know i don't think they notice he's here yet so i'm gonna keep it hush hush the chef's choice is a soft shadow of a nalino. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Let's have Angela get a Chardonnay. So let's try to see if they could do the whole experience. Appetizer, la la la. Like, let's have him just hang out today. So the chef's choice today is a canapes with salmon and cream cheese. And I feel like he's going to go and try to get that. And I feel like Angela is going to be like, I want to. It's a little too new to me i'm, I'm gonna try something i'm not comfortable with but i still want to try it the tarlet red caviar and he's like oh that's a great choice actually i almost want to get that yes we'd like to order right now yes please make sure everything is perfect for us so i think he's gonna just tell her the truth that he saw his in-laws and that they're sitting right behind but he can't not ask if single oh I, you know he knows she's single like she literally even told him that i told my parents sorry i mean i told my sister that i'm dating someone as a lie like he knows everything he's just being messy let's just have him tell her the truth like bro that's my in-laws right next to me like that's wild oh she's shocked she's like oh he's like hey um my family my in-laws are here she was like what where are they and he's like just don't don't, don't look but they're right behind me are you serious, Duncan? Oh my god, they are here. 
like i know that you wanted to go here for personal reasons but uh, bumping into them maybe this is a spot you used to go with them or something he's like yeah but still like the of all the days to come here right we gotta keep it low we don't want to hear our voices she's like yeah i don't think they noticed me he's like she's like yeah well you look different your hair is different and he's like yeah i know i cut my hair she's like i liked when your hair was longer though oh not bird watching while you're sitting i'm kind of have to stand like why are you this chaotic sir i mean they haven't been waiting that long honestly oh she's like the food smells good he's like, i told you appetizers time now angela's really like hanging out with him oh she's asking how's the food service she gets good oh oh Oh, now I'm being paranoid because he sees them now. Oh, she spotted him. She's probably like, hun, did you see? And he's like, what did I see? Duncan, did you notice him? He's like, uh, yeah, no, he's not here. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. He wouldn't show his face around us again after he did that to our daughter. Yeah, the waiters, they're very good service. Like, just keep checking. Let's order for the next meal. The soft shadow. It's because she's curious, like, why he liked it so much, you know? So let's have him have the Louisiana style Cajun seafood boil because, you know, it's gonna be really great. And oh, there's a vegetarian version. Oh, this is really cute. So I'm gonna have her have the cranky crawfish crab leg boil. Exquisite. All oh, the food got her feeling away. Oh, her breasts are ready to pump. If you don't know, he works in the tech field and he is a development captain. She's like, hey, I saw a foosball table. Do you want to play? Oh, you're, you're scared of losing. He's like, come on, let's just sit down and wait for the food. She's like, loser. <laughs> He's like, okay, okay, okay. I'm going to play. Oh, she's feeling like she's losing. He's like, oh, I'm beating you. She's like, oh, oh my God, Duncan. Duncan won. She's like, I'm not letting you do that final goal. And he's like, oh, come on, Angela. <laughs> so she's like, oh, our food is here. <laughs> oh, Angela. Duncan tells Angela, I know the perfect place for you to paint in the city. Do you want me to take you there? She's like, really? He's like, yeah, I'd love to take you there. She's like, oh, when? He's like, well, I know that you've been away from your daughter. Do you want to go pick her up and we can go to that area? She's like, really? He's like, yeah, let's go. Let's go. She's like, oh, okay. Are you sure? Maybe we could go tomorrow instead. He's like, whatever you want, honestly. You know, she's like, the weather isn't that perfect for me to paint anyway. I kind of would love it to be a more sunny day. It's been a little gloomy. And he's like, yeah, yeah, don't worry. I got you. But do you want to eat desserts now then instead? And she's like, oh, sure. Let's go check the dessert menu out. Thank you so much. You're such a considerate friend. He's like, don't, don't even say that. I'm just doing the bare minimum any friend would do for you and each other. I think um, Angela is gonna try the tarlet with raspberry and he's gonna try the tarlet with blueberries. So yeah, again, 329, they eat. Y'all, they've been waiting for dessert for so long at this point. I just think that it's better just to end this meal. It was nice hanging out with you, Angela. It was nice hanging out with you, Duncan. Take care. Like, I'm sorry that we couldn't have the dessert. Can't believe we were out here waiting for hours. He's like, yeah. Yeah, 100%. She's like, okay, well, it was nice hanging out with you. He's like, it was nice hanging out with you, Angela. She's like, yeah, thank you. He's like, oh, once again, you look really great. This outfit is absolutely amazing. But if you want a more formal setting restaurant, I could take you there. She's like, really? Yeah, I'd love to go there. He's like, yeah, well, first we got to do the painting, then that. But yeah, you already saw the seafood culture here. She's like, yeah. So the ladies are just chatting, catching up. Angela is making sure that she can find some breast milk. I think she did for both sides. It's been a good week for her. Oh, and she's like, Grandma, thank you for the matching outfit. She's like, yeah, of course. He's like, I'm honestly, I would love it if you could come by every summer as long as I'm alive. I don't know if you know, but I have a fear of death, and I'm I'm scared that I miss out on your life. I think that's where my fear is stemming from, you know, seeing you all away and stuff. And she's like, Oh my God, Grandma, really? Like, I just feel like she's just like in the sentimental feeling, like, Whoa, you know, like I love you, Grandma. I want you to come to San Sequoia, please. She's like, Yeah, I know, but you know, this is where I get to chill. 
I don't want to always travel to San Sequoia. I want you guys here too. This is your home. <laughs> she she goes, okay. Ada, um, actually, uh, Grandma basically is like, you know, I don't know. I just feel so bad. Grandma Christie's uh, fear. Sure. Her husband has a fear too of death. But I think for him, it's just that he felt his whole life he was invincible because he's a cop and like, he was just a very strong man and he was able to like solve all these crimes. And now that he's older and frail, and I just think that he has that genuine fear of, like, I'm getting weak, you know? Oh. Whereas for her, it's missing out on family because she's a family oriented sim, you know? Do we? Aww. Maybe we can have the girls watch a movie. I know it's like very late, but again, it's a vacation time, and I think Grandma would cherish memories hanging out with Angela and her watching a movie, oh, no. even if it's very late at night. But yeah. They're watching Diamonds Are for Sims. They're gonna enjoy this time. <laughs> It's the next morning and grandma wants to do the friendship bracelet with oh, sure. Shannon. I guess you do that as the animation. But yeah, grandma's feeling sick. She feeling like she smells and I'm a little concerned so I want her to take a shower. Today is a warm day in uh, Brindleton Bay. So today's plan is that Angela wants to paint outside and she wants to take Melak with her. If you notice, Melak's gonna be wearing a sun hat just like Angela. They're gonna be like, you know, doing the whole summer thing together, but not really because it's autumn. But still, like, you know that one day in autumn that reminds you of summer? It's like that for them today. So Angela is gonna entertain her daughter because if you notice, Melak is sad and I want her to be happy because that's just not gonna sit well in my spirit. We have to make her Malak happy. Oh, the smile is here. Oh, Malak. Oh, bless. Oh. See, Angela couldn't leave her alone. She knew her daughter needed her. Oh. Oh, my heart. She's actually talking. Family's going to be playing symbols before Angela leaves. And this is a game the family loves to play together. You know what's so funny to me, by the way? Trina Simsay. You know what's so funny? They're wearing their own version of clothes. I feel like they probably went shopping together and he was like, listen, if you're going to get the girl something, I need to get Lucas something. Sadly, I don't think there's one like this for child sims, you know, for Shannon. But yeah, so Grandpa Brenning and Lucas are matching. <laughs> <laughs> it's too cute. Sorry, I love family gameplay. If you don't know, that's why I'm like so happy. By the way, I don't know if he has the neat trait, but Angela is trying to clean around and do the dishes, and she literally reset, and he snatched the plates. <laughs> I never saw that in my life. Oh my god, that was so funny to me though. Play with me instead. I can't catch this fish that I keep seeing near me. Somebody give me the attention. <laughs> Duncan tells Angela, keep walking. Keep walking up there. He's holding Medak through the back carrier. Angela's holding her paint supplies. And she's like, where are we going? He's like, yep, we're going up that lighthouse. She's like, no, you're, you're kidding me. He's like, I am absolutely not. Angela's painting out here. And she has a view. Duncan showed her the lighthouse and that she could enjoy herself there. Oh, I guess he's gonna watch Angela paint. I think he finds that pretty interesting. I don't think he paints, his father does. So, you know, he does support his father and I think that's why he's very nice to Angela about the painting thing. Like, this is stuff he probably did with his dad, you know what I mean? Malak is having the time of her life, y'all. She is painting the forest. I think that's what she wanted to do first. So I don't know if she'll have time to be able to do another one, especially with the lighting and the time, you know? Angela's now painting another view that she just thought was really pretty. And, you know, she is very, very inspired with the painting. She loves the lighting that the lighthouse gives, like, into being that up high. She's very appreciative of being able to have this experience. I don't think she thought she was going to have an experience like that. Like, just like that, Duncan noticed a face. A face that was too familiar. He thought, maybe it's not. Maybe Bridleton Bay is still a big city and he wouldn't be able to see the sim while he's only here during his three to four day stay. Duncan noticed his ex was walking to the beach with someone. See, from his POV, he's not too entirely sure. Is it her? 
I don't think she notices that they're looking either. Oh, sorry. The lighthouse is lighthousing. <laughs> it's doing its thing. So now you get to meet Miss Winman, aka Duncan Hess's ex-wife, aka Bonnie Winman. Y'all are meeting Bonnie for the first time and she's on a date with a guy and his name is Xander. So she's just chilling with him and she don't even know her ex is up there. Duncan says, Angela, we have to go right now. And Angela says, uh, okay, one second, let me just pack my stuff. The Angela's like, uh, is that, uh, why, why is your face like that up there? And why are you trying to leave so quickly? What's going on? It's like, oh, I don't want to just put you in it. Like, my God, I did not expect this trip to be like this. And she's like, what's going on? I don't understand. Like, did I do something wrong? While Angela asks Duncan questions, Miss Winman asks her date, have you ever woohooed in a lighthouse? And he says, no, I haven't. So I, I could take you up there if you're okay with that, of course. Xander says, sure, let's go. Uh-oh. Looks like he couldn't have that. Oh! Yo, Dick just saw everything and I guess he probably thought it was just like a hangout and now that she was kissing up all this guy, his ex moved on. Angela is like, wait, who are these Sims? What's going on? Why did we stop walking here? You know, she doesn't even know what's going on yet. So Moon Min is probably going to turn around and, you know, uh oh, Angela's like, wait a minute. I could sense what's going on here. Oh my god. The way he's look stopped, why he's looking at her like that. Is that is that why he was so moody before upstairs just suddenly left? That's his ex with another sim. Uh oh. Hi Duncan, I haven't seen you in a long time. Who's that sim behind you? And he was like, my girlfriend? And she was like, oh god, what popped up? As Duncan hugged his ex, he missed her. He missed affection. He missed being in a relationship. And I think that's why this pop-up came up. It's, it really brought him back. Oh, you're the girlfriend? Nice to meet you. What's your name? She's like, oh, I'm Angela. She's like, oh, nice to meet you, Angela. I'm Bonnie. Angela's like, oh, Lord, this is so awkward. But, like, she seems really nice. And then, of course, Xander's introducing himself to Duncan. Nice to meet you. My name is Xander. And, yeah, I didn't think I'd meet you in these circumstances. I mean, she doesn't really talk about her ex like that. I hope I don't offend you by that. He's like, no, no, don't worry. Don't worry. Nice to meet you. My name is Duncan. So, Miss Winman asks Angela, where are you from, by the way? Like, where'd you and Duncan meet? She's like, oh, we, well, I'm from San Sequoia, but we met in Tartosa because his father married my aunt. She's like, oh, I did hear Nico got married. Oh, okay, so y'all are y'all met like that and dating. And she's like, yeah, we, <laughs> it's, a, it's a very interesting story to tell Sims, you know? And Angela, of course, she's freestyling. You know, obviously, she used Duncan as an excuse. And Duncan kind of knows. So I guess now he used her as an excuse. Like, what on earth is going to happen? And worst of all, right now, Bonnie asks, Hey, girl, do you want to go out um, and hang out with us? Uh, we're, we're, there's a restaurant nearby. We could have some food okay. together. Are you cool with that? Angela's like, oh wow, this is awkward. Like, I don't know how long I could play this couple thing with Duncan. Should I do this? This is the mother of his child. Like, obviously, like obviously, this is important for him. Should I? So you know, he's like, yeah, it's my treat, Xander. Let, let's go. She's like, okay, let's go. Let's let, let's do this. Duncan is shocked that Angela accepted the offer. He probably just wanted like a small high and run out, kind of like what he was planning. I know that he is conquering his fears though with this trip and indirectly Angela might be helping. Like obviously Angela kind of knows the gist of the trip, but she doesn't really know his full full personal story because they never really got into like it. 
You know, Angela talked more about her personal life and her personal struggles more than Duncan has. And Angela is kind of waiting for him to open up. And obviously, you know, the more she kept talking about herself, I don't know if I told y'all, she got a pop up that she is a little self absorbed. And now that we're in the reflection era, she gets to kind of like accept the positive and negatives about herself. So, if you remember last time, Angela and Duncan were hanging out at the lighthouse. She was painting the views, and she was invited by his ex who he just randomly bumped into to have like this double date thing. And so now we have to go on it because Angela said, okay, she was just kind of like in the moment, but we'll see like where her intentions allied once y'all see this meeting. Enjoy! It was awkward and like pin drop silence. Angela and Duncan didn't rehearse any lines. He just called her his girlfriend because his ex was there and Angela was just too shocked. I guess it was just weirder to say I'm related to the family his father married into. Bonnie says, I hope you like it out here. Is it your first time in town? Angela says, no, no, we have a lake house out here and we would just stop by growing up when my grandparents retired here. Bonnie says, oh, and you guys met at the wedding again? And Angela says, yeah, yeah, a little before it. And Duncan says, yeah, she was pregnant and she had the biggest crush on me. Angela was like, mm, that's not how I remember it. <laughs> and Bonnie says, mm, I can see the chemistry between y'all. Y'all give me new couple vibes. So Angela, what do you do for a living? I work as an art critic at the moment, but I would love to change that into painting one day. Bonnie says, I am an art connoisseur myself. I would love to see your stuff. And she says, oh, I'm into landscape art at the moment, but I do want to paint every last piece of this beautiful planet. And I was just thinking of doing an art show, sharing my time in Tartosa. I don't know. Bonnie says, what? That's amazing. You should totally do it. And Duncan says, yeah, I keep telling her to do it, but I think she's just overthinking it. Angela's really liking this lady. She's not judgmental or anything. I really think that maybe this couple just had like a bad misunderstanding and maybe not a proper mediator between her parents and him and stuff. So maybe there's just a real chance of reconciliation if this dinner goes well. Duncan was nervous. He knew his ex had the ball in her court. Was she ever going to try to bring Duncan around his daughter Ollie again? After they ate their meal, Angela excused herself to go to the bathroom and Bonnie followed her soon after. While Duncan was waiting, he felt like this bathroom stay was so long and it just had him thinking about the past. Bonnie met Duncan while she was at a work trip and that relationship just went by so quick. They got married and everything. And he moved to Brindleton Bay for her. And, you know, they wanted a child. And, you know, obviously they were both so happy by this news. This was just what they wanted. And they knew this pregnancy is going to be the best moment of their lives. I mean, little did they know. But you know what I mean. At the time, everything just made sense. They were just so in love. They were just so happy to expand as a family. Bonnie went into labor and Duncan was in a panic. I mean, of course, the hospital's used to this parents being scared, especially your first child. And, you know, she was checking on him like, are you okay? And he would tell her, I'm okay. Don't worry about me. You're the top priority. And uh, the doctor would be like, calm down. You're okay. Don't worry about him. Let's worry about you and the baby. She's like, okay, your heart rate's okay. The baby's heart rate is normal. You're on a steady path. I would love to see how far you are dilated. Uh, let's do that epidural. Like, basically, just making sure that Bonnie's experience in the hospital is as how she viewed and requested and you know she had a really great doctor working with her and Duncan was doing absolutely his best on his part to just make sure that Bonnie feels comfortable on this day the doctor says Mrs. Hess everything is good I think we should just go make our way so that you could be push the baby in the next room and this is when Do Duncan was like oh my god it's really happening oh oh my god I'm excited oh, I'm scared oh <laughs> this is what he was basically doing the whole time 
Bonnie makes it to the labor room and she's like, oh, uh, Duncan, where's Duncan? And the doctor's like, hey, listen, listen, he's on his way. He's probably needing to breathe. Just sit down and we have to start the process. And Bonnie's like, I don't know if I want to push without him there. The doctor says, it's okay. He's probably going to come right now. Don't worry about it. We'll deal about it, all of this later. And, uh, you know, she's just like, oh my God. And, you know, it's instinct to push started to come. And Duncan was just standing outside. He's like, I know I should walk there. I should go inside. Why am I so scared? You know, he like, walks and then he just was like, okay, okay, I just need to walk back here one more time. And he falls unconscious. Hours later, Duncan regains his consciousness and he's starting to put the pieces together of his day and he realizes, oh my God, I don't remember her giving birth. What on earth is going on? He's panicking. He's talking to the doctor. The doctor's trying to calm him down. He's like, okay, okay, I understand you missed a very important moment, but there must have been something that triggered you. He's like, no, you don't understand. I look so bad. I look so suspicious. And the doctor's like, look, you need to talk to someone, figure out what happened and what triggered this right before you're about to enter the hospital i recommend you to see a therapist and maybe even it might help clear it up with your wife and duncan's like okay look i can't listen to all of this i have to make it to the hospital room right now bonnie has never felt so alone in her life while she was in this room i mean yes she is here with her most favorite sim ever her daughter ollie aka olive and you know seeing olive she's like i love you so much olive i'm going to do the best i can for you and i just i don't know what happened to your father there has to be a good explanation he wouldn't abandon us like this so now of course mm -hmm. hours later duncan makes it to the room he doesn't even notice bonnie called her family and he just sees olive bonnie is mad She's like, what? Like, he's just casually running into this room kind of thing. Like, she called her parents. I don't think you understand. She was shook that he wasn't there and it's after the fact. And it's just, uh-ohs, Duncan. Uh-oh. Okay. So, what happened is, he's just introducing himself. Like, hey, I'm your father. I'm never going to leave you on your side again. You know, Bonnie just calmed herself down. She's like, look, she doesn't want to pick a fight with him in front of her family. She doesn't want any like atmosphere of just negativity the day that her daughter is born so you know what she does she just is like i'm just gonna have him talk to me privately and they did have a conversation she said duncan i need you to talk to me what happened where were you and he's like i fell unconscious and you know, he turns around he just sees her family he's like oh my god you called your family like whoa and he's just like oh my god all it but like it was just like a mess so you know what he decides to go to therapy the next day to talk to a therapist about what might have triggered him and what happened you know at first Duncan really doesn't know what triggered him so the therapist starts to ask questions she says Duncan what were you last thinking about when you were there and he starts to remember I was thinking about my mother and she's like, what, well, is your mother in hospitals? He's like, yeah, when I was young, my mother was battling with an illness and we just had to go to frequent doctor visits and I just, we lost her like that. And I guess maybe that's what scared me was the whole hospital area. I mean, I was a little agitated. I think Bonnie knew that, but I feel like she thinks it's suspicious. I don't think she even fully believes that I fainted or like, you know, I don't know how to explain it to her. She just thinks it's weird. And I don't know how to tell her the truth because this is such a soft and sore subject. I don't talk about my mom. Yes, I did. I go through therapy, but I still haven't healed. She's like, you know telling Duncan I recommend you to keep coming back we need to keep talking about this and you know you need to have a way to communicate with your partner and you have to feel comfortable and Duncan was like yeah 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 but he doesn't really want to do that and you know this again like I said is such a deep sore emotion for him to see somebody he loves to be in such a vulnerable place and you know he, seeing bonnie like that really did remind him of his childhood 
And let's not forget, Nico raised Duncan and he remembers his father not going on dates for a very long time. Almost like he was casually dating around the time he met Brit, um, you know, Auntie Brit. But like, for real, this man was so in love with the mom. He was willing to just live his whole life and not find love again. And so, you know, Duncan knows the pain of losing someone and not, like through his father and through his childhood. And obviously, I feel like a part of Duncan felt like he had to play this strong role. Like, you know, of course, he, his father knows he's affected, but he didn't want to show his father how fully affected he was. And yeah, and just seeing how it really goes into his life. But obviously, he does talk to his father about it. And obviously, the reason why he even talks to his father about it is because Bonnie doesn't move back in. Dad, it's been a month. I've been doing my therapy. I'm trying to show her that I do want my family. But she chooses to live with her family. And her family isn't really messing with me right now. So I just feel so alone. And his father's like, look, you need to talk to her and tell her the truth. And he says, I'm not ready. She has her own personal stuff with her work. I respect that. She can't really talk a lot about it. And I i'm okay with that so how come i'm not allowed to have my own personal thing right now where i want to talk about it i just need my time and i need my time to be respected that doesn't make me a bad father that i wasn't there in that moment i couldn't have controlled that i think them being married young they both they weren't able to communicate correctly and i feel like from Duncan's side, he's festering a grudge and he is almost withholding his past and stuff because of Bonnie's line of work, which will be talked about in a future episode. And I feel like it's also because they're married young. So like Duncan, I think is also younger than Bonnie. So he's a little bit childish, not childish trait, but like in this area, like he still didn't grow up yet. Let's go back to the Winman's residence. So for the Winman's family, they're very, very close. Bonnie, her sister Brendy, her mother and father, they have movie nights. They call each other every day if they're not at home. They just are very, very close-knit sims, all four of them. Like, thankfully, family dynamic is in this game because they all have the close dynamic. So if you're wondering, Bonnie's parents were previously divorced sims. They both found love between each other after meeting at work they're both teachers and long story short they just were inseparable ever since and so that's why the whole close family dynamic exists between all their you know family members and stuff like that i just felt like that was important for you to know after bonnie gave birth she called her parents immediately and they went to the hospital as soon as they could and of course the sister did not want to stay home she's like i have to go if she's alone like they were planning to go the next morning or like you know what i'm saying a couple of hours give the couple their own alone time but the fact that duncan wins it there they were livid and then now they're hearing like oh it's a month he's still not fully trying to tell us what happened and like unfortunately for them like they are thinking like of negative stuff they're like what is he hiding from you you know bonnie what is he hiding this is suspicious to us why like i understand falling unconscious if there's a health reason but he just randomly did that like what if you were sick and there was a life and death situation he had to be the person to pick something and he fainted and oh my god we would never want to be in a like a, a you know a moment like this like oh my god we are so happy that it was not that serious so they were just very worried and they're really like very uh, they're just like not here for duncan is what i'm trying to say they also didn't like that duncan and bonnie's relationship went by so quick like they met they got engaged, married, pregnant within a year. Do you know what I'm saying? It was a little too quick for their comfort. And also, Bonnie calls her best friend. And she's like, girl, what do you think? And her bestie was like, yeah, I don't think this relationship is it either. I'm with your family on this. And you know how I felt for, for a very long time. Her bestie was like, I think rushing into the relationship was a mistake, but you know, at the end of the day, you know I will support you. I just feel like you didn't even know him enough before even having a baby. Like, you really don't know his full story. Bonnie's like, that's what my parents are saying. That's what my sister is saying. <sighs> I have to think about it. She sees him in the house from the window, comforting their baby, saying hi to the baby. 
saying, oh, hey, I'm a good, uh, you know, I'm a good dad, right, baby, Olive? That my well, that one mistake should not say that I'm the worst father of the world, right? This is something I couldn't control, you know? That's what I feel like he was saying to his baby as he was looking at her. I feel like that's why he was just talking to her, like, in a baby language, just being the cutest dad ever. And, you know, I feel like Bonnie sees that and she just feels like, obviously she loves him and she sees that he's a good father, but her, at her most vulnerable place, being alone and then not talking to her, she felt neglected by him. And she feels like he's not compromising by not even trying to talk to her. At least even, what's the topic about? What is the, like, how could I trust to go back home to you, Duncan? If you can't even just tell me a fraction, I don't, I don't know. What if something happened to her and he had to make that decision and he wasn't there? Like she was just, I don't know, it was just a big trigger. So she stands in front of the, you know, Bassinet and him. And he's like, why are you standing in front of the baby? What's going on? And she's just like, I need to talk to you. And he's like, no, no, like your family, three of your family members all up around me talking about where were you where were you this is an issue between you and i like come on come on you know and he's just like i i've 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 t i've been patient with your family for too long i don't know how much longer you want me to be patient well what do you mean my family is mad at you rightfully so duncan my family is worried that you're not sh going to show up on important dates. And if something happens, like, what's going on? You don't want to talk to me? You say you know why, what happened, what happened. You don't want to talk about it? Like, is there some form of guilt? Are you doing something behind my back? I am concerned, Duncan. And, you know, Duncan's like, look you have your private job that you work on and your own little private stuff that I can't ask too many questions on, right, Bonnie? I respect your boundaries with that. I want you to respect my boundaries on this one. Can I just ask you that? Because you know I'll talk to you. Just give me some time. Bonnie feels frustrated. How many times are they going to have this circle of a conversation? She is. She wants results. And she's not getting any. And she's been patient with him. And at this point, just even how he's talking to her and, you know, talking about her job, like as if she has a choice to not talk about, you know, the private stuff that she has to do for there because of legal reasons. And, you know, I just feel so bad for Olive. Like, I know she wants her parents to just be so happy together, like just listening in, falling asleep because she don't know what they're saying. <laughs> Duncan, I don't feel safe knowing that something like that happened and i just feel so alone i don't even feel like you reassure me and make me feel better i just feel like we just have this tension duncan says you don't want to compromise with me and i don't want to compromise with you right now so what should we do i don't know i just feel something is off i don't like this you're not the guy that i fell in love with when i had that workshop in willow creek unfortunately you're just starting to get under my skin and i want the best for my baby girl and i think the best is for us to not be together and for me to have soul custody and he says soul custody i am not giving my baby up and she's like unfortunately for you i have the government on my side one quick call and i am the sole parent he's like wow you're going to use your little connections against me so that I don't have my own daughter in my life. She says, I don't trust you, Duncan. Please leave. Bonnie says, your father didn't want to fight for us, but that's okay. I just wanted to test him. And you know what? He failed the test. That means we're never going to get back together again. And it's going to be you and me and grandma, grandpa, and auntie from now on. I love you, Ollie so so much Aww. duncan steps outside and he calls his dad she's breaking up with me and she wants to take all of like can you imagine can you can you i understand she has powerful connections and stuff but wh why would she do that to me i never thought i never thought she would do something like that to me what do i do dad i'm all alone and you know nico's like look i'm gonna come over to the city and I'll be there for you, son. Don't worry. You're not alone. You'll always have me. You'll never be alone if, you know, in life you have me, you know. And Duncan's like, you know what? It's true. 
let's go back to the present because the girls are in the bathroom together and bonnie says to angela he looked like he was good while he was carrying your daughter outside before your family picked her up angela says oh thank you but he loves your daughter he always talks about her uh-oh the words just came out of Angela's mouth. She didn't want to interfere to this extent, but seeing how it hurts Duncan, she would regret not saying anything. Bonnie says, I'm hesitant. Angela says, if the father of my child wanted to be around my baby, I would do anything in my power to let that happen. He loves you and her. Bonnie says, for a girlfriend, you don't even seem threatened a bit by the ex. I like you. Angela says, and for the ex, you were giving me a lot of love too over there. And Bonnie says, no, I'm serious. I really do like collecting nice paintings where I live. And you know, my sister is a student too. And she is going to transfer to San Sequoia for university. I mean, I could give you her number if you want. Y'all can connect. Angela says, really? That'd be awesome. Of course, the men are acting foolish. They're competing on who's going to pay the meal. And the girls are just watching like, chill. <laughs> and, you know, you know, Xander wins uh, this uh, rock, paper, scissors battle. But I do want to tell you all this mod is by Sebzid. And I randomly tweeted about how I wish there was like this in the game. Because I was like, saw an animation lock behind a paywall. And Nella used the Sims 3 one and transferred it to Sims 4. So shout out to Sebzid, a.k.a. Nella. Thank you. <laughs> Xander was like, look, we talked about trying to go to a bar one time, so, you know, we'll play some darts, drink, and you'll pay that. Cool? And Duncan's like, you know what? I like that. Xander says goodbye to Bonnie. He says, I have to go to the ferry. Like, yeah, I have to go back to my city. But, you know, it's nice hanging out with you. And obviously, they just did not want to interrupt their conversation. So they went about their way and decided to go back. And, you know, Duncan wanted to walk Angela home. So, you know, they took a taxi, but eventually did like a bit of a walk back to grandma and grandpa's home. Angela felt like she was in a movie. The whole scenario came from nowhere. As odd as it was, it felt nice just, you know, acting grown and catching up with The Sims. Angela missed out a lot. Thank you. Oh, I'm so sorry for dragging you into my mess. Angela says, did I come here for seafood or helping you see your kid? And Duncan says, uh, that was a coincidence. Angela says, oh, I know, I know, I'm just kidding. And he goes, ha ha, very funny. And then, you know after just chatting for a bit and you know talk about the whole scenario just being weird and funny and that they you know did they believe their acting they decided that they were just gonna end the night and cool it there so duncan says goodbye angela says her goodbye and yeah wait savannah why are you out at this app not savannah choosing to sleep child anyway <laughs> And Angela sees her daughter is awake. She's like, oh my god, are you waiting for me? She's like, oh, Malak. And like, Malak literally fall as like, fell asleep like just after her mom comforted her. I don't know if it was just like she missed her mom. or <laughs> But it just it really melted my heart. Like, she fell asleep two seconds later. So, obviously, I'm like, you know what, Angela? You need to do your nightly routine. Wash up. You know, clean yourself up, all that good stuff, pee. You know, I feel like she was, again, you know, again, her bladder is not the same after having a baby. And it's been hours since she's been at that restaurant and what she was drinking too. So, yeah, she definitely needs to use the washer one more time. So, you know, I feel like she's just like the whole thing is picturing in her mind again. Like, wow, like my life could be a movie. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> I don't know why she decided to wear that outfit. Like, I feel like she should wear that outfit another day. So that kind of is like, girl, I'm going to have to put you in your pajama. So Angela's grandparents asked her if she could stay with them for Harvest uh, Fest because it's actually like the uh, end of the week. And, you know, she's Ashka. like, oh, but I feel like mom and dad would want me there. And they're like, no, no, don't worry. We just want you to stay with us. And, you know, I just like, it's just a few more days. Is there a possibility you could talk to your work? And Angela's like, uh, yeah, it's okay. I'm allowed to work from home and stuff for a couple more days. Don't worry about it. So, yeah, her, war her work really wants her to keep practicing that writing skill and write more so that she could start to, like, write on, like, the cover of their, you know, 
blogs and stuff so she could write about food experience art experience but she has been doing a little bit of food because she's in brindleton bay which i think would really drum up with its tourism oh. and stuff oh, so yeah and oddly friend. enough she decided to call her old friend chanel to tell her everything and chanel was like yeah no that sounds like right out of a movie girl but i am so tired you need to like tell me a better play-by-play -play tomorrow like and she's like i'm so sorry for calling it this hour like i just remember like when it was okay for us to be doing that and you know she's like it's okay it's okay girl don't worry about that but i really do appreciate that you want to talk to me about this kind of stuff you know and like they're really repairing their friendship i love that for them Aww. but yeah grandma is already awake it's the next morning like yeah time flew child but then again angela slept really late she was kind of a little slow with her <laughs> nightly routine but you know what let's just get you know she's tired let's give her some grace you know <laughs> but yeah i'm gonna make sure grandma takes care of herself grandpa's still asleep so i think grandma's just gonna do some little cleaning around and stuff but then after that i could see her wanting to do a morning walk yeah so here's grandma taking her walk and i just followed her a bit for the walk i just feel like i don't know it's just such a nice like brindleton bay and autumn season is gold so like of course angela should have harvest fest here you know i mean i know that her parents might like be like oh why is she not here but you know let it go grandma and grandpa are like you know y'all gotta respect them <laughs> <laughs> but yeah grandpa's playing some morning chess on the ipad Ooh. he learned that technology is so cool and you know he never used to play with these ipad stuff until his grandson taught him how to use these like grandpa you don't have to go to those chess places you could play on your ipad and of course you know savannah being a little troublemaker getting lectures but you know savannah is uh spoiled him so it just in one ear out the other <laughs> Grandpa goes outside and he's like, oh, you're back from your walk? And she's like, yes, I am. Oh, they're so cute. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to keep saying aw all day. Like, mm, they're so cute. But yeah, I ended up completing the whim. He had like to embrace, but I used the Sims 3 embrace. So I was like, wait, let me just cheat that to complete it. <laughs> but yeah, let's see. Oh. All right, let's start the day for Angela and have her take care of Malak right now. So she's think she can smell her diaper, which I felt so bad. I was like, okay, let's go ahead and clean her up. Oh, Lord. Oh, Grandpa likes affection, of course. She's like, good morning, Malak, my sweet princess. And, you know, Malak wakes up and she's like, okay, let's clean your diaper, your poopy pee pee diaper. And, you know, Malak's looking around like, oh, it's a great day. I'm happy. My mom's here. I feel like that's how she feels. Like, she's really happy. It shows that she's happy. So, you know, awake and happy. That's how she feels. And, you know, she's a sunny baby. Oh, oh my God. They got the close dynamic. There's something so amazing about two Sims having a close dynamic without, you know, just it genuinely happening. Oh, I'm going to cry. Oh, let me hold myself back. But, yeah, she's cleaning up my neck again. It's a nice chill day angela doesn't have any plans like that like maybe duncan's just gonna invite her to eat at a restaurant you know they did kind of have a promise to have like a more formal setting restaurant that she could dress up for i don't know but maybe not i don't know but anyway yeah oh Malax looking at her mom so cute let's change her outfit angela she's been in her pjs all night you know oh that's a cute outfit i like that and she's gonna breastfeed her before she eats food you know angela's really hungry i feel so bad and you know she her hunger is going down because she's feeding her baby so it's like oh i feel bad so like i guess you know i have to make sure she eats food but i feel like grandma and grandpa didn't really cook like that i feel like they might have just start like their meal later in the day but also i feel like grandma and grandpa probably don't want to cook like that because harvest fest is on the way so they're like let's just save that energy for the meal but then i catch them like slow dancing too like <gasps> oh they just want me to cry <laughs> oh, they're so cute oh, but yeah no for real oh my god oh i'm sorry they're really making me like all the feels being in brindleton bay oh angela and her baby girl she's gonna put her baby girl down so she can eat and i'm gonna have Milak play with the blocks because i don't i don't know if i have i think she has a toy for her but it's in the diaper bag upstairs and ain't nobody got time just play with what grandma and grandpa have for you here. <laughs> oh, Angela's swooping her stomach. She is hungry. But look at my leg. 
Oh, she's so cute. Hey, Angela, go make them pancakes, okay? Grandma and Grandpa did not eat, so you know what? Maybe she could just do some yeah. of the cooking for them for the, you know, next day or two before Harvest Fest really, like, is here, you know? But, yeah, look at her. And she still has her face mask on. Like, my girl, she's just preoccupied, hunger, baby. You know what I mean? Oh, not Duncan here. Help. Hey, Duncan. I'm assuming he's here because, I don't know, maybe his ex called him? Or does he want to hang out with Angela? Let's figure it out, child. Oh, Grandma's introducing herself. Hey, nice to meet you. Oh, you're that nice gentleman. Uh, I heard of you, yes. He's like, oh, nice to meet you. Again, Sims love doing that interaction. I don't know what to do to stop them from that. <laughs> Because I think it's low-key rude to be talking like that to your elders, you know? But yeah. Oh, wow. Very friendly conversation, if you ask me. Anyway, let's have Grandma and Grandpa eat food. Grandpa made himself some coffee. Uh, you know, Grandma's going to have that pancake. Again, she hasn't even eaten nothing yet. Uh, yeah, let's have them have, enjoy their meal. And I think that grandma's going to be like, oh, look, Angela yes, made a meal. Yeah. Duncan, do you want to go ahead and have some pancakes with us? I mean, we're starting our day a little late. And he's like, yeah, I understand. Oh, he's feeling a little tense. Do you think he's nervous being around Angela's grandpa? Because he's very friendly with grandma. Hmm. I mean, he is a cop, right? So he's like a very strict energy. I could imagine him being a little intimidated by grandpa. <laughs> <gasps> oh, and Duncan's so awkward. He left this area. He doesn't even want to eat around here. Oh my god, girl. And she's wearing her face mask. It just hit me. She's probably holding her cringe. She's like, oh lord. He saw me looking a mess. <laughs> <laughs> oh she need to clean up too she has a lot of old like stuff that's like you know in her inventory lord why did he have to come around this time lord and she gotta do some breast pumping for her baby and i gotta clean her inventory from the old breast milk that expired Woo, child anyway well, let's have angela wash it off that face mask let's have her just clean up herself up change her outfit all this stuff blow dry her hair like yeah we gotta get you know we gotta get our girl angela ready okay <laughs> so angela is wearing the outfit you know last night where i was like why don't she just wear this for another occasion like might as well be it for this occasion right she gonna fix up that hair put everything in place she don't want no strays she wanna make sure everything is just you know sitting <laughs> but yeah she's about to go downstairs and let's go look at um hello what's he doing with Malak? because i'm not even controlling him not him trying to teach her hey those are my moments and if she starts to pull up that chair i'm gonna be sad because he he, he done took this moment <laughs> but he's really good with kids though that's really cute but like no i'm supposed to be going through this pack with y'all duncan not her go y'all see Malak just grooming her thing in the hallway anyway so let's see I guess Duncan is talking about how his ex called him and how, you know, he gets to meet up with Ollie. You, you know, he don't know how this happened. She's like, what do you mean? You're a great dad. That's how it happened. And he's like, yeah, but she wants you to come to this place with me. And she's like, oh, really? Like, is that why we're supposed to hang out? He's like, yeah, I know. I know it's like on the whim, but let's just, you know, I don't know. Are you, are you okay with that? Ah, She's like, sure. Yeah. He's like, but by the way, she does want to introduce you to her sister because that's apparently why y'all are going. And, you know, this outfit is a lo the right outfit to wear. And she's like, why? What should I be wearing? And he's like, it's kind of cold today. It's not like the way it was yesterday. I mean, you see me wearing a jacket. So she's like, okay, I'll change into a jacket. Grandma says, Angela, take care. Sweet dreams, my luck. So, yeah. I guess she's going to be meeting the sister today and hang out, hanging out with them, which I'm, she kind of looks a little awkward in the face there. So let's go. They were supposed to go to a restaurant, but apparently Bonnie's sister, Brandy, was like, um, I don't want to go to a restaurant if that's OK, y'all. I just want to go to the beach, fish. I got a cooler, got some drinks, got some fire. Like, let's just have something a little chill and low key. You know, she's, trying, she's very like 
you know down to earth like that you y'all saw how our family is they just they like to have a little bonfire they like to roast us <laughs> So Angela, you know, she's not used to this kind of like lifestyle. I mean, of course, in the summertime when it was like lake house and all that energy or maybe a bonfire, maybe when she was in school once upon a time or something. But other than that, like, no, I, I hang out dedicated to that. I don't know. But the fact she caught that fish, I mean, Angela, maybe you were meant to do this stuff, girl. I mean, she does like the outdoors. So, I mean, this should be making her happy. I guess. Yeah. But, like, why are we talking about Angela when, like, Ollie and her father are reunited? Isn't that the cutest thing ever? Aww. Oliver is just a very friendly kid, you know? She's a toddler now, so... I am happy, though, that Duncan gets to reunite with his daughter. And... Oh, no. Not a vampire. You going. You going. Nope. Just go away. Mm -mm. You gonna die. Actually, I'm doing you a favor. Yeah. Take care. <laughs> like, oh. Duncan says, Oliver, I miss you so much. And I'm going to try to keep coming by more often. They decide to roast some, you know, hot dogs. And Angela got to know Brendy. And Brendy and her are going to keep in contact. She likes that she gets to talk to somebody that is passionate about painting outside the painters club, you know. But just more Sims. And they left that beach drunk AF. Okay, but let's imagine that somebody is carrying Oliver. You know, Sims aren't that smart, child. Angela's mom says, are you sure this is the right address? Daniela says, yes, mom. Let's go. Come on, let's knock on the door right now. Dad's like, uh, you know, this trip was brutal. So let your mom, you know, just do some breathers. Call your brother and sister. Just tell them we've arrived safely. So they're going to go and knock on the door right now. <laughs> that startled Mrs. Draper. Oh my god. But then I got a pop up that Daniela got the supportive dynamic with her mom. And I was like, wow, Daniela, that's so cute. And then I noticed there was a rainbow. Like, what a day. Is the family there? And they're like, well, the car's out there, so they definitely there. And then Miss Patrice opens the door. She's like, hello and they're like can we come in we want to talk to you about something important and she's like y'all could be vampires why am i gonna let y'all in my house <laughs> so Denise is like you don't recognize me and then she looks at her and she's angela she's like yeah we are angela's family we really need to talk to you about important stuff she's like what important stuff could we be talking to each other about our kids broke up a long time ago uh yeah i know i know time has flown but this is very important business i would not knock on your door and so she lets them in mama patrice makes some nice fresh tea for the family because it's a really cold day and it you know one of the reasons why they wanted to come in they're like look, look, it's freezing out here child what is this cold climate region like you know it's went from snowing to raining by the way so it was an intense weather family's just joking around harvest fest is tomorrow and long story short miss patrice was just cooking and baking preparing food but you know as the time went by they started to tell her everything that has happened between norman and angela and that malak exists and uh oh the door opened looks like her husband is home Leslie says, I didn't know we were expecting guests, my love. Patrice says, no, they're here to tell us we have a grandchild. Leslie says, and who are you? Leslie indicates to their daughter to go upstairs to her room. She just came back from school. Who are these guests? She's so confused, but she listens to her father. And if you remember, they wanted to adopt a child. And as time passed by, of course, they adopted a child. Hi, we've... We have spoken on the phone once. I'm Angela's father. Patrice says, I am so sorry for how Norman treated her. But he told us that she cheated on him and left him for someone else. Daniela says, mm, classic cheater. Have you cheated on each other? Angela's mom says, Daniela, please let the adults talk. Daniela's parents knew she was frustrated, but they did not like how she was acting. Patrice says, no, never. 
Addison says, we wanted to know the kind of man our grandchild's parents come from. Like, what kind of people you guys are because we love our Angela. Leslie says, how many times have you visited her while she lived with my son? Adam says, excuse you? We weren't approving of your son encouraging our daughter to quit school and depend on him. Daniela says, and hello, we were right about him. He did that only to ensure that she would stay with him no matter what. But he doesn't know that she would always leave because our mom taught us better than to accept the bare minimum. Leslie says, oh yeah? I bet you didn't even know of the baby until yesterday and ran over here acting holy. Some family. Patrice says, Leslie, please, I beg you, please stop. Adam and Leslie are starting to get close to each other and Patrice feels like there might be some tension and she stands between them. The Hill family didn't go to the Draper house to fight, so this is just not the intention between both of them. And Leslie was like kind of saying like, I'm going to choke you. And Adam was like, yeah, if you're going to do it, do it. You're going to regret it. I'm going to tell you that. And uh, Patrice is, she doesn't want this. She's like, oh, stop, stop, baby, please. We're not here to start a fight with these people. They're here just to tell us about our granddaughter. Don't you want to meet our granddaughter? I saw photos and she just looks like us. Leslie, you're more mad at Norman than you are at this family. Unfortunately, when this was happening, their daughter that they recently adopted, Mary Bell Draper, she witnessed it. Mary Bell recently moved in with the family and she has a bit of a disturbing past, I believe, because when they adopted her, she had really bad manners and, you know, a lot of these sort of negative traits, which I feel like maybe just was survival skills. And so I feel like she is slowly letting her guard down with her family. But seeing this probably just like really kind of scared her. They never saw her have emotions like this. Usually she's just kind of a little mean to them. Mary, it's okay, honey. We were just talking, you know, adults work maybe a little too loud like little kids. So we're going to keep it down. And she's like, okay, mommy. And so then after that, they tell her to go take a shower. You know, she is feeling like a flu. So her mom gives her medication. But they tell her, go upstairs, take a shower, wear your pajamas, do your homework. And, you know, so oh, they wanted a baby girl and they have a baby girl. Patrice tells everybody to sit down in the living room it's because, you know, maybe all that standing was a little tension. And I know Daniela and Addison were feeling very guilty seeing that little girl. They just don't want, they didn't want this. Nobody did. But, you know, sometimes conversations get a little bit too tension. You know, Leslie, they're trying to calm Leslie down. Like, okay, I know you're really mad kind of thing, you know. <laughs> Adam decides to move seats randomly. I'm guessing Leslie just the tension's a little too much. So he's like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to sit next to my wife. Daniela says, we aren't here to fight. We want you to know the truth. He's braving Angela to keep hush. And Malak will age up to a toddler soon. And he doesn't even know her properly. Is that right? Patrice says, it's not. We raised him better. Adam says, we are so sorry that we're meeting under these circumstances. We hope to be connected in the future. Leslie says, and I'm sorry I got angry. I didn't like that I came home and Patrice was by herself. And I just don't, I, I just felt like I was judged. Daniela says, for the record, we assumed you guys had some idea. Addison says, I'm sorry it looked that kind of way. You can imagine how lonely it must have been for Angela to have done this all alone. We have to show a united front. All of us needed her to know that we're going to be there for her no matter what. This conversation was really emotional. Sims were just crying. They were mad. They were about to fight. And, you know, this meeting had to happen. It's just, it wasn't an easy conversation to have. Patricia says, it was nice meeting you guys. I know the co it wasn't easy, but I'm so happy to have met you guys. And Addison says, I'm so happy to meet you guys too. Thank you so much for hearing us out. We we really assumed that you knew and now we know you don't and you guys were left in the dark. And you know, the parents were like, Yeah, we're gonna have to make this conversation between the you know, boys. It seems like you know, Norman and Enzo were in on it together for what reason to know that both sons are doing something like this, it just doesn't sit well. And then their daughter comes outside to say goodbye to them. So the conversation just had to end. They had to say goodbye and go about their day. 
So Leslie calls his son. It's like he didn't even waste no time. Yeah, I know. Tomorrow I'm canceling Harvest Fest. I don't want to talk. I'm just not feeling too good. Let's have Sunday family dinner. Let's just move it. You remember like what we did last year? Yeah, let's just do that. And the boys are like, what's going on? Like, why are we moving it again on a Sunday? But, you know, they're just kind of like, okay. So, like, yeah, Enzo and Norman both got the same calls. So, yeah, Nor you know, Leslie's like, they're not going to expect it and we're gonna have to tell them we know and you know patricia's like crying this is so emotional for her she just doesn't want to know a grandchild exists like this this is just so painful for her and that night they literally just slept in their clothes and you know the downstairs couch area they were exhausted mentally i think even their daughter was sleeping on the other couch like i feel so bad for the draper family Obviously, I feel bad for Angela, first and foremost, because she's the one who went through this. But I do feel bad because I don't think they were ever going to be malicious grandparents, you know? They're just nice people. They just have an a-hole of a son. So the Hill family talks about how the conversation did go good, but they did tell Daniela that she needs to control her anger. And, you know, she was just kind of like, I was a little triggered. I thought these sims did not give a f about having a grandchild i just saw the worst possible thing in them and you know her mom was like i know angela was a bit suspicious she didn't want to talk about them and i've overheard your conversation that's why i felt like we needed to put the matters in our hand and that we had to get something done for our grandbaby at the end of the day even if they didn't acknowledge her we still needed them to get shamed and know that what they were doing was wrong but that wasn't the case thankfully they were in the dark just like us and it was even worse because it was their sons doing both their sons i mean i can't I don't even want to be a fly when their parents confront them. That's what they said. And that's kind of how I'm ending the episode. Angela comes back from her hangout with Duncan. She's a little emotional. I feel like that whole like just being around other sims while well, it was fun and she made friends with Brandy and Brandy's like you know let's have that connect and let's keep in contact and let's just meet up in San Sequoia I'd love to see your paint blusher group like stuff like that like it was a great conversation but it was emotional because like you know obviously Duncan was really emotional too and she's just a good friend of Duncan so it was a lot for her. Angela's so lucky she has her grandma Christy in her life Grandma Christy and her talked all night looking at the stars and their bond got better. She gave her advice on life, just such valuable stuff. And it was actually interactions from the pack, which just made it 10 times better. So they went to sleep because the next day is going to be Harvest Fest. Now, I am showing y'all a series of photos for this just small segment because I felt like there was no point of just filming it because Angela's literally going back to San Sequoia. So yeah, the family made an amazing meal i love that angela and grandpa got to just sit while grandma made the meal they were just talking to her she's like y'all really gonna let me be by myself and angela's like grandma i have my period cramps like you know i'd be there and grandma's like it's okay now i was just looking forward to just being around y'all and so i don't know if y'all know but china and her husband uh lucas and their son shanning came through so yeah there's drinks on the table uh, like food made candles lit grandma was feeling it child she really was and as she should and i don't know but i don't know if y'all know but if you remember they have an infant baby just wanted to say that the baby is with the, with their auntie in san sequoia she comes over to like just take care of her while they go sometimes to brindleton Bay, but they barely go the fact that china got to go two times in a row was a little fun for her but let's go back to the important stuff the sunday dinner at the draper's residence enjoy mama draper made the best spread ever you'd think a king is coming over she gave some dishes to her daughter to take to her friend's home for the sleepover that she was gonna have and she wore her best fit and so did leslie norman and enzo will be there any minute norman walks in with his girlfriend so did enzo they are going to bring their partners over for this special harvest fest. And of course, the parents did not say no. Meet Aaron Dillard. 
a perfectionist, vegetarian, ambitious. She has a voice to remember and she is pretty popping on the sim talk. Ooh, it looks like Anso and his girlfriend is here. So of course they're gonna welcome them in, have a little chat. But of course the parents, you know, this is the attitude they be giving them. Go ahead, sit down at the table. We're gonna talk to you then. Okay, yeah, thank you so much. Enzo's girlfriend says, oh my god, Mrs. P, you threw it down in the kitchen today. And Mrs. P, of course, was like, Norman, how do you live with your life comfortably when you know your child's out there wondering who's my dada? And then Leslie goes, I would never do that to you. How dare you turn around and do that to your own child? Like, just straight up. And Norman's like, what on earth are y'all talking about? Um, but why do y'all have a picture of my ex on the wall? And then, you know, everybody like turns around. Like, there's a photo of Angela. <laughs> Norman is taken aback. His girlfriend says, baby? Norman's like, it's all a lie, dad. Leslie says, I raised a coward of a son. We met the grandparents, and they wanted to know why you didn't want to be part of her life. I mean, it's a valid question. How dare you show your face to us all these months and not mention anything? Patrice says, I've never been so humiliated in my life. And then I found out Enzo is covering for you too when you cheated on her. No wonder you don't even talk to each other anymore. Enzo says, Mom, I, I already talked to her and apologized, but she never told me she was pregnant. Mrs. P says, Imagine putting that girl through all of that. I heard she chopped her hair off and ran into Tortosa and had a baby there. She quit social media and she changed her style because apparently you took credit after you had her quit school. Leslie says, Norman, I swear to God we're banning you from this house and I don't want to ever see your face until you fix this. Enzo's girlfriend raises her brow. Why did you invite us girlfriends here? And Mrs. P says, do I have to spell it for you? And Norman's girlfriend says, she wants us to see them at their worst and if we would run away from them. Enzo's girlfriend knows what Enzo did, and now Enzo's girlfriend leaves the house. Enzo follows her after that. And of course, Norman's girlfriend knows everything, chow, and she chooses to stay. Enzo went after his girlfriend. He said, that was a different time. That's not me anymore. And she said, no worries. I just thought it was a little too awkward. I had to leave. I know you're not that person anymore. You've proven to me the kind of person you are. Norman says, I'm sorry, mom and dad, for putting you through this. I never thought, Mrs. P says, exactly. Your actions prove how thoughtless you are. You weren't my son until you fixed this. Norman repeats, I'm sorry. Leslie says, apologize to Angela and Milak. Norman was gutted. He never knew he had a girl, let alone the child's name. The baby having a name felt weird. It was in Angela's stomach before, and now she's being claimed like a real sim. That's it. It's time for Aaron and Norman to leave. Too much drama for one Harvest Fest Sunday dinner. Aaron, I'm so sorry. I should have talked to you about this. Oh, I look so horrible to you, especially all the stuff you talk to me and how vulnerable and honest you were. She says, yes, exactly, Norman. He's like, please forgive me. She's like, I don't think I could talk about this now. Please just drive and take us back home. Enzo's girlfriend raises her concerns. She says, I don't like what you did to your ex. I'm scared you're going to do this to me. She says, I would never do that to you. I love you. She's like, if you love me, then why were you able to do that to somebody you quote unquote maybe once upon a time loved? And he's like, no, I don't love her, her the way I love you. I like was like puppy dog love. Like it was like first time. Like you don't really take those stuff seriously. You're deep. You're the true meaning. And so she's like, you know, starting to feel gassed. So she's like, you know what? I'm willing to forgive you and move on. I'm not the kind of sim who just runs away when there's relationship issues anyway. And, you know, Norman and his mind, like, exactly. My ex don't ran away, you know? And Erin's sick, though. Like, in her mind, like, this is too much information to process. Like, yeah, she lets him go, but she's still feeling really, she's feeling really hurt, basically. And she's just looking at Norman like, oh, my God, do I have to look over my shoulder from the person I love. Is he honest? Is he gonna do this to me? Are Sims disposable to him? Does he really love? 
And Norman, of course, is feeling really insecure himself. Like his parents cussed him the F out in front of her. And he's thinking, is he going to lose that relationship? Back at Enzo's place, Enzo's girlfriend felt it was the best decision for them to leave like that. And Enzo says, thank you. Honestly, I, I didn't want to sit through that. Enzo's girlfriend says, well, however, I do kind of find it karmic that you and I both have an interesting backstory like this. Isn't life funny? Enzo says, it truly is. And I just hope that you still accept me for who I am. And she says, of course, I'm going to always accept you for who you are because you did the same for me. I'm not going to leave you just because of this incident. Now, is it wrong what you did? And do I believe it's wrong? Yes, but I don't think you're going to do this ever again. You look like you learned your lesson. He's like, I did learn my lesson. I feel like I paid a lot for it. And I'm very blessed to have you in my life. She says, I am so blessed to have you. And they're like, okay, let's just sleep on the couch. They both fell asleep watching comedy. Seems like they really enjoy each other. Just watching them. I don't know. I kind of like them. As weird as it is. <laughs> let's go back to San Sequoia and see what Angela's up to. It's Monday, aka the next day. The paint blushers meet up at the recreational center and today's task is to paint a figure. Now the owner of the club wants everyone to just paint whatever it is. It doesn't have to be complex. There is no judgment when you're painting with the paint blushers. So obviously she is mentoring over everyone's shoulder making sure that they're you know doing exactly what she asked today. Usually she likes them to freestyle but today you know even assembly Angela, who prefers landscape painting, is being challenged to do something out of her comfort zone. So this is perfect task for her to, to you know, to start the week with. So yeah, Angela's working on it, but I'm noticing that she kind of like eight, eight, you know, it's four plus four, eight <laughs> in this department. And her friend comments on it like, "Oh my God, girl, you really did amazing with this. Like, I know you're an amazing painter, but you know, wow, you know." And she's like, "Really." She's like, oh, okay, I, I'm not, it's not my forte, but I'm really happy you like it. And even like her, the nanny looks at her and she's like, oh my God, it's really cute. Leonie says, doesn't painting remind you of the time we used to kind of randomly spray paint buildings when we were younger? I feel like it was just yesterday when we had listened to alternative music and shake our hair like rock stars and have sleepovers. I miss that. Angela says, I do too, but look at us being moms now. How's your twins? Leonie says, oh, I love them so much, but they tire me. <laughs> Angela says, okay, okay, I know. But we got to plan a play date, okay? Angela was happy that Batista girl wasn't there. And then she had a nice time alone with Leonie. It was just really nice chatting with her. They talked about how they felt about Angela moving away and became this city celeb girl. And maybe that she forgot where she came from. Or maybe she just doesn't talk to her old friends here anymore. Was any of this true though? Was Angela really an out of sight, out of mind kind of sim like her family? Maybe this is why the self-discovery trait brought up the self-absorbed trait. She's not that different from her family after all. Not only that, I got this pop-up. Shower me in compliments. Angela's feeling her ego effectively boosted after that lovely compliment from Leonie. Nothing brightens a conversation like a well-placed flattery. Would you like to say that Angela likes compliments? Uh, yes, she does. Ooh, so there dead. gotta be some truth. Angela moved to San Myshuno and lost contact with a lot of Sims. But not only that, it also looks like Leonie might have also kept contact with Angela's family because she was there at the welcome back party so there is something there like there's always going to be a connection i believe between leone and angela just as i was talking about this leone got a pop-up leone really appreciated receiving such a such kind attention from angela just now that affection made her feel extra special does this mean leone particularly likes affection Aww. Yes, she does. Oh, this is so sweet, y'all. Ooh, it's getting late. Angela has to go home. Her brother Byron is babysitting Malak, so yeah, it was nice seeing you too, Leonie. Angela's back home. 
And she's telling Malak it's time to go to sleep. So she's just standing over her crib, trying to soothe her, watching her trying to go to sleep. And it's just so cute. I mean, she didn't even change out of her clothes. She just sent her brother to go back home. And <laughs> she's just checking on her baby. She leaves Malak upstairs when she falls asleep. And she gets food for Uni out. Sees her brother left the pan. She was like, you know what? Maybe he was trying to cook this for me. So I'm going to just finish this dish. <laughs> So she decides to finish this dish and I guess her brother made some nice tacos. Oh, that's a cute photo of her sister in the background. You know, Charlie's a little bit, you know, demanding. She was like, you better put it somewhere I could see. And I'm like, Charlie, are you serious? <laughs> But yeah, of course she's gonna also give attention to Uni because like, hello, she has not been around Uni a lot last week, right? So she has to make up for all that time. Uni, Uni, you know you're my oldest. I love you, my Uni, Uni. <laughs> I don't know. Uni's one of my favorite pets ever. Like Uni is just such a character, yes. and she's like, I miss you, baby. Aww. I miss you. Oh. I have some amazing news, by the way. Angela got promoted in her career. That was crazy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have her write a column and just do some of her work that she, you know, she could go to the next level. So, yeah, I'm very proud of her, like Angela. I don't think you understand. She's working amazing. Like she had a whole week almost away from her job and she's able to bring in the deadlines, all this stuff. Angela completed writing a column and I guess she's just gonna call it a night right now. It's the next day. So I was like, you know what, Angela, let's go have that jog with you, your daughter and your dog. And it's a warm day, so I was just like, yo, like Mela could just wear her little pajamas. It's not that deep. She gave her breast milk for breakfast. I'm not gonna lie though, Loki, I am kinda experimenting to wean her off of the breast milk and give her uh what is it called again the bottle she does drink bottle don't get me wrong but like 90 percent of the time it's breast milk so i don't know though we'll see that journey Madak is getting older she just tried her first you know puree food so i want her to eventually get into you know that puree stage and i don't know we'll see that journey for Malak, of course and i don't know if you know but angela has been trying to put in a little workout lately just for health reasons let's have angela go back home right now of course the first step is to wash her hands and she has a visitor at the door angela says hi um this stranger says you promised you weren't gonna talk to her again and you're a liar it took angela a second or maybe even longer as she stared into his eyes she realized who this was when angela was a teen she used to hang out with this guy named zoro and her friend leone they were a trio and they used to have fun playing symbols at the recreational center or just biking around the neighborhoods and just having a lot of fun and the thing is you know leone you know, she's the one who's a redhead, you know. By the way, her and Angela like, had this thing when they were younger. They would just dye their hair and just have all this fun. But anyway, long story short, both girls liked Zoro. Now, the thing is, the amount of like that Angela had isn't as strong as Leone's like for him. Like, Leone was in love with him. Angela, it was just like something small. Like, yeah, he's a friend. I like him. Could it be something else one day? Maybe, kind of thing, you know? But yeah, it was the three of them together in high school. And at this point, right now, what you're looking at is like them in grade 12, around that age. It looks like Leonie's father is calling. I don't know if you know, but Leonie's father passed away. But at this point in the timeline, he was alive and so he says leone when are you coming home i miss you and angela's like you could go back home you know everybody knew her father was sick at this time so it was important for her to leave and leone left right away angela was like zoro do you want to go ahead and ride around with our bikes and he's like sure let's go i find it hard to reach you Push me back 
Pull me in and the other way around Pull me in, push me back It looks like Zoro misread that. Angela says, I'm sorry. I can't return your feelings. You know Leone likes you. And he says, I don't care. I like you. She is very shocked, you know. And he says, you like me too. And she goes, I respect my best friend. And I think you should date her. You are meant to be with her. Zoro says, hmm, okay. If I do... You have to keep your distance, and I don't want you to make it tough for us. And Angela says, after I graduate, I'm going to be moving away to Brightchester, so I guess that's okay. Zoro was hurt. He was furious, and he, like, forever will have a grudge for that rejection. Angela says, I didn't even recognize you, but my god, it's been 10 years. It's like a decade ago. Are you serious, Zoro? Zoro says, you promised you'd keep your distance after high school. I made it clear I didn't want you to interrupt me and Leonie's life. Now you're talking to her in art class. Okay, one time is enough, but multiple times? Angela retorts, high school was forever ago. And Zoro says, okay, Angela, don't say I didn't warn you. Whatever that means. Angela and Malak are gonna hang around the front porch. I think Malak still wants to be outside. Kind of, you know, do her little creep walk. <laughs> it's like literally called creep. And every time they move, I'm like, creep, 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 creep. <laughs> I don't know if you know, but today's Tuesday. And Angela's been here since, I believe, like, sun Saturday, Saturday. She came back home Saturday. And look at her and Uni. I'm just gonna cry. This is the cutest thing ever. I feel like they're so close lately. It's not even funny. Like, her and Uni always just want to sleep next to each other. They always just want... Look at her. Like, y'all, I just want to cry. Like, I even posted a photo of them sleeping next to each other in the playmat area. Like, it was just the cutest thing ever. Like, I know they layered over each other like that, like, clipping. But, you know, oh my god, is that Leone in the background? Does she even know where her man was? Is the question of the day. Aww, Malak is texting Angela to not use the computer so much. I guess she knows that Angela writes a lot of columns for her work. Hey, hey my little awesome. bumblebee, Aww. it's time to wake up. It's time to feed Malak. And yeah, she's just, you know, cuddling her, making Malak feel happy. Of course, you know, it's important for Malak to always feel like her mother is there, you know. So I'm just going to place her in the, you know, play mat. And, you know, because outside it's starting to get warmer. I saw the temperature and it's not very hot, but like Malak's been outside for quite a while. So I want her to go back inside. But of course, Angela and her just being the cutest. I was like, y'all, y'all need to go back. <laughs> y'all need to go back in the house. I don't want Malak to feel like it's too hot. At this point, let's just have Malak explore another food option. So she tried pumpkin and she really liked it. So this time, I want her to try sweet potato. Like a nice, you know, sweet potato mash. Maybe a little sweet, a little savory. And it's just going to be really nice. And I hope Malak enjoys it. So, room here's the airplane. It goes, nom nom. Yes, good girl. What do you think? Oh, is that good? I think she's unsure of the flavor. Look at her grabbing the spoon. She's so brilliant. Oh, she's loving it. Oh, you know what? She said, I'm going to enjoy it. And Angela's like, absolutely, you should. <laughs> oh, I need to feed Uni next. Oh, no. All right, it's been like a couple now hours i would assume but angela's now starting to give malak a shower and malak is so cute she's just oh she's so sweet she really is an angel oh my god oh auntie brit of course i want to talk to you on the phone why does auntie brit almost call every other day she's so sweet i wish more family members would call sometimes i feel like it picks like one or two sims and that's it like i kind of wouldn't mind i got a random call from a sim i like you know angela don't talk to every day and it's the next day angela's just doing another jog 
but I noticed that her close-knit lifestyle is crashing and she gained the technophobe lifestyle. Now, that's so funny because if you remember episode one and even during her teen years, she was very techy. So it's the complete opposite. And I really think it's that slow living in Tartosa that's still kind of just like lingering into her current lifestyle in San Sequoia, but she has to use technology. So I wonder how this will affect her life. I will leave it. But if it's too much, I'll update y'all if I removed it. But yeah, what an interesting change, right? Y'all, Angela's family's so funny. They done dropped the kids off here. <laughs> And Leonie is here to take Angela to the art class, which is going to be very soon. But I just wanted to show you all this clip. It was just sent me. I was like, not Angela babysitting for a bit before the, you know, art class. So Wednesday was like any other day, I guess. But what made it special is that Angela was waiting for a friend to come by. Like she was way Ting. and this friend took her time to come to the paint blushers and i'm just like girl where are you at i don't know if you noticed but the batista girl is here today but it looks like leone and angela are just hanging out a little bit more today but anyway like leone knows that angela was expecting someone so she was just kind of like girl don't worry like you know your friend's gonna stop by like don't worry and, and angela's like yeah no i know but like i don't know maybe she just doesn't want to come after all and leon is like girl you're overreacting it's everything's good everything's good like you know <laughs> but yeah freestyling day freestyle wednesdays hey brandy you're finally here and she's like yes i am i'm so sorry i just had a really tough day and she's like yeah yeah oh my god come here girl she's like you know i thought you bailed on me i'm not gonna lie to you i was just overthinking the whole time you know it was our first meeting without you know everyone and i'm sorry for assuming the worst and she's like no you're okay i'm so sorry for not texting you that i was gonna be late i did say i was just gonna come but we never really talked so please you know and she's like it's okay it's okay do you want to meet up again or are you just gonna go back to brindleton bay and brendy says oh i do want to meet up with you on friday if that's okay and leone was in the background like girl introduce me you know and she introduced her <laughs> And again, Angela's feeling guilty, but I am proud that she was able to vocalize those thoughts that she had. So let's fast forward to Friday. They're going to meet up early, you know, like in the day. So it's Friday now. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Let's treat the girls for some drinks. And I don't know, but Angela's in a giving spirit. I feel like she even wants to pay their bill. You know, Leone is her best friend from high school. So she just wanted to crash because Leone was very curious about this painter girl that Angela talked about during, you know, art class. Brendy was like, girls, have you ever heard of a paint and sip? And Angela says, that sounds really fun. And, you know, Brendy was like, well, you know, there is one coming soon. And it's in the big, big city of San Myshuno. Angela kind of tensed up at the idea of San Myshuno. It's been a long time, honestly. Leone was like, that sounds like it's really fun. But I feel like I might have to take my kids with me. And Brendy was like, no, adults only, no kids. But... <laughs> But I just wanted you to let you know, by the way, Brendy is younger than the girls. I feel like Angela and Leone are now like about to enter their late 20s, if not they're already there. And Brendy is in her early 20s. What on earth? Not a vampire employed here. Help. <laughs> and who are these Sims? Y'all need to leave me alone. Oh God, why is Angela's childhood bestie's mom here? Y'all, it is the art lady like the one who's a teacher marissa that's her sister that's her husband like what's going on oh my god am i gonna be bumping into her friend ariella like her childhood friend i girl we not going to the childhood storylines we're talking about teen storylines don't be messing with me game <laughs> The game is trying to mess with me. These Sims are trifling for trying to take Sims drinks. Uh-uh. They're just misbehaving. Anyway, Angela was like, when is the San Myshuno thing? And she was like, a month or less from now? And she's like, wait, what, really? Oh, okay, I got to prepare myself mentally if I, want, um, if I can go. So I'm like, yeah, you got to mentally prepare yourself, Angela. Okay, I'm trying to give them drinks. But then I'm like, wait, Angela's kind of still breastfeeding. So, you know, Leone's kids are older. They're, t they're, they're twin toddlers. And Brendy has no children. So Brendy can have the drink. So, yeah, sorry, Angela. Just one drink for you, ma'am.
my game is so messy not Zoro cringing because he saw Angela because Angela's leaving the restaurant right now she paid for the meal she's just feeling extra good about herself like she's hysterical she had a lot of laughs with the girls I'm not gonna lie like like I said she's kind of enjoying socializing so I think she might open up that people person lifestyle very very soon well not very soon but you know what I mean with time yeah there bye Leone I wonder if she said hi to her man. Hmm. Angela just got a text from Auntie China. She said, hey, I want to take our girls out to the park. You willing to come through? And Angela says, yeah, of course, let's go. So they drove out all the way to Oasis Springs Park. And y'all, their first trip to the park milestone is unlocked. Go Malak! I'm so proud of her. Like, she was unlocking these milestones left and right, okay? Y'all, why would Chanel text me this? I was like, what? Not the Sims error code. And she goes, haha, you got pranked. And I'm like, oh, girl, bye. <laughs> but it was really cute. Like, Chanel just being funny and silly. You know what? I love that for her. So no angela get up oh she's looking at the clouds okay you know what? i thought she was taking a nap on the floor and y'all know sims be kind of doing that if you have that mod oh auntie china saying hi to malak she's like hey my little baby how you doing y'all know she's about to get due like very soon i think she's second trimester entering third trimester maybe around like the holidays like you know the winter fest so yeah i wish my audio didn't glitch with obs but this was just the cutest thing i've ever witnessed oh my god the park hangout was such a great idea thank you so much auntie china for this play date oh my god this is so sweet i'm really happy that angela's family both mother and father's side are putting in the effort to prove to her that they are there for her you know and i think that's why it made sense for me to close that black sheep era but yeah, they're going to have to go back home anyway. It's been a while since they've been out. Look at Angela. Stunning. Stunning. <laughs> Just as I talk about her family, her father texts her, talks about how he put all this love and effort and how he wants her to come by. She's like, okay, daddy, I'm going to come by this weekend. <laughs> Isn't that so cute? But yeah, it's time for them to go. Remember how Charlie and Shannon were here a few days ago? Well, it looks like her brother Byron is back and he wants to stay for the weekend, but honestly, he helps with babysitting. So like when she does the paint, goes to the paint blusher to do some painting, he'll be there if she can't afford to, you know, have Miss Lydia around because Miss Lydia wants a good coin and Angela is trying to save up. Now, I don't know for what, but you know, in general, like for safety keeping, especially because she did spend that 50k pretty quickly this time around so i don't think she just wants to like have spending and what happens if she doesn't have money like that like she knows she her family will pitch in and you know her sister daniela even says she would pitch in no matter what but like still she doesn't want to ever reach to that level so she wants to make sure that she is safe so yeah i'm gonna make sure that Melak's wearing her outfit she's taken care of so yeah, I'm like, she needs to get to the next level after creep, which I think is crawl. I'm not entirely sure. So I want to see Melak's journey with that for this episode. You know, she has been doing so amazing with just the developments and her milestones. So yeah, look at her. Her mom's trying to tell her, yep, you could do it. Come on, Melak. Come on, Melak's looking. And by the way, she has not grown in the teeth yet, but she is like, I think very soon like give her a couple of days her, she's gonna have her first few teeth in right now because I did research it and I'm like you know I don't know if the game generates I might have to add it myself but I thought they do gain a teeth just as much as they lose a teeth but I'm not entirely sure on that system I'm not asked anybody if you know please educate me in the comments so I could know more information because I really do love this pack and I love the details it provides for family gameplay Aw, Byron said, let's play some pillow fight. And of course, Angela's going to say yes. That's her little brother. <laughs> I'm sure he probably remembers those little days, like when he was very young and just playing with Angela before she moved away. So yeah, he's having a sleepover here tonight. I think that's so cute. And I love that she has the spare room so that guests can stay here. And I think it makes sense for like, especially when you're trying to play a growing together gameplay, the whole stay over feature. And I don't know if that was 
those ga- in the game or base game but you know what i mean you just want to do it more because you have growing together y'all malak is supposed to be asleep look what i catch her doing she's trying to learn how to crawl in this small bed girl nobody told you to do the little tummy times or crawl times whatever they call these stage <laughs> but she's so funny oh my god malak please stop don't hurt yourself oh now she's crying oh poor baby Let's go check on Angela. I mean, I think Malak's gonna fall asleep within a few minutes. And she did. So y'all, I'm gonna have her go to sleep and Byron's already asleep. Holy. Oh! Now why are you knocking on people's doors at these odd hours, Norman Draper? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Y'all see this. It's Norman effin Draper at the door casually acting like he know angela and he don't no you don't what on earth is going on he's mentally preparing himself for something ever had your estranged baby daddy knocking on your door at the middle of the night well my sim has what the hell norman above all the times to stop by and meet your daughter you chose to come by at an odd hour <sighs> let's just listen to what he has to say norman says angela how have you been angela's like okay like where have you been how are you and norman thinks of that answer where was norman for the last year and something let's go back to when norman moved to sulani after him and angela broke up at the time norman spent his time working a lot but you know he had a couple of girls on his roster and you know they were kind of like why are you working let's go out and norman was like i'm so sorry for just working you know i'm just so busy here and my work is asking a lot of me and they're like you need to live life he's like yeah i'm living when you're here you know like corny stuff to get the girls happy <laughs> And he was dating multiple sims when he was in Sulani, okay? They would bring him cultural food, he'd get the drinks, they'd have at-home dates, sometimes he'd take him out, but I do think that might have been his weird way of coping with not being in a relationship with Angela. But Norman had a trip to Dulce Valley, and that's when things changed. He saw a bit of a party lifestyle, letting loose, having fun, and he liked that. He liked when he was drinking and having fun. He doesn't get to do that a lot. I mean, his thing is women. <laughs> You know, and it was nice for him to just socialize and stuff. I mean, yes, he was going out and partying with Angela when they were together, but he never got to have it like for him. He was just going for her, if you know what I mean. And he wanted to go to the VIP section. He wanted to live it up. Come on, it's Del Sol Valley. He tried to bribe the security guard and the they were like, yeah, you got the money. I mean, why not? At this private VIP section, the more you know, Norman started going out. The more he got comfortable with this sim, Vanessa Jung from Del Sol Valley. And he would just smoke. And, you know, he was really noobish. He did not know how to smoke like that. Like, he barely ever smoked. But, you know, Vanessa was making him feel comfortable about it, you know. She was like, yeah, you could smoke, you know, listen to music, just relax, feel it. You know, Del Sol Valley, it's illegal to just do this stuff. But, of course, it's nice at the clubs, you know, certain restaurants that allow you. But, no, don't be doing it in public, you know, other than your home. And he's like, oh, I like your tips. And she's like, oh, I know you're a player. I see you dancing with the girls. And he's like, okay, okay, uh, maybe I was just having fun. But, come on. If if you had fun i wouldn't judge you she was like oh you that kind of guy oh i know you want to kiss me so bad mr norman but that's all you're gonna have from me and he's like whoa like i'm having butterflies who is this chick <laughs> that's how he's feeling and he tried to get her info they went on a couple of dates and with time, Vanessa started to trust him, you know, and he's like, oh my god, you know, I think he was vulnerable, like, about having the butterflies, and I think that's why she was like, okay, he's charming, you know, and they, yeah, they started to have, like, somewhat of a routine, and he stayed in Del Sol Valley for two months, if you don't know, he stayed in Sulani for about what it felt like three to four months, so 
yeah vanessa and him were just having a lot of fun they go to cafes together the movies museum dates and you know she just talks about how she wants to level up in her career and you know he's leveled up but like you know he understands what you know where she wants to get to and they really are compatible she is very ambitious and you know she makes him think and they have a lot of like it was like, it was really interesting watching them together and this one morning she was like i'm going to work you could stay behind and he's like yeah i have to make a couple of calls anyway and norman's boss calls him and his boss says you are behind with your work it's been two months what is going on i know that you said you moved to sulani and you know we were like okay we're cool with work from home but i think you need to come back to your home city sam Shuno and come back to the office work for home environment is not for you and you know you're just doing the bare minimum and we're looking to lay off people and you might be one of them and norman did that news broke him you know he's a workaholic sim so like yes was he relaxing i mean it was the first time he's relaxing and now he's getting in trouble for it you know and he knows he has to leave del sol valley for good what it feels like at least and what does that leave him with vanessa did, are you sitting the same place i left you this morning and he says i have to talk to you about something and vanessa says you could always talk to me about anything what's going on and you know she's just trying to make him feel comfortable she could tell he's tense and sad and he's like i need you to hear me out my work says that i'm not performing as well as i used to and i have to go back to my city and she's like so are we doing long distance or something and norman's like um I know we just declared each other as boyfriend and girlfriend, but long distance is not going to work between us. I'm so sorry. And you know it, and I know it. She says, oh my god, I need a drink. I can't. And so she grabs a drink, and he's like, please forgive me. She says, I can't forgive you. I probably would have done a long distance for you. I mean, I know I said long distance doesn't work, but I just... I feel like our connection was better than that. He's like, I know, but you know, maybe somewhere down the line, we're going to get back together. And she says, uh, it sounds like the way you're talking to me, this is very much final. And he says, I'm so sorry. She's like, I know, you put your work above everything. And I respect that. That's one of the things that I like about you. And he says, one day we might just be able to be friends and laugh about this. And Vanessa says, I don't think this is a laughing matter. Just put my key on the counter and leave. I can't do this and finish your drink, whatever. I don't really care. I'm going to sleep. And he was so sad. He left her place and he was like, wow, I have to go back. Like, this was the first time in his life that he fully enjoyed himself. And he was like, why does this stuff happen to me? Now I have to go back to San Mesh, you know, to my old apartment that I let, you know, sublet. And now he, like, told the person they got to go. But he gave them the money for, uh, like, for them to find another place and stuff. And when he moved back to his place, he's like, oh, flies. Like, oh, my God, the downgrade. I need to move to a better place. Why did I, like, why was I so lazy? Why didn't I just pack my bags and properly move away like what is wrong with me now i have to just like i feel like i'm settling like i'm too good for this i'm too handsome for this and i mean not saying the sand my shoe girls aren't that cute like they're the cutest but like the girls in del sol valley they're just different breed that's what he feels <laughs> Norman was in a funk and he just needed to get out of his routine so he decided to go to the art gallery and just enjoy a different environment but then there was a sim that distracted him a cute girl in a red dress wearing a sun hat I mean I know it's summer but what's going on with her and so they start chatting and she's you know talking about how she needs to make some content for her tiktok and oh god it's so cringe because you know it's like hard to film yourself and you know i don't know if people are gonna think she's cringe and he's like i don't think you're cringe for doing that that's okay i mean i was familiar with sims who had to do content for a living look that's your job and you have to make yourself feel comfortable i could help you with that if you want and so they just started looking at art and you know he helped her sometimes if she needed some help with the camera he was just very nice and you know the sim really needed a friend and you know he needed a friend too he's starting over again he had his old friends remember um t the tucker family and they're not friends with him anymore so it's like you know he was kind of an introvert so he has to start all over again with his social life he's only friends with his co-workers but again he's just starting back and he's kind of cringing like he thought like he was so much better than them 
and that he didn't need to go back to work and then now he had to face it like do you could understand it's like that vacation sadness feeling going back to work basically that's what happened to norman but of course, I don't think he's going to tell Angela this. This is just b basically like when Angela asked him the question, where his mind went. You know what I mean? So let's go back to the current timeline. Norman says, I played a game, but you played a better game. Angela says, I am too sleepy for your riddles. Why are you here? Norman sighs, I'm here to beg for your forgiveness and ask you to allow me to be in Melak's life. Angela says, what's the sudden motivation? Norman says, uh, so your parents come into my house to humiliate me wasn't your plan? I guess you kept your word after all. Angela says, yeah, I wasn't too happy about that either. Honestly, I just wasn't ready to deal with you yet. Norman says, see, you weren't neglected by them after all. Can I meet her? Angela's like, uh, not now. Come correct okay because you coming in here at odd hours like a robber like take my number down and do this right for the sake of your daughter norman says i just wanted to say you chose a really pretty name melak i kept saying that to myself all week angela's like oh norman flattery won't get you anywhere norman's like mm, well you know it has in the past but i just want to ask you for your forgiveness Angela says, I'm trying to keep it civil for the sake of Melak, but you don't know what I've been through for, for the last year. You have to explain yourself one day to your daughter for how you treated her and her mother, and I don't plan on forgiving you. Norman says, fair enough. I work a lot of hours to make the money that I have, and I just was free, and that's why I came by. I apologize for coming at these hours, but at least can I see Uni? I haven't seen that dog, and I really just miss her. My schedule is so much more worse, Angela. I hope you understand I'm not trying to be malicious to you by coming by at these hours. Angela's kind of over at this point. She just wants him to say hi to Uni so he can leave. <laughs> Norman says, you're, you're being a good girl, right? Oh my god, I miss you so much. Angela says, okay, that's enough. And he says, Th thank you for allowing me to see Uni. I really miss her. I have not gotten a pet. You know, work has, is worse, like I said. And Angela says, yeah, I understand. You've said that a lot. Okay, thank you so much for stopping by. Can you just leave? I am sleepy. Like I said, I was dozing off. I just, I'm not in the mood. And I don't frankly care about this conversation anymore. It's like, yeah, I'm sorry. I could tell you were, you know, you were always like that. Sometimes a little moody when you were sleepy. And, you know, she's like, well, I, I, we don't know each other like that anymore. Just contact me for our, our daughter. Other than that, I'm good. Goodbye, Norman. Angelo was just really tense. Just he really came by. Just it was oh, just like not the right time. And I think also oh. Norman was kind of like, okay, maybe I shouldn't have drove all the way from Newcrest to San Sequoia. I should have contacted her. Wow, I just that was not a good idea. That was so impulsive of me. I didn't even tell Aaron. Aaron, um, I'm I'm so sorry. I'm not here yet. I'm on my way. She's like, where the hell were you? He's like, I'm I'm on my way. <laughs> Thank God that's not Angela's problem anymore. Angela says to herself, Oh my God, that was weird. I need to go to bed right now. <sighs> it's the next morning and I want Angela to do some writing for like a column or something because I just feel like Aww. she, you know, she's excellent in her work. She just needs to negotiate uh. a bonus. And yeah, she just needs to write the column for the day so that she doesn't get lower in her work. You know, I want her to get another, you know, raise. Why not? Like, she's really breezing through this career, too. Like, look at her thinking about work. Ooh, and she's stressed AF. Angela is triggered from the lifestyle she currently has, but I do think it's also Dorman and how he popped by last night. Angela asked her brother Byron if he could help out and take care of Melak, so I just queued some stuff up for him so that he could give her the bottle, you know, make sure he changes her diaper and stuff. So yeah, let's just have him do all of that while I have Angela continue her work. 
even if she's moody hopefully it does not show up in them columns because she is like i said trying to work to be an art critic i don't know if it's her life passion like i said i know painting is her kind of thing right now so we'll just see where her life goes like i kind of am interested in seeing her do you know just what makes her happy but like i'm also not going to be annoyed like not every sim is fully like known what their path is or something you know so i kind of like that she's just exploring different things and giving her the freedom to do so so like i said painting is her number one it's her heart and it's in her soul but i think that art critic meets somewhere in the middle like i said so yeah i was just checking her aspiration her stuff i'm just like oh my god i'm excited for her like i am excited for angela's future for sure and yeah like literally she wrote like she woke up she's like oh my god i was supposed to write like she wrote now she's doing her morning routine she's gonna be the one to cook breakfast because like if byron's taking care of the baby like might as well have angela cook right and then there's malak he already put on an outfit for her oh so cute i think angela is gonna make like chocolate chip pancakes because it's the weekend right and her brother's staying over and i feel like that maybe that was something they used to have when they were kids and i feel like she probably already had like the batter ready or something so let's just act like she might have pre-mixed it and then you know it was just sitting while she was writing the article okay <laughs> yeah. but yeah there's Malak drinking her bottle so cute and then her brother was thinking of doing his homework, chatting with an old friend. He was just thinking of like some really cool stuff. And I was like, you know what? I want to honor that. But yeah, she's already, you know, flipping them chocolate chip pancakes. She's like, oh, I don't feel like doing dishes. But you know what? I might do the dishes, you know. <laughs> Y'all notice that Angel's a little bit more leaner. Like her clothes are a little bit looser. So she might have to do some shopping soon. Oh, Melak texted her. In my mind, she's like, happy weekend. Let's just say that yo those pancakes look so good i want them little boba y'all granny's cookbook oh hey byron welcome downstairs oh my neck's gonna sit here i'm so used to her laying down when you put her in the playpen and no now she's a big girl and she sits like up wow but yeah, I'm going to have him have his breakfast too. He's like, oh my god, it smells so good. What, Angela? You're cooking that before work? She's like, don't worry about it. So he's like, look, I'm going to wash the dishes. She's like, thank God to herself. Like, her brother is so amazing. Oh, she's thinking of the color yellow, Malak. That's her favorite color, y'all. Angela is thinking, should I tell my brother what happened last night? Does he even know? So she goes for it and she tells him everything that happened about how Norman stopped by and the brother's like, no effing way would he just knock on the door like that. Like, I know mom and dad said that he's going to probably contact you. She's like, right? Who does that? Oh my God, that was so weird, bro. I was like, I'm so sorry, sis. If I was there, I would have definitely told him to leave the house. She's like, yeah, no, I know you were sleeping and stuff. I love you. And he's like, do you love me or are you just saying that? Like, that's the response in the corner. I was laughing. I was like, why is he so cheeky? But yeah, they're just chatting. She's like, okay, take care of Belak. Please give her some bottled food and take her on a walk. Give Uni a walk. Play toys with her. Do all that important stuff, please. He's like, yes, of course. You don't have to worry about that. I do all of that stuff. You don't have to keep repeating yourself. Oh, she got the notification. It's, it's time to go to work in an hour. So I'm like, you know what? If it's already like an hour left, let's just have her play with Melak and Uni for that last hour before work starts. And, you know, Byron's just thinking about that conversation. And, you know, she told him, don't tell anyone, please. And he's like, of course I won't. I'm going to keep it between us. They both have the I love you mood lit too, which is so cute. I just love that my sims could say I love you. It's from a mod by Kira Sims if you want to download it yourself. Notice how Malak is thinking of her mom. Oh my god, she's perceiving so much things. She's so smart. And look at her first teeth. Um, I love that Angela just gets to have these moments with her family before she goes to work. And thankfully her brother gets to babysit so i guess what i'm gonna have is byron go ahead and have a family walk kind of what angela does you know because angela didn't get to do it today she was kind of out of her routine right so i think it'd be nice that byron gets to have the you know the walk with them and just enjoy angela's neighborhood because he doesn't live in this part of town so he is familiar because like this is where the recreational center is for the city he's a cute little uncle 
It's a couple of hours later, and this is Zuri's, her, you know, Byron's crush. So she stopped by, and they were just chatting. She's sad, and I was just really curious, like, why was she feeling this way? So what I found out was that she was on her period, and that's why she was feeling that way. But I feel like she just kind of like, you know, like feeling this conversation out. And you know what? I was like. Byron, you have to do this straight up. So I had him confess his feelings to her after, of course, she feels better. Because I just felt it would be way more authentic. And then Angela came here. But yeah, I was like, girl, Angela, stay outside. Let him confess his feelings. And she accepted it. Look how, hot. oh my God. And he had a whole mood lit about it. And then she invited him to the concert that night. Y'all, they're just so adorable. And she's like, I can't wait to text my moms about this. <laughs> That's so cute. And he had the deeply in love sentiment. Like, I knew he was feeling this way. But the fact the game told me this too. <laughs> I'm just going to have to hold myself back. Because they're the cutest. Like I said, Angela's back home. I'm like, girl, did you just see what happened? But she didn't. So I'm like, okay, say hi to Uni. And Zuri's like telling her mom's like, mom, can you believe it? Mom, like that. Like, oh my God. He finally told me how he felt. Like, I knew that's how he felt. But like, ah, like, you know, she's just really happy. And I'm really happy for Byron and Zuri. So yeah, she's just taking care of Uni. Like, Uni, oh my God, what is this outfit my brother put on you? <laughs> oh it set me but you know i thought that was very funny and very colorful so you know she's wearing a fun outfit you know byron's like i picked these pajamas for you sis and she's like oh my god these are like old stuff like i just keep because you know for memories and he's like i know but sis wear these fun outfits and let's just have fun you know and then Zuri texts him, like I said, she's going to tell him to go to the concert. And she reminded him of that. So I was like, ooh, I can't wait for him to go. But yeah, Angela's just making sure her skincare is good. But Uni was eating trash. And I was like, you have to lecture Uni. Give Uni a bath. I feel bad. But like, you know, this is kind of how her life is. Like, she just has to balance all this stuff on top of, you know, working and all this stuff. But thankfully, her brother's there. Like, he really helped out a lot. Bye, Byron. Have fun at your concert. Angela's waking up Malak because, you know, she wants to give Malak a nice bath. Just because, like, she already took care of Uni. Like, might as well both of them have their own little thing, you know, tonight. So, yeah. So, she's like, Malak, time for a nice bath. And Malak's like, bath time, bath time. I mean, she didn't say that, but, you know, let's just act like, you know, she knows what that means. <laughs> so, yeah so cute angel's playing with her you know i love that she gets to play with her before she goes to work and after and i think that you know Malak definitely can't fully tell where her mom goes in the day but when she reappears it's like she never left kind of thing you know because she's just so happy and i i told y'all that Malak has the sunny trait and she has a little babbler quirk so she's just very talkative naturally it doesn't even matter if it's words she'll just say I back, I back, I back, like the whole time it's just so cute so you know she was really hungry so angela felt that you know what let me just feed her while i'm here so then she was like okay let's go to bed right now it's pretty late so you know she's wearing a bee outfit like y'all know her favorite animal is a bee like bzz, you know <laughs> like bumblebee angela's little bumblebee malak good night malak Good night, Uni. Aww. Good night, Angela. And y'all already know Byron out. It's the next day. Angela's calling her sister, Daniela. Daniela is surprised by the call. She answers and says, Wow, you're calling me? Angela says, I'm still mad at you. I wanted to handle that Norman stuff myself. And everything is unraveling. He just stopped by randomly like a day ago or something. Like, how did he track me down? Daniela says, wait, hold up, explain. Angela fills Daniela in on everything. Then Daniela was like, oh, wow, he's so grimy. I just wanted to make it easier for you. And Malak, I'm so sorry. I should have told you we went there. And, you know, I'm so sorry, sis. I really am. Angela says, it already happened. I forgive you. I can't hold any more animosity inside me. Can we change the subject? Daniela says, I mean, you didn't even tell me. How was that Brindleton Bay trip? Grandma mentioned you had a guy there. Angela says, ah, he's just my friend. Remember, I met him at Auntie 
you know brit's wedding and daniela says don't remind me auntie brit had to get married at the busiest time of year lord and then angela says yeah plus it's her husband's son and then daniela says oh so that's just your friend angela's <laughs> angela's kind of like what she's like auntie did try to set us up and daniela says and how'd you feel about that so then angela now wants to change the subject she says how's your guy daniela says he's crazy about me and i'm crazy about me so we have that in common angela says daniela daniela says put my niece on the phone right now oh my god she's so adorable wow she's growing by the day look at that bumblebee go and she's so right look at my back oh my god it's just still surprises me that she could sit up like that and you know i'm gonna be working on her crawling i'm gonna be honest with y'all i need her to crawl by the end of this episode <laughs> but let's follow angela for the next day because sunday was a regular day so let's just follow angela after work on monday when she goes to the paint blushers it's monday around 5 p.m after angela's work she went directly to the recreational center where the paint blushers meet today it's paint something out of your comfort zone and so angela decides to paint a comic and oh my god miss <laughs> batista showed up nice Ooh, look at angela go she's really talented i think she's if not maxed out that skill by now like i'm not sure honestly but she's eaten and yes bonnie's little sister brendy is here she drew like an animal which i guess she doesn't really draw often so i thought that was really cool brendy says have you thought about that paint and sip and she says it does sound fun brendy's feeling a little bit like you know do you really want to go angela i feel like you're not really into it angela says it's not that hmm wait it just occurred to Angela that her best friend isn't in class today, like her friend Leone. She's not here. I need to make a call, Brendy. I, I have to go right now. But yes, I do want to go. And Brendy says, well, I'm moving to San Sequoia in a few days officially. Like I have been, you know, found my apartment. I'm moving my stuff in. I'd love to see you. And she's like, yeah, sure. I'll stop by. And she's like, you're such a great friend, Angela. I'm so thankful. So Angela goes to the bathroom to call Leone. Leonie says, sorry I couldn't make it to class. My husband heard art class and mentioned the word divorce. Angela says, that's terrifying. Leonie says, uh, right? I'm sorry. He just sometimes gets emotional and dramatic. Angela says, uh, is there any chance that we can meet up tomorrow or even later today? Um, but just don't tell your husband. And Leonie says, uh, sure. Uh, is it okay if I come today and bring the kids in like a bit, like right now, like, you know? And Angela says, yeah, of course, let's meet up at my place. So Angela is going to go back to her place and, you know, prepare some blankets and toys for the kids because she has twin toddlers. Angela prepared everything. She changed her clothes. She welcomed her friend, Leonie. She's like, oh, my God, Leonie, you're here. How are you doing? And Leona's like, oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm sorry. You know, I just I needed to get out of the house anyway. And I think kids need it too oh her brother was babysitting while she was in the paint blushes at this point like maybe i should just be moving him in he's just so sweet always there to help his sister leone says How have you been angela says i'm good she's like i don't know if i was dreaming but leone's like what angela's debating if it's a good time to mention norman's random return to her and malak's life but there's another thing that's on angela's mind distracting her angela says i forgot I have to confess the truth. I was a stupid teen who wanted what's best for you, and I want to apologize. Now that Leone knows the truth of what happened between Angela and Zoro, Leone says, He always said that you were jealous of our relationship. Angela says, I am sorry. Leone says, It makes sense why he didn't want me to go to art class or get annoyed every time I mentioned you. Thank you for telling me everything. I'm not going to act like I'm not her. It's going to take time for me to want to talk to you. Please respect my space until then. 
Here is the cute setup. Angela got blankets, toys. Y'all know the bumblebee toy is probably Melak's favorite. And the little, you know, Walbert, I think that's what it's called. Like the city's mascot. Yeah. And then there's the twins. This is Leone's children. Their names are Arya and Ash Matthias. Their father's name is Zoro Matthias. So yeah. Y'all are the ones who kind of helped me with some of these names for The Sims, by the way. Fun fact. Here's a closer look at the kids. They're so adorable. She's playing with a Bratz Sasha doll. And here's Ash playing with a sheep. So yeah, <laughs> I like sheep toys be symbolizing the series, you know, for fun. Angela got them cookies, by the way. She bought it before like she came back home and she served it on a plate. It's, they're so cute. I thought this moment was so sweet. Look at little Ash. She was about to cry. You know, she's a little moody. It's time for her to go to sleep and the kids, it's time for them to leave. Angela said goodbye to Leonie, and it's time to put Malak to bed. You know, it was nice seeing her have some guests. I know that she plays with her infant auntie. <laughs> oh, sweet dreams, Malak. Mm -hmm. Angela's thinking about that conversation with Leonie. Like, what if Leonie never talks to her again? I know that, like, their friendship meant a lot, like, especially when they were younger. But now that she's older, like, what if it's just like, she's like, you know, that's my man, my man. Like, oh, well, you know, y'all are from the past. Like, I'm going to cut you off in the name of, like, being with him or something. I don't know. Like, what's going to happen? We're just going to have to wait and see what updates to see from this couple. But yeah, Angel's doing, like, a bit of her nightly routine. Just washing up, making sure her skincare is right, blow drying her hair, making sure everything is, you know. I feel like since she doesn't put as much makeup as she used to she's been in her skincare bag but then i see uni needs attention oh okay she's gonna have to say hi to uni she's like uni you know we're gonna have to sleep okay you can't be this hyper at this hour oh jump <laughs> so cute all right, we're going to say goodnight to Angela and say hello to the Tuesday. Good morning. It is Tuesday. Angela is walking her dog and her daughter, and she wants to go ahead and visit her mom and dad. Mama Addison says, Angela, you need to keep coming by. What? Like, I'm always sending the kids to you. I want you to come here. Like, girl. <laughs> Angela says, oh, mom, I have some news to tell you. Angela's dad says, oh, you know, he came to you. And Angela says, hey, he called you. <laughs> and um, her mom says, no, his parents did. We know them, not him. Angela's father says, we had to get involved, hon. We needed to know if his parents condoned that kind of behavior and look at them rectifying it. Angela says, okay, dad, uh, I know, but I just, I didn't envision it to be like this, you know? And dad says, okay, I understand. How about I make it up for you, Angela, and I make some barbecue for you? And yeah, Addison's like, yeah, your dad, his barbecue recipe got so much better. He's going to make you something on the grill. And Angela says, okay, okay, sure. Here's the area that the father will barbecue outside. So Angela's mom says to her, Sorry for not approaching you at the wedding. You are a ray of sunshine and I'm so proud of you, even though I feel like you should finish your degree. Angela says, Mom! Her mother says, I know a cute guy I could set you up on a date with. Just please let me, please. Angela says, Mom, I'm not going to date right now, okay? And then the father says, Oh, hey guys, food's ready. And he's like, Already? Oh, like, Dad. <laughs> Adam says, Angela, come here. I wanted to show you something. And Angela says, okay, dad. And he's like, hey, hun, do you know we have a workout room in the house? You could come by instead of going to like a gym or something. I mean, look at the equipment. And Angela says, okay, dad, sure. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, they're wearing their gym outfit. So they were kind of like already doing their own thing. <laughs> Oh, he made some sausage and peppers. That looks nice. And of course, Melex mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. having her meal right now. Oh, Granny's just the cutest. Oh, my heart. Angela's been getting texts and notification. She answers the phone call. Norman says, can I come over now? And Angela says, I'm out right now. But you could come by like in two and a half hours. And Norman says, okay. 
Before Angela leaves, she just wants to check up on her younger siblings. If you don't know, Angela is a middle child. Her and Byron are middle kids. Charlie's the youngest, and her sister Daniela is the oldest. So, <laughs> I don't know. I just think that it's just so cute, her relationship with Charlie. Charlie is a little bit like Daniela. I feel like they're kind of like a bit... Uh oh I'm guessing she's nervous about Norman coming by. How realistic of a reaction. Okay. They're playing some rock, paper, scissors. And after that, Angela says, I have to go. I have to pick up Malak. I have an important appointment. So yeah, she's just going to use the bathroom after that. Prepare her and Malak to leave. Her parents remodeled their home. Like this is like, I guess the home that Angela's kind of not used to. She remembers like the old style of the build. Like from that flashback from few episodes ago was the kind of the home that she's used to but yeah let's go home and see norman <laughs> so norman's talking on the phone with aaron he's like oh i'm you know sitting here i'm about to go into the house aaron says that sounds exciting i know how you've been looking forward to it norman knocks on the door angela says come in oh god i guess it's because they're enemies they're just gonna always react like that to each other until maybe there could be some sort of friendly ish i don't know child i really don't know i don't fully ever talk to sims who have enemies like unless they see each other it's on site you know what i'm saying so this is kind of different and look at the what she's thinking she's paranoid she feels like she's an, around an unpleasant sim but it's time to introduce Norman to his daughter, Malak. He's like, hey, y'all. Angela is so moody. At this point, I'm like, let her just talk to the mirror and have him sit with his baby. And he could sit next to Uni and kind of like maybe reflect also like this could have been his life had he not screwed up. Him, the dog, his kid, his girl. Like, do you know what I'm saying? So he's introducing himself, of course. Like, hey, I'm Norman, your father and she's so sweet but like she does make like a little bit crying sound effects like she sounds like she's you know of course like i don't know how to say it in english like fearful a little scared like first time meeting a sim kind of thing I, I know the word in my language it's like a specific word they say about babies who are scared when they meet someone new but yeah she seems like pretty friendly but i felt like she had a more connection with grandma byron like y'all know all the other sims but you know what she's not crying and being harsh but yeah they're just chatting of course and you know angela's wondering about co-parenting you know because he's in sulani and norman says i don't live in sulani anymore i sold that place months ago you know i was lonely and honestly i was supposed to live there with you and says mm, you know i left for a good reason and technically you know you kind of banned me from you know Sam Ishuno and, and stuff in general, right? Norman's like, okay, enough with the technicalities. And says, no, you hurt me and you just want enough of that to me. I won't allow it. Norman says, I'm sorry. Angela says, some sincerity would be nice. Norman says, so are you dating? Do I have to worry about some guy being around my baby? And just says, oh, I don't know what I saw in you. The kind of questions you ask when it's your first time meeting her. Norman says, oh, sorry, I should have framed my question right. I have a girlfriend and she just found out about Malak. Angela tries to hold in her laughter. She knows Norman must have some fake single man lifestyle to this poor woman. And now they aren't even able to live comfortably anymore. Norman says, you look cute with your hairstyle. And Angela says, yeah, but I don't need to hear that from you. After, you know, you said some stuff to me, that might have made me feel like I have to change. And Norman says, you know, I just said that to sucker punch your emotions, you know? I didn't really mean it like that. Just, I don't really care. You said it, you can't take it back. You bribed me, I mean, the list goes on. And it's like, uh, is there any way we could just like move past the situation? She says, it's going to take some time, Norman. This is not something that could just be done in one day. And he says, oh, Lord, time, time, time. My parents say this. You're saying this. I guess, you know what? We're going to just have to send Norman away before he puts my girl into that enraged state. Because he's being a little immature. I mean, it's their first time meeting you know, the baby and all that. Oh, Lord, goodbye. I look into the room. I find out that Malak, probably Uni told her, hey, let's get out of here. They're being messy. <laughs> I don't know because I literally was like, where's Malak? 
and then i see uni and her are like literally trying to fall asleep because like what <laughs> y'all i'm gonna have to put her in her bed thank god norman's out of here i'm gonna have to vacuum the floor the dust you know is piled up so yeah oh my god what an awkward first encounter hopefully the future encounters will be more pleasant i guess is the word i'm looking for y'all angela got promoted she's now an art critic do you understand congrats like oh my god i'm so happy for her let's fast forward to friday because it's a bit of the same old same old angela is at guess whose place brandy she got her a coffee machine pizza drinks you know she just moved to san sequoia and she's living in an apartment and of course angela wanted to stop by like hello she got a support especially since she said it and brandy's like oh you're really here she's like uh what do you mean i'm really here i got this stuff everything's good and she's like girl oh my god thank you so much and angela's kind of cringing like maybe the way she said it you know because she's socially awkward and paranoid on top of it so <laughs> she's just always overthinking but you know she's like all right girl where do i set up the stuff she's like oh uh actually can you come follow me and i just want to show you my room i did kind of finish that area up so angela says okay let's go Brandy's apartment is cute, y'all. And she's neighbors with Leone, by the way. So, yeah. Angela's like, this is beautiful. This is a good place. And Brandy and her start chatting. <laughs> Brandy says, thank you for not bringing fruitcake because that's what the neighbors have been getting me. And Angela says, no, I had to get you some pizza because I know you need to eat food. I know you need a drink. And you need coffee because you're a student. Like, duh. <laughs> I feel like that's how she's saying it. And, uh, you know basically brandy was like you know my parents and sister are coming by by the way but you know i'm really thankful that you brought all of this angela updates her a little bit on her life and you know brandy was like oh girl the drama and i have some you know stuff to tell you honestly can i keep it real with you angela says sure brandy tells her that she has a boyfriend that's moving in with her but not today she just didn't want to freak her parents out so she's going to be looking like she's moving in first but like he's going to be moving in with her and angela says well they're gonna know soon and you know brandy says yeah i know i know i should tell them angela says but welcome to san sequoia girly she's like oh, i know but you know uni's starting for me soon so there's something to look forward to i guess brandy's family's here and of course angela and brandy set up everything and it looks like there's a new girl here okay looks like everybody's just chilling pizza sippy cup olive is even here oh they're just the cutest brandy says bonnie you brought your bestie here and the bestie says yeah hey guys my name is lorelei i mean everybody knows me except that girl which i actually know her her name is angela and angela says you know me this is yeah i'm familiar with you i mean i'm sister-in-law with your auntie china and angela says what auntie china and then she remembers like yeah auntie china's husband is a redhead just like this girl oh she's like bingo you know me now and angela's like well like what a small world her best friend i mean i did remember auntie saying that her husband is from brindleton bay that he doesn't like going there don't really know why something like he did it on like his mom or something i don't really know and this laura like girl like who is she interesting it does kind of get a little awkward between them and it's just the first encounter so i wouldn't really take it too deeply though here's a closer look at the windmans aka bonnie and brendy's parents olive knows her dad she she talks about him she's like daddy this daddy that you know like she's just really happy about that and i think that's so sweet and i'm happy that bonnie was able to sort of like you know have them meet up every you know week once let's just say even though it's not been long since the brindleton bay so i think like he met her already maybe two or three times so yeah let's fast forward to saturday because friday was pretty much chill after that <laughs> it's saturday and angela has been really trying to work on malak to learn how to crawl i don't think you understand this guys 
it took me so long maybe 100 tries what it feels like at least okay i'm not gonna lie maybe about a good 15 to 20 times you know i had short lifespan sims do this in one try but for malak i don't know i guess she was just really comfortable with the creep y'all look who came knocking at her door and soon after guess who followed charlie like charlie and shanning just autonomously visiting it's cute but like it's so funny and random but you know angela is chatting with him it's just so cute you know like this is her first cousin so i do love that he has like that familiar tie with angela maybe it's just like her energy and her vibe that makes her feel genuine i don't know i just think it's so sweet obviously i called his mother to stop by to let her know where they were because i think they were at the pool there is a local pool around so maybe they had that and they were just to ditch the people so obviously angela was going to call her parents and china and china's like oh my god okay i'm gonna come by right now so auntie china stopped by too and um i don't think i record sunday for y'all but i uh, just wanted to let y'all know on sunday they did go to the park together uh auntie china lacy and malak there's charlie she just came by already <laughs> but yo charlie i think she must have like a rebellious state she be cussing cussing she don't care i'm like shook oh hey auntie china she's like there you are shannon you need to tell mommy when you're going somewhere oh my god like they be acting like they are teens going around the city uh-uh it's like hey auntie you know auntie's still pregnant by the way she will be probably giving birth in the new year so i just would like to give you all that info and oh hey charlie how are you doing hon oh my neck just doing the creep 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 <laughs> so cute so y'all it's gonna be winter fest soon and mama addison planned a party and family's coming out of town oh yes auntie brit's coming sicily's coming rosalie's coming duncan is coming through mr nico hess is coming through uh obviously china is coming through her husband is coming through um i think that's about it daniela is coming through she's leaving san Mishuno. so yeah it's gonna be a big family event mana can you show everyone that you can crawl like she's thinking maybe she just needs an audience like auntie china and you know shannon oh she's so adorable y'all put some yellow hearts and bumblebees in the comments for Malak. <laughs> i love that she loves the color yellow like it reminds me of the yellow power ranger oh oh my god she just does not want to do it like she's like let me creep let me cr 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 creep <laughs> let me do my little creep walk but yeah i'll see y'all for winter fest it's winter fest day so it's thursday i've jumped a couple of days and the families gathered here the esperanza family the hill family the hess family the smallwoods they're all here today together Ooh, i forgot to say the malloy family for sure um everybody's gathered here today the theme is red party and the hosts aka this household can wear a little bit of green for the event Duncan finally arrived to the party. He was late and he apologized for being late. He said hi to his father and he's just catching up with Angela. They haven't seen each other since the Brindleton Bay trip. And while they were chatting, from the corner of his eyes, he noticed a sim. And he says, what is she doing here? Angela looks at the sim. Oh, that's Lorelai. I met her recently. Duncan says, you know she's the sim that told my ex to dump me. She's best friends with my ex. Lorelai spots Duncan too. She asks China, who's that? I mean, why is he here? China says, that Duncan guy is my sister-in-law's sister's stepson. That's what I know according to my niece Daniela. Lorelai asks, why is he chatting with Angela above all the sims here? China says, mm, I don't know, but I heard that they met in Tartosa and Daniela did tell me she thinks that Angela and him have some sparks between them. That's when it hit Lorelai. That must be Duncan's new girlfriend. She doesn't like that Bonnie didn't tell her that it was Angela and it has been days since Lorelai met Angela at Brendy's apartment. 
Angela's feeling awkward about this. At the time of meeting Lorelai, she didn't know that she would be at her family event. Not only that, Angela didn't give the identity of boyfriend to anyone. Daniela tried to get information, but Angela has been dodging the questions which is a bit suspicious. Angela and Duncan have an understanding of using each other's name to say they're dating to avoid the awkward subject, but he knows Angela has kept it a mystery and he, and you know, he jumped the gun when he saw Bonnie already moved on with another sim. Angela says, oh my god, I didn't tell my family anything and now we have to pretend in he and then she interrupts them. Lorelai plays it like she already knew it was Angela. She knew Duncan was dating someone according to Bonnie but Bonnie never really gave her the identity and I'm assuming because Lorelai is like one of those sims think of like a Danielle like she's just like in your face <laughs> like she is right now so I could imagine you know Bonnie feeling like I don't want you know Lorelai being messy and confronting Angela you know what I'm saying and then you know when they met it was around her family so I could just even imagine you know Angela mumbles hey hey, Lor hey Lorelai Duncan says, yeah, we're dating. Mind your business. Okay, you saw it for yourself. I don't have to talk to you, right? I mean, God, Lorelai, you're just being messy. Uh-oh, looks like someone in the background is reacting to this conversation. Oh, shit! Oh, Ooh, not mother. Mother of eavesdropping, okay? She says, is it true, Angela? You're dating a Nico's son? Angela's like quiet. He's also shocked. You know, Lorelai's kind of like, yeah, you guys, yeah, you guys can say it. You guys can admit the truth. I mean, why hide? Yeah, you guys, you know, it's just being awkward. And Addis is like, please, Lorelai, let her answer for herself. Angela, are you? Wait, who's knocking on the door? We're not expecting any more guests. Everybody's here. David? This is bon Brittany's ex. What what are you doing here? Why is he so moody? David, what's going on? David says, Damn you, Brittany! What the hell were you thinking? When were you gonna tell me that Rosalie wasn't mine? In my death bed? What the hell, Brit? And don't you dare deny it. I got that information from the doctors that Rosalie is not my daughter. Okay, everybody's <gasps> gagging. Like, wh what? What is going on? <laughs> Brittany's like, what is he saying? No, everybody's gagging. I don't think you understand. Every <laughs> no, Rosalie. Oh no, I'm gonna cry. Oh no, Rosalie. I'm so sorry. Rosalie says, what? <laughs> Addison says, there's no way that's possible. He says, oh, I. I checked the DNA test, I have proof, and I have it with me. Addison says, I won't accept the slander you put on my sister. He says, I have proof. Addison, watch what you're saying. Does he have proof? this it's winter fest day with your family everybody's in the same room together y'all traveled across cities to see each other and you think it's gonna be a moment you're gonna remember for life because it's just gonna be great vibes and amazingness but it turns out it's gonna be a little messier than what you attended enjoy y'all it is wednesday i just want to show you all the calendar that the event happened on Friday so we are going back to time on um, Thursday it's gonna be majority of the storyline but I put the camera on right now because I felt like I had to update y'all Angela is sick so I can't believe she was kind of not even feeling her best on Friday I mean I would say she probably felt better but you know what I'm saying so oh no she's probably like mom's doing funny stuff y'all so i wanted to actually update y'all on with melak because melak's been exploring food so i just want to update y'all on her journey on what she likes and dislikes because it is a part of the growing together uh gameplay so and i know it's base game i bought too but like i'm thinking there might be more options i don't really know the difference between a base game update and the growing together update but i do still want to talk to y'all about this food that melak's been enjoying so she likes yogurt 
she likes hummus she likes oatmeal cereal she likes sweet potato puree she loves ice cream she was unsure about it on for like at first and i gave her to her a couple of times because if you remember like last episode was a span of two weeks so i was like i feel like angela was kind of like you know she was given the go-ahead to give her um mushy food so she's been experimenting to see what malaka likes so malaka loves rice porridge she loves pumpkin puree and i thought that was so cute you know because i think her first food was when her grandma made her mashed sweet potato puree which i know y'all missed up but it was on her harvest fest so now she dislikes smashed lemons and i don't know if there was another thing she disliked but since it's the holidays right i want to do something holiday-ish flavors right because it's like winter fest is around the corner she's having a mashed carrot cake type of flavor but it will be malak's first time exploring the carrot flavor so let's go for that actually it is 10 30 she did take a nap and so angela's gonna be up a little longer today she might sleep at like 1 or 2 a.m and yeah y'all if you're wondering it is late like literally look outside it's like pretty late yeah so let's go ahead and have malak enjoy her food Hear it. Here's the airplane. Oh, yeah, my volume is a little loud for the gameplay, so I'm just gonna put my volume down a little bit. Malak's unsure, so it is her first time. Look at her, just like she's like, okay. So, yeah, they updated me on her thoughts. Oh, she's grabbing this, but I love when she grabs the spoon. Oh my god. Yeah, I know she loves carnival music. Of course she does. She literally was blasting it autonomously in uh, Tartosa. Who remembers that? Tell me in the comments if you remember it because that was a moment. Ah! Sorry. That <laughs> who the F is this? Sir! I don't even know who you are. Get the F out of this house. Oh, please tell me y'all I have an option called get the F out of this house because who is this? holy uh, y'all okay i'm just gonna press just go away but like i do feel like that's so weird she's a single young lady with her daughter she's feeding her dinner she's sick like i swear to god i did not call this man y'all know there's a glitch in this game where random sims stop by get the hell out of this house I, and you know who i think this is ah! sorry i'm so sorry holy shit did the Okay, I was literally going to say that they're married. It's her teammate. But I never invited Miss Batista to stop by. And I think that's Miss Batista's husband. I'm not entirely sure, though. Let me go check. Oh, no, they're not together. I mean, like, they're not married. I think they're, like, ma like in a long-term relationship. I'm so sorry for screaming all like that. I swear to God, they scared me. It was like a horror movie. <laughs> it was like a horror movie. I was so shook. I'm so sorry. This is a small house. MC Cheats, you need to leave. Weirdo, I don't know you like that. Like, you came to my painting class and you think you could come into my house with your man? And Angela's paranoid self, like, she's not even thinking. That's how you know. You know, she would get a scared moodless. She's not getting nothing. Her daughter's talking to her. She's just like, oh. <laughs> all right y'all i'm gonna have to get angela some medication but i really need oh okay now she's talking i was worried i thought she was kind of starting to get delusional where it's like she's understanding what Melak says because she's sick you know <laughs> oh i love this area oh i need to have angela sit here why do i remember her brother more sitting here than her I finally did Angela's painting room so yeah I added some of this stuff here and I used a couple of like custom content like kind of like kits or something you know what are we gonna call it a set uh, this is in game but yeah and then y'all remember this painting the first time she ever got to re-explore painting and I thought that was such a symbolic moment for the series and she drew that sad painting in Sulani yeah so i decided to go and have that so here's another uh painting here i don't think she drew that she just bought it because she gravitated towards it, it reminds her of her old self too and then y'all remember the studio ghibli's the animes and stuff like that i feel like angela grew up on watching it for sure so yeah but yeah overall a couple of stuff i think some of them was by the cc creator syb and another cc creator maybe aida and maybe someone else i'm not entirely sure but that's the names that i remember so far so yeah ma'am what are you doing oh she wants to paint girl don't paint right now 
I know you're inspired though she was looking at her room and it really inspired her that's the truth and I understand it's it's really bringing her a lot and I don't know if I told y'all but the reason why she's able to have this room like this was that norman sent her some money extra for her and malak and she was able to use whatever she had in the house too as like a cushion money and she was like you know what like i've been putting off building and you know adding stuff to this room because it was just a bunch of boxes if you remember so yeah all right sweet dreams malak honey are you tired oh she is tired oh thank god okay so she's gonna sleep wow let's figure out wow this is really good angela where's she at with the painting skill anyway Oh, she mastered it. Help. She's so good at this. Angela, you did that. Oh, she's feeling so creative. You know, I didn't even get to tell y'all. Um, she's having a hard time with her career. So her work performance is doing better now. But it was actually like around here. But I've been trying my best. But there was just days where Angela was working at home. And she just didn't want to do her work. She had no incentive to do it. And I could tell she was just unhappy being an art critic. And I actually want to show y'all her art critic um clothes for work just in case y'all are curious because it's really cute and i did talk about it on my community tab on youtube which i love to update y'all over there on just gameplay and stuff like that but yeah this is her art critic clothes wow a masterpiece i mean she always dreamed of having something up at a at a gallery she walked in you know i'm gonna buy her a uh, medicine and then i'm gonna also have her take the medicine i know she has quite a bit of stuff to do before she goes to sleep it's 2 48 a.m listen and she going to sleep with that mask so look she's healing herself oh hey baby oh you're sad oh mom is gonna take care of you in the morning i'm so sorry my baby so angela does have some herbs so let's have her sell this stuff looks all good great she does want to play chess before malak wakes up so malak's needs aren't going that down yet so we're gonna have her go ahead and you know oh, she wants to uh, challenge her mind and she does love games i mean she literally has all this stuff for her she, i'm assuming she's really into getting that focused mood lit but i'm happy that she feels hydrated and yes thank god she didn't get no reactions from wearing a face mask wow missing out on dreams so she is worried about having unfulfilled dreams okay wait 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 wait. let's have you just change here and her family's coming over so i think she would wear this cute blue outfit and then let's go ahead and wake up malak good morning malak oh hi baby girl oh i know she did a little stinky poo poo diaper let me go and clean that up Good morning, Malak. Wait, I thought I paid my bill. Oh, yeah, because my game glitched like crazy. Your package arrived early. Oh, yeah, so she sold something that was given to her as a gift from like a long time ago. And she just felt guilty throwing it away because it did bring her a lot of happiness. But like she had no space for it in her life right now. So she did put it up and it seems like this person enjoyed it. It says, this is everything I wanted and more. Thank you. She's not a plop plopsy hustler. So please don't think that. She it was just a one time thing. And I feel like she might be realistically doing that for stuff in general. Oh, oh this needs some cleaning up. It's... Oh, and the holiday. Oh, by the way, let's talk about it. So today is Winter Fest Eve. So Angela has to bake, decorate. Uh, she has to have a festive spirit, cleaning, and invite guests. So she has quite a bit of stuff to do today. All right, so Angela's cleaning up this area just quickly before her guests come over. Oh, no. Oh, no. After I cleaned her up, she wants to play in the trash. <sighs> How are you going to put your hands in the trash? Mm-mm. Malak. We're washing Malak's hands because no, she's not. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and have Malak play with some toys. Oh, she is hungry. Girl, why did I forget that? All right, so Angela is going to give her some bottled milk. Yes. So cute. Oh, she has a sentiment with her mommy. Help, that's the cutest. Okay, so put her down here so she can play with toys now. And then she needs to call Uni and actually give attention to Uni too. Like literally time is not on Angela's side. Last night we didn't play a lot together. Here's a tree. You, who's a good girl? Oh, I love you, Uni. I'm so sorry I can't walk you this morning. I know. I'm a little out of my routine. I was sick, okay? All right, so she did pay her bills. She has 12,000 simoleons left. Ooh, we gotta work. Oh my god, Uni is not eating her food. Is she okay? 
when when does her food ever expire like that that is so scary i definitely want to go ahead and have her um fill and call uni to eat just because i don't want uni to not eat food y'all she is still not feeling good look at this mood lit stuffed up like help okay she wants to help malak what's going on with malak honey are you okay oh she is feeling sad rest time is anyone there from crying and fussing were you crying and fussing not me being neglectful oh, i'm so sorry oh she's hiccuping she oh i don't know if you know but that's actually one of her quirks she has four quirks i cheated one don't don't judge me okay but she loves wake up time loves sound a little babbler and frequent hiccups the baking is still going on i wish there was a way that she could just step away for two seconds but then this time oh they finally finally all right okay now you could go ahead quickly and no no pick her up don't sleep on the floor don't sleep on the floor i'm gonna put you on uh, right in here to sleep all right take your nap here honey i'm so sorry you're taking a late nap today i know again it's holiday it tends to happen try to go night night honey i know mom's standing right in front of you you don't have to cry okay oh lord <laughs> i'm Auntie brit rosalie sicily um yeah nico so yeah them four are gonna be here um duncan will be joining them in a bit are you ready for this to start this now yes i do yes i want to start it so they should be here oh my god they're all here with their like oh, excuse me this is the cutest thing i've witnessed help uh. they all have their own luggages oh they're all here all right y'all so i have the couple's uh luggages here and then i'm gonna have rosalie and sicily's ones so i'm gonna assume blue is for rosalie and i'm gonna put rosalie's one right here and i'm gonna put rosalie so sicily's one here i think i mixed up everybody's one but look let's just act okay Okay, oh my god, is it me or the floor is dusty? Okay, Angela, you need to sneak up here. Just tell them one second, one second. And vacuum! Vacuum! <laughs> Y'all, quickly, quick! Quick! I am so humiliated. Not my guests seeing a dusty home. They're not seeing... No! no! Sorry. <laughs> Nico says, Angela, I'd love if we could have a talk. And... I guess his heart was walking towards here, so I was like, why don't they just talk while playing chess? And, you know, he says, I see how much of a positive, you know, influence you have on my son's life. You're such a good sim. And, you know, he's been more active going out and about you know even that trip to brindleton bay i know how much you've helped him i really appreciate you and i just wanted to say it in person you know i do keep you in my prayers i love you angela like i know you're my niece already but i just i'm so happy to have crossed paths with Brittany to even meet you to help my son because my son he's been indoors he doesn't leave he doesn't go anywhere and now ever since you know he's been going to of course to therapy which i even think his therapist and you know angela's like i don't want to take credit yes think think the therapist thing like you know she's kind of like an you know she's socially awkward and he says you know it's okay if you also get some compliments you're doing amazing i see how you've grown let's go ahead though and have them go downstairs so that angela could really say hi to everyone because everyone was just standing there awkwardly and you know auntie and her are like how you doing angela's like oh my god life in santa has been crazy you know but my baby daddy knocked on my door la da 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 you know they're like whoa you know <laughs> <laughs> so you know she and nico were talking upstairs but she's just gonna act like her and nico just saw each other right now you know that he probably helped her with her luggages wink wink but he did probably play with her chest for a good like you know seven minutes before maybe everybody was like hey where are you angela we didn't even say hi properly like something like that okay <laughs> So I do want to say that cousin Cicely does dye her hair black moments before the party. I actually forgot to do her dark hair. I really did. And we're just going to act like she went to a salon moments before the party. And yeah, let's just go with that, okay? But yeah, this is cousin Rosalie, uh, you know, cousin Cicely's big sister. Oh my god, they're catching up. They were besties when they were kids. So, and even when like they do catch up, like there's like time never 
goes like even if it's 10 years like they have such a unique bond oh my god it's like it reminds me of this one relative i have where i talk to her and it's like it doesn't matter if i didn't talk to her in two months two years it's always a key you know rosalie says girl I know you're talking about San Maishuno, and you know I'm going to come to that trip. And Angela says, yeah, you could come through, but like, you know, the last time you and me were San Maishuno together, it wasn't necessarily the best. <laughs> She's like, well, what happened? She's like, you know what happened, girl. Stop. And we're going to get into that tea next episode. Mm -hmm. Oh, you still remember me, Malak? Oh, oh my God. Look how happy she is. Malak's probably like, where have you been? <laughs> Look what I caught the sisters doing. Oh my God. They are so freaking cute. This is, you know, just them having their own time together. I mean, I love this. They don't live together and they haven't lived together for a very long time. So they cherish these moments they have together. And I think that's so important with family, especially when you don't live together. Sweet dreams, Malak. Oh, you're such a good girl. You were behaving today. Oh, she already fell asleep. So Nico said that and Duncan is on his way he's a little late because he wanted to go give some gifts to his daughter for Winterfest and here he is it looks like he might have been doing a little drinking he did take a plane ride to San Sequoia so it wasn't like some driving hey Angela Angela says hey I haven't talked to you for a minute are you good Duncan says I'm sorry things have been hectic in my life Angela says, I bet our lives have changed a lot. Deke says, well, how are you holding up? Angela says, I'm good. Sorry you have to be sleeping in the living room. Duncan says, it's okay. Thank you for welcoming me. You know we have to do something about your place. It needs some Winterfest spirit. Angela says, oh, I know. I guess we're going to have to go shopping tomorrow. You know, I was kind of just depending on the family event to kind of make me save some money for Winterfest. He says, uh uh, we going out tomorrow, okay? I got you. I know a store that's probably going to be opened. And I know I'm a little tired, you know, I'm a little drunk, but yeah, I got to go to sleep, okay, Angela? Thank you so much. Angela says, you're welcome. Here's everyone asleep. Yes. Sicily is sharing the room with Malak. Here is Rosalie asleep. And Angela Aww. is her roommate. Come on, for their childhood, I had to. And here is Duncan asleep in the living room. Knocked out cold, might I add. And Uni sleeping in the living room too. And of course her aunt and uncle are sleeping in her bed. Let's fast forward to the next day. It's Winterfest day. Let's go out of town just to get some little items for our Angela's home to give us some Winterfest spirit. Because you know what? Maybe he's right. Even though y'all probably won't see it. But let's just say they bought some stuff and had a little, you know, stuff around Angela's home to make it feel like the holiday spirit, even if it's maybe a little too late. But, you know, I think she learned her lesson from this. And Duncan says, okay, you ready for the party? You like everything we got? Cicely is like, oh my god, I'm late for my hair salon appointment. They're like, okay, okay, Cicely, we're going to take you. <laughs> so, yeah, it looks like things are okay. They're just talking about their their par the other parents they co-parent with and just how good that it's been, like their situations. It's not as bad as they used to think it, you know? Like, it's not, they're in a better place is what I'm trying to say. And Nico's even joining in. Oh, what a nice hug. That is so sweet. Hours later, the family is now here at the Hills family residence, and luckily for them, they arrived at the perfect time, as they're all so excited to decorate the tree at the foyer of the Hills household. So I just love this for them because not only were they kind of a little argumentative, judgmental of the decoration choices, they wanted to honor at least the colors green and gold and like you know some red of course so i love that and they did such an amazing job with this tree it's cold outside but the fire keeps us warm we can't spend the night underneath the mist
mistletoe And I've gotten you a present that I put under the tree Tomorrow it is Christmas, the first for you and me The snow is falling down And the storm is on its way But as long as you're around Everything will be okay now the part we're all waiting for, the current timeline. The timeline where it was the previous episode's cliffhanger. When David stormed in and accused Brittany of cheating and that Rosalie isn't their daughter. Oh, how dare you, David? Brittany says, how dare you lie on our baby like this in front of my family? David says, I'm sick, Brittany. And she tried to see if she's a match, and I find out she's not even related to me. I didn't even ask Cicely because I thought she was just so young. <laughs> if you didn't notice, the Sims all went into the living room together, the ones who weren't really involved in that conversation. They were shocked. They didn't they didn't expect this at all. They did not expect hearing this. Like, what do you even say in that moment? You just have to be silent and listen in what they're saying. David asks, have you cheated on me in the past, Brittany, while we were together? For once, I know I did. I was honest about being a cheater. I never pinned a baby on you. There was one time, a long time ago, David says, I knew it, you weren't innocent. Brittany says, I didn't know she wasn't yours. I'm finding out for the first time too, David. I'm so sorry, Rosalie. This breaks my heart. Rosalie runs away in a panic. I have to go. Daniela says, I'm coming with you. Angel says, me too. Cecily says, I'm going. Bryson, Charlie, and Duncan, yeah. So they all left and Lorelai was talking to her brother and her sister-in-law and she said this was way better than last year when mom showed up drunk and mad, right Lucas? Ooh, we are out of the family gossip rotation. Brittany's sister Addison in the background was saying, can you guys sit down? Can we sit down and talk about this slowly? So their mother stood up before the guests and told them, I'm so sorry, we're going to be having a serious family discussion and I apologize for cutting this event short. I hope you guys enjoyed whatever time you were here and may we all come back together in a better circumstance. We're back at Angela's home right now. Oh my god. They were able to tell Rosalie, let's go back to the home. Like she wanted to almost like go to the airport or leave. Like she was just freaking out, you know? And they were like, no, you can't leave. This is not the right space to leave, you know? So they ended up going back home together. And they're just sitting outside, the three of them, Duncan, Cicely, and Daniela, as, you know, Angela sit right beside her cousin who's been crying her eyes out for the past hour. It's been two hours and she's been crying like this. And Angela's been reassuring her from across the bed. Whenever you're ready, Rosalie, you can talk. No pressure. We're here for you at the end of the day. And Rosalie tells Angela how she feels in the moment. How scared she is. Angela says, I'm so sorry, sis. I love you. And this won't change nothing between us. Rosalie says, you don't understand. What's the point of being a daddy's girl if my dad hates me? Angela says, he was more mad at not knowing. He loves you so much. Rosalie says, just when my mom and I started to reconnect. Angela says, did you guys ever talk about her relationship with your dad? It was really toxic. Your dad continuously cheated on your mom and he was never faithful to her and she kept going back to him until she left after Cicely was a toddler when he slept with Cicely's preschool teacher. You can understand why she chose Tartosa and being a gardener and freelance baker. You know, she went through a lot. She left San Sequoia to Evergreen Harbor to Tartosa. Ask Cicely, she knows. Rosalie wondered to herself, if any of this is true, how come she doesn't know? Cicely and Daniela came into the room. Cicely says, sorry, you know, 
I could overhear your conversation, by the way, because, you know, the walls were kind of thin. But mom did tell me when she got remarried what happened between her and dad. She told me never to repeat what she did in the past and that if I see any sign of weirdness in a relationship to leave, just like Angela's mother did. Because Auntie Addison knew her worth, Daniela said, see babes, we're all here no matter what. There's no shame. Plus, you get to have two fathers potentially rosalie says i just want my dad only it was an emotional night for everyone and no one went to sleep that night they were just talking and it felt like a sleepover but like the worst sleepover to have of course over at the hills residence britney says yes i did cheat on you around the time i got pregnant but that was when i found out you cheated on me for the third time fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on me but this time i wanted revenge i contacted your lover's husband and we had revenge intimacy i got pregnant and i assumed it was yours it was just two times and rosalie looks just like my mom my dear did it not occur to you that there was a chance that this baby would not be david's child not even an inkling addison says i can attest Brittany has never doubted you as a father when you guys broke up she visited me and stayed with me for a week before moving away to tartosa we had a lot of personal chat this must have been something that she never thought twice of nico adds i knew of the affair before we got married she told me everything and i know she was a different woman then and what drove her to do that Brittany asks do you want a fraternity test for sicily david says no Sicily has my eye color and my blood type. I don't doubt Sicily is not my daughter. Brittany says, I apologize, David, for being negligent with this. Brittany, baby girl, do you know the father's contact information by any chance? Brittany says, I know where he lives only, but he's still with his wife. And last I heard through the grapevine, they had a child together. David asks, can we visit them tomorrow? They need to know the truth. Brittany asks, what's the point? You're Rosalie's dad. David says, I know, but this poor man needs to know. Angela's father, who's been intently listening to this conversation, has chimed in for the first time. Can I admit that I thought this was some sort of switched at birth thing from the beginning and not some affair confession from almost three decades ago? And everyone laughs. <laughs> Hey y'all, we are back in the gameplay and so it is 10 a.m. the next day. So what you missed was breakfast time, Angela and the girls and Duncan were just all making a big batch of breakfast. Of course, Rosalie did not want to be involved and Cicely, they were telling her she didn't have to, but then Cicely wanted to join them. So they ended up having breakfast together. So they had leftovers and basically rosalie uh, was like let me just take it over to the other house and duncan went with rosalie to check on his father as he should and you know byron and uh, what's her name byron and charlie aka you know i don't know if you know but charlie's name is charla or charla whatever you want to say but i call her charla and it's because i named her angela daniella charla do you get what i'm saying so that's like they all have a lot for the girls and then it was just byron like random okay but i don't even know if you know but their names are a b c d fun fact anyway i don't want to get too much talkative but they're about to do a power walk and you know when the kids went there they were like grandparents were like oh my god we want to do a power walk we love power walks and they were like the uh, you know the the maternal grandparents are here and the paternal grandparents so you know daniela was like wait let me join y'all in this and cecily was like yeah let me do this too like you know she actually ended up going with the grandparents they drove her there yeah. look at the gagging <laughs> i am gagging wait let me take a photo y'all one second but i could tell angela wanted to make sure her daughter is protected come on come on group come on group look at the grandparents if you don't know, these two are the maternal, let me just repeat again. This is the maternal grandparents. This is the paternal grandparents. This is Angela's big sister. And this is Angela's first cousin from her mother's side. Angela's father's side uh, cousins are children, if you remember. I love this. They're just taking a path together. Y'all, look at Angela. Is she advertising? Oh, she back to her social media era. Look at Malak posing with her. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm so done. Oh my god, Angela has work in a bit. She's gonna work from home today because she does have guests. And you know, the whole family thing, like Rosalie wanted to go partying with Angela. And y'all already know they talked about partying in San Mashuna. She does want to go there with her. <laughs> Help! Why are my Sims misbehaving? She's thinking about Del Sol Valley. Maybe like they're talking about like I would love to move there. And she's probably like, girl, come to San Mashuno instead, you know? Oh. <laughs> I love them. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love the animation for that water bottle. Oh, she's glitching. Honey, go to sleep if you're tired. Oh, she is tired. Oh, they're done. Oh, Grandpa is tired. Okay. It looks like grandparents are not going to the place. Okay, so cool. I think it's just going to be Angela, her big sister, Cicely, and her younger siblings that are going to be going to the arcade together. And I can't wait to show y'all. It's a cool build by my friend on Twitter. And I will show y'all the location. So Angela's going out with her siblings, Cicely and her cousin, Shannon. So they are here. This lot is called the Grand Prix. So this simmer is so, so talented talented and i'm going to link their socials below and basically the simmer added some cc from warong and sepsid and when i saw this build i was like oh i want this in my game like right now so <laughs> here it is they're about to go inside and here's outside of the lot <laughs> So what's Rosalie's day like? She's meeting the family with her mom. So Brittany says, you guys, let's prepare ourselves. You know, they are not expecting us to knock on their door. We don't know, you know, what might happen. They may reject us. And I just want everybody to be mentally prepared in case anything happens. So Brittany knocks on the door and she's waiting for a response. She knocks the door again, and let's see what's going on in the house. Seems like the couple is in the house, and they don't know what's outside. And, you know, she's like, hey, did you hear a door knock? He's like, yeah, I'll go check on the door. So he steps outside, and he instantly recognized her, Brittany Malloy. What are you doing here? Actually, it's not a good time. Brittany says... You are the biological father of my daughter. Our daughter? Zorian shocked. That's not possible. No way, no way, please come in. Zorian says, I knew you were pregnant before you moved away to Evergreen Harbor. I just didn't know it could have been mine because we used woohoo protection methods. David says, sounds like more than once or twice to me. Rosalie is vomiting internally like she wish she could just orbit somewhere else. Brittany says, we can't focus on the past. I just want to confirm, after you were pregnant, you moved away directly, right? And Brittany says, yeah, you know, David felt like he wanted to cheat on me on a different you know, city. That's kind of just his thing. He's not into relationships or commitment. He was just, I mean, you know what? And then David says, yeah, we can't focus on the past, okay? It took me a while to figure out who I was, that I am a single man. I'm always meant to be single. I'm not supposed to be into any sort of long-term relationship. And that's okay. I know who I am. I love who I am. And I've learned to accept myself. 
I heard you guys have a child. How old is your child out of curiosity? Mary says, we have a son. However, we already know it's your son. David says, this is a nightmare. Do y'all know this couple's son by any chance? Like, I'm trying to zoom in the photo for y'all. Like, hmm, so Ryan is his father's name. And is that Zorro? Let me mind my business. After the whole thing with my wife's affair, I decided I wanted to forgive her and work on the relationship again. Mary says, well, I feel like that was under a false pretense, Zorro, and I want a separation. Like, how dare you cheat on me? Zorro says, you cheated first, and then on top of it, I raised our son, who's not even biologically mine, and I had to suck it up. I didn't want to stress you out during your pregnancy when you confessed everything. And then when you gave birth and it was just so shocking. And, you know, his wife's like, I, I'm still so shocked and I'm allowed to feel how I feel, Zoro. This is devastating. Everyone is listening to the crumble of this relationship. They had the perfect Saturday, like every Saturday in a long time. This is so sad. There was an awkward silence. It was almost like they were giving them a moment of silence for the relationship's downfall or something. It was just so quiet. Rosalie says, Hi, Zoro. Can I please have your number? Zoro gives Rosalie his phone number and they try to keep in contact. And Rosalie learns that she has an aunt that lives in San Myshuno. David asks, Can you give me my son's number? Does he already know? Mary says, he knew. It was obvious. He looks just like you. Brittany says, we all have to travel back soon, but I would love if we can arrange something. David says, I wouldn't have come here had I not been ill. I need a donor. Mary says, well, I don't have the best news for you, David. Our son has met you already, and he has no desire of ever meeting you again. David asks, what on earth could I have possibly done to this child for him to have such a strong, negative, opposing views on me? Did you guys say something to him? And they said, no. Let's go and have this flashback moment to get the full tea to understand why Zoro feels this way about his biological father, David. See, Zoro was very excited to meet his father. He impulsively went on a trip to Evergreen Harbor and took a bus from San Sequoia to Evergreen Harbor. He's calling Leone right now because this is like a year after they graduated high school. So in my mind, they're like 18 years old. And, you know, he's saying, oh, I'm here. And, you know, I tracked my dad down. I know that he likes to party. He's always on these party Facebooks kind of thing. So finally, I get to meet him, you know. But, oh, my God, pollution here is nasty. Oh, my God, I don't even know how my dad could live here. So he goes to the club, one that David frequents to. And it is going off like there's a lot of sims people are just dancing zoro sits down at the bar hey i'd like to have a cool drink whatever that is <laughs> the bartender was like okay sure buddy here's a drink enjoy zoro spots david dancing on the dance floor and you know he's like that's a cool guy he likes to have fun he likes to dance and we look really similar oh my god i can't wait to meet him i can't wait to say hi but as Zoro tries to approach his father, he sees that he kisses this lady on the dance floor. Then he's out here holding another girl's hand. And then he goes and kisses this lady. And Zoro's here looking at his dad hugging this other random lady. And she's talking about, oh, I'm your favorite girl. And then these two girls are arguing about how they're his number one girls. And they just start fighting. And he's like in the background kissing another girl. This is a mess. This is not a good way to meet your father for the first time. He's asking this girl to woohoo him in the bathroom. And these two girls are fighting over him. Like, y'all are losing the plot, okay? What a mess. Like, look at Zoro shook. Like, what on earth? Like, I heard the city's trashy low-key, but like, I did not know it could go down like this. And then my father's causing the mess? Like, why they promote him on Facebook? But like, then he, on top of it, look at him. 
the girl he goes to take home is another lady out of all of the girls like what is going on like he's so embarrassed he's trying to hide his face he's look at me he has a bottle in his hand he drank so much like what why is he doing this <laughs> he's so confused and this girl goes i'm your number one right you're gonna take me home he's like of course i am he's like oh, uh, uh now i can understand why this city is so dang toxic i don't want to ever meet this man uh-uh i believe in one true love the way he go about his life mm -mm. david says come on i'm a cute single party guy above all things to get mad at me for the two things i'm good at partying and woman rosalie says i love him and i wouldn't change a thing i mean it's true we party together and he is who he is Brittany says, they are very close. However, maybe your son may have a change of heart now that he has two sisters. Mary says, he does have kids too and he's kind of going through a separation right now and he has moved back home. It may not be the best time to break this news to him. Brittany says, do you guys have any other kids? Zorian says, no, we are blessed with our son and our grandchildren. And of course, Rosalie now. Rosalie says, so Cecily has some nieces and nephews? Brittany says, you do too. We're like a blended family. Mary says, we'll figure it all out, Rosalie, okay? David, I know you need a donor. But there's a chance you might have another few kids out there that you don't know of. David scoffs. Ugh. Come on, I'm not that bad. Angela and Daniela are back home. And Angela's going to go upstairs to change Milak and have her get ready to go to sleep. Look at Uni with her Winterfest outfit. Isn't she so cute? Daniela is entertaining her while Angela's upstairs. And there you go. Sweet dreams, Malak. If you don't know, Grandma Addison did her hair today. It was just so cute. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. And she's wearing a shirt from Charlie when she was a little tired, you know, sorry, infant. <laughs> so cute. Since there was a lot of commotion, now that everybody went back to their hometowns, all the grandparents, cousins, aunties, you know, the girls are good to have their own sleepover moment and Daniela is actually traveling back home to sit in my show no tomorrow and they got to show each other their winter fest themed clothes oh it just melts my heart seeing them two sisters together like this angela confessed the truth about how her and duncan are fake dating angela says I wasn't able to talk about it because I wanted to be there for Rosalie, but Lorelai knows Duncan from his past and things were colliding. Daniela says, I'm so sorry you went through this. That Lorelai chick always comes around with the weirdest energy. Things are so confusing for Angela right now. She doesn't know what to think of anything. For the first time in a long time, Angela felt hurt by her sister. Daniela has shown Angela how much she loves her, and since Angela, her, with her love language, it is acts of service and words of affirmation, Daniela has done an excellent job of presenting her love for Angela. Daniela's love language is quality time, she's a loner sim, and she does like to be alone but with her loved ones too, and it may come off sometimes self-centered because of how much alone time she likes. Angela cried a lot, and she needed it. She needed a good cry. She needed to release her emotions about this. And thankfully, Daniela was there. She held on to her sister so tightly. There, there, my little sister. As long as I'm alive, I will always be there for you, Angela. Let's go to sleep. It's pretty late. It's the next morning. It's Sunday morning and Daniela's flight is in a few hours. She has to catch this plane. The taxi is on its way for her. Malak is having oatmeal for breakfast and yeah so Daniela is craving a sweet and sour eggplant dish I know it's morning but she wants to eat that dish early in the day and as she should Angela joined her and she was like you know what let's go ahead and order this so yeah the delivery person came by she, you know she picked up the food you know while uh, Malak was getting ready to have her breakfast you know Angela's like oh god my period 
it's been more stressful because of all the stuff going on and you know her sister's like oh i totally understand don't worry about that dear you know and look at Melag just talking to her auntie you know that she's a little babbler so she got some things to say <laughs> Daniela is telling Melak a story about her city adventures. Melak has no idea what she's hearing, but you know, she's thinking it's some amazing stuff for sure. <laughs> Look at Angela struggling. She's like, oh my God, I need to start eating with chopsticks more often. What is wrong with me? I was an expert. Uh, Daniela's like, oh, they did not give us the best chopsticks with the delivery. <laughs> <laughs> and then Angela's like, okay, I'm gonna have to buy some for us. And you know, Manak's like, what are they saying? I'm eavesdropping though. Oh no, it's time for her to leave. Uh, goodbye, Daniela. Oh, she's like, I love you, Angela. Daniela's, oh, oh, I'm so, I'm, I love their relationship. I love how it's going for them. And, you know, they're planning the trip for San Maishuno. You know, Daniela said, you could stay with me, sis. I don't know. You trying to sleep anywhere else. And Angela's like, as if I was going to sleep anywhere else. Okay. I'm going to be staying at your place. Your place is my place, sis. And she's like, okay, well, you know, if anything happens, please talk to me. Don't hesitate. I will try to, you know, not go to work and just try to come through here or anything, you know. And then she's like, okay, cool. I don't know if you know. Oh, goodbye. Oh. Goodbye, girl. Take care. So, Malak's already tired. So, you know, Angel's like, let me just go and give her a nap. She could sleep in my arms. It's just a peaceful, quiet Sunday. I love this. Just quiet. After all that ruckus, it's just her and her daughter again. Angela says, let me go ahead and FaceTime Malak's father because I'm sure he'd want to see her just so cute and asleep. Norman answers, hello? She says, hey, this is your daughter. Don't you want to see her asleep? He's like, thank you so much for calling me. Oh my God, I cannot believe it. Oh, she's so cute. Angela says, you know, I'm actually traveling to San Maishuno soon. Do you want to have like a weekend with Malak while I'm doing like this, this event? And he says, yeah, I would love that. Thank you so much for telling me and even considering me. Back to the mundane. Aww. Back to the everyday life. Angela is writing an article for her work, you know, like a little column. And she's an art critic if, like, you know, she has to talk about art and stuff like that. And, you know, she does battle with that, you know, critiquing art because art is subjective. So she doesn't like to bash artists. She'll try to, like, say, like, you know, maybe it may not be her favorite art, but that she knows someone else would truly cherish it, you know. And her work kind of is, like, you know, I'm not saying they're trying to get her to be sleazy, but, like, I feel like somewhat, like, some of her coworkers who kind of go a little sleazy get rewarded for being like that. And Angela doesn't want to compromise who she is just to be this quote unquote, you know, critic. Angela is like, oh my God, I hope they're okay with this. <laughs> she's doing some more research. She's just, you know, trying to get in her bag. And since she's been working, you know, at home the last like, few days since the holidays and stuff, she is writing like about some art pieces, stuff that caught her attention. And I love that for her. So the paint blushers are meeting up together today. And of course, they're just going to do what they do. Paint slash, you know, maybe flower arranging, you know, trim the bonsai and stuff like that. So, yeah, I love that for them. I just love that, you know, she has a place that she could go with like-minded sims. And this San Shuno event, she's going to be around other like-minded sims, you know. There you could see Brendy in the background. I know she's looking forward to this trip. So they booked their flights and it's actually going to be in, I'd say like the end of this week. They're going to go to San Maishuno. So it's almost around New Year's Eve, I believe. Angela's giving Malak a mashed peas for dinner. <laughs> Isn't that the cutest? It's like, vroom, vroom. Let's see, does she like peas? Hmm. Oh, I think she likes it. She is very happy with the bites. Oh, yeah. She's curious, though. I like that. Oh, she made a mess. Uh, oh, my God. She hiccuped after she ate. <laughs> She's so cute. Okay, y'all, we need to go ahead and give Malak a shower because she needs to clean her face. Oh, and I have to change her hairstyle back. 
Ooh, we gotta get like how to do this hairstyle from grandma i feel like angela knows how to do it but you know she did not get the tea like you know she just does whatever simple little bows and stuff like that but you know her mama know how to style hair right so yeah oh she's ready to go to sleep y'all oh she's a little anxious please soothe her oh she is oh, i love that sweet dreams malak Oh, she's so happy. Okay, she's not crying anymore. Oh, Angela. All right, girl. Yeah, you could go. The way she just sensed her daughter is going to sleep is kind of insane. But, like, she is a mother. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Y'all, let's go ahead and have a time jump. Okay, so it's nighttime. Angela is just working on painting and, you know, she's feeling like kind of like this bossy type of energy vibe and she's feeling empowered with herself. So she's going to go ahead and paint this confident painting. And so far, it's looking very high fashion. I'm like, okay, Angela, I did not know that because, you know, you and me know that Angela loves her a little, you know, landscape art and she loves looking at the outside because of her loves outdoor slash outdoorsy lifestyle. That's just like her forte, but what i'm noticing is because angela works with the paint blushers as a club and she you know is in the art critic career this is helping her diversify some of her art while landscape painting is her number one painting other things is just as fun for her she's gonna make some tea she just got into the tea making skill so y'all i got it's a mod by the way but yes she is making fresh homemade tea right now and she here's the door she recognizes that it is Duncan outside. Duncan apologizes to Angela about just the whole lie of fake dating and, you know, abruptly leaving. But Angela, the moment she hears that, she goes in for the kiss. Time's been moving slowly, so we are ready in to This video is not meant for all audiences. There will be talks of mature subject matter. And to my photo sensitive audience, please know that this episode may have a little bit more effects on my video. So viewer's discretion is advised. Angela led Duncan to her room. I mean, I feel like they've been waiting for this to see was something there between them or was it just purely circumstantial? I mean, the intensity is there. The respect is there. There's definitely some passion there. They have similar stories with their baby parents and yet something was missing. Let's actually go to the reality to see what happened between them. Duncan and Angela wanted to kiss each other again so bad, but they both kind of had that feeling. Angela says, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I, I don't know, it just, I'm sorry. And Duncan says, I, I don't want to ruin our friendship. And as much as it felt okay and nice to be wanted, Angela says, yeah, I don't want to ruin what we have. I'm sorry. I hope it doesn't get weird between us. I also think faking it confused us. Duncan says, we only have to fake it one more time and we could split up. My ex is here and she wants us to have another double date. Angela says, I, I don't know if I can do it anymore, Duncan. Is that why you came to? What Was this why you actually came? Duncan says, no, no, I, I wanted to check on you after the whole family dharma thing for sure, but just please one more time, Angela, and 100% we will split up after that and like just announce it. We don't have to do any of these charades anymore. Angela says, honestly, I'm just not in the mood to travel to Brindleton Bay. Duncan says, it's here in San Sequoia. I just need to be a good father to my daughter. I need to show my ex I'm there. And I know. I put you on these weird standards and in this scenario with me. I'm so sorry, Angela, just this last time. And I'll just tell her I'm single. I promise I'll change my life after that. Angela didn't understand what he meant by that. And she's like, what are you talking about? And he says, honestly, my life is a mess. 
I haven't really went to my therapy like that and I'm really going through it and she says well if you promise me that things are going to change for you and that it's going to get better Duncan I will go with you tomorrow and Duncan says I promise I will change and I'm going to contact my therapist and I'm going to do better I don't want Bonnie to notice and if she notices I'm scared that I'm gonna lose my daughter I'm scared I'm gonna lose her for good I don't want you to lose your daughter Duncan I'll show up tomorrow but please please know that it's gonna be my last time I do this because I don't know if I feel comfortable doing this anymore Angie I promise you it's gonna be the last time that we ever do this again and we're just gonna be friends only see you tomorrow night okay see you when Duncan left Angela was by herself she wondered why she even had to go to this double date thing I don't understand but also just the whole interaction with Duncan was emotional like she kind of really wanted to like woo -woo, okay I'm not gonna lie my girl has been having some let's say flirty mood lit dreams <laughs> She was like, probably like, dang, you know, but you know, at the same time, she, her feelings were there, okay? She, she's an emotional person, okay? So she, I want to say fell in love because I don't think she's in love with Duncan, but she probably could have one day and it just kind of sucks that it had to be like this. Let's go follow Duncan back home. Duncan finally made it back home and it was a bit of an intense day for him too. He didn't think that he, him and Angela would have to split that agreement. And yes, when you go into Aunt Duncan's home, he kind of just let go of his responsibilities. He let his chores pile up and you know, his father hasn't been visiting him for a while. Duncan, I believe, lives with seasonal affective disorder and it is winter, so it's been a rough winter. You know how winters are in Willow Creek and also he just has a lot of other mental health um, illnesses that I really don't know the names of, but I just know that it must have not been easy growing up without living with your mother and, and then not only that, he had to kind of just like be an only child. His father never dated and he probably didn't make a lot of friends in school when he was younger and then he had to move away when like the first ever girl he probably dated to another city and then you know her family is like I would say a little weird and they weren't really like mediating their situation and they were just like on their daughter's side and you know it was just not easy for him he lost his daughter he right now is in his daughter's in his life he's trying to hold on to money for dear life he barely spends money like that just like a you know frozen box of pizza or something you know it's like he's not really like putting so much effort and i just feel so bad for him you know but he is gonna change he contacted his father he told he texted his father like dad i am not good please come so his father is definitely buying a plane ticket from tartosa in like a day or two to see what's going on with duncan but let's fast forward to the next night to see what happens at the restaurant so right now we are at the restaurant by the bridge it's called Le Petite Maison, okay? Duncan and Angela are out with Bonnie and her boo, Xander, okay? I mean, it's a double date, so it's supposed to be flirty, fun, cutesy, like all the vibes, you know? And of course, like, look at the vibe. <laughs> What's going on here, child? But, you know, at the end of the day, Angela is putting on an act, and so is Duncan. They're selling it. Look at them wow i mean the flirting got my girl all hot and bothered okay <laughs> i had the kawaii cc mod in for this episode and i just wanted to see how it works i feel like she's overthinking and i'm like you're good, you're good you know i feel like they're just exchanging looks it's not so dramatized like how she's acting but yeah it's a seafood restaurant here i mean obviously it's the freshest fish okay the men got the red the girls got the white <laughs> angela's showing that body oddy honestly the more the date went on it just started to look like a bunch of chatter to angela she was just kind of going with the motions she really didn't want to be there like between you and me like the first time she went it kind of somewhat was energizing to be around other adults but then this time around she's just tired the faking just gotta stop 
Y'all, look, the owner of the pink plushers. Oh my god, she's hanging out with her big sister. She actually lives with her sister, by the way. Yeah, that's cute. Angel says, um, I have to step out. I'll be back. And Bonnie says, oh, okay, uh, I'm going to have to go too. Give, give me a second, guys. So Angela goes to the washroom because she actually needed to use it. Bonnie's just reapplying her makeup, just making sure everything is okay. I'll be out of your hair. Just give me one more second, Angela. Finally, she got to wash her hands. And, you know, Angela is also going to probably just apply some stuff in the mirror for herself, too. I don't know. Something about an establishment having a full-length mirror, you just got to respect. Like, <laughs> So, of course, they're going to check themselves out. Like, hello? Do you not see they're serving? Bonnie just blurts it out. I think I'm going to break up with him. Angela says, huh? Why? Bonnie says, I'm sorry, but I think I'm still in love with Duncan. <sighs> and I need some time to myself. And ever since he's just been around, gosh, I'm so sorry. Angela says, you should tell him. Bonnie says, huh? What kind of girlfriend are you? Angela says, don't consider me or my feelings. He's a good man. Oh, we aren't serious anyway. I was thinking of breaking up with him too. And to be honest, I love the friendship we got out of this. And the fact that you connected me to your sister who I absolutely adore. And now we're going to be going on a trip together tomorrow. Also, it's just a little too much because your best friend is kind of related to me. And she's like part of my family. <sighs> Bonnie says, mm, I got a headache listening to all of that. Are you sure you won't feel weird if I end up doing something like that? Angel says, not at all. Okay, well, you go ahead to the table. Uh, I'm just going to be making a call right now. Angel says, okay. Bonnie was confused about everything, but she had to make that call ASAP. Bestie, I need to FaceTime you right now. So, are we keeping secrets? Why didn't you tell me that you actually know Angela? Lorelai says, and why didn't you tell me she's dating Duncan? Oop, is that an Uno reverse card, Lorelai? Bonnie continues, I have no time for this. I'll call you back. Xander's saying, okay, okay, Duncan, you pay this time. Duncan says, uh, I was going to pay. I don't know why you thought I wasn't going to pay. And Angel says, oh my God, y'all are just competing over who pays the bills. Like, I don't get it. But yeah, Bonnie says, uh, is it okay if we talk after they leave? Just sit here for a bit. And Xander says, sure, let's talk. Duncan tells Angela he's going to walk her home. And while they were walking, Duncan says, you were in the bathroom a little too long. Angel says, yeah, that's how girl talk works. <laughs> I am so distracted by the beauty of this area. San Sequoia deserves so much more. More lots and definitely apartments. Ah, I don't know. Yeah. That's my opinion. Let's go back to the restaurant. Like, what did Bonnie want to say to Xander? I don't know about you, but I'm nosy. So I'm going to have to find out. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to have to find out. Xander's tickling Bonnie like what you gotta tell me that's so important at this hour that you felt like you couldn't tell me anywhere else Honestly Xander, I'm not feeling it between us. I think you're nice and I just I need to be alone He says I understand that I respect that. Is there anyone else? She says Maybe but not really. He's like, okay. Well, I had a really great time with you and she says I had a great time too Xander promise you don't hate me I don't hate you, I promise. We're good. I promise we're good. I, I just feel like I'm such a bitch. I just like broke up with you after a date and I'm sorry. It was just on my mind. He says, I know timing wasn't perfect, but it's life. That's what happens, right? Well, goodbye, Bonnie. Bonnie feels so guilty and she decides to stay at the bar and she asks for a drink. She's basically stays there for another hour and the bartender was really nice i mean i don't know why she was flirting with him autonomously but look that's her business okay she was just venting though but of course maybe she just wanted to do it in a flirty manner <laughs> angela and duncan are back home but they're not entering the property yet they're not even going up the stairs what are they looking at why are they frozen oh crap what is he doing here that car belongs to only one douchebag i know my baby daddy. Duncan says, I know, but we're gonna have to walk. We're gonna have to face him, okay? 
I know you probably had your boundaries and that you didn't want him to come around certain hours, but he's here. Maybe there's an emergency. Let's just hear him out. What are you doing here, Norman? Norman says, hey, Angela, I'm here to see my daughter. You weren't answering the door, so I just had to sit here and wait. Angela says, my brother is asleep and he was babysitting my lack. He probably didn't hear you. It would have been better to contact me beforehand. I apologize, Angela. You could see Uni's even here. I just felt weird if I left Uni and I don't know where your doggy door is and how even Uni escaped out to see me. I just felt a little obligated to stay here and I know I would have probably just called you had Uni not stepped out. Norman says, nice to meet you. And Duncan says, Malak's dad. Norman says, yeah, that's my mini me. Norman, I still don't understand why you felt the need to come at this hour. Why are you here? I mean, I know you want to see your daughter, but is there something else? Can we talk inside? I don't feel comfortable talking outside. So, it was nice hanging out tonight. And don't forget the announcements we gotta do and stuff like that. Yeah, it was fun. It was nice hanging out with you. She's like, yeah, it was nice hanging out with me too. <laughs> Her little self-absorbed side definitely jumped on you. It's like, oh, okay, Angela. All right, but you funny, okay. It was nice hanging out with you for real. I had a lot of fun. And she says, I had a lot of fun, Duncan. Norman says, bro, you could kiss her. I'm not going to get jealous. And Angela's like, ugh, have some decorum. Ugh. Thank God you were wearing your sweater, baby. How long were you sitting out there? Don't do that again, okay? Promise mommy right now. Let's go, I'll grab you a treat. Angela brings Malak downstairs and Norman says, you know that guy, he's a cool guy. I like him. Angela says, too bad, he's not my boyfriend, just a friend. Norman says, mm, I'm kind of nervous, to be honest. Malak's having her first sleepover with me on Saturday and I just needed some more notes or something. Angela says, I'm getting you all her toys and the product she uses. You're good. If my little brother can babysit her, then you can take care of your own daughter, Norman. Norman says, oh, um, by the way, I have an extra room. You could stay over with us. Angela says, I don't know you like that. Sorry. And it's kind of low-key weird. Plus, my sister already lives inside my show now. There was an awkward silence for a while and Norman said, okay, suit yourself. Erin, here she is. Look at my baby girl. Isn't she the cutest? <laughs> she's like, oh my god, she's gonna be coming over this weekend. I'm nervous kind of thing, you know? Norman's gonna be taking care of his daughter this weekend while Angela has fun in San Myshuno. It's the next morning and Angela's sleep is interrupted. Hello? I don't know what you did to be a blessing in my life. Bonnie said she wants to have a joint custody with me if I move to Brindleton Bay. Thank you, Angela. Oh, wow. Duncan says, I told her we were faking it after she asked me how I would move to Brindleton Bay with a girlfriend in San Sequoia, so we don't have to play a part around her anymore. I know the reason you wanted me to fake date you was because you didn't want your family to contact Norman, but I guess that's not the- Angela interrupts. That's great. I, I didn't need to any of that anymore anyway. I have to go right now. My little sister Charlie's calling me. Hey, Charlie. Oh, I just... I just wanted to say goodbye. Oh, so Charlotte is actually calling her? Let's see what Charlie has to say. Charlie says, Hey, mom said you have to take me to the park. <laughs> and Angela says, When? Now. I'm coming to your house. And Angela says, Oh, I just woke up. Unfortunately, Byron couldn't go. He was like, Sis, you know I have a date today with my girlfriend. I got things to do. Sorry. Angela is supervising her sister and she's taking care of Malak too. She packed Malak some stuff and Charlotte was having fun with her little friends. They were playing basketball together. I mean, just the cutest. Mm. And it was kind of a warm day because I was like, why are the kids wearing this? Like, okay. As Angela was sitting there, somebody recognized her from the back of her head. Angela? Angela says, yeah. It's like, um, can you give me a second, whoever you are? But I, I just gotta make sure my daughter's okay and I'll let her play with her toys. And Xander's like, it's me. It's like, oh, yeah, I recognize you. Hey, from last night. Oh my god. Yeah, well, I have a flight today. It's a bit of a busy day for me. What you doing at the court? He said, I was about to ask you the same question. I, I didn't expect to see you here. 
and and she's like, what? But I actually now that I think about it, like I thought you were from like Willow Creek or Pendleton Bay, and he says, no, no, I was born and raised here. He's like, I thought you were from Pendleton Bay, and she said, oh, oh my God, but San Sequoia isn't that big. How could I not see you? Xander says, oh, I was in homeschool. And Angela's like, oh, and the little kid here you're watching playing basketball, your brother, is he also homeschool? And Xander says, no, my son, he needs to meet people. <laughs> Angela says, oh, okay, what's his name? Xander says his name is Orion. And what's your daughter's name? Angela says, Malak. Xander says, stop playing. Angela says, what? Why? Xander says, that's my sister's name. Angela says, oh, really? I have a pregnancy coach and I name my baby after her. Xander says, Oasis Springs? Angela says, yes. Xander says, that's my sister. Same dad and same mom. <laughs> Angela says, what? I'm mind blown. Now that I look at you, I mean, I could see the resemblance. Xander says, how's she doing over there? Angel says she's thriving and she's doing so good. Did you guys lose contact? Xander says since she's moved there, she barely calls or stops by. She's doing what she loves though, and I can't hold that against her. Angela says, mm, been there with family before, so I understand. I'm sorry about. Xander says, yeah, Ronnie, she's a great woman. I don't regret it. Mm hmm. Angela says, it's a nice day today. Xander says, yeah, it's like that one warm day in winter. It's really nice. We're back home. Angela is making the last few ingredients in her fridge that she oh, saved up. She's just going to make like a linguine pasta with that random veggies. And oh, no. she's thinking of making a call, an important call that she feels like just like after going to the park, she felt she had to do. Angela says, hey, beautiful. Malak says, my star student, how are you? And has Malak Jr. Why don't you call me anymore? I miss your funny self. Angela says, good, I was distracted with life. Guess who I bumped into? Malak says, what, Judith Ward? <laughs> Angela says, your brother? Malak says, oh, I haven't called him in weeks. Angela says, Malak, didn't you always say for us that it's important? Important to keep ties with our loved ones. Malak says, Touche. She called her brother that night. Brandy, meet Malak. This is my daughter. You always hear me talk about her, and I feel like you maybe you should just kind of get acquainted with her. It's like, oh, wow, she's so tiny. Reminds me of Olive. Oh, she's so adorable. The taxi's on its way. It's actually like pretty close, like maybe a kilometer away. And they're just standing waiting in anticipation because they don't want to be late to go to the plane. And honestly, y'all, we got to talk about a flashback right now, okay? Like, we really need to talk about this thing. And the reason why I bring it up is because Angela's cousin Rosalie decided that she wanted to join the trip. And this reminded Angela the last time she was in San Marcino with Rosalie. Let's get into the tea. Let's go back to a few weeks before episode one of my Let's Play. Angela's looking around. It is the sunset for her. Today, it is a special day. She's going out with her cousin Rosalie, who has been in town with her already for a few days, and her childhood bestie Ariella and her are gonna be hanging out. Norman is working on the computer. He has already went to you know Sulani once before twice at this point and you know Rosalie's sleeping and she's been crashing on the couch. <laughs> no sleeping bags okay this is before the quote-unquote sleeping bag update okay. <laughs> Norman and Angela are cuddling and you know they're just enjoying each other's company you know she's kind of like i wish you were able to go out with us tonight he's like yeah but you know the guys shane they just keep saying that i'm bailing on them and i'm just gonna try to just go out one time you know been so preoccupied with work and you know she's like i understand that i wish chanel would be going with us but you know you're taking shane out the house <laughs> we need to move out of here rosalie looks at them as she woke up from her nap they're so cute She's like, Angela, we have to get ready. Don't forget, we're supposed to be going out tonight to the club. Norman says, you heard your cousin. I mean, it's kind of nice to meet somebody from your family, though, for, you know. She's like, yeah, 
I'm happy. We're gonna, you're gonna meet everyone. Angela goes to the bathroom. She's just hanging with Uni, and she's like, "Let me use the bathroom." <laughs> like her funny old quirk, you know. <laughs> oh my god. She's like, "Okay, let me start my prep for this tonight because I'm about to be the cutest girl ever." Time to style this hair. Oh, I know what style I want. I know what outfit I want. I don't want something too short. I'm on my period. I'm just not feeling that great today, you know? But yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm still going to smell great. I'm still going to look great. So that's all that matters, I guess. <laughs> Maybe I'll be able to film some TikTok content for myself today or not. Who knows? Angela, Norman says. Angela steps out of the bathroom. Hey, says you look great. Oh my God. Wow. You just take my breath away, Miss Angela. Angela's like, oh, you're so sweet. You know, I cooked a food for you. It's in the microwave if you come back home earlier than me um, and you get hungry. He's like, oh, you're so thoughtful. You're always thinking of me. You know, I have something for you, too. She's like, oh, you do come here. He's like, no, for real. Come come closer. I'll, um, I have it hidden. She's like, well, what are you hiding from me? It's like, OK, I'm going to take it out of my pocket. But, but you just promise you don't look. And she's like, what? She's like, I got a necklace for you. I don't know if it goes well with your outfit, though. She's like, wait, let me see. Oh, my God. It looks so good. It looked like it will match the earrings you got me. You know, those flower earrings. It's like, yeah. I, I don't know. Just when I see you, I think of a beautiful flower. My heart. You're my everything, Angela. I love you, Norman. I really do. Oh, I'm so thankful to have you in my life. Angela kisses him. Oh, I wish you would come out with us tonight now. Oh, my God. Do you need a massage for me, honey? I, I could do that for you before I go. Oh, that would be so nice. I've been sitting on the computer all day working. Oh, yes. I know you deserve it. Oh, you're the best, Norman. Oh, my God. I love you. I know you're working hard for us. <sighs> that was so good. Thank you so much. Angela and Rosalie are talking about what Angela's childhood bestie ariella is gonna wear now rosalie is familiar with ariella and she remembers her fashion vividly not only from their childhood visits but you know rosalie used to live in san sequoia when they were kids so she just kind of still knows ariella her and angela are the same age so she's telling her girl she's gonna wear a really bad outfit just mentally prepare yourself but you know me i don't like what she's wearing and i wouldn't mind if we just lie to her and just go out together and angela's like that's so mean she came to town just to see me and she's like yeah but you know you're not the same like Angela in the fashion department like her but I mean like at the end of the day you knew when to dress appropriately I feel like she just doesn't care where she's going she's just gonna throw something together from the closet maybe the trash can and she's like don't, don't be mean to her she's my friend let's not do that come on Rosalie please and she's like okay I won't she's like yeah she wears what she wants at the end of the day and that's my friend I'm gonna respect her let's just go to the club let's have fun that's what we're all here for you came to that town to visit me she's doing the same thing so they go to the club and they're just going to have fun. That's all that matters. Angela is connecting with her social media influencer friends. They all are basically like in the TikTok type of realm and somewhat like vlog style sector of TikTok. Let's just say that. Hey, boo, take a selfie with me. I haven't seen you in a minute. Angela says, girl, I haven't seen you. She's like, oh my God, but you were a little too fancy today. What's going on? You're acting like we're partying in the uptown, baby. We are in the spice district. And just like, can a girl manifest? Because I need to leave this area. <laughs> She's like, oh, babes, but my period is going wild on me. I'm having really bad cramps. She's like, oh my God, I have a mitle in my purse. I could totally give you one right now. She's like, oh my God, thank you. You're the best, Abby. Oh my God. Oh, her friend is here. Oh my God. <laughs> Look, okay ariella meet ariella courtney okay the girls are looking at her like whoo i mean we were ready for her to come through with the fashions and you know she came through <laughs> oh lord look angela's like look let's party let's not judge her okay rosalie says she looks like she went to the wrong venue i mean honey this is not the knitting community what is she thinking angela says be nice They've been dancing for around two hours on the dance floor and now they went to the washroom together and they're just like trying to make conversation and you know they start doing their thing taking care of themselves making sure they smell great. Ariella says don't I look amazing? Angela says yeah. Ariella says 
I've been your friend for what it feels like 20 years. I know you think I look bad. Angela says, then why ask? Angela, I, I came here to the city to party with you. Angela says, I know, but I offered to help style you. Ariella said, I said no because I don't want to lose myself to being socially acceptable to a man, a city, or to people. You're jealous of me, Ariella. What's there to be jealous of? I'm happy in my skin. It's time you became happy in yours. I'm happy and I'm a grown-up. We aren't kids anymore, but then again, what do I expect from a girl who still lives with her parents? Ariella says, I would rather depend on my parents than a man. Angela says, if you feel like that about me, then you might as well just go. Ariella says, oh, come on, Angela. I just thought we were having a cute back and forth. Don't tell me that I got you all up in your feelings. Come on, bestie. But if I leave Angela, we will never talk again. We'll never be friends. As Ariella was about to leave the bathroom, Rosalie steps in front of her. She says, what? Watch your mouth around my cousin. Don't you dare talk to her like that. Ariella was shocked. Angela couldn't believe what she just witnessed. Ariella shoved Rosalie and she shoved her again. Angela ran for her life. She was like, oh, hell no. I'm not going to be associated with some club fight. Nope, nope. I'm out. I'm going. I'm going. I'm <laughs> running for my life. I was like, girl, where are you going? She literally ran. I mean, typical Angela stuff, but are we shocked? And maybe she was right because they started fighting and Rosalie won that fight, though. And she was like, Angela, where are you at? She's like, girl, I'm, I took the train home. She's like, ha ha, yeah, right, no, for real. Oh my God, you always be running. Girl, it's never that deep. I promise I beat her ASS for talking to you like that. Angela didn't expect this night to go like this. This is the last thing that she thought was going to happen. The worst case scenario for her. People she loves fighting, fighting, fighting. 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 Fire flight 8 Oh God, Angela, you're having that nightmare again about that one night that you hate. The night that your friend and your cousin fought. So, Angela murmurs to herself in her sleep, I need to make it right with Ariella. Brenda, who had somewhat of a conscience, overheard her and thought, Who's Ariella? The flight was packed. I forgot that it was New Year's Eve, y'all, and that everybody and their mama is trying to go to San Myshuno for the big fireworks that's there. I feel like San Myshuno does have great New, Year New Year's Eve parties, events, like the paint and sip. Okay, Brendy, I, Angela and I did not clock that tea. Like, I did not know you were talking about New Year's Eve events. Like, no wonder. Obviously, she was having a school break and it's New Year's Eve. We just flew over the skies of Chestnut Ridge. We will be close to San Myshuno in an hour. We're here in San Myshuno. Oh my God, Angela's back. Wow, I'm shocked. And we are here in the land grab apartments. Yes, Daniela's living it up, okay? And <laughs> oh my God, Brendy's knocking on the door. Just so you know, it is past almost midnight at this point. It's pretty late. Like that plane ride, and then they had a transfer at Chestnut Ridge, and then they had to reach San Myshuno. Ooh, it was a journey, okay? So, yeah, the food is also here the same time as them. You know, Danielle wanted the food piping, piping hot, okay? She's the LMS service, okay? <laughs> So the paint and sip is going to be actually in a few hours. Rosalie's already here, y'all, okay? Daniela says, I set up a cute little area for y'all, and I think you'll love it. And, you know, she's like, show me my niece. She's like, here she is. Oh, she was so well behaved. She was sleeping on the plane ride. And I'm just going to show y'all the area that Daniela set the, up for them. So Rosalie and Angela will be sharing a bed together. Like I said, Rosalie arrived hours ago. Like, look at Menak. Isn't this bed so cute? Like, it just takes one tile, y'all, okay? And it's allowed to be next to the bed. Oh, y'all, this is by Dollish. Y'all need to download this. It's just so realistic for travel. And also, like, you know, 
Daniela is such an accommodating big sister, y'all. She got food, drinks, she got like books, makeup for the girls. You know, it was so nice to see that she's such a gracious host. And shout out to my friends. I was thinking of having her hair down like usual, but y'all told me nope. Daniela is gonna serve if she has her hair up in a bun. Y'all, what's going on with Brendy? Why is she so sad? Oh no, she's violating her principles. Oh no, she's eating steak. Oh my god, she probably felt pressured and just ate it, you know? And she's feeling so sick. I feel so bad. I didn't know. And so Daniela's like, I'm so sorry. I'm just gonna get all vegetarian food this weekend. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, you know? Like, y'all look at that. Oh, poor vegetarian. I feel so bad. Brandy and Angela are gonna go ahead and change and probably just wash up a couple of things like that and Daniela is probably just gonna finally get into that meal because she's just been waiting for her sister all day. Rosalie says, girl, aren't you gonna bring your man downstairs? Like please. Jacob, it's time to meet my sister. And Jacob says, finally, because I mean you didn't even tell her that we live together now and <laughs> This is so awkward. Angela has no idea Jacob is here. Not that she would be against it, but she just didn't even know that it was getting that serious between them. I mean, last she remembered, it was he was obsessed with her and she's obsessed with herself. Guys, me and my boyfriend, his name is Jacob Uchida. We work together and yeah. <laughs> Angela's like, her who? Did you hear that right? What? And we live together? Did she say that? Brenji's like, look, I can't judge. I did the same thing. <laughs> Um, not really the same thing, Brandy. Hi, I'm Angela. Nice to meet you. Angela, I've heard a lot of great things about you. She's like, oh, I heard some amazing things about you. Mind you, she probably heard like a paragraph worth of anything. It's true, he knows way more though. Daniela wanted to tell her sister it was the night that they had that sleepover, but because Angela cried and everything, it just wasn't the right time. I wanted to show y'all, by the way, that painting in the living room is a painting Angela made, and her sister framed it, and Angela was surprised like she did that for her sister years ago, you know? But yeah, it's bedtime. I just wanted to show y'all everybody asleep. But Daniela's apartment is a dream, okay? And they're a really cute couple. She's been really private about her relationship, and I feel like it's maybe because it's like her first really like her boyfriend to move in with her. She's kind of been always casually dating, but now it's like really serious. It's the next day and it's New Year's Eve. I was surprised. I was like, wait, that man was on New Year's Eve? Interesting. But anyway, Manak was like waking up her mom and oh my god, y'all, the little glitch. But you know what? It's still the cutest item ever. Uh, yeah, look at her. She's just talking to her. I love this item. Like, I wish I kind of knew. Like, maybe Malak and Angela could have shared a room. Who knows? <laughs> but I love it. Y'all, look who's here. Just run in to check on Malak automatically. Like, my god, I just learned that Danielle is so maternal. I always wasn't sure if she wanted to have kids or if she liked her life, you know what I'm saying? But maybe this kind of affirmed for me, maybe she would be okay being a mother one day. But she's such a perfect auntie. She even warmed the bottle for Malak and he's like, oh, is she okay? We heard the baby crying. I guess their apartment must really be quiet, so any little sound might have distracted them. That has never happened. I mean, I've been taking care of Malak what, since the baby update. Never saw her do that. <laughs> she must be really nervous being inside my shuno. Vegetarian breakfast for the girls. So the plan is to take Malak to Newcrest. So Angela and Danielle are going to be driving up there. Angela told Rosalie, it's okay, you don't have to come with us. And so then Rosalie is gonna just take Brandy to like shopping spots. And Rosalie's like, let's have a toast. I don't care what time it is, it's vacation time. We gonna drink. Okay, girls, let's go. Let's go. I don't care, Daniela, even you too. Daniela's like, oh, right, I'll take a small sip. I ain't really drinking like that, child. Wow. The last time Angela's been in Newcrest was that, what's it called? Harvest Fest? And here is Norman and his girlfriend Erin. She's like, oh my god, I hope the baby likes us. And he's like, you're good, we're good, remember? All right, let's open the door for them. And there's Medak, and he's like, oh my god, she's so adorable. I'm gonna go pick her up, let's go. Norman's girlfriend says, hey, 
My name is Erin. Nice to meet you guys. Daniela is thinking, where do I recognize that girl from? I feel like I've seen her face before. Oh! Angela says, nice to meet you. Daniela says, nice to meet you too. Aren't you some famous TikTok girl? Norman says, yeah, she's famous famous. Oh, so you have a type. See, this is why Angela could handle Rosalie coming too. Now imagine what else Rosalie would have said in this moment. <laughs> Aaron kind of got a little embarrassed and Norman's like, oh, um, Aaron will show you Malak's room. Malak's room is kind of like new, like, you know, they were just working on it recently and tried to fit in whatever they can. To be honest, that's why the room doesn't have a lot of stuff. But, you know, obviously Angela recognizes that and so she's going to tuck her daughter in. Aaron says, I know I won't ever replace your role. Please don't be insecure. And I know what Norman did was bad. He's a changed man. Angela says, okay, cool. I have to get going. Aaron says, please don't get jealous that he was able to move on and give me the life he promised you. Angela says, you be careful who you're talking to. What? I, I was just trying to make a conversation. All right. Well, I have my own event to go to. The moment Angela stepped out, oh, Aaron liked that. She liked having a little back and forth. She was a little insecure that X was coming by. I'm going to go grab my X stuff out of the car. Norman, you better be good to my niece. Norman says, you got it. I don't trust your girlfriend. She seems a bit too into herself to care for a child. So please hire some help if you have to work while this weekend. Norman says, you meet people for the first time and you tell them you don't like their partner. Danielle says, is the sky blue? Norman says, wow, you're the opposite of Angela. Danielle says, thank you. Aaron steps out of Malak's room and she joins them at the front door area. It's nice to meet you, Daniela. It's nice to meet you too. Please take care of my niece. Don't look at social media too much. And Aaron's like, uh -huh, you're funny. Nice to meet you, Angela. It was interesting to meet you. All right, I gotta go. I have an event to go to. And of course, she wants to show that that's her man. I mean, she could have went for it, but she didn't. And he's like, you did so great. She's like, yeah, well, I guess we could call your parents and they could come over to see Malak. He's like, oh my God, that's such a great idea. Oh, I love your brilliance. You are amazing. So what had you in a bad mood? Like I could tell something happened with that girl. She's like, well, she was trying to act like I think Norman is a prize or like, I don't know, she thought that I would want him. So it just felt like a girl who was kind of insecure, marking her territory. And honestly, like, ugh, like Norman is like not even worth any of that energy. She's like, oh my God, she was doing all of that. She was, yeah, she told me, oh, um, don't feel jealous of the life that he's giving her like as if i care about any of that you know i'm just here for my daughter like i just want to have fun i'm here on a vacation not here to care about my ex and i'm just so past that i'm just here for my daughter it's like yeah you're so mature you're much better than me i'm not gonna lie i probably would have like yanked her hair i'm not even gonna lie like i don't even like to fight and i'm a professional like in my career like, that's not a good look for me but you know times like that you just gotta check a beat <laughs> like you're so mature she's like yeah but like you know i think maybe having a child just does that to you sis all right let's go to san Mashuno and go to this paint and sip event hey y'all we are at the paint and sip event this will be strictly gameplay here is the paint and sip event so i'm gonna have to tell these sims to paint if y'all remember danielle was like i'm just gonna go out or do my own thing but they were just like no join us so danielle's here like mm, okay i'm not really into the painting i don't know nothing about that but you know i love that oh she's actually looking at a paint like oh my god i mean i kind of have fun with it don't get me wrong like i have a painting of my sister made at home but other than that oh angela what you doing oh yeah let me have the event out for y'all it is new year's eve angela's painting this mural okay um, if you want to see the setup of this room, okay, this is again the Floriella save, but I did add this area for food to be stocked up. So um, here's the event coordinator. She's probably like, oh my God, let me just serve something. So I feel like she's probably going to go with the safe bet and assume everyone is a vegetarian. If y'all remember this morning, yesterday night, 
poor Brandy went through it. So I think it'd be nice that she could have a full on vegetarian meal without having to look over her shoulder. So yeah, let's do that. Vegetarian menu. Ooh. So I do have a bartender here too working for the event. Miss Tyrena hired. Again, this is Miss Tyrena's event. So Sims haven't started to paint yet. I guess they're thinking about drinks and stuff like that. <laughs> As they should, I guess. So yeah, there is drink options. There is like snack options and stuff here. Um, yeah, so you could grab a cake and stuff. So now looking at the paintings of everyone. And I see that Angela's painting her cousin Rosalie. That's so cute. Let's have Angela continue this painting. So the task was today, um, Miss Tyrena said, um, I have the setup, but if you don't want to paint this, you can paint what you want. And I noticed everybody just started to do what the hell they wanted, including Miss Tyrena. <laughs> so I guess she just kind of wanted to give some people like the option if they were nervous to not be able to paint something. Angela obviously never does a Sims as references for paintings, but Rosalie was like, come on, try me, please, please. And like, look at so far how it's going. Like Angela's snapping. Let's go with Miss Tyrene. Oh, she hasn't done this yet. Rosalie's painting. Aww. Rosalie's painting is so childish. It's cute though. Ooh, this one kind of sounds like it would be really like on this gallery, like straight up on whatever she does. It looks really good though. Oh, are they doing the same thing? No, it's not, right? Ooh, what's I even know what's his name? What's his name? Jason. Jason. Okay. Jason is cute. Uh, <laughs> what is her name? Marcy. Marcy. Oh my God, she did a figure. You know what? She was able to do whatever she wants. Not Danielle also doing a figure. And let's look at this guy. What's his name? Sean. Sean looks like he's painting Angela and who? It's like Rosalie. Why are you painting other Sims at the event? I mean, Miss Tyrena did say you could paint anybody here, but I feel like she's probably looking like, oh my god, why am I on there? Like, why would I? I'm not art. I feel like that's what she's thinking. Oh my god. But yeah, this is pretty much the event so far. Um, I have done a bit of it. So they need to catch up and talk with each other. Uh, so after they're finished painting, they have to do a bunch of social interactions, eat some food, and take pictures. So we're going to have Angela do that. Congratulations, Tyrena painted a masterpiece. Oh, this is so cute. I think she painted the food here. I mean, she did say that her expertise in painting was food art. So that's so cute. Uh, 6,000 simoleons. Miss Tyrena did that. And I'm going to just have her painting here. But later, I'm going to put it in her inventory. So when she goes home, she, she could probably see um, if she could sell it to this art gallery she's even in. Like, this is really pretty, y'all. Oh, Angela's done her cousin's painting. I feel like she's going to gift it to her. Oh, she's probably like, is my art cool? Like, I just like, threw the paint around. Like, yeah, she's like, uh, these are like they're 10,000 simoleons. Like, wow. Rosalie, finish your painting. She's probably like, I give up. I give up. Oh, not Angela inspired to paint here. I love that. Oh, my God. Oh, Brandy. Brandy's probably like, what the hell? Why is that art? She's literally looking at it like, is why did he paint Angela? <laughs> She's probably just gonna go to Angela and tell her like, oh girl, he, this guy, I, I don't even know his name. Like, yeah, just, let's go ahead. And she's just gonna straight up just tell him like, girl, did you ever talk to this man in your life? Like, why did he choose to paint you of all the sims here? Like, y'all, I mean, he's cute though. <laughs> but yeah, Angela probably, and she's like, uh, I don't wanna weird you out. But that guy painted you. Like, what on earth is that? Like, I understand she said you could paint, but like, have y'all met before? It's like, Angela's like, I, I never saw that man in my life. She's like, uh, but, but wait, who again? And she's like, you know, the guy with the long hair there. And he's like, well, there's two guys with long hair. One has a bun and one doesn't. And she's like, well, the guy without the bun. Oh my God. Come on, girl. You know who I was talking about. And Angela's like, oh, okay. So she's just going to go ahead and approach the sim straight up um oh hey marcy um let's go ahead and have her shake him i guess she could just shake his hand and say hi how are you doing oh, um i heard that you painted me yeah, and that, that's kind of cool yeah let's have her do that Fabena. she's really looking at that like oh my god that is so weird oh angela seems to have taken a liking to him though so she does think the sim has a really cool vibe about him oh, oh. 
it's like yeah i, I, I just tour. i like to paint yeah. sims and the the passion in your conversation Our, with each other just seemed so fun so well, that's my cousin um i don't know if you've ever met her but yeah let, let's go ahead she has come to the city before so let's go ahead and have him and she's like you know what rosalie isn't the first sim to be painted here oh, oh, oh she took it like a champ oh. yo angela's such a sweetheart i feel like rosalie's probably like you know she's from evergreen harbor she's gonna be like what the hell are you painting me for weirdo i feel like she'd straight up just be like a little bit like you know she i want to say she would be malicious but let's just say she'd probably complain to him like why would you do that like why you didn't ask my permission you should have asked my permission if you wanted to paint me like I, but she does like him though his vibe okay like that's nice I, I think it would be nice. Like, I'm so sorry. I should have uh, asked for permission. Yeah, I just love painting yeah, Sims. You know, your cousin didn't mind. She's like, yeah, but I'm not my cousin. I didn't think that was cool. It's like, well, let's see what you painted. Oh, Sean, you didn't have to be shady. She's like, I painted a uh, a younger version of myself who loved music and just having fun. And you know, I like to go to parties and stuff. And he's like, oh, speaking of parties. There is going to be a party at my place and I was going to invite uh, some Sims over. I mean, and she's just kind of like, I feel like Rosalie's thinking, oh my God, is this guy trying to hit on me? Like, I don't think he has no party plan. <laughs> like, why would you go to a paint and sip and then go on a party? So I just feel like she's going to straight up flirt with him. Like, is this party dedicated to me too? Like, <laughs> she's just going to shoot her shot. Like, let's see. Let's see if it goes through for her. And she's just kind of like, okay, well, maybe something could happen between us or something. I don't know. <laughs> he liked that, though. He liked it. <laughs> All right, so why don't you go ahead and... She's just going to tell him, you look cute. Like, I like your hair. You know, straight up. <laughs> and he's just gonna say i love your outfit i don't know if you know but the outfit was the party was supposed to be a black and white party but everybody's wearing black tell me why <laughs> Yay, boo, <crew. laughs> anyway, so he's gonna just straight up flirt with her and give her a bold pickup line and say you know you're so stunning i just i think you're you're my type you know like, oh i'm your type <laughs> so yeah i like this oh and they got a flirty pink bar opened Angela's yeah, just enjoying this event though. It's 5 p.m. He's kind of like, okay, well, um, can, oh, she seems to be a little tearful. Maybe she's just happy that somebody's flirting and making her feel good, or maybe she's a little sick too. Oh, God. Okay, so what I think I'm gonna. Oh, yeah, she is sick. I was right. Oh, my God. She looks really sick. She's like, oh, I think I need to take medication, but I'll see if I could come to your party. He's like, yeah, I'd like to see you. At least let's exchange phone numbers. He says, oh, my God, he's sick too. Child, this party might get cancelled. Brittany's like, what the hell? Rosalie's just flirting with this guy and I thought it was weird too, but like, what? <laughs> so he's like, okay, here's my number and tell me if you're down to come to this party. She's like, sure, I got you. So y'all, since the event is finishing up very soon, how many minutes left? 58 minutes. So let's just go ahead and have everybody eat food because I feel like Miss Tarvina put so much event uh, uh, thought into this event and stuff. But yeah, there's definitely a cold being passed around, so they're definitely going to have to take medication. Lord have mercy. She's Angela socializing with these Sims, making some familiar friends friends and stuff try to get to know <gasps> sims SNL. that are have like-minded interests i love that y'all she got jealous because sean was flirting with rosalie help oh angela's still chatting with him nice sip and party was a silver, silver event okay it's 7 p.m i definitely need to go angela's kind of like look this painting is so long to take but if i could come back another day to do this i will so let's go ahead and have everybody just go home okay I'm going to unlock the doors and the public could come back to this room. Angela is taking her time to dress up. She's kind of dreading the idea of going out, especially since the party that she was invited to is close to where she lived with Norman. While she has amazing memories there, it ended so horribly. Betrayal, bribery, and a banning took place the night she left. Daniela asks her, what's taking you so long? Angela explains and she says sis i'm just nervous and scared of going to that area because of all the horrible memories and on top of it she's also just really nervous because of the dress that rosalie offered for her to wear and that she felt like it was just too much for her and daniela tells her you look so stunning girl like come on okay let's go let's go to the living room let's have fun like i think you're overthinking you know 
if you looked bad i would have told you you look amazing and i was like well, i'm not even wearing underwear like it's too much <laughs> Angela applies her cream. What could go wrong? Nothing. Yeah. Get that mascara. I want my lashes to look amazing. Yes. Oh my god. Oh my god. I look good. I shouldn't be nervous, but I'm scared I'm gonna die from how cold it is here. I'm not used to this temperature. <laughs> So the ladies are sitting together in the living room as, you know, Daniela's boyfriend goes to warm up the car and Rosalie says, can I ask you a messy question, Brendy? And Brendy says, sure. And Rosalie says, well, if Cicely, my little sister, was dating someone else, I'd never let her be my friend. Okay, honestly. And Brendy's like, oh, we're going there. Mm, naturally, I was skeptical. I thought about like what my sister saw in her and it didn't take long. Angela's a girl's girl. Rosalie says, it's true. I mean, if it was me, your sister wouldn't have brought me around, to be honest. <laughs> and then uh, Brandy's like, also, I mean, the whole dating thing was kind of fake. Rosalie says, true, but you thought it was real. Angela says, oh, uh, yeah, but you know what? Like, it doesn't matter. Like, that's all in the past. Well, ladies, let's just head downstairs. I mean, I'm sure the car's warm by now. Rosalie says, Brendy, I'm sorry if I came off messy. I just wanted to ask. I was naturally curious. Angela says, ladies, let's stand up. I want to have a toast, but I do want to change my dress. I'm sorry. Jacob came upstairs. He's like, girls, like, where y'all at? I've been waiting. I'm literally, we have to run back to the car. Angela's like, oh, okay, okay. I have to change my dress. I'm so sorry, but it's going to be quick. And we're just going to have a quick toast. And he's like, oh, okay, okay. So he's talking to his mom in the background, but yeah. I don't know if you hear that, but the music is blasting here. I feel bad for the bee does. Dame la plata, plata. Cash, cash, cash. Get money, get money. It's bam, 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 bam. It's bam, bam. She wanna flick for the gram. Go ahead, stop boot, that's how who I am. So she wanna check this beach, you on cam. Like, hold up. She wanna swallow this pull up. Soon as I bust, I'ma roll up. Four lines are better, I pull up. I'm transforming now these cars and planes. I'm always boarding. Just out touring down in Charlotte like I play for Hornets. Elijah sees a girl he recognizes and he says, Unrecognizable. Angela, is that you? She's like, who are you? Wait, what? She's trying to look over her shoulder like, who's that? And he's like, you don't recognize me? It's me, Elijah. She's like, oh, you used to play basketball outside? Yeah, I used to live around here. What are you doing here, Elijah? He's like, oh, this is my apartment. She's like, oh, oh wow, nice. Like, I haven't seen you in a long time. Angela says, I moved away. Elijah says, can we talk? Can we go to a corner and talk? She says, sure. Elijah says, I haven't seen you at the marker vendor in a long time. She's like, yeah, it's so complicated. Elijah says, I had a feeling you guys split up. I mean, I used to see you guys together and then sometimes I just would bump into him in the city and he's alone and you weren't there and I never asked him either. I mean, I didn't really know him like that. I mean, we were just neighbors, right? I mean, you are the friendlier one. Well, let's not dwell on the past. No worries. Happy New Year to you, Angela. Do you want to dance? I mean, everybody's having fun dancing. And we're just in a corner. Before we dance, Elijah is okay if we just sit together and chill. I just enjoyed just hanging with you. Seeing a familiar face from the past. stuff away and check out for the day there's no time to waste when it's 100 degrees burns under my feet won't you have a drink with me
Oh, you're having fun, Angela. Angela says to Daniela, yeah. Elijah says, do you want to go and woohoo? And she says, well, I'd rather if we just make out first before we ever just get to that level. And he says, okay, well, let's go. Well, Rosalie and Sean are woohooing. Okay, I did not expect that. And Angela ended up not woohooing him. She just didn't want to do any woohooing. But it was fun. And, like, she got to just, like, do something different for herself. And that was an experience. I feel like she just never got to be, like, Angela, Angela in a minute. She was just, like, almost like Angela the mother. Not the party girl. Not, like, Angela, a young lady, a woman, a party girl. All right, let's go back to Daniela's place and Angela is having a great dream. She is just really happy. I think she just was having fun. Like there's no responsibility and co-parenting sounds fun. They partied all night and now it's like around almost like 11 to 12 a.m. And Angela should be waking up by now, but she's kind of late. Jacob's like to Daniela, you need to wake up. You need to wake her up. You know, she's like, maybe she canceled. And he says, no, no, she definitely wanted to go from how excited she was. You know, she's like, you're right, you're right. I need to wake up. What am I thinking? She would be so sad if she missed out on today. So she wakes up, even though she's really tired. I mean, they never party like that anyway. Occasionally, maybe. <laughs> Angela Hill, you better be awake. <laughs> Daniela stomps downstairs. She wants her sister to wake up. And she's like, wake up, wake up. And and she's like, okay, I'm awake, I'm awake. You're right, I, I should get going. Oh my God, I need to dress up. Thank you so much, sister, you're the best. And she wears her outfit and she looks at herself in the mirror, mentally prepares herself. She has to leave. She is late already. I hope you didn't think she was going to be meeting up with someone shady like Norman. No, no. Of course she was going to hang out with her bestie in this city. And her bestie, I felt like, wanted to recreate the last meal they ate together. Which was, you know, like a harvest fest type of meal. And I'm talking about the last meal they ate together in San Juanjuno. She was a little nervous though. And her husband, Shane, was calming her down. He's like, you got this. And I, it was all autonomous. I just wanted to record her while she was cooking. <laughs> it was so sweet, honestly. Angela's here though. And she knocks on the door. Chanel says, oh my god, bestie, I miss you so much much my god that hair color always surprises me it's such a bold choice let's go everybody's waiting for you look at layla she's so much taller now oh she's so adorable i love that y'all helped me name her her name is layla moon and i ended up actually naming her brother qamar knight so if you know the name layla means knight and her name is also moon so i kind of gave her brother that too Everybody's enjoying that turkey meal. It looks really nice. I love that Chanel was able to be so thoughtful of her bestie Angela. And even though maybe they don't talk as much as they used to, I'm happy that they still have so much love for each other. And they don't talk to Norman. They are loyal to Angela. They just, they're like that, you know, their hearts chose a side. And unfortunately, they just didn't understand Norman's side. Angela asks Chanel if she could join her to the club tonight. She said, you know, it's totally fun when you go out as a parent and you just have a stress-free night. You're just yourself. Kind of like the you before you became a parent. Not in a bad way or a good way, but you just see it. And I think it would be fun if you and Shane went out. It was nice seeing you, Angela, Shane says with this awkward hug. And Chanel says, oh, bestie, I'm going to miss you. Oh, I love you. We'll see each other maybe tonight. So, y'all, I just wanted to show y'all that I wanted Angela to have a resolution. And I wanted her to get promoted in her job. I just feel like she, even though doesn't like her job that much, she still kind of wants to make a good money for her family. I mean, rent ain't cheap, you know? <laughs> so, for Daniela, I noticed she wanted to go back to school. So, I thought maybe she wanted to do more reading. So, I was like, why don't she register for school? I feel like she wants to get her doctorate. Maybe, like, be a doctor for real or something like that. So, I can see Daniela still working in her current career as an educator but maybe wanting to like become a doctor so let's see that for her
I won't stop. No, 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 no. I won't stop. I won't stop. I won't stop. No, 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 no. no. I won't stop. I won't stop. Yeah. I'm so handsome. I'm so Angela, why are you sitting at the bar? You're supposed to be dancing all night. I don't want to hear nothing. I want you to have fun. And you know, tomorrow's going to be more about the responsibilities. Today is just fun times. She says, I know. I just needed some quiet time around here. So you're not avoiding Elijah, Angela? Angela says, okay, maybe kind of. She's like, why? He's cute. Go talk to him, Angela. Come on. I guess Rosalie's right. Let's go have them sit together. I guess in this like private area. And I don't know. We'll see how the chemistry goes between them. Oh, it's sizzling already. Do y'all see Chanel in the background eavesdropping? <laughs> yeah, I heard her man stop by. I thought they were really cute. They've been chatting for a while now. And I guess Angela felt comfortable enough to ask. She says, Do you want to sneak somewhere to woohoo? And I was like, girl, they're going to woohoo in the bathroom, y'all. In the bathroom with the Lumpino mod. Y'all see when they disappear, it becomes a bunch of sparkles. I, oh, they're so cute. I love it. Look at him. Oh, you know, he said that he did that party for her yesterday. She's like, I could tell. That's why I didn't leave. I just felt like I didn't want you to feel alone and abandoned. And he said, there was a chance you would have left. She's like, not really. <laughs> Angela's watching them. And yeah, they're so cute. I don't know if they will keep contact, to be honest. But this is a fun trip. Angela went to sleep. It was a nice sleep for her. And she had to go pick up Melak the next day. And go to the airport. And fly back home to San Sequoia. Goodbye. San Michuno. Oh, I'm gonna cry. I had too much fun here. Let's fast forward a day later. Angela recognizes Leone outside of her window. Is Leone coming to her? I mean, Leone hasn't been here in a minute. What's tea? Hi, Leone. You, you come in. Hey, Leone. I haven't seen you in a long time. How are you? How's everything? How's the kids? I'm so sorry for everything that's happened and I know how much you wanted to come with us to San Maishuno and just, you know, the circumstances in life. I understand. I'm so sorry. No, I should be thanking you. I was just some sort of placeholder in his life. Does he ever really love me? Because if he did, if he truly cherished me, the moment you stepped into town, he wouldn't have threatened not to be around you. I just don't understand where his mind was when he did that it's obvious he settled with me and i never want to be anyone's second leone knew her worth and i respect that obviously had she known zoro felt that like they were in a happy marriage she never knew what he was harboring inside he never talked about angela like that like what would she know maybe if he showed any signs she probably would have known but he didn't Leone says it was a great marriage one day and then everything crumbled and what's crazy is when we talked about you it was like a moment of the past it was happiness I never knew he was harboring that much resentment towards you Angela says I'm so sorry Angela's mascara starts running down her face she's crying she's so hurt for her bestie and she just feels like it's her fault and leone tries to reassure her it's not she said i'm happy i know now i'm free from this we have split up we're trying to still figure some things out and angela apologizes again leone says hun it's not your fault he was the weirdo demanding you to leave the city like that i'm sorry he thought he could even talk to you like that he definitely has some major rejection issues that is far beyond you and me, hun. Look, I'm willing to start a clean slate with you, Angela. Ever since my dad died, you've always been there for me and you've made such interesting decisions because of that. I know the reason why you felt. Uh, Angela says, how did you know? 
You know, Angela rejected Zoro because Leone's dad was sick. She felt that, you know, it would break her even more if Zoro started dating Angela. And she did kind of like him, but like I said, it wasn't that much of a like. And Leone was explaining, I know, I, I slept on it, I've been thinking about it, and what was what made you feel that way? I, I We're always friends. I see your heart, Angela. Come here. I love you, boo. And I just wanted to say, your fashion got a little better, Angela. Mm-hmm. That's my influence. <laughs> and I was like, okay, girl. Okay. <laughs> I love you, too. Angela was like, you know what? Let me get a nap in today. But all she could do was think about the last 10 days. She kind of wasn't faking it with Duncan, but it was obvious he was on his part more. Elijah was a fun escape. Is there anything else there? My bond with my sister grew. But I'm not feeling Aaron's attitude. Everything played in Angela's mind, bit by bit. Angela says to herself, What a year. Oh, oh. You read that right. It's one year time jump. Madak celebrated her first birthday. Angela grew out her hair. Yeah. Yeah. Yup, yup, yup. It's a time job. Oh my god, I cannot wait to update y'all. So for the year, Angela's year has been great. She's been promoted in her work as she wanted. She basically has found more of what her passion should be in life. And we're going to be talking more about that hopefully next episode. But yes, you will see the answer for that around the finale time. Or by the finale, you have a great idea of what this is. After that one year time jump from the last episode, I wanted to make uh, this update part of episode 12, but I was like, that's not fair because I felt like the flow of the story may not just be as natural as I want it to be. And I thought, why don't I just make it a separate video to give y'all somewhat of a look at that one year update and how Angela's life looks like. So not only that, but like her family update too, just to give y'all a perspective of her father's side and her mother's side. Yes, but we're gonna go by seasons, by the way. So right now it is spring in the save and Angela's just been working out with her daughter. And she basically was just kind of like after that trip, was like, you know what, I'm just gonna work out and I wanna do these power walks in the neighborhood. And you know, so yeah, that's basically what's been going on. She's just been like kind of like in her work and just been busy with that. And of course there's Malak, you could see I gave her this bumblebee hat and oh my god. I just think she's so adorable. I really do. I love her so much. And I got her a new back carrier. I feel like she does have a couple now. So yeah. And like you see, of course. Okay. She's going to take care of herself. I love that. And yeah, this update for spring for Angela has been relatively chill. There hasn't been much drama. You know, Norman isn't coming to her house in odd hours anymore. I feel like, you know, she kind of like sternly told him that I don't like that. And if you want us to have like a better co-parenting relation, then you need to respect my boundaries. And yeah, so, she, you know, she has that a much more better relationship with um, Norman right now. And it's not it's not toxic it's it's okay like for the sake of melak it's chill is what i'm trying to say i thought this was really sweet this moment where she was just bird watching she got injured from walking i'm assuming she must have tripped or something and she got bandages but melak was just chilling with her oh it's so cute i love this i know bird watching came with this pack but there's a mod that just allows sims to do it whenever they want and i don't know when sims do it in general but yeah it's so cute Lucas and China, Auntie China, welcome a daughter. And I end up naming the daughter Lorelai. And I know y'all don't like his sister Lorelai because of the stuff with Angela and Duncan during the holiday special. But again, for realism purposes, he's really close to his sister, and his big sister was like his mother. So yeah. Welcome, baby Lorelai Jr. to this world. Yeah. Oh, y'all, that's so sweet. Baby number three is part of the family. Oh. 
fun fact i don't know if you know but they gave a special room to auntie lorelei that's in their like garage area and she just has like stuff to work out with and obviously now that her junior is in this world she's obviously like i'm here to babysit so she's been staying a little bit more often for this reason so yeah we're still in spring right now, but Malak, right now, her hair is different because that placenta perm is gone. She loves to spit the spit bubbles, okay? She, oh my god, she learned it from daycare one day, and ever since then, it's just been, like, her thing. She loves it so much. I don't get it, but listen, she's a little girl, so, you know, I understand. Angela is contacting Elijah here. They have been in contact, but it's not like a relationship or anything. It's just like they're two sims who just really enjoy each other's conversations. And he is really nice. He's so sweet. He likes Angela, but he knows realistically that long distance isn't real. She doesn't want to move to San Maishuno. He doesn't want to move to San Sequoia. But they do have plans to see each other during the summer months, which actually is pretty soon. It's going to be Malak's birthday, and we're celebrating this in Newcrest. Yes, Malak's first birthday will be celebrated at her father's home in Newcrest. I know. But the thing is, it makes sense. He asked her, he said, I want to have my family there. And, you know, she understands what it's like to not be close to your family. And she thought, you know, birthday too is way better to have as a because it's the age of birthday so she was just like oh my god she's gonna be a toddler i'd rather have that birthday so she's like yeah yeah you can go ahead for that one and she feels like she's gonna have a much better budget for her birthday you know happy birthday malak so angela went on a date with elijah and oh my god they were like basically almost picking it up where they left off child <laughs> like y'all this is this is the daylight y'all y'all are a mess oh my days pda but not really because it is a private area that he booked for her oh they're so cute they had a really great day y'all she was like woo i can confirm this is their first and last date they do text every now and then but like i said he started a new job and you know her job she's in san sequoia her family's there she just doesn't see herself moving to san maishuno you know and but he's really cute though y'all the sim is in the floor yellow save file Woo, child elijah is stunning look at him blushing isn't he the cutest oh my god he's so cute y'all know angela love this little wig she gonna always throw it on <laughs> Oh my god. But she had a great time. I feel like things would have been different had they lived close together. But, you know, it's okay. Things happen. Elijah asks Angela what's her plans for the summer. And she says she has a work trip coming up for Tartosa. She volunteered to go. A lot of people didn't want to go for some reason. And she was like, she wanted to go. And he said, hey, that's so exciting. She said, yeah, I haven't been there since I had my baby there. He's like, oh, your daughter is born there? She said, yeah, yeah, oh my god. Eh. My life has been interesting. It's like, I am I bet you, Angela, you are one interesting lady. And yeah, like I said, it's their first and last date. Malak's going to be staying with her father during this time and Aaron. And of course, the grandparents are going to be playing with her. So yeah. Hello, Angela is back in Tartosa. She's staying at Auntie Britt's home. She could have stayed at a hotel, but she didn't want that obviously she loves her auntie so much y'all look at her just power posing it up for us like look at the confidence in this woman's face okay she's growing by the day and i just feel like i just love her so much more for this you know seeing her growth and seeing just how much she's changed i don't know just something about that like look at that face she's giving us like i don't know let's talk about what she did during her trip while Angela was in Tartosa, she was painting a lot, kind of like when she first went there. And I don't know, I just really liked it. And I, th I felt also that she was kind of like challenging herself. Like, look what she painted, a lady cutting her hair. I mean, we know who did that. It was her. <laughs> and I just found that so funny that she chose to paint that. And, you know, like I said, she does love landscape and she did a lot of landscape painting while she was there. But she was doing some stuff just you know to for a breather right in between look at her still painting and yeah this trip was really nice work was nice everybody was good and she really loved her time there and even cousin sicily by the way came to like back from del sol valley i don't know if you know but she lives in del sol valley and she was just like cousin i'm gonna come over if you're in my city and <laughs> There, she was like, oh my god, we are two baddies in the beach. I feel like that's exactly what she said. 
Cousin Sicily has her own drama with her boyfriend who wants her to stay in Tartosa. So that's why sometimes she just wants to have any excuse to go there. Just because he's like, why do you have to go to Del Sol? And I'm just like, boy, bye. But yeah, I feel like she might actually dump him pretty soon because it's really annoying. And yeah, Angela was having fun in the ocean. And oh my God, it was a great beach day with her, Auntie Britt and Sicily. Oh, look at you them. And y'all, you know, swimming at night in Tarsosa is just as nice because, you know, warm climates when you, you know, it's nighttime, it's actually nicer to swim at night. And I actually lived in a warm climate place before, so I could speak from personal experience. Angela is on a date right now. And y'all, this guy, she met him on a dating app and he reminded her of her ex, Norman. She was just not here for him. I could tell you all that. Oh, Lord. He was just so obnoxious. But, you know, she was just kind of like, you know, she felt like there was a passion and fire between them. And so she was just kind of like almost ignoring it. But she didn't want to go that path again with dating a personality like him because he's very ambitious and like in a way that's like cocky. Like he's just always talking about work and how much better he is than everybody else at what he does. And it's just yeah but he really does compliment her and he finds her so attractive y'all he even has a crush sentiment she's just like can we just order food i mean i understand the cue <laughs> he's like i wanted to show you downstairs my friend this is my friend's restaurant and here is like where the set wine cellar is we can have fresh drinks stuff they make themselves and she's like oh okay and then she's like down here and she's kind of like she likes that he gave her like the access to do that and the conversation was a bit better down here, oddly enough. He was just talking about his favorite drinks and, you know, like how he likes to go sailing and that he would love to take her sailing one day. I mean, yeah, she, he was cool. She was just like, oh my God, I love Tartosa. So I'd love to go sailing one day. I'd love to like just go on a cruise or something. He's like, oh, really? Like, that's my whole vibe. And she's like, really? Uh, that's my vibe too. She, you know, she's like, that was like my dream location to go to. But, you know, he, look at her. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he likes her way more. She just thinks he's like kind of cute, but he thinks she's the cutest thing ever. And he's, he basically went for it. He's like, you know, you're beautiful. And she's just like, oh, that's all I've been hearing this whole time. <laughs> but she's just kind of like, whoa, like we got a lot of passion between us. You know what? Say it again. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, this date was just kind of like a fun thing. Like while she was on a trip to Tartosa. It's not that deep. She's never calling this man again. And I know he's sad. Let's fast forward to a few weeks in Brindleton Bay. Okay, so the grandparents yeah. invited all the cousin <laughs> line to come and hang out for a special like weekend. So, you know, Byron, Charlie, Shannon, Angela, Daniela, they're all here with Grandpa Brendan and Grandma Christy in Brindleton Bay. She's wearing that bracelet that... <laughs> Y'all know the bracelet that she made with Shannon. Oh, this is so cute, y'all. Angela and Daniela were talking all night. They left the lights on and yeah, they just fell asleep talking, telling stories about when they were younger and how they used to go to the lake house for the summer vacations with grandma and grandpa. And, you know, before again, grandma and grandpa used to live in San Sequoia, but they just now permanently live here as their retirement home. So yeah, y'all look at this, the little kids. Oh, the grandchildren, the first cousins, you know. That's so cute. They're besties anyway. Y'all know Grandpa Brendan is pretty strict, but when it comes to his grandkids, they are so spoiled. Like, it's not even funny. So the family's having a water balloon fight. And tell me why they keep throwing the water balloons beside Malak. Like, this is evil. <laughs> but I think they're probably doing it because she is laughing when the water balloon comes by her. Oh my god, y'all. Do y'all see that? Look, they just throwing it at her. Like, at this point, I think they're aiming for her. Unhinged. Unhinged, if you ask me. But yeah, they're playing together here. It's so fun. I think that, like, I always forget about the water balloon sometimes. And I love it. I love when Sims get to have water balloon fights and just watching. But they kept attacking Shannon and Angela so much. Like, they were drenched, y'all. Okay? But yeah, summer in Brindleton Bay with the grandparents is the best gameplay for me. I love when I visit the grandparents in Brindleton Bay. You know, I don't know, but... Oh, Byron's here, y'all. Yeah, he has his little beard. He's just growing it out, just figuring it out. He's a young man. Look at Angela, just sick and tired of them picking at her. <laughs> I'm so done. Oh my god, I'm done. Oh god, look at Angela, they threw double attack at her. It's not the first time, they even did the same thing to Shannon, I felt bad. 
So Jacob Uchida visited Daniela's parents. If you don't know, but Daniela's parents wanted to stay together. They didn't want the kids. They felt like it was like their own vacation. Anyway, he wants to ask the blessing to marry Daniela. He just straight up was like, I want to ask. And he went behind uh, their back, sorry, and, sorry, Daniela's back, and called Angela, like, where's your family address in San Sequoia? I want to meet with them. I want to tell them that I want to marry Daniela. I just don't want to do it behind their back, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, oh, that's so sweet. Every time he's like even trying to talk to Angela, he tries to ask her even. And even though Angela's a younger sister, she's just kind of like, it's not my place. Like, if you want to go to my parents' house, like, I'll give you their address. And long story short, both parents were just kind of like, I'm not going to ask, accept that because it's not my place to say yes or no on this. And it's all Daniela's decision. I'll actually read the pop-up for you. But tell me why he was just kind of like, let's play rock, paper, and scissors instead. Make that make sense. <laughs> I was so confused uh, watching this back. Like, what is going on? Like, the, the men, even me and me and uh, Addison, are confused. We're like, what is up with them? Yes, it's same. Adam said, "It's not up to me. You both decided on your own. So don't pretend like my opinion actually matters." I literally was saying he gonna do it anyway. Let's have your blessing. Oh, yes. Yibs. Yeah. Not her feeling like she's making some great social connections because of this guy. Oh, that's so random. I mean... Okay, so she did say, I appreciate that you came to me, but the decision has already been made by the person that really matters. I'm just happy to share that with both of you. Oh, why are they the cutest parents of all time? She said, you do your thing. Like, obviously, you don't need my blessing. You know, all that matters is Danielle is happy. And the dad was kind of like, you were going to do it anyway. Leave me alone. Like, I mean, it was like pretty much similar answers. I did not expect that from her parents. I was expecting maybe they'd just kind of be like yes yes thank you for coming and telling us this you know because i did expect they had somewhat traditional values but we want you to be happy and we want daniela to be happy at the end of the day so he's gonna have to travel all the way to brindleton pay to propose to daniela so daniela doesn't have any idea jacob asked angela to take daniela to a restaurant and have her dress up and just make it seem like it's a girl's day out together or something and he's just gonna surprise her so we're gonna have to go and see that for ourselves together angela left daniela at the bleach she's like where on earth is she she said she was gonna go to the bathroom what five minutes ago i, I don't even know where on earth she is and he surprises her and she's like wait what was this oh my god jacob is that you he's like it's me she's like what are you doing here i'm so on a family vacation what like she's just surprised he's like i'm here to just surprise you and say hi and he's like, I don't know, it's a little suspicious. What's tea? What are you trying to, you know, tell me? And he's like, uh, okay, look now. He's like, what? 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 He's like, will you marry me? I love you so much, Daniela. You are my soulmate. I can't do this life thing without you. And she's like, what? I can't figure out life. I can't, like, you're my everything. And she's just so happy. And so he's like, I want us to be together forever. Look at Angela just crying in the background. Just, oh, look how happy she is. She's even crying. Oh, that's so cute. Not this guy ruining my shot help. Anyway, so yeah. They are engaged, and Angela is so proud and happy for her sister. And he's like, I got something else for you. And she's like, what do you got? He's like, look. She's like, oh my god, you are so romantic, Jacob. This is the best surprise ever. He's like, well, I got something else. She's like, what the hell? Like, what else? He's like, I got your favorite chocolates. She's like, no, you didn't. <laughs> she's like, oh my god, you did. Wow. He's like, yeah, here, you should try some right now. She's like, oh my god, thank you. And Angela's just watching this in the background. She's just like, wow, like this is so sweet. They are truly in love. They're so happy and they're trying to plan for a future wedding, which will probably be in season two. So we'll get into that then. But yeah, congratulations to the beautiful couple. Obviously, Angela is like, I want to take a selfie with you to remember this moment, sis. Like, hello, you are now a fiance. So she was just like, sis, let's take a photo. Daniela was like, oh my god, you were in on this. Oh my god, I love you so much. Ah! So Angela's like, well, enjoy your special date. I'm just going to go ahead back home. And yeah, so there she left. And while she was walking, she bumped into Lorelai, which was so random. I was like, wait, what's going on? And look at the look she's giving her. Like, I don't know if she knows it's Angela, but I was like, ma'am, you better stop that stank face. 
anyway this is um he's part of the family by this point he's at their home i'm like y'all are doing too much but like look they're in love okay <laughs> I was really surprised by them and you know I'm happy for her I'm happy that she was able to be vulnerable and just you know be happy with him let's talk about Duncan Nico Brittany as a group because here is their summer update so finally Brittany is here in Willow Creek. It took her months of convincing Nico that it's not fair for her to be alone in Tartosa now that Cicely's not here. And, you know, Cicely sometimes takes the cat Delilah with her. And she's just alone. She's feeling lonely. And, you know, Duncan didn't want her to come. He didn't want her to see him like this. And now he's sleeping on the couch. They didn't get sleeping bags yet. But, like, she just finally arrived last night and you know duncan realized how it was messing with his father's relationship and happiness and he was just kind of like that's not his intention he sees how happy his father is with auntie Britt, so he's just kind of like you know what like what could i do i have to do this for my father auntie Britt is so happy to be here in willow creek like i don't think you understand she wanted to be here so bad she even tried at one point to so just convince them to let her parents come because her parents live here in willow creek by the way and she just like please please just like you know she just wanted to be in she's just like i'm your family why do i feel like i'm your neighbor like why am i not being let in and you know now finally she's let in i'm happy for her oh y'all oh my god his father is so sweet y'all you know he was thinking he wrote my beloved child from expressing pr being proud i'm so happy and proud when i look at you that's so amazing to see oh i really love this family and i don't know if i've ever talked to y'all about this but duncan has a weird relationship with auntie Britt. i noticed that he's acknowledged most of her family other than her as like somewhat being related to him like even angela has like cousin angela as like a place in his life and you know cousin daniela sister rosalie sister sicily you know i mean i don't know about zorro but one day <laughs> so i'm just saying is that for her she doesn't even get auntie brit even like he, auntie addison her sister exists in his universe but like i guess he's just not ready for a maternal figure like that and we're gonna just have to give him time but auntie Britt does want to prove to him that she loves him and that she sees him like her own child and he wasn't trustworthy of that he i feel like understands like somewhat of a maternal love through his father's lens and not through the lens of it being from a feminine sim again his father doesn't have family it's always just been them two so and then all of a sudden now britney's here it's just not the same duncan will be moving to brindleton bay in a few weeks his work didn't allow him to move and it was just quite unfortunate they said that you're under contract and you need to stay and finish this project with us before you leave so yeah Duncan is going to be staying in Willow Creek a little longer than what he anticipated. He thought he was going to move by now, but no, just a few more weeks though. The goal today is to visit Brittany's parents, like I said, who live here in Willow Creek. And I think it'd be nice for y'all to see the Malloy family. I don't know. I love the Malloy family too, just as much as I love the Hills. Anyway, y'all, so they're here right now at grandma and grandpa's home. Again, I say it from Angela's perspective, but I should be saying mama and papa since we're playing from Auntie Britt's perspective or the in-laws if we say from Nico's perspective. Yeah, Nico did see his in-laws like almost one time while he was there. And I know it's like kind of weird, but he's been so focused on Duncan's life, just making sure Duncan's place looks good. And by the way, he is having a big goal of making sure that, you know, his next place is a much better situation than where he currently lives you could see grandma lilith there she's just like hi i haven't seen you duncan since the holidays you know and he's like oh hi hi grandma and then there is grandpa cliff malloy and i don't know if you know but grandpa cliff still works at the hospital he is a doctor and uh, grandma lilith used to be um in the doctor's career but i feel like she was probably like a nurse practitioner anyway all this to say is that she retired and she just cross stitches and has fun in willow creek all day uh yeah uh, of course he's gonna have to say hi to his in-law parents like he's just so cute he don't even want to sit down he's like i have to say it while i'm standing up so yeah y'all y'all see what she cross-stitched and i'm just looking at their their thoughts i'm like why is he blushing so heavy but i think it's just being around her i am happy like he loves his wife so much like look at how much he's blushing like i see the parents see that like <laughs> 
I want to introduce y'all to the grumpy cat of the family. <laughs> this is a meme cat, y'all, okay? M-E-M-E, -E, meme, okay? Oh my god. And Duncan was inspired. He was like, I want to adopt a cat that looks just like that. And he ends up doing that. So I just wanted to let y'all see how Sicily is doing and I'm going to be giving Sicily the first slot for the autumn and that we could give some autumn updates from Sicily's perspective because Sicily has been living it up as a model. She just knows she's that girl and when I see Sicily, I just see such a confident sim. Like, I don't know. It's just so interesting how I see her. She is... I feel like I guess it's probably that Tartosa side of just you know that you let like you let bygones be bygones you live you just do what you want to make you happy and while she loves Tartosa and Tartosa will always be home she knows that the modeling gigs there are basically international let's say gigs like it's like maybe if you're in San Myshuno and they're flying a bunch of sims over to Tartosa for a photo shoot it's not you know tartosa local ads uh, catalogs and stuff like that she wants to be big she wants to be on a billboard one day kind of thing so she knows the way to do that is to go to del sol valley cicely is roommates with four ladies in del sol valley some of them are models like the girl in the blue who's um tanning herself her name is tracy lee and she is a model just like Cicely is. She's very competitive though. Like, I don't know. But, it, you know, the other ladies, they do want to be celebrities too. But I don't think that Cicely wants to do it for the fame. I just think she genuinely likes the art and the beauty of modeling. And I feel like maybe the one day she'll be a fashion photographer or maybe just be in the fashion industry. Y'all, the helicopter distracted me. I was like, what the hell is that? Uh, sorry, let me not get distracted. But like cool <laughs> yeah so here's the roommates they're all so cute and they go out they party together there's fun clubs here in del sol valley and you know my girl is having the time of her life living here and you know she does still contact her family in fact she's on the phone with zoro yes zoro and cicely do talk every now and then he is a little weird but cicely is just kind of like very confident in who she is that she doesn't take it as an offense she's just kind of like he calls cool he doesn't call cool like you know she's just focused and driven on what she is doing which is modeling and you know she does also contact cicely too sorry not cicely rosalie and rosalie actually told her that she does talk to zoro and zoro and her are pretty close like closer i feel like because of their unique circumstance and they do plan on meeting like maybe a year from now cousin cicely's boyfriend is here and he's like choose me over del sol valley i will bring you the happiness del sol valley won't bring you and she says how many times do i tell you i'm happy where i am and if you can't handle that then we might as well break up because i don't want to be with someone who's going to hinder my growth i see potential in myself staying here and you have to respect that and if you don't i'm sorry but the door is there tell me why he started walking and it's like yeah the door is there i'm walking i was like i i was shocked <laughs> but yeah let's go ahead and go to brindleton bay i mean y'all already looking at it like i said it was autumn and finally duncan is here he found a place where he has roommates so it's like a town home so he's a roommate with an old man and a younger lady and oh my god this is so cute his daughter ollie is here and she's like daddy's new home oh <laughs> so cute I wanted to introduce you to Duncan's grumpy cat. Again, this is a new place, no clutter. I mean, he's just like literally only has his room set up and stuff. But yeah, like look out here. It's so cute. I love this area. Ollie's room is so adorable too. Um, I worked on that too. And then I want to get him a barbecue area. So I have a lot of plans. I don't think they have any. So maybe he could be like, hey, come over. And then he could be part of a community. And maybe just like have some sort of trustworthiness with these sims. I don't know. I love, I would love that so much for Duncan. But yeah, life in Brindleton Bay. Oh Lord. Anyway, but yeah. I love that and he's here and he's at a much better place his father actually is going to be leaving in a few weeks um he just wants to make sure that the neighbors and the community is nice and everything he did really want him to live here because he didn't want Duncan to live alone in a house or anything like that he wanted him to live in a town home so yeah Byron and Zuri are college students now they look so much older to me 
but they also like babies to me but like they they look older versions of themselves and y'all byron was so inspired by jacob's act that he also wanted to propose he's like look i love you you are the love of my life like why not she's like are you serious i i, I wanted to always say yes if you ever but like i thought we we're gonna do this in a few years what yes of course i'm gonna say yes i love you oh i'm so happy for them she's like oh my god but do you think everybody's gonna say we're too young he's like forget what everybody thinks we're gonna be happy no matter what here's a small autumn update for angela her and charlie are so close to the point that charlie declared angela as her favorite sibling like they just go to target together they go to like the splash pad area together they go everywhere together every time she's like oh i'm gonna take malak to the park do you want to come with us so and it actually makes it so much easier for her parents because her parents are older now and it's not easy just to always go everywhere with charlie so sometimes it's nice that angela gets to just do this part with them and yeah even uni has fun in this flashback everybody gets to have fun here i love this little i like object yeah it's with the pack by the way if you didn't know winter was a relatively chill month angela was basically right now she's at target trying to buy winterfest gifts because they're gonna have a very small family winterfest and byron just came back with the news that he married his girlfriend well fiance i mean it was just crazy everybody was surprised and like yeah the first hill family member to get married is byron so again she was just looking for gifts for every family member her again it's a nuclear family uh event and in my mind maybe even zuri's parents are going to be there and her siblings and stuff which they actually are neighbors with her family so maybe it's going to be like a joint winterfest type of event so she's just looking for gifts at target for whoever she feels is good and not good like a good sim more like just what's good for them and yeah i just thought this candle is so perfect for daniela and then i saw this really cute like bath and body type of candle right next to it and i was like yo this one zuri's gonna love it yeah that one right there oh my god i think she would love this one i even found like some cute makeup stuff and you know stuff that are like small and doesn't take a lot of space in her dorms like yeah that's pretty much what i did and then i just had her and go to the self-checkout area and i wanted her to go ahead and check out and buy all the items that she did and just have her go back home like that and yeah she even has a matching back hair here she's so festive for the season and it is relatively warm though like right now but she didn't care okay let's just act like this is a light sweater okay this amazing lot is by sim clues and y'all i had a lot of fun i but yeah we're in the current timeline for where episode 12 will begin spring which is a one year time jump. so yeah angela bought a laundry thing and i feel like she wants to hand wash them because melak's still a baby and she just kind of like she doesn't trust detergents and stuff so she does use detergents for herself but not only that but there isn't enough space in the house for a laundry but just for now we're let's say that this is what she's doing okay so she has somewhere she can hang her clothes and that's the mini spring update that i could give y'all because we're gonna get into the storytelling and the tea for this next upcoming episode uh -huh. and i can't wait for y'all to see it so yeah angela's gonna hang her clothes and i kind of wish that they there's like an updated one maybe one day where it could add like ages like oh like is there an infant in the house is there a toddler i don't know that would be fun for me angela kind of works on some of the wellness skill not really but like you know leone's kind of like girl why do i use your yoga mat more than you <laughs> i thought that was a valid question because it's true she really always uses it when she comes by i'm just like oh my god this is embarrassing it's just decor at this point i will be posting angela's one year update in like a tumblr post i cannot wait for y'all to see that i will link it either below or i might just post it on my community tab as a reminder once it's up usually i do kind of get paired and i feel like i don't want to spoil something so i kind of let it like sit for a day but yeah thank you so much for watching my name is sasha and i wish y'all a lovely 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 day take care it's been a year since the growing together save i hope you watched my previous update because right now we are going back into the storytelling you are looking at malak who now has 
four teeth yes okay i did google it they said they have about four teeth when they're you know one years old so malak is one her birthday is in the summer so we're gonna have a second birthday and i can't wait for y'all to see that but you know i did update malak's room her mom and her are sitting together and brendy is here so angela and brendy are gonna have their own thing right now very soon oh, no, yeah Angela and Brandy are working on digital art. Now, I don't know if you know this, but Angela has been expanding on her art and not only just like doing the traditional way, but going like even sketchpad, digital art. She works as a freelance artist now. It's been really nice seeing her expand. And you know, Brandy, she's been interning and makes a little bit of money. And she kind of was like, hey, Angela, there's more to it. And so Angela has been doing digital art on the side while being an art critic. While she hates technology because of her past on TikTok, she's been slowly warming up to it. Who knows where that will take her? Angela says, two years ago, I used to live in Tartosa and was pregnant with Melak. Brendy says, Angela, what a life you lived. You're born in San Sequoia, went to college in Brightchester, lived in San Maishuno, also lived in Tortosa. And girl, I just got out of Brindleton Bay to move here. Angela says, and look at you. You went to San Maishuno last year. Give yourself some credit. Brendy says, ah, you're right. Angela says, thanks for telling me about the sip and paint, by the way. That experience changed my life. I've been chatting with Tyrena and she's encouraged me to open my own personal gallery where, you know, I could showcase the art that I've been working on. And Brendy says, mm, you never really show me your personal paintings. Angela says, well, I'll show you at the event. Brandy says, well, you know, if you need any help, don't be scared to ask me. I got you. They enjoyed their time outdoors and Melak took a nap and so did Uni. You know, Brandy's enjoying watching cloud gazing and Angela says, take care of them while I pick up the food. So I decided I think it was best that they just order out today. Oh my God, remember when Angela had that Zoomers sponsorship? Wow, what a time. So they got some Greek salad. You know that Brandy is a vegetarian. So yeah, and then they also got some lemonade too. I love that for the girls. And Malak's eating some banana. Oh my god, she loves finger food, especially the banana. Oh my god, she does not play about her bananas. <laughs> okay, she loves bananas so much. It's the cutest. Look at her. Oh. Brandy's gonna go after this. It is getting late for Malak, so Angela is just probably gonna read a book and put her to bed. Angela's reading a book to Malak so that she can go to sleep. Sometimes I just have Malak sleep downstairs now because I just think this little area is cute for her to just chill here and it's close to where Angela sleeps anyway. Y'all, I did give her a new quirk, the happy spitter quirk and the self-soothing quirk and I removed the hiccup quirk instead. So yeah, so cute. Sweet dreams, honey. It's the next morning and Angela's gonna be going to brunch with her mother. I'm using the brunch mod by Dainty Simmer and y'all need to check this mod out. It's so cute. Mama Addison said, so are, what, what are you doing these days? Are we fake dating or real dating? <laughs> I just want to set you up with someone. Angela says, okay, mom, I'll go. You've been relentless and it's it's been months. Mama says, hey, okay, honey, but like he's a cutie and age appropriate. No relation to this family whatsoever. Angela says, okay, mom. <laughs> <laughs> and then her mother says no i'm not gonna lie to you though i thought that you were gonna protest me on this i was ready to make some points about how daughters should listen to their mothers and just says okay mom i'm free in a day or two from now so i don't mind and her mom says what's the catch you want something honestly mom i just don't want you to set me up after this i'm going to go this one time but i already know this date will go horrible her mom says, careful now, the word of the mouth is powerful. So Angela's mom set her up on a blind date. How will that go? Hmm. Anyway, so Mama Addison cut her hair, by the way. She went for that natural big chop and she wants to grow her hair out. And I can't wait for y'all to see that journey for her. Angela developed a new habit, which is bird watching. She loves outdoor treats, so I mean, it does make sense. She even had her mom go and like in with her. <laughs> and just watch what's going on in the area i thought it was really cute that they got to do this together so let's go fast forward to the next day 
Angela's mom said, are you free? Because you could just go on your date today. So Angela is getting ready at her parents' home today because they're going to babysit Malak. It's just so much more easier. And Angela's just looking at herself and she's feeling herself. She's like, okay, I picked a really cute outfit. And this is like kind of like one of her outfits from almost like her TikTok early. But like, it was kind of like one of those like she never really wears. So this time around, she's wearing it. She's like, okay, you know, I'm feeling myself. You know what? I'm, I'm ready. Oh, Malak, I'm going to miss you. Bye, honey. I love you. Dad says she's in good hands. Have fun, dear. Her father hugs her and mom says he's wearing a blue and white suit. And she says, okay, mom, love you. Dad says, see you, hon. Good luck. Angela walks out and, you know, Mom Addison's a little nervous, like, do you think this date's going to go well? And Dad says, it, it, it's going to be okay, don't worry. Angela goes to the restaurant location. She searches for a blue and white suit and she sees this person. She walks forward towards the sim. She's very nervous. Because Angela's socially awkward, she doesn't know how to approach the sim. And the sim is just watching the waters and she just goes for it. Hey, uh, are you the blue and white suit? He turns around and Angela says, hi, yeah, um, I think we were set up on a date. Oh? That's Xander. Angela is shocked AF. She did not expect this, but she walks towards him and he walks towards her. Hey, Angela says, how did this happen? And he says, well, follow me. Let's go to the restaurant and we could talk all about it. So they go on their first date to this restaurant, which is also happens to be by the bridge. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't have many lots to work with. Okay. <laughs> Well, there they are. And Xander's going to explain how this happened. Angela asks, how does my mom know you? Xander says, your sister plays basketball with my son. Remember we met each other at the park like a year or something ago? Angela says, oh, yes, that felt like forever ago. You're Melak's brother. And Xander says, yes, I hope this isn't awkward. Angela says, no. Your mom always has talked about you guys. She really loves y'all. Trust me, our kids have been friends for years and she goes on and on about y'all. Angela says, wow, I can relate to my mom in that area. He says, same. My son is my everything. So they just ask each other questions about, you know, jobs, life, career, aspirations, you know, just those simple, like, not so deep questions on a first date. And I don't know, but the way they're blushing is just distracting me. I mean, I'm sure it's distracting you because what? Like, oh my God, I'm low-key, like, blushing with them. Like, I don't want to, but they're making me go through it. They ordered some drinks and some bruschetta, I believe that's how to pronounce it, and y'all, he asked her, is it okay if we go to a movie after? And she says, okay, sure, let's go. Angela's on her way back home, I thought it'd be nice to read a mood that I caught. So they both gained the crush sentiment from this date, okay? And she got the smooth talker moodlet from having a crush. Ah yeah, that went so smooth. Angela was cool as a cucumber around her crush. And this is what Xander thought. How cute from blushing sim. Xander cannot help but notice how much that sim is blushing. Girl, cool as a cucumber where? <laughs> I'm so done. Angela's parents are waiting for her to come back home. Well, since uh -huh. Xander extended the date, 
they didn't expect her to be this late so there angela is she's back home angela dear come here we're waiting for you oh y'all still up oh my god hey guys mom asks how was it angela says it was nice angela's mom says oh well he's a good guy and his dad is a bit annoying but he's a cool guy after a few conversation the kids maternal grandparents are nice the kids mom isn't in the picture she left her son and never came back last i heard she calls her parents once a year but they're kind of ashamed of her according to them angel says mom how do you know so much on them she <laughs> angel's mom says if i didn't do my research and i'm a bad mother they all take turns taking the kids to the park and i converse with them while charlie plays anyway angel was feeling too sick to continue the conversation they told her to sleep uh, over for the night and you know and i could stay in their room so angela they told her to go take a bath and stuff but she was thinking about what they told her she was thinking wow like mom really knew a lot about this guy and his family tea and everything and like but how does she know you know but you know moms know everything come on y'all like y'all know moms just have the tea like that so angela sleeps in byron's room for the night and tomorrow is mother's day good morning from the hills household papa adams whipped out that waffle maker and made some nice banana split type of waffles for mother's day and i think this holiday is really nice i want to add it to my other saves yeah i thought it was a great idea so angela talks to her mom about how xander texted her that they're gonna go on another date and she's like wow that was really good okay here i thought you were like i'm gonna not let you go set you up again and you enjoyed that date that you're going on a second one she's like okay mom stop gloating <laughs> she's like oh i have a headache mom let's not talk about this like she's probably like oh my god i cannot believe i got set up by my mom <laughs> <laughs> anyway so yeah they're gonna go on a museum for their second date and angela is like you know kind of like really proud that her dad made this breakfast and she's like yeah honey your dad always does this i mean you know maybe you were too young to remember it's like yeah maybe i was but i'm really happy and i feel like i want to have something like that for myself in the future literally he's taking care of malak in the background like just letting them talk and have this morning it was so cute anyway it's time for angela to go back home with her little paranoid self i love her so yeah bye mom bye dad angela heads out and oh i love the back hair i don't know i'm really happy it's part of this pack please they are the cutest oh my god oh my god oh my god i'm gonna fangirl stop oh my god oh my god <laughs> hey mom happy mother's day hey Britt, happy mother's day i love you sis oh hey mom happy mother's day hey china happy mother's day love you sis i'm gonna drop charlie off for you today though okay bye <laughs> i feel like that's how the conversations went so yeah angela just takes a view though before she goes back home just enjoying this area kind of like what she did when she was a kid it's really cute we are now at the oasis springs art gallery angela and xander are going on their second date here the date was pretty cute but unfortunately i lost the footage angela tells xander she's just going to talk to the front desk because she has a couple of questions angela asks how much is it to rent this place for an event he says it is 1500 simoleons but we are booked for the next 37 days is this an urgent event angela says no i'm just hosting my art no wedding nothing of that sort so he looks through his schedule mm, what do you think about saturday may 12 is that a good day angela says oh that's perfect do i have a planner or sorry do i hire a planner or do you know anyone you're in luck i am a planner too oh angela it's a pleasure to meet you andre the pleasure is all mine they were looking at the gift shop area and the date was pretty good xander was kind of curious why she was there for a while but angela connected with andre and they're going to be meeting up to set up this event so they go outside in the rain and oh my god y'all it's a beautiful spring day so xander just goes for it and get like they have a kiss in the rain basically like oh my god <laughs> what a cute second date 
One thing that's really important for Angela is that she needs to work on her speech because she needs to make a speech. And Andre told her, I know you're socially awkward, but you actually have to work on your speech. You have to woo the audience. You want people to keep coming back. I know you said it's somewhat of a private event, but you just want the word to be out there. You do want to invite friends or even just people you know. And she was just kind of like, okay, I need to work on that. And so she's been working on her charisma skill lately. So Angela has a meeting with Andre today and they're going to be talking about the theme, the budget, because while yes, she's just paying $1,500, but she has to not only pay him and his co-workers, she has to also pay uh like you know entertainment fee uh bar like all that licensing and stuff that she just needs to make sure the event will run well and i'm not gonna lie it's a bit of a coin uh like while she does have some money saved it's about almost half of her savings but i mean she will be selling her art at this event so she could probably flip the profit we'll wait to see how that works out for her oh my god i am nervous you know but yeah she's talking about all her ideas and you know he's kind of like do you want everybody to wear a certain color um or do you just kind of want it to make it a little freeing and stuff like that she's like, somewhere in the middle basically and he says okay well what kind of entertainment do you want do you want a comedian do you want music do you want a live band do you want uh, just like a radio playing in the background you know and she says uh maybe a bit of both he says well okay well that's uh, itself is a coin but you know i do have uh one of my workers emery she does play the harp and maybe it'll be a little bit of a you know pr like pricier than just going and outsourcing somewhere else and angela's like okay okay that's pretty good and you know the food price they talked about all of that and yeah it's pretty much gonna be about 10k out of her pocket yeah yeah 10k simoleons it's quite expensive i know but angela is prepared you know she knows it's a risk and this is her dream she wants to sell art of landscape from around the world and we're starting it with tartosa and the theme of the event is a night in tartosa so yeah we're gonna have to watch that happen so for the next 37 days, Angela spends a lot of time with Andre. Andre is very organized. Actually, I want to tell y'all what he wrote about her in his notebook. Client Angela Hill. She's sort of socially awkward and paranoid, but a very optimistic sim. She's passionate about art in a way I haven't heard in a long time. I want to bring her vision to life. She needs to stop being doubtful and step into her potential. I told her it's okay to be awkward and overthink, but I hope I didn't step out of line. She's a great gal, and I wish her the best. It's true, over the time they got to know each other, Angela had the they understand uh, sentiment, which is basically about her socially awkward trait that it's okay to be awkward and, you know, she was impressed by him. She just feels he's such a cool sim and he's just so knowledgeable and she feels like she couldn't have probably done this event had she not had Andre by her side. She probably would have doubted herself and maybe just cancel it. So yeah, they have closer from happier memories and he even got gr growing closer from quality time, which I thought was really cute. Okay, ignore the crush sentiment, okay? I i'm ignoring it while well, she does find him extremely attractive <laughs> listen sims can appreciate a sims beauty right okay let's just yeah so angela and andre made this area their spot you know angela was having him look over her grammar and he was like you know your speech is coming along nicely and she's kind of like maybe i should keep the rest privately and he's like no no you need to keep practicing you need to keep reading it out loud you're doing good so far we need to make a couple of more calls is there anything else that i'm missing and she's just kind of like well i was hoping if it's possible that we could you know serve tea and he's like yeah no for sure i got you you don't have to worry about that she's like yeah tartosa you know my aunt just always made a warm cup of tea for me that's just something very nostalgic about that and he's like okay don't worry i'm gonna do that and yeah so angela's just writing a lot of notes lately it's just so cute seeing her 
So Andre takes Angela to meet the team. There's Emery and Mateo, and they're just really sweet sims. They work for him. Emery, she just dreams of being a socialite one day. Mateo, he's actually passionate about the job, just like Andre is. This is Andre's dream job. He loves working as a planner, but he also does work on the, you know, at the art gallery on the side. So yeah, it's just so sweet. I love him. But yeah, oh my god, child, these sims were trying to flirt with Angela. I was like, ignore, ignore, <laughs> ignore, <laughs> ignore. <laughs> but yeah, they were supposed to behave, okay? Let's just act like they're behaving and they're just talking about all the goals and stuff and how excited they are for this event. In my mind, they're also talking about how they have been working on a lot of weddings lately, that it's kind of nice that they get to do something different, like an art gallery type of thing and an actual art you know show being showcased and you know they haven't done that in like a good two years you know they feel like a lot of people just don't want to do art around oasis spring and you know they've been going to stand my shuno instead so it's just kind of like no like i wanted to do something sort of close to me and stuff and yeah i'm really happy so Again, Angela and Andre are going to meet again. And this time around, they are making a lot of phone calls. They have to make sure that the, you know, drinks, uh, the bartender, the license. And, you know, Angela is trying to call her entertainer. She's just kind of like, okay, hey, I just wanted to make sure uh, are you coming by again. Is everything good? Yeah, so today was like phone call day, y'all. Angela had to call her brother who's in university. And she's just kind of like, okay, look. I could play, pay for half of you and Zuri's tickets. I want y'all to come to this event. I got y'all. Um, and he's like, yeah, sure. I don't mind. So like, you know, because he's young, she feels bad. But then at the same time, you know, her parents actually covered that fee. Uh, when they heard that, they just gave her the money back. They're like, honey, you're spending a lot for this event. And they even pitched in actually some money. I feel like they probably pitched in a good 2,000 simoleons. I feel like even Daniela probably pitched in 1,000 simoleons too for the event. So I thought it was really nice. I love how her family has her back and you know i feel like her other family would give her money if she asked but she really wants to make this event hers you know something that she worked almost like you know 95 percent from the ground up you know which she is so yeah she's just been making all these important calls he's been also checking you know with social media the apps everything like that making sure the invitations were sent out you know angela's just checking with her grandparents too like okay grandma grandpa it should be coming in the mail and stuff <laughs> so cute so at night they plan to go to the art gallery but andre just wants to make sure she's really getting the speech together you know he's like okay you need to work on it so he even had her act work on her acting skill just because she needs her to just bring that energy to the crowd the night that she performs because like i said it's a hit or a miss she's worried like you know he's worried for her you know because even angela i don't know if you know but she invited her influencer event like friends from like years ago if y'all remember from sam i should know like she did just kind of like send a letter i do know that one of them wants to come out for the event so a lot of sims are coming for this event like from her past life from her current life you know and so yeah he's just kind of like okay you're memorizing it yeah you have to say it like this you have to you know bring it out you have to show how much you care about your art and she's just like imitating what he's doing he's like literally mentoring her he's such a sweetheart i love andre and like he really does want to bring angela's vision to life you know look how proud he looks at her like this is just he's such an amazing sim for real but yeah look look i love this animation by the way this is from uh if you have a sim being a mentor they just literally do this i love it he says you understand the mission angela you're doing so much better and she's like malak you see that your mom's doing better Angela even practices how to make a toast because if she makes a toast at the event, just in case, you know, maybe she might just ask another sim to do it if she feels the pressure, but yeah. <laughs> that night, Andre showed Angela the museum. He wanted her to see just one last time how it's going to look, the vision, and, you know, he even asked her, hey, Angela, you never really told me how was that love day date that you went on? Angela says, um... I'm gonna show y'all what happened. So they went to a movie theater, and I don't know why, but they were dressed a little too fancy. But maybe because it was a Lux movie theater, so I guess they had to just you know dress up for the occasion. And my God, they were so cozied up with each other. Oh my God! One thing about Xander, he like is so into just making sure angela feels comfortable from her body language and everything you know because angela is naturally a little awkward we know that 
that was a good date oh my god and the movie was even better they really loved that werewolf movie okay but yeah they were really cozied up like i said they <laughs> i'm done but yeah no they definitely chose those love seats for a reason okay so he says i got a surprise for you and angela's like what's the surprise he's like follow me follow me don't doubt it just keep keep following me she's like okay so she just keeps walking and y'all i'm gonna tell y'all while they're walking there what the surprise is so he rented a truck and you know she came to, to this Follow. venue by herself right and this is the first time he's actually driving her home so she sees it, it's like a love day vehicle and he's like oh, yeah what do you think and she's like what <laughs> she's like that's so sweet oh my god you know even though it's just a small car ride back home the fact that he thought okay you know what like this is like a i really want to make this love day special which by the way i don't know why the save has mother's day before a love day I'm a little confused on that. I'm not going to lie at me too, you too, you know, anyway. But yeah, back to the storytelling. This date was amazing. I feel like they felt like it was like close to their first date. And at this point, like I said, it is their third date. So the second date was like a fun date, but the third date. So they rank, I think, date one, date three, then two. But yeah, they went back home and she got a surprise. And he's like, oh, love day flowers. Wow. Thank you you know she didn't even think of getting him a gift honestly because she was like she didn't know because they talked about maybe not doing too much pressure for this love date and like he literally had this hidden and so she was just like whoa like she was just so shocked and taken aback by this you know she just by his kind gesture she's like wait no like wait if i'm gonna have some you're gonna have to have some too like oh my god she's like wow Xander, you didn't, you know we talked about not having to get gifts and he's like i know but i just wanted to surprise you in this area and oh <laughs> i love this for them yeah this is a really great day she's like thank you so much once again like no for real and he's like no like you're so amazing you deserve this oh but yeah she's like thank you so much for just being here and he's like you know thank you and oh my god they were like so close to wanting to woohoo but they're you know both of them were kind of like they wanted it to be the right moment they just don't want to rush into it you know they just want to really enjoy the dating experience before just having to add woohoo into the equation so yeah but y'all they were autonomously doing this stuff i was just recording okay Today's the day of the event and Angela and the women in her family prepared and got ready together. Angela says, thank you all for your hard work, ladies. I love you so much. And today's the start of the rest of my life. If it wasn't for your support, whether it was babysitting Malak, funding any part of this, cooking food, cleaning the venue with me, showing up, I appreciate you so much. You guys don't have to buy my art. The fact that you all flew here to support me means more. Auntie Britt says, don't worry about it, dear. But what did you mean by dress like a Tartosa anyway as the theme? And why is Rosalie dressed like that? Mom, I'm dressing like a rich Tartosa woman who lives in a villa going to the beach. Auntie Britt is kind of feeling like my culture is not your costume. <laughs> I don't know. That's what it's giving. Grandma Christie says, I was also inspired by Beach Wear. Even though I'm originally from Tartosa, it's not home like that to me. Addison teases her sister Britt and says, Yes, and I'm dressed like a Tartosa gardener. The conversation goes into a tangent. Auntie Britt, again, like I said, she's just kind of in her feelings because, you know, she doesn't want, you know, to make Tartosa like a gimmick, like a caricature or something, you know? And so, you know, obviously the conversation is getting a little almost like, I want to say intense or heated, but it's like a shifting and so obviously daniela is going to interrupt this conversation and she wants to bring the focus back to what it should be angela so daniela says okay guys let's be respectful to auntie Britt. this is where she's from and grandma lillian says to her i didn't even tell them that i'm wearing my wedding dress 
Well, Grandma, you look great. And don't forget, y'all, art is subjective. Angela told y'all Tartosa. And at the end of the day, it was what y'all were thinking and how y'all viewed of Tartosa. She didn't want to give y'all too much limitations. She already told y'all the colors blue, black, white are acceptable colors. And even gray could be mixed up in there. So let's just go. Let's go to the event right now and focus on that. Andre the planner says, I hate to say it, but I told you so. The event is a hit, Angela. Angela presented her art and everyone was amazed and viewing them while they were conversing. Angela says, thank you. You brought the vision to life, Andre. He says, no, you brought the vision to life. All I just did was listen. Tyrina from the paint and sip is even here like oh my god it's so sweet her friend Chanel even came by y'all even the influencer friend that she had in San Mishuna one of them stopped by but thankfully I mean one is better than none right I mean even Malak is here her husband Johnny Zest is here and her brother Xander they're all here for Angela for the special event I forgot to even add one of her friends from the new parents if you remember she kind of lost contact with them but you know that kind of just happens in life Grandma Lillian says, Angela, I'm so proud of you, baby girl. Do you like my wedding dress? She says, you look good. And as she was talking to her grandma, she notices that Xander is just looking across her. And not gonna lie, it sort of feels like almost like no one is there in the room. And I think the same could be said for him. It's almost like no one was there except for Angela. So, this is the Tartosa Angela with much shorter hair? Yes. Oh. I met her once in Brindleton Bay, and of course a couple of times in San Sequoia. Oh yeah, we did meet back then. <laughs> Andre says, Angela, it's time for you to make the speech. I'm sorry, I have to go. He says, no, oh my god, good luck. I'm a little nervous, I'm not gonna lie, thank you. Angela steps up to the podium and makes her speech. While my time in Tartosa was scary because I didn't know how my future was going to be, I am thankful to y'all. Everyone in this room has supported my journey. A village raising a child is the truest words and makes so much sense to me now. You are my village. I love you. Thank you so much everyone. You mean the world to me. Now let's go ahead and give it up to Johnny Zest for an amazing comedic routine, which we all need a laugh. Hello, Sequoia. Have you ever heard of a land grab? You know, the people who own all the electricity around the world. Oh, your power is off because you didn't pay your bill one day ago? Calm the F down. And please don't take my water or call the repo man on me because it's past the 48 hour mark. I swear, it's like they're the mafia or something. All right, y'all, it is time to eat. Thank you so much for being part of this event. Don't feel too pressured to buy the art, but like at the same time, buy it, child. <laughs> and it's like, to Angela, thank you so much for inviting us to this amazing event. She's kind of paranoid, oh Lord. <laughs> you know what? Uh, this is kind of successful and the seafood menu is really cute. I posted the photo of the food on my Tumblr and y'all could watch it right there. But yeah, she was like, everybody grab your food. And so you could see the desserts have tea served with it because, you know, Tartosa. I really did think about the menu and realistically what would be good. And, you know, Auntie Britt and Grandma Chrissy threw down, okay? Medak calls Angela and Angela stands in front of her like, hey, girl. Angela, I wasn't trying to bother you, but oh my god, your hair, you're still keeping the color. Angela says, I think so. Malak says, your speech, oh my god, I'm so happy I made it. And of course, John just has this gig and it just makes me so happy and proud of my man. Angela says, oh, I'm thankful he said yes. Malak says, I can't wait to see the little bumblebee tomorrow. And just like that, Malak and Johnny kept their word. They stopped by so they could see Malak and Angela at her home in San Sequoia. And this is different because Malak has never stopped by. Now, maybe during that one year that 
time jump did they see each other once in Oasis Springs but I don't think they've ever been in San Sequoia and yes Manak is originally from San Sequoia she just doesn't visit her family like that but she has right now I do want to confirm that she did visit her father brother and nephew in San Sequoia which was really nice and you know Johnny got to see his side of the family you know aka Malak's side <laughs> At the moment, I know that Johnny and Medak want to have kids, but like right now where they're at, not yet. So just seeing a little Malak type of junior for them is enough. But they're just like, she's so cute. Oh my God, how is it like having a baby? And she's just crawling around, just going around freely. It's just the cutest thing ever. Like they're just looking at her like, oh, she's so cute. Malak says, it's weird seeing you light up when you were talking to my brother last night. Angela says, I did not light up. Oh, and it wasn't your skincare, girl. I think everyone in the room saw. Angela says, ah, oh, I'm so embarrassed. Angela says, I, I, uh, I only went on a few dates with him. Malak says, well, you know, I was like this with Johnny Z. Johnny smiles. Angela says, I don't know if I can give my heart to someone else. Johnny says, I felt the same way after my family didn't accept me to be a comedian and said that I would tarnish the land grab name. Angela says, and how did you get over the fear and have the confidence to love again? Johnny says, when I met Malak at the hospital and she was working as my doctor after someone threw a punch at me over a joke, she wasn't judgmental. She listened to me. She showed me her character with time. Angela says, ah, she's so perfect. It's not fair, Johnny. Johnny says, okay, but don't be so guarded. You may miss out on something. Angela says, can you guys please not tell him that I told you this? Malak says, of course, we only came here to see the bumblebee. It was almost as if Melak understood the conversation. She literally just started crying. And so then obviously Melak's like, oh my god, let me pick her up. She's so cute. Melak and Johnny bonded over being black sheeps of their family. And while Angela may not be a black sheep now, she does understand like how toxic it could get and how severe it could have been had Angela not worked towards making their relationship better and also her family reaching out on their end and making sure that, you know, Angela doesn't hold anything like that in her stomach. It was really nice to see them grow together. Really like her being with Johnny in this moment was just such proof to me. And look at just how she's interacting with him. I thought it was really sweet and i'm really happy like this was a moment i was definitely thinking about the series that angela meets a fellow black sheep like herself other than her auntie malak and johnny zest left and angela was like okay it's late she let malak go to bed and she was like my sweet little bumblebee sweet dreams to you i love you so much my baby girl oh <laughs> and she fell asleep instantly sweet dreams and as for Angela, it was just one of those nights she took a shower, put a face mask, brushed her teeth. But the thing is, she was just really tired. I'm going to keep it all the way real. I mean, the whole event, the setup, all of that just had her exhausted, okay? So don't judge her, y'all. But she fell asleep in her towel and face mask. Aw, sweet dreams, Angela. You did amazing. I'm so proud of you. Give some love to Angela in the comments. Put some mirror emojis, sheep emojis. I don't know. I'm really proud of her. Let's have a two-week time jump. So, you are looking at Angela and Malak, and Angela is having her daughter try some avocados, and, you know, Malak is still exploring some food. I do feel like she does know a lot of food flavors, but at the same time, there's just some things that Angela hasn't had her explore yet, and oh my god, she was really curious about the avocado. She's so adorable, y'all. Look how just expressive she is, and Angela's preparing herself. You know, if you notice, she is wearing clothes. Malak's wearing clothes. They're leaving the house outside, and Angela's overthinking, like, oh my god, you know, she's about to eat her Greek salad. She's telling Malak, like, Malak, you're gonna make a friend today. We're gonna have a play day. You're gonna be a good girl today, yes? And then Malak's like, yes, yes. Oh, in my mind, you know. <laughs> and she's just doing some bubbles for her. And y'all, I am waiting for Malak to have that milestone for the 
peekaboo she has not had the milestone for clapping and the one that is like her first word i mean i know her first word's gonna be mama but and i know by now you know she's one she should be doing it but you know in the sims she hasn't unlocked these milestones and i'm not in the mood to cheat because i do want to explore that you know and have her unlock all these milestones organically so yeah we're gonna have to have them go out and visit Malak's new little friend. Her name is Eden. So Angela and Malak are now here at the Courtney family home. This place is nostalgic for Angela for many reasons. She knocks on the family home. I could tell you Angela is nervous, but she's ready to close this chapter. Uh, Angela says, hey, Mrs. Courtney, is she here? Mrs. Courtney says, yes, she's waiting for you. Angela says, okay. So I do want to tell y'all that the infant Mrs. Courtney is holding is not her child. It is her niece. Her sister Marissa is the mother of this infant. And, you know, she's like, oh, my God, Angela, I haven't seen you in a while. You're so adorable. You're a big girl now. Things have changed for you. You are your mother. Like, oh, my God. Angela's like, yeah, yeah, a lot has changed since the last time you've seen me. Mrs. Courtney says, follow me, Angela, and Angela follows her to the living room. So you could see there is Marissa, the pink blusher queen, and Angela's like, hey, miss, how are you? I haven't seen you in a while. I'm so sorry I haven't met him to the club. She's like, no, it's okay, but I do miss you, and I was happy to be at your art event, and Angela's like, oh, thank you, and you know, now their kids get to hang out. They have kids that are the same age, and you know, Miss Marissa was apprehensive, but you know, Angela has proven herself and shown that kind of sim she is. I mean, who wouldn't want to hang out with Angela? Y'all, in the moment Angela left, Malak was like, crying for her mom but i was like Malak, you have to make friends so she started to chat with edith she's like hi edith angela chose an interesting way to go upstairs i was like okay let's go throwback let's act like you know she was a kid or a teen again if she wants to go to this room like that to talk to this sim let's go for it if you don't know angela's sitting with ariella and ariella tells her angela i will be honest i wasn't sure if i could do this today but I remembered our childhood. Angela says, yes, we have a lot of history. Ariella says, but it's not all so rosy. Angela says, thank you for sitting with me today. My cousin Rosalie sent you a handwritten letter to and apologized. Ariella says, I guess that'll be a moment between her and I. Angela says, I'm so sorry for talking to you like that. I should have never projected my own security insecurities onto you. Ariella says, and I'm sorry for saying all those hurtful things to you. I know you felt neglected by Norman that summer and I shouldn't have thrown that in your face. Angela says, it's okay. We both said things in the heat of the moment. Ariella says, I'm so regretful though. I didn't know you guys broke up. Auntie brought you up months ago about how you moved back and that you were part of the paint blushers, but I was shocked and I even cried. Angela says, we were meant to break up. It was for the best. I wouldn't have been able to rediscover myself if it wasn't for that breakup. I've healed my broken heart. I'm not scared of that weirdo past I had and have embraced it as part of me. Can I just say, by the way, you look exquisite today. Ariella says, thank you. You look so good in the hair color. It's so pulled. I'm noticing we kind of have similar hair colors. Can we take a selfie together? Angela says, of course. Ariella says, and let's play basketball together. I mean, I did tell you to get some workout clothes. I'm gonna wash my makeup off. You wash what you have and let's just have fun like when we were kids again. Obviously, Angela is very happy for that. You know, Ariella does have the childish trait. So it kind of is important that Angela gets to kind of be youthful in that area again and just have this like fun time like she was a kid i mean ariella is her friend from her childhood and it's part of that reflection 
Angela has to look at her past. She has to address this stuff. She's not perfect. Her friendships weren't perfect, but she's working on it and she acknowledges when she's wrong and I'm very proud of her journey. But y'all, Ariella and by the way, her niece is playing, by the way, I don't know if you know, she's Eden's big sister. So this is her auntie's daughter. So I want to tell y'all that the auntie and her kids, the infant and the child sim are from the gallery. I saw Simmer post it and I was just like, oh my God, this family is cute. So I just added them to Ariella's family. I definitely feel like I want to do a bonus episode to introduce all the sims in this save or like who live in San Sequoia and the, the tea of their family and stuff like that. But yeah, the girls are talking. She's like, hey girl, let's go inside. Let's have dinner and stuff. Angel's like, yeah, I want to go inside. Just give me a few minutes. I'm going to have to read some texts. I just keep getting some weird messages on my phone. And so Angel's like, okay, let me just open my phone. I've been kind of avoiding these texts. So Angela looks at her phone and I'm going to show you all the screenshot of these texts. Auntie China says, you're all that in a super bag of chips. You're destined for greatness. Oh, that's after the event. David says, did you pick that outfit in the dark or was this intentional i i'm assuming rosalie sent her father photos of the event and he sent that but i'm assuming it's a dad joke <laughs> now let's get to the messages that angela was avoiding from her baby daddy where did you find your new significant other the rebound store i heard you found someone new how'd you trick them into thinking you're worth loving my goodness are you serious norman that was trifling angela's like oh brother and y'all, I'm going to end the episode right here. We're going to talk next time. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Sasha and I wish you a lovely, lovely day. Take care. So I have some amazing news. One, Malak can officially get up and, you know, probably work on her walking and she's going to age up right on time, which I'm very happy for. And the second news that's pretty amazing is Sasha's space is now part of the EA Creator Network. Yes, this is such exciting news. And I received the email. I was very happy. And many simmers were included. Shout out to all of y'all. You know, I saw y'all on Twitter. We were all celebrating. And not only that, but so many people sent me so much love. Thank you so much for that. So Angela is preparing for a trip to Newcrest. But she's going to be staying with Daniela for the night and she's taking Charlo with her. So I just wanted to let y'all know that Angela is, you know, kind of just putting that wellness, you know, to use. She has been trying to focus herself and I feel like part of the reflection era should be important. Oh, not her having a dream about woohooing at the observatory. Damn, sis. I know she's thinking about Xander. Oh no, Malak has a diaper rash. Okay, there's a lot going on. Okay, okay, you need to clean up Malak. Okay, okay, okay. Oh my god. You know what? She's a baby. Sometimes you just have to prioritize her. And she is sensitive lately. She's teething. So let's fast forward the day, y'all. All right, it is the nighttime. And Sharla is staying with Angela. And, you know, she was babysitting... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> She's babysitting Malak and Malak was so moody with her so like acting like like a brat you kind of low key you know I was like don't be mean to your auntie because like she was babysitting her for like 20 minutes while Angela was walking uni but you know what that's okay <laughs> It happens, right? Look, she probably just knows that she's a kid. And Leonie randomly stopped by, so I was like, oh, hey, Leonie. She's such a real friend. Maybe she just wanted to check on Angela before she leaves. And she even gave Charla candy. I was like, that's so cute. If you don't know, I call her Charlie. That's her nickname, but her real name is Charla. Anyway, it is nighttime. She needs to go to sleep. I need to make sure that Angela washes the clothes in the wash tub. She has to do some responsibilities, okay, before she has to go. And there is Malak sleeping right now. That is so cute. So yeah, I'm not going to be having an airport scene for this episode only because I'm just like, you know what? Let's just have them already go there. So y'all will probably see it like that. But I do want to show y'all that Angela is still doing the washing, like hand wash clothes, and that she does love to make. Oh, oh, bestie, you are so sweet. She didn't even have to do that. I didn't ask her. You know, you could. I have a mod that could ask him to pick up garbage, clean for me, and all this stuff. And she just did that on her own. She's such a good sim. So Angela is just asking Leonie on her love life. Like, are you dating? Are you looking to date? What's tea? Are you trying to get? You know 
No, she is single still. Okay, you know, I don't know if you know, but she's she's divorced right now by law, and so you know, Angela's just wondering. And I don't know if you know, but I have some tea for y'all. Now I don't know how I'm gonna spill it because time is not on our side because Angela has to work. But let's just say that you know when she was at the event, she met a guy who wanted to marry her. Yes, Leone. Leone met a guy who wanted to marry her, but she doesn't want that. She just wants to kind of be in her own reflection error kind of thing, you know? I read that, and I'll read it for y'all what it says. Although I appreciate your interest, Angela, it's been one of those days. I'd prefer to talk about something else if you don't mind. So it seems like Leone isn't ready to talk about the sim, and I mean... That's perfect of an answer because I do feel like we should talk about it. Not now though, but thank you, Leona. It's like she knows. I love when the game knows, you know? So yeah, Angela is finished washing up. Leonie left and Angela has to go to sleep because she has a flight to catch and it's not easy. So she's letting uh, Uni stay with Leonie for now. But y'all look, she just stands up on the bed now. Like that's so distracting to me. Oh my God, she's so cute. Uh, oh y'all put some bubble bees <laughs> bumble bumble bees in the comments for me like oh fun fact i don't know if you know but my little sister one of her first words was bumblebee <laughs> random right i know but and not only that i'm actually really scared of bumblebees like if i see a bumblebee i'm running across the street like ah like that like <laughs> But yeah, good night to the family, the Hill family. I love y'all. It's the next morning, y'all. Oh my god, this area is just, oh, I love this place. It's so beautiful. But yeah, Charlotte is dancing and I'm noticing that she loves the carnival radio. So I was like, okay, girl, let's have the sisters dance together. And they were dancing to the carnival radio which was so cute and i love them so much and their relationship and how it has developed definitely i don't know if y'all see the diary on the counter or i don't know what it's called but i ended up picking it up for her so that she could take it with her because charlotte is staying with her big sister daniela for two weeks and it's gonna be really fun so i was like you know what let's order breakfast so i ended up getting them jamba juice and here is the zoomers delivery sim so while Angela gave the tip, set up the food, she got a call and it was from Xander and he said he would like to say goodbye to her before she goes and she thought that was really sweet, you know? And so yeah, they're eating their food. In my mind, they're eating like a yogurt fruit bowl with granola and you know, Angela got a green smoothie uh, and Charlotte got like a berry smoothie, you know? <laughs> but yeah. I'm really happy with what they're eating. It's like really a nice way to start their trip. Healthy, fresh food. And, you know, Melak also had her own little, you know, fruits and stuff like that. Angela just got the word that Xander is outside. So she's like, oh my God, I'm going to have to go. It's like, and just see you and Melak. She's like, okay, I'm just writing on my diary about my thoughts and how I'm ready for this trip. Oh, you oh, must miss me yeah. a lot if you're trying to say goodbye to me right now, Xander. And Xander says, oh, come here. <laughs> And they just having a really personal, intimate hug. Like, damn, okay? Oh, she's holding his hand, looking into his eyes. Reassuring. Oh, okay, Angela. He's like, okay, um, we'll keep in contact, right? He's like, yeah, I want to talk to you while you're away, for sure. He's like, yeah, well, it's going to be like two, three days the most. And he's like, well, you know, we could catch up whenever, of course. You know, I know you're going to be with family. He's like, yeah. And, you know, I'm going to have some alone time. And he's like, well, we'll see each other when you come back, right? It's like, yeah, of course. Wait, wait, let's take a selfie, Angela. Oh, <laughs> Charlotte was like, hey, I know you. You're Orion's dad. He's like, yeah, hey, you were really close to my sister. I mean, I know my parents said she was, you know, I eavesdrop what the adults say. He's like, well, well, you know, I got you a candy. It's like, oh, I just had that candy yesterday. Well, thank you, Xander. Goodbye, San Sequoia. And hello, San Maishuno. So they came home pretty late, but not that late, but late. So, you know, Daniela's just trying to make sure everybody's, you know, sleeping. She's tucking them all in. It's just so sweet, y'all. And, you know, Angela is going to be going to Norman. So I do have some updates to tell y'all. Angela has ignored Norman's text message and kept it civil for the sake of Melak, especially since her birthday is around the corner. You know, she does not want him to get in the way of that. It's her her birthday to you know celebrate her daughter and she wants to make it absolutely amazing so 
you know what maybe she can address the awkward messages in the future or something or maybe when the time is right Angela is dropping Milak off to her father's home in the evening. Daniela couldn't go with her because Charlotte was there and, you know, they had a whole plan, like itinerary of stuff to do. So Angela and Milak attended, but now we're at the Draper's place in Newcrest. Angela says, I'm sorry I'm late, y'all. I, I just had to do some stuff with my sister for the day. And he's kind of like, you know, we were waiting all day for Milak. And, you know, she's like, I'm sorry. I you know did have plans with y'all and it didn't come through but she's still here and she's gonna stay with y'all for two weeks and Aaron's like hey Angela lovely how are you and Angela's like in her mind here we go again Aaron's Angela says hey Aaron how's life Aaron says I gained 100k followers from a fun couple of dance video that I did with Norman and our vacation in Solani was so refreshing have you gone there before Angela says briefly Norman feels awkward hun um remember I told you not to talk about our trip to Sulani Angela leaves the room as she walks away she hears I'm so sorry babe from Aaron and Angela's like okay I'm like oh, whatever you know I'm not in the mood for their mess so she's just kind of like I'm here for the baby I'm trying to get out of here as quick as possible okay and yes Norman has been updating his daughter's room as the last few months the year basically just bit by bit adding stuff to make sure that the room suits Malak's vibe and it's honestly so cute I love her room in Newcrest too honestly Angela just like me got distracted by the decor and she decided to sit on that rocking chair just to enjoy Malak's room for a bit and Aaron apologizes to Angela I am so sorry Angela Angela says it's okay. I'm about to leave, so you don't have to act like you like me. Let's keep it to the small talk. Aaron says, I'm so sorry I reminded you of the location where Norman cheated on you. I, I just, I just didn't, I don't understand what you did to deserve that. Angela says, so it's my fault. Aaron says, maybe you didn't take care of him enough, you know, in that area. Angela says, Aaron, we have met on five different occasions. And the moment no one is around is when you bring this nasty attitude up. Have you noticed that? Aaron says, wow, you're so perceptive. Bravo, Angela. Angela says, I can't with your catty attitude. My last birthday is soon. Consider your invitation lost in the mail, Aaron. You can't do that. Norman won't allow it. Aaron protests. Angela says, And you think I care? You will care when Norman mentions it and brings it up to you. Angela says, And you will care when Norman tells you that you're not coming to the birthday party. I've been nothing but respectful to you. That was nice. I just had to tell you how I feel. Bye, Aaron. Aaron is appalled. She's thinking, How dare she talk to me like that? Angela goes to the living room to say goodbye to Norman. He is completely relaxed and she's just kind of like, oh God, like, all right, Norman, I have to go. I will see you in two weeks. He's kind of being annoying with how he talks to her and Angela's just trying her best. Like she's thinking one of these days I might cuss him out next, you know, <laughs> like calm the F down. It's never that deep. Okay. But I guess he's just really tired. Like, oh, I had a lot of plans. I'm sorry for how I talked to you. Angela's like, well, I don't like how you talk to me. All I do is I just want to come back quickly drop my daughter off and go can it just be easy enough like that why do you and your girlfriend make it weird and he's like what do you mean what has Aaron done and she's just like oh, I can't talk about it I'm not feeling that great right now I just want to go and he's like okay I'm sorry for whatever happened I guess we could talk about it another time she's like I don't want to talk right now I'm gonna go right now oh. and so Angela just leaves like that Aaron crossed the line Malak's birthday is going to be so cute and she's going to miss out. In the words of Nicki Minaj, watch your man, then you should watch your mouth. Bitches is pressed, okay? Because literally Aaron's giving that, okay? She lets her insecurity eat her up, child. Anyway, during these two weeks, Malak's going to be with her father and Angela's planning to quit her job. Yes, a new chapter is opening up for Angela. So yeah. Here's a look at Newcrest. It's a really beautiful city to live in. Now that apartments are going to join the game, I could definitely imagine somebody creating a build and I definitely want to add it to Newcrest for all my saves probably. So for the first time, I'm giving y'all a sneak peek of Malak when she's staying with her father. She's talking to Aaron and Aaron's like, I don't know what this kid's saying. 
However, I do want to update y'all. So for the infant quirk self soother, I believe, you know, Malak got it from like staying with her father in Newcrest. I will say that, you know, she probably cried herself a couple of times. Like I feel like Angela, you know, when she she sees her cry, she comforts her and stuff like that. And I even noticed, even though she doesn't have the loves to be held quirk, when Angela holds her and puts her down, she gets sad. And I don't know, but honestly, from gameplay, it's ever since she's been around them. And I don't, I was like, kind of like I almost wanted to investigate. And while I did add the self soother quirk myself, I honestly feel like it did happen though because she was around them, you know. So yeah she has been a little different since this trip and i decided like i said i wanted to investigate i wanted to see what's going on i don't know something about erin you know i know she's selfish and she just cares about herself and you know social media and she's a little vain in this area but damn yeah anyway i just want to give y'all a quick little update erin is pretty moody though y'all and I could see her being this moody for the next bit. She is currently probably going to go out about town and Norman's going to be with his daughter. He called off work so that he could be there and stay because actually he wanted to go. But then Aaron was kind of like, oh, I want to go. I want to do my own thing today. You go ahead and just stay home with her. Okay, go ahead and do your thing with your daughter because, you know, that's your baby, right? Anyway. Angela's back in San Sequoia and she's gonna have a cozy date in her apartment. Right now she's making tea on the stove and you know Xander always talks about tea and she's just kind of like you know what let me just try one of the teas he's always talking about. So she made a mint tea right now and she's calling him and she's like you know I'm trying the tea recommended and he's kind of like oh my god let's have a date where like I make breakfast for you. She's like breakfast? She's like yeah. She's like what are you eating right now? She's like well I'm just having jam on a toast nothing that deep and he's like oh well i want to make you uh, a dish that i really love and some tea and i can show you how i have my tea and she's like yeah you know i am kind of like new at making tea i have coffee every now and then but yeah and he's like i got you like trust me i'm gonna make you really good tea oh hey uni uni definitely misses angela and malak but you know at least angela's back home you know so yeah, Angela's thinking, oh, okay, well, I'm going to have a nice chill day in, no outside. I just want to focus on me and Uni, which is the best. Of course, Angela is the best mom ever to Uni. She is right now making some fresh pet food recipe for uni and as uni should right because uni deserves like uni is going to be treated just like a queen today angel's gonna make what she's craving you know sometimes she has feels like she's always you know either cooking something quick or whatever but you know what and her dog deserves a nice just warm meal and i think uni and sees oh please uh, uni's the cutest Angela is reading a book and the book's name is Romance to Love, I believe, or is it a Romance Guide to Love? And I don't know, but if y'all see the book cover, it's like a lady whispering to a guy's ear. And I'm like, okay, Angela, enjoy your little read. But then I noticed her earring is like a dog paw. Oh, the details, Angela. <laughs> I thought it was so cute she's such a dog mom for real but yeah she's definitely enjoying this book it's definitely giving her more perspective if you remember like my girl's a little socially awkward and so she really needs to sometimes just think of ways to like say stuff without it coming off awkward you know and of course angela's playing some carnival beats radio in the background and she's just enjoying herself again this is the great perfect self care day that my girl deserves and you know she has to go outside and go ahead and fix up that laundry oh my god i'm really happy for angela look at her go as she should right and now she's doing some yoga and she's just like practicing uh, just that mindfulness, being aware of her surroundings, and just working through her breathing as she just goes with the flow, you know? And I just love this for her. And she's getting stronger. I see it in her body of how she just holds herself with the yoga, like goals, Angela, for real. And I'm going to have her just do some meditation too, because I think that would be really important. Um... 
Angela focuses, she keeps her focus together and she think, she's trying not to think about the thoughts. She is washing out Erin and her messiness. And honestly, at this point, because of all that focusing and meditation she does, she actually kind of forgets to even talk to Norman about what happened. So she was just kind of like, you know what? Like, honestly, like it slipped her mind. So I'm just kind of like, you know what? Like, let's not just bring it up. But yeah, she's been sitting here for hours and she ends up getting tired because you know how it is when you meditate and you're just in the same position, you kind of get sleepy. So she has a lounge chair right behind her. And I decide, you know what, girl, let's go and have a little quick nap here and just enjoy it. And in my mind, like when it's summer, I feel like she probably tries to tan on warm days on here because we haven't seen Angela's summer gameplay, but I definitely could see her just enjoying up this place. Like, I love it. When I saw this place, like, I, I don't know if you know, but this home really reminded me of Tartosa, like the escape for her, you know? And I just wanted to bring those elements. And when I saw that in the build already, I was like, I love it. So when Angela woke up, I was like, okay, it's time for her to take a selfie. And I just wanted the perfect place and angle and just make it feel like she's just really enjoying where she's at. But yeah, like I said, this home kind of gives me like very, like, a woman who's comfortable and confident in her vibes but also it really has that tartosa energy so yeah y'all i wanted to show y'all as a chill day of angela's life and now it's already nighttime y'all in san sequoia so angela is going to just hang out with uni for a little bit y'all already know it's uni day here okay self-care day is definitely also uni day <laughs> oh and y'all know they're a little too close it makes me uncomfortable but listen y'all pet owners told me this is kind of like your thing you know <laughs> if you're pet owners y'all tell me is this really the tea <laughs> but yeah angela's having fun she's just dancing i don't know if i told y'all this but when she went to san Mashuno, she did not see elijah and she didn't even tell him she was there but she definitely views him as a friend she doesn't see anything like a what if scenario and even though they are friends who talk to each other every now and then she kind of i don't know in my mind i feel like she's just been like worried that it might go romance because i feel like she's just been really digging the hangouts with xander in my personal opinion i mean in my mind they probably started dating around end of january and now it's like may think of it like that so it's been a couple of months so she probably lost contact with elijah around that time too so which i think is the unnatural way of her losing contact unfortunately so during the one year update they used to keep in contact and then maybe a little bit like around the autumn i would say almost to winter it was like not as much frequent calls as it used to be Honestly, I forgot Angela had to do some at-home work with her job, but at this point, I really feel like Angela wants to quit her job. I feel like you and I, like, we had a discussion on the channel about Angela feeling like being an art critic kind of, like, makes her uncomfortable because she doesn't believe in critiquing other Sims arts and that she feels like art is subjective. So, I don't know, but I just felt like Angela wanted to quit, but then she pushed through and got a promotion, and I felt like she was happy about the promotion. She was getting interactions to tell Sims about the promotion. So, I was like, okay, let's stay. But right now, I'm feeling like she wants this outdoorsy career that she has. Angela is halfway at her housewife aspirations. She's finished the first part, the second part, and now she's starting the third part, which is called the dating phase. All right, I'm excited. Angela has pulled an all-nighter because, again, like I said, she just remembered that she had to do her work. She has to do some writing. She has to, not only that, but do, some, you know, painting. It's, like, outside. You can see the sun is out. My girl, like, she usually sleeps at night. So, I'm like, at this point, she needs to call Xander because he wanted to come over to make breakfast for her. And it's, like, 5-something a.m. And, yeah, I'm like, girl, okay, you know, you need to call this guy and tell him not to come over with the ingredients that he wanted to make the food for her. I'm like, it's hot. Let me put the fan on for her like at this point y'all ah, oh my god i feel so bad but i think she's gonna quit her job not now but like she's going on a trip to brindleton bay i don't know if i told you all that by the way so 
while she's on her trip she's just gonna keep taking personal time off from her work and then she's gonna quit so she's gonna take all her holidays and i think she has about five days so five days it's like times 450 she's gonna make a good amount of money to add to her savings so i love that for her but yeah she's telling xander she's gotta reschedule to the next day and for the first time i think in a long time i think maybe like when Malak was very young before she could sleep all night is angela sleeping at this hour usually angela is starting her day even Uni's like, honey, I was up all night with you. <laughs> so Emma asks Angela to hang out. If you remember, Emma is part of the new parents club. And they were the closest because they were both single parents of the club. And she actually came to Angela's art show. Angela sent her an invitation. And, you know, Emma came through. Emma was like, hey, girl, like, I don't know why we're not even keeping in contact like that, Angela. Like, I really have a lot of respect for you. And, you know, seeing your show was just so inspiring. You're such a great mom and like when you lived in Tartosa we used to hang out and I missed that and I felt so bad because I feel like Angela kind of thought when she had moved back home to San Sequoia and it's one of the things that I talked about from her families is the whole out of sight out of mind mentality that they have and I feel like Angela does have that and that's why I gave her that the self-absorbed trait I don't think she means any harm it's just kind of how her family was she thought she wasn't like that but I think you know part of that reflection era is her realizing that she does have that too you know so yeah i heard emma hanging out catching up when i had that goodbye party it felt so final and you know she actually bumps into another lady here who's part of the new parents and it like distracted me i was like yo angela you have to say hi to her that'd be so weird if you don't say hi to her you know so the food came by this restaurant has such a great service there's some restaurants in my game that service is terrible i'm gonna be all the way honest with y'all okay <laughs> Like, if I could just give her ratings, like, you know, I would love to. Because, like, I know when you run restaurants, the restaurants rate you. No, I would like to rate restaurants. If y'all know if there's any way, just give me some tips in the comments because I really need help. Anyway, the girls are enjoying their meal. Angela and Emma talk about, you know, just life, parenting. You know, she's like, I think, I, I believe Emma actually had twins, y'all. So she's a mother of three now. So, you know, she's like, oh my God, our kids need to meet up. We need to, you know, do things. But Angela introduces herself again, like, hey, we haven't seen each other in a long time. Do you remember me? We were in the new parents club. She's like, oh, I remember you, Angela. She's like, oh, hey, girl, how's your baby? She's like, oh, yeah, my baby, she is good. And Angela's like, you know, my baby's going to age up soon. She's like, yeah, well, my baby's going to age up in the autumn. You know, my baby was younger than yours. And the little girl's like, hey, so, so nice to meet you. She's like, hey she's like okay i have to go family you guys are so cute she, the daughter says Susu -su to her again that was so cute but yeah angela's just gonna go back home the first thing angela did when she came back home was give uni a walk because obviously baby uni deserves all the love and you know just full on attention i feel like that she couldn't give because you know and sometimes malak just she's a baby she's gonna cry she's gonna be fussy there's some days that she can't walk uni and i'm gonna be honest with y'all so Angela comes back home and she works on another painting. This time it's a figure painting and oh my god I just remember but like Angela has not been at the paint blushers for a minute. She really needs to see them soon. But y'all it's worth 4700 It is a masterpiece. Uh-uh Angela. This is enough for the trip. She, oh my god I'm so proud of her. Sweet dreams Angela. Xandra's going to be coming in the morning and making her some breakfast. It's the next morning and it's 5.50, 5 a.m. <sighs> Xander, what kind of early bird stuff are you on? <laughs> Angela's like, what is going on here? Is the prank starting <gasps> early today? <sighs> what? I'm nervous. <laughs> so I'm just like, girl, what is he doing here? It's like, oh, hey, good morning. Oh, okay, that's cute. But I'm sure she is paranoid. Like, oh my god, I have a face mask on my face. He's like, it doesn't matter what you have on your face. You're a really pretty girl. <laughs> She's like, oh my god, what? <laughs> She's just still processing it's the next day. <laughs> He's like, look, I'm going to go ahead and prepare the food. He already got his little Trader, Trader Joe's set up there, you know, kind of thing. So 
he's gonna be making some za'atar and um i think some fresh tea for her like a mint tea so ethnically i feel like xander is half hispanic and arab so yeah i feel like he's just like showing a part of his culture and angela's kind of just you know experiencing that with him you know and, and angela will be showing part of her culture to him very soon okay uni she's like i'm early bird too like what you mean <laughs> Angela says, oh my god, the food is so good. Do you want to go on a walk with me? Sandra says, of course. Angela asks, can I ask something random that's been on my mind? Xander says, ask away. Angela says, what happened to your face tattoo? You had one above your eyebrow. Sandra says, oh, uh, I was just experimenting to see if I looked good in it. Angela's like, okay, so but the piercings are real. Xander says, yeah, and I have other tattoos too. Angela says, well, you know, I already have a bumblebee tattoo. He says, yeah, and it's really cute. Angela's like, mm, well, do you have any other tattoos? And he says, mm, you want me to take my shirt off, don't you? Angela says, oh, let's go for that walk. <laughs> Xander says, when we were on the phone, you were kind of going around the question of how's your trip. Angela says, it was good, but my baby father's girlfriend is so annoying. Xander says, I wish I had those kind of problems. And it was kind of silent. But then Xander says, my child's biological mother stepped out the moment she gave birth. She lives this world acting like she was never a mother. And sometimes my son asks me questions, but I don't know how to answer them. Angela says, you're a great father. My baby father only acknowledged his child because of the scrutiny he got from his parents and my parents. Xander says, you're lucky he listened. My ex didn't care. Her parents were begging on their knees and she left. They asked my father and I to move in with them, and we're practically family now. I'm sorry if I'm rambling. Angela says, don't apologize. I'm so happy we talked. He says, okay, well, do you want to go on that walk? Angela says, of course, let's go. Xander playfully flirts. I rolled my shirt up. I don't know if you noticed, so you could look at my tattoo. And I'm just like, oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> look at his mood though he's such a vibe like look at it he's just such a confident man like i have to stand look at this look at <laughs> no but why is he such a mood this reminds me of angelo's grandmother just a living life enjoying herself you know and during their walk angela did tell more about her pregnancy the cheating and all the stuff that happened earlier on when the series began let's just say and y'all i love the power walk i just love that uni's walking with them i don't know if y'all saw uni <laughs> uh you'd have to walk the dog they're just kind of like walking next to you it's like so cool but yeah i think it's so sweet this area is so beautiful oh my god sam Sibkoya takes my breath away and now we're gonna have like the new for rent like apartments i don't know if you know but originally i wanted angela to live in an apartment because i thought sam Sibkoya was gonna have apartments i thought it was perfect for her and Malak to start out like that but then I just end up going with a home she doesn't own the home she lives in which is realistic but she's gonna be making money where she's gonna own her home y'all uh, oh, 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 yes oh they're just hanging out together they do not want to continue walking for some reason it got a little buggy here now I think it's because Uni's part of the walk but that's okay still so cute Angela's enjoying the walk herself and I was like you know what why don't you all go ahead and just use Angela's binoculars and just enjoy the outdoors y'all know my girl loves the outdoors so he's like yo I love 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 binoculars Angela's like oh my god oh my god I'm so happy I brought them with me he's like yes I really I really love it I didn't know that was your thing she's like oh my god it is I love it so they're just both enjoying just watching the great outdoors oh I love this mod it is by lot 51 if you don't know i definitely want to make a video for y'all like angela's mods or something <laughs> i don't know what to call it but for sure i want to do that for y'all but yeah they were very vulnerable today they talked about their past xander listened angela listened there was no judgment there was just a lot of respect for just the the sims they've grown to be right now uh you know xander had a very tough past and so did angela and you know i'm happy they're both meeting each other at a point where they're both healing or healed if you want to say you know and i think he's more in the healed phase and angela's a healing phase you know but oh i love this for them xander says to her 
I'll be honest, I'm gonna miss you. She's like, oh, really? And she just started blushing. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna miss you. You're gonna be away in Brindleton Bay, what, for a week or something? She's like, yeah, but it's okay. Time's gonna fly by and we're gonna be hanging out again soon. He's like, yeah, I know that. For sure, we're gonna. Oh, y'all, their chemistry. Ooh, not me blushing with them again. <laughs> Angela goes back home and she has to send some painting some sims when she had the event they were like you know package it for me and send it through mail so Angela's just doing that right now and I don't know if I told y'all but Angela made 10,000 simoleons from that event her paintings were worth around that so let's see what the difference is when she works on the Brindleton Bay paintings Your heart, keep it in your pocket for safekeeping. Don't ever let nobody be the reason. You throw it out, you stop caring about it. Don't let your head get in the way. Can't be defined by your mistakes. You know you try and you try really hard. But sometimes you fall. You sometimes you fall. It's the next day and Angela decided that she wanted to paint again but this time she was going to use a sketch pad. Uh -huh. She didn't want to be burnt out from doing the traditional painting <laughs> through using the easel so she just wanted to make it simple and while she's working on that she is craving some food so she's going to make her way to a uh -huh. stall and order some food. Lighting, if you do not want to buy the full prize, leave the area. Angela's, hey uh, I was hoping maybe I could haggle for some prices lady if you don't want to pay the prices you could just leave think you just pretty you could get away with things angela's like what on earth <laughs> okay i'll take my business elsewhere i mean i just wanted to ask a question i probably would have paid for the full price so angela decides to go to this restaurant and it's a familiar restaurant it's a place she went with duncan before oddly enough duncan is here with his family as Angela waits to be seated she spots duncan out with his daughter and bonnie Angela didn't want to impose. It's still too weird to her. But she couldn't help but look back and see Duncan one last time. 
She hasn't seen him in a long time. How is he doing? She wonders. But Duncan automatically spots her and waves at her. And Angela's like, ah, oh, did he? Maybe he didn't see me. Did he see me? She turns around and he's like, yeah, I saw you. <laughs> hey, Angela, I could see you. Angela's like, maybe it's not for me. It's like, hey, a a Angela. Bonnie's like, oh, Angela, she's here? It's like, yeah. She's like, oh my god. And he's like, oh, she's just walking away. It's like, well, go get her. And then Duncan's like, wait, wait, Angela, Angela. Angela says, oh my god, uh, he hey, Duncan. Angela, I knew it was you. You look so different. Oh my god, your hair grew. She's like, oh, I'm sorry. I, I just didn't want to bother your family. Duncan says, well, why didn't you tell me you were in town? Angela says, well, why didn't you come to my event? Duncan says, I'm sorry. Bonnie's sitting with her daughter. She's wondering what's taking them so long. She's in her thoughts while Olive talks to her. Angela asks, have you been? Duncan says, I'm much better. I'm happy to hear that, Duncan. Angela says, he says, I'm happy to see you. Aw, they're having a little painful banter. I mean, they kind of developed like this like best friend thing in the game, you know? Please join us, Angela. I would love if you just hang out with us. Angela says, okay. Bonnie says, hey Angela, how have you been? Angela says, I'm good, how are you? Bonnie says, I'm good. Is Brandy behaving? Angela says, of course. She's always on her best behavior. Duncan says, Ollie, this is my cousin. She is Auntie Cicely's cousin. Ollie says, Auntie Cicely? Duncan says, yes, yes. So she's Auntie Angela. The waiter says, your food is here. So they ordered the seafood. If y'all remember, this is the seafood restaurant that Angela dressed up really formally, almost like that one time when she was out with him. And now she's dressed in a casual fit because it's a casual vibe restaurant. So Angela says to Ollie, hi, we've met before. And I guess she wouldn't remember. Bonnie laughs. Angela asks them, how's co-parenting? Bonnie says, it's better. Don't you agree, Duncan? Duncan says, it's much better. Angela smiles. Well, I have to go. My grandpa and I are supposed to watch an action movie. He wants me to rent a DVD from Flickbuster. So maybe we could just see each other again. Maybe if I have time in a few days before I leave. Bonnie and Duncan say, sure. It was nice seeing you guys as a family, Angela says. Take care, guys. Angela goes back home, and y'all, did y'all notice they were both blushing? They must have been flirting, so they must be at a bit of a friendly level. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, Duncan and his roommate that y'all saw when she was walking by, they kind of have a little something, something. I'm gonna be honest with y'all, okay? I saw there was a little flirt man's going on, but anyway, Angela's back home. Y'all see all these bumblebees? Oh my god, I mean, so symbolic to this series. I was so distracted. Anyway. The grandparents are like, well, how you been? Where would you, what did you paint today? She, you know, she's like, oh, you know, today was kind of a break, but I didn't paint a lot. But I feel a little inspired to paint after the movie. So like, we're so proud of you. We see how much passion you've been and how much you've changed and how much you've grown. My grandchild, we love you. And I don't know if I told y'all, but a day ago, they adopted a little horsey and... Banjo is the name. I found this horse on the gallery, but I aged the horse down because I just felt like the horse is like they would be the type to want to probably still feel like they could have a kid again, but like in an animal form because Savannah, their cat is already their baby. So I 100% saw, especially because this home kind of gives that barn feel. I definitely felt like it was perfect for them to have a horsey. That's so cute. I'm sorry. Oh my god, the cutest. <laughs> Oh, sweet dream banjo. <laughs> sweetest, sweetest of sweet dreams for you, hon. I love this little horsey. But y'all see them just chatting together still in the background. They need to go watch that movie. So I'm going to go ahead and have them, you know, just take care of themselves, take a shower, whatever, so that they could just sit together and enjoy this movie. Except while they were watching the movie, it was so funny. All they did was just talk over it. <laughs> Like, what was the point of going to Flickbuster, Angela? <laughs> but anyway, after the movie, I noticed the grandparents were cuddling. And I felt like they were saying, do you think Angela's going to find true love? 
do you think she's gonna find someone just like we did with each other and they're like i believe it which i thought was really cute so angela like i said was inspired and she wanted to do a painting of the night of the sky of the moon and she just wanted to do all hours of the day of brindleton bay and showcase that in her gallery and when i tell y'all then the worth of these paintings are five times more it's fifty thousand simoleons i mean i don't even know what to do with that money <laughs> If Angela is able to sell all of them, I mean, we'll see how it works. But 50,000 simoleons is the price. I was shook. But yeah, it's the next morning, y'all. Angela is eating breakfast. She is having a French toast with some coffee. And her grandparents made her this food. And she's on FaceTime call with Xander. Long story short, they're just having a nice morning. It's talking and he's asking her how's Brindleton Bay. And she's like, it's good. She's going to be coming back home soon. Y'all, her grandparents are feeding her good. I'm happy that she got to just stay with them. I don't know. I love just going and hanging out with the Hill grandparents. You know, I don't know. Just They're such a sweet couple. And not only that, but they're just so loving. They have so much love to give. And I feel bad that they live all the way here. But at the same time, I know it's perfect for them because they just get to live and chill in their retirement home, you know? Angela picked up her stuff, so she's going downstairs to go ahead and clean it up. I'm like, let me follow you, girly. <laughs> So she's like, you know what, I'm going to put this in the washing machine. And she instantly notices this redhead girl in the living room. And I'm like, oh my God, that is Lorelai sitting with her grandparents. So Angela's like, hey, what are you doing here? She's just like shocked a little. Like she's trying to hold it together, you know. And basically what happens is Lorelai says, my niece, how are you? Angela tries to keep it civil with her grandparents around. Grandma Christie says, oh she wanted to meet banjo angela says oh okay and then lorelei asks can we talk angela says okay follow me in case if you forgot lorelei is the girl that came to the holiday family dinner and yeah so angela was like you know bombarded with questions about duncan and if you remember her brother is married to auntie china who is grandpa and grandma's child aka you know angela's father's sister just wanted to give y'all a little family tree lorelei says i know you're probably wondering how or why or how, any like you're confused as to why i'm here but it was Bonnie who told me that you were here and I just wanted to talk to you and I just wanted to make things clear between the both of us. First of all, I am so sorry for how I conducted myself that night, Winterfest. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have acted like that. I just felt bad, you know, of how the situation made it awkward where the family doesn't even have any events for the last year. Angela says, that wasn't the only thing that happened that night, honestly. There was more. But uh, to make you feel better, the family did meet up recently at my art show. Lorelai says, <sighs> see... I don't want to be cut out of family events. I barely have any family or friends, and I look forward to the Hill family events. Angela says, If you want to be somewhat family with me, Lorelai, I need you not to blindside me like that ever again. What you did that night was mean-spirited. You wanted to expose us. Lorelai says, No, I wanted to expose Duncan, but eventually I just noticed all my petty beefs or misunderstandings with sims was not right angela says yeah i agree please leave that man alone all he does is love his daughter and wants to live a peaceful life lorelei says i know i feel so so dumb i just i do these things that go above and beyond for my loved ones that aren't necessarily healthy angela says I appreciate you for telling me this. I have no ill will towards you. They go back inside and Lorelai asks for a hug and Angela accepts it. She is above the drama. She doesn't want any messiness for herself in the future. So it's really important for her to close these doors for her with other sims, especially since Lorelai is the one who reached out this time around. I mean, it's nice for you know her to admit that she was wrong and that she even talked about why she felt the way she did, which means I'm gonna be teasing y'all a bonus episode of Growing Together 
once it's out of season one and it's gonna be about Lorelai, her brother, Auntie China. Y'all are gonna see some more tea on that side. I already wrote it up for y'all so cannot wait for y'all to get into that. It's Angela's last night here so she's going to check on Banjo and oh my god y'all these horse animations are so good. <laughs> oh my god they're so cute though like oh my god i definitely feel like i would love to get into some horse ranch type gameplay for myself off camera to understand look at how it's moving its tail like oh and she's feeding it oh my god but y'all yeah this is so sweet oh i love it so yeah, like I said, it's Angela's last night here. Tomorrow she is planning on painting a little bit of that lighthouse area in Brindleton Bay before she goes back to Tartosa. What was so cute to me is that grandma and grandpa couldn't sleep that night. They were like, oh, we don't want you to go. We love you. <laughs> So they were just watching the stars together, just counting stars, talking, just, you know, I feel like grandma was giving her some wisdom. She got a moodlet about sage wisdom of love. So I'm assuming Angela must have talked about like Xander, about how she's probably scared of putting her emotions out there. Can she really love again? You know, and I feel like that's what her grandparents were also worried because if y'all don't know, like all her siblings are sort of like now in relationships other than of course, Charlie's a baby, but the older ones are all like in in these long-term type relationships and Angela is you know single so they kind of feel like is she like left out you know because her feelings of being a black sheep you know so I feel like they just kind of made her feel better about herself they were just kind of like look don't worry too much about that when the time is right it's gonna be right but if you date just date earnestly you know at the end of the day you're gonna find the right person one day you don't have to rush yourself or if you whatever you want we're still gonna be cheering you on you know but i feel like they just yeah they dropped a lot of wisdom about career you know they had full careers where they were working till they retired so they have a lot of life that they've lived and they just pass that wisdom on to their baby girl and i love them you already know i love them but i love them and i love them so much oh she's having a little bit of a headache she definitely needs to take some medication like i said they were up all night like grandma and grandpa were like oh my god like let's have you play on the swing like you were a kid again <laughs> it was so cute but grandma couldn't push angela that long you know she is older so she got to be careful with her bones dang angela's still having that headache oh my god but yeah banjo's even up i am so done so cute I think it's perfect for them to take care of Banjo, you know, because Banjo is a baby, like I said, and they need that kind of like taking care of a sim because I notice they, they get a little lonely out here. So I think Banjo is the perfect family member for them. Angel's leaving in a few hours and literally she's a busy woman. The moment she touches down in San Sequoia, she's going on a date with Xander. Like they just couldn't wait. So at this point, I'm just like, okay, let me just go ahead and watch her. <laughs> enjoy this last painting that she's here she's wearing a painting fit y'all yes as she should she's probably exhausted but in my mind she probably had like coffee or an energy drink of some sort to kind of just keep her going she rarely does you know what i'm saying sleep uh like or have all like nights that she's up like other than when melak was a baby or you know when she was younger so let's go back home to san sequoia so it is pretty late night he picked her up from the airport they went and ate like at a little like restaurant and yes they woohooed for the first time together so i mean angela had a long long day <laughs> but yeah he stayed over the night and angela you know she was just kind of like oh my god like you know i guess maybe the advice that she got from her grandparents kind of gave her that confidence to just like put herself out there you know so as she should i mean i feel like they haven't wooed i personally felt she was a little apprehensive and she didn't get whims to woohoo him until she like was on her trip i believe and then not only that she was even having dreams early in the episode so i was like okay i think she's getting there you know what i'm saying so let's just fast forward to the next morning so angela and him made breakfast together so he made some zatar and she made lemon pancakes a recipe that was passed down from grandma chrissy so they got to have like their own form of exchange of cultures so you know i feel like angela is you know i know that she's mixed race but she's 
I feel like ethnically Angela is probably part Caribbean and East African and then like some Italian from her grandma Chrissy and her other grandpa he's probably I don't know <laughs> maybe Mediterranean or something too like grandma Chrissy they're so cute he's like oh my god this is so good I never expected to have a lemon flavored you know pancake and she's like I know it's so good like that's my grandma she ate <laughs> She ate when she dropped this recipe for us and, you know, made it into our family tradition. So, yeah, I really love that they got to have this moment together. And, you know, like I said, they're spending their morning together. It's I, like the last time he was just making breakfast. This time he's actually like woke up in this place. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> but, yeah, they're just chatting, talking about what they're probably going to have as a plan for their next dates and stuff like that. You know, so I feel like for him, he's just kind of like, you know, my work you know they get to let me travel the world and stuff like that and she's like really like that's kind of like my goal too you know he talked about how he traveled to Hanford on Bagley before San Maishuno he has went to even like Brindleton Bay of course because you know they met there yeah so he's he's like even talked about Mount Komarebi and she's kind of like wow like oh my god this is so cool like I definitely want to do and go to all these locations <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness, y'all. So they done woohooed again. And then after that, they just spent their morning together, just chilling, just talking. <laughs> oh my God, they're so cute. Y'all, this is a mod by my friend Nella, aka Sebzid. Y'all should check out this mod. It's the Sims 3 Cuddle mod, and it's out on early access on her Patreon. Y'all should totally download this mod. It's so cute. <laughs> But yeah, he's like, I'm heading out. She's like, okay, I'm going to start painting. It's like, He's like, oh, girl, what's going on with you? She's like, yeah, you know, oh, you just surprised me. I'm not used to having a, a you know, a masculine sim just hold me like, in, like that and stuff. So yeah, but it's been hours later, y'all. She is reading a book and she's getting interrupted by a call. Bring, 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 bring. Like, what the hell? Who's calling her? Angela sees it's Norman on the call. She says, hello. Aaron says, Norman wants to talk to you. Angela says, okay. Norman says, Aaron tells me you're not inviting her to Malak's party and you didn't even consider talking to me? Angela says, I didn't tell you. Oh, I don't know. I thought we talked about this. No, Angela, we did not talk about this. Angela says, it, it must have slipped my mind. Am I on speakerphone? Norman says, no. Angela says, Norman, I'm going to be honest with you. I could tell from how Aaron talks to me that you bash her to me. And quite frankly, I don't feel comfortable with her energy being around me around our daughter's birthday. And it's my place of choosing and my party. And at the end of the day, I don't want her there. And you know what? At the end of the day, it's kind of even weird because the messages you send me and how you talk with her to about me, it's not adding up. Do you want me to tell Aaron what you send because I could forward those messages to her. Norman automatically stops dead in his tracks. Okay, we have an understanding. Norman closes the call. Norman thought to himself, dang, that call was a headache. Aaron says, so? Norman says, you're not going to the party. I don't know what you did to her, but she's not going to budge. Aaron says, I did nothing to her. She was telling me that how she hates being single. And he told her I could set her up and she got mad at me. Norman says, it's not your place to tell her that. You're not her friend. I know your heart was in a good place, but she's bitter and lonely and wants what we have. Aaron says, well, how can we help her? Norman says, it's not our place to help her. We are here for Melak only. And if you love Melak, then you will respect her mother's wishes. Aaron says, babe, I have an idea. Norman says, I'm listening. Aaron says, what if... Before I say it, I think it's best if I give you a massage. You work so hard for us. Oh my god, I love you, Norman. Norman says, I love how you appreciate me. You are a great lady. <laughs> Norman says, there's a reason why I'm with you. You are so beautiful, kind. Your heart is in the right place. You're always thinking for us. I will always be appreciative of you. You're not like any of my exes. You are so special. I'll always be in love with you. Your idea that you just told me was brilliant. 
And I'm going to end the episode there because I'm not telling y'all the idea was. <laughs> but I just thought I would show y'all this cute moment right after they had a talk. He gave Malak a shower and she took her toy with her. I don't know, it was a bug, but it was such a cute bug. And I was like, let me just show the people this. <laughs> Anyway, y'all, I'm going to show y'all a little quick part of just me casually talking to y'all about the ending, but also just a fun clip of Angela and Leone having dinner because that was actually the goal after Norman's call. She got ready and she went to dinner with her bestie. So you already know that at least with Angela and Leone, they have been developing their relationship and I feel like you know they're closer and it's more natural i feel like they're developing like a sisterhood they're there for each other with advices of course she probably even told her what happened with that call with norman you know what i'm saying so you know leonie's probably just talks about her thoughts about trying to enter the fashion industry and you know her fears with her age and angela's like girl i just started the painting thing right now like we're in our late 20s you're acting like you know we're a certain age and even for a certain age we're gonna still push through where if we want to change our career later in life who cares like doesn't matter if you're passionate you love what you do we're gonna keep fighting for it correct and you know and he's like you're right i don't want to hear it but you're right you know and i feel like angela needed to check her bestie with that one because it doesn't matter and hopefully whoever's listening yes it doesn't matter how old you are okay if you want to have a sims channel today and you're any age i don't care to start that channel if you want to start a career again anything like that why not y'all don't ever let your age be a factor for your happiness you know <laughs> oh my god we are at the final episode y'all of this series oh, oh my god i've been imagining this day for so long and the fact that it's here y'all i am so excited so my next gonna be back in a day and a half from now and xander proposed that it would be nice if they could go to a resort in oasis springs that he always wanted to go but never got to and obviously angel wanted to go they were giving them the freshest of lemonades and not only that but they were just gonna have the spiciest time okay they got to just be away from san sequoia and just what they're used to and really just see could they enjoy each other without you know what i'm saying and so they did they really had a lot of fun and i was watching them they were just playful loving caring they had the greatest conversations and not only that but for some reason, the food was even delectable here. Everything was outstanding quality. I mean, this a lot is from the gallery. It's an Oasis Spring Resort, I think it's called or something like that. And it did not disappoint 10 out of 10 practically, okay? Like, I just can't wait for hotels to be in this game. Xander says, Angela, I need to be honest with you. I can see a future here between you and I. And I don't know if you see, feel the same way. I do want to take this relationship to the next level. And Angela agrees. So now they're officially boyfriend and girlfriend in the game, y'all. So, yeah. And then, of course, he carried her upstairs to the hot tub channel. <laughs> I can tell Xander is falling for her. His sentiments. He just keeps regaining, like, the crush sentiment. Closer from happier times. Quality time. He is smitten. Like, Angela gets the crush sentiment again and again with her. And she does like him and care about him. But I could tell she's, like, not fully diving in like he is. And it's not bad. It's just she was hurt in the past. And she is really enjoying this relationship. She wouldn't have accepted being a girlfriend if she felt any doubt. Like, I could see she definitely could fall for him in the future it's the next day and they are at a restaurant together and obviously after angela slept and woke up she, it had her thinking oh my god you know now that he's my boyfriend obviously he has to meet my family and my daughter and you know like all those possibilities like has to come into like fruition i guess so angela asks him if he wants to come to the birthday party but she's worried that it's better if she introduces him to her family on a different occasion. And so, you know, she, he knows about how Aaron got disinvited and that she's not coming to the party. And obviously, Xander's kind of like, he doesn't want to ruffle feathers with her, you know, ex and baby father. And that it is very tricky waters over there. 
and he says that while he wants to be there and support he will just send a gift over and you know maybe he could meet malak and his son can meet angela at a different occasion i don't know i just thought that was so mature of both of them and while obviously i want xander there for the birthday party i don't think xander is the type to be like you know i'm gonna just show up automatically kind of thing like he's just kind of like he knows this is a big deal and they just started their relationship and you know maybe they could go and debut as a couple at charla's birthday party which in my mind she's a summer baby too so yeah and this got them ecstatic because i think that's the perfect event to meet the family his son would definitely go to charla's birthday it'd be only natural for them to all be around each other so yeah he was just kind of like you're good don't worry she's like are you sure i'm you could come still like you could go he's like no like you know i want to uh meet your family in a different occasion yes i know your family but you know what i'm saying like as your boyfriend you know and so she was just like wow like this is so refreshing to be in a relationship with someone mature she doesn't have to walk on eggshells like in the past and you know in season two we're gonna start to have flashbacks of their relationship so i'll definitely be working on that for y'all but yeah oh my god they are such a cute couple y'all oh my god i'm really happy for them i really am so y'all i want to officially introduce y'all to the guy that fell in love with leone love at first sight in my game yeah we gotta get into this tea and before the whole birthday thing like, i just want y'all to get into this tea y'all because woo. so meet solomon he is a mixologist he was working at angela's event if you remember the guy with the light blue suit yes that's him and when basically leone was just like talking to him but i'm not gonna lie she was kind of flirty and i don't know i don't know if it's because he's inexperienced in relationships but when she just started talking to him he just pictured his whole life with her it literally like he had a want to be engaged with her and i've never seen that in my life he has a friendship with her Ex like excuse you i did not know sims could do that <laughs> i'm gonna show y'all the receipts on my screen because I think I talked about it on my Twitter, but I didn't want to show who it was, how it was, and all that because, especially, like, it was just like a time and place thing for me. Like, I didn't have any time to talk about it, and I felt like this episode I could talk about it. And my goodness, he's been texting her for weeks, asking her to come by. You know, he lives in a tiny home, he wanted to show her around, and he made her shish kebabs, and you know, she got the drinks. It was just like, you know you know they had their own thing so you know she was apprehensive because he was just like oh my god i i really see something with this and she's just like bro like we just met <laughs> she was just like like should i have even flirted oh my god but you know again because with zoro it was such a like i don't know if it was a love bombing type of thing but like it really felt so real to her that love that she had and everything she didn't know the foundation that it was built on that it was built on him being rejected by her best friend and stuff so it's completely different this sim has no relation to angel other than he just worked for her he is purely into her and it's i guess different because again she, her first relationship was with zoro this time around it's not like that you know so i wanted to show y'all that little bit of tea but yeah let's go fast forward to malak's birthday party because i worked so hard on it and i want y'all to see how amazing her birthday is we are at the hill family home where angela's parents graciously wanted to host malak's birthday party here obviously like hello like this home is everything obviously obviously okay <laughs> um i just wanted to tell y'all that the theme of the birthday party is black and yellow black and yellow aka the bumblebee i know y'all sorry y'all know me i'm gonna have to pull some th theatrics sometimes okay y'all know <laughs> y'all can see everyone is dressed up in black and yellow like everybody who's invited definitely had to dress up so yeah i'm gonna just show y'all the event and let's just get into it this will be gameplay slash story mode kind of aspect of filming so i hope you enjoy <laughs>
y'all see the dif distance between Angela? Do y'all see the distance between Angela and Norman? I am so done. Oh, oh, Norman said I need to eat. Oh, she's so adorable. What's her name? Sloan. Okay. Ma'am, did he end up grabbing your child? Oh, she did. That's so cute. This is her baby. This is Melak's friend. Where is Melak anyway? What? Melak's out here with the dog. Why is the dog so dirty? What is going on here? Can you twirl? Y'all, look at Uni's outfit. <laughs> I'm done. All right, but why is the... Oh, Lacey's on her way here. The kids are hanging out here. But, like, I literally made a whole section for them to play. Like, see, even Grandma's like, where are the kids at so I could play with them? Like, <laughs> y'all, look at Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so done. Okay, let's have Malak go in here. Wait, why is she saying what's... Oh, yeah, she's not allowed to go in yet. Welp. She needs to age up. She needs to age up. Oh, wait. Angela was given a gift? Oh, that she's oh, eating. Oh, Auntie happening? China. She really looks so stunning. So no. Oh, Zuri, oh, thank you, whoa. baby, for the gift. <laughs> I love you. That's my sister-in-law. Oh, my God. Oh, she's so sweet. Oh, another gift. Auntie China, really? Okay, I'm just assuming, like, the way they're in front of each other. Uh, yes, Auntie China. Uh, Look at Lacey. Like, I definitely told my mom to get that rocking chair. Mm -hmm. I have the same one. Oh, thank you, baby. Y'all, I made it to a baby shower event because, again, like I said, Sims get gifts. You gotta be smart. <laughs> Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, okay, so so far, she, Angela's gotten three gifts. She's a little bored. Maybe she's like, it's a kid's birthday party. You know, deep down, like, it's just not her thing, you know? So I could understand. Malak, not her being tired at her own birthday party. What is going on here? Not the mother is playing. Oh, they're having a mother off, y'all. There's a mother off here, okay? <laughs> Oh, Charlie's checking on her. Oh, Papa, I see him trying to talk to Angela, I'm thinking. Yeah, he is. That is so cute. Marissa, honey, are you okay? She's a little moody. I wonder why. Here at a kid's birthday party. Malak, don't cry. It's your birthday party. I'm cheating those moodlets out. Oh, hell no. She wants to talk to her daddy. Oh, it's so cute. And then he put her down. Oh, he's trying to make her walk. He's like, you're going to walk as a toddler. Oh, oh, Angela gained a sentiment with um, Jacob. He said, you know what? It's been wonderful spending time with you and all the great memories we made. I'm assuming he's just very thankful for being invited. Yeah, Angela thinks he's really hot. <laughs> I mean, oh, and then Norman's so cute for this one. I'll give him, I'll give him his, you know, tens now. But basically, he said it means a lot that you make time for me to Malak. I think that's a really sweet thing to say at her birthday. Now, I don't think she understands what he's saying, but not her thinking pig. No, no, you don't know. Your dad's gonna pick to you. <laughs> Oh, her father gave her a gift. That's so sweet. Papa gave her a gift. Oh, I love you. They just all want to keep giving her a gift. I love this. I'm telling y'all, the baby shower event is good for birthdays. Listen, this is my little life hack. Now, I don't know if they do this in birthday parties. Wait, what is she reminiscing about? Like, oh, the birthday? Oh, you're going to... She's talking about uni? Okay, auntie. Oh, Danielle is hanging out with, uh, with uh, Leonie. I feel like, yeah, Leonie definitely knows her. She probably sees Daniela as somewhat of a big sister figure. Now nah, they're playing together. Come on, play together, kids. This is all for you. I rented these objects, these two objects. Oh, her and Mary Bell are playing rock, paper, scissors. Cute. I'm going to control Shannon because Shannon is just standing and not listening. Oh, my God. I forgot to tell y'all. Norman. Norman's dad is going through a midlife crisis, so he's going and wearing a hair from when he was younger. I feel like that's kind of the storyline in, in my mind. Okay, but everybody's not trying to address it. They're just kind of like, okay, do you have a face painting on, hun? 
Oh, he does. Okay, I'm gonna go get the other kids to put on a face painting too. So, uh, Mary Bell, honey, can you come here and put on a face painting for yourself? Um, I need you to wear a bumblebee because you know it's a bumblebee birthday party. What? Norman gave a gift to Angela? Okay, that's wild. I'm not gonna lie, I really thought he gave her the gift. That's why it just caught me off guard. That was cool. I need to probably hover over Angela. Everybody just gifting her. She can't even breathe. Oh, Mary Bell, you got your face painting? Thank you so much, hon. Sloan, honey, I need you to go ahead and put on a bumblebee face mask for yourself. Because you're such a cutie pie and you deserve. I'm so sorry. Where's Edith, though? Oh, she's thinking, oh, this is so good. What did you eat? I don't even know. But anyway, where is Edith? Did Edith leave? Help. Wave at her. Um, smile. This is your new friend, Edith. She's so cute. <laughs> oh, Miss. She got herself a drink. I'm weak. <laughs> anyway. I'm going to go ahead and have Byron call the kids to eat their pizza. Because, again, I got the pizza for all the children. And then let's go ahead and have the adults eat lobsters. So, like, the grown, grown folks. I'm going to give them that. And then I'm going to have a call to meal. Uh, here, I'm going to have uh, Byron, Zuri, right? And then Norman can have the elote... Jacob, Norman, and Leone, I think they didn't eat. I'm not sure if I Daniela or Angela, so I'm definitely going to give them that. But yeah, everybody's about to eat right now. So, you nice, everybody's just eating. Everybody's having their turn to go grab their food. Uh-oh, the wild trait, y'all. Do y'all see this, Lacey? Just help, help. Okay, Norman hanging with some of the kids outside. Trying to, you know, do some... <laughs> Oh, the siblings! <laughs> oh, that's so cute. I'm thinking Norman's probably like, oh my god, they're so cute. <laughs> they're just hugging each other. It's like the hundredth time. Oh, I'm going to have Lacey put on a bumblebee face painting after. She's a little sad right now. Maybe that's why her brother's comforting her. Maybe she's a little uncomfortable with all these sims that she's maybe some of them she's not familiar with. You know, maybe Norman's side of the family. Maybe Norman's trying to like stand over her like and maybe you should leave her alone, Norman. <laughs> I'm so done. One second. Oh, and Malak is talking to her bestie, Edith. Edith wearing some sunglasses. <laughs> she's so cute. What's that I hear? I heard Angela and Norman talking upstairs. Angela? Angela turns around. My girlfriend is pissed. I don't know what to do to keep her happy. Angela says, Norman, I'm not in this conversation. Norman says, it was you who told her that she couldn't come. Angela says, maybe she should think before she speaks to me. Norman says, is this because you're still in love with me? Angela says, Get over yourself. I'm not going to argue with you at our daughter's birthday party. How dare he? Angela was like, you know what? I'm just going to walk away. She wants her daughter to have the best birthday party. So if that's going to be the case with you, Norman, you could talk to yourself. And then he makes a call. Hey, babe. And while Norman talks to his girlfriend, Angela, while she's walking down the steps, Daniela heard and she was like, let's talk outside. So Daniela brought her outside, like, Daniela asked, are you okay, sis? Angela says, no. Daniela says, did you tell him what Aaron says to you behind closed doors? Angela says, no, what's the point? And he just accused me of being in love with him. Daniela didn't really hear that, again, because of just the level up and also the, the noises and stuff. She knew they were upstairs together. She just didn't know what was going on. So Daniela just walks out. She wants to confront Norman herself. Hey. I'm wondering why you didn't even invite your brother. Angela did specify you can invite him. Don't you want your brother to meet your child? Norman says, I wanted my girlfriend here, not my good for nothing brother. Daniela says, Whoa, I can't unpack that can of worms because frankly I don't care. But Norman says, Here it comes. Daniela says, Angela didn't want to invite your girlfriend because she's always disrespectful. Norman says, They only talked for five minutes each of her visits. 
Danielle says, and in those five minutes, she's apologized to Angela for the life that you promised her. And she was throwing a lot of passive aggressive insults. Like it's Angela's fault that you cheated on her. How her trip in Sulani was much better because it was a vacation. Norman says, oh fuck, are you sure? Daniela says, I mean, you could understand why my sister doesn't want that lady around. Let's not act like you don't gas her up to behave like that around Angela. Norman says, oh God, Aaron and I talked about how it's better for her to have a surprise visit and that Angela would just accept it. Danielle says, tell her to go back or I will make a scene that she will never forget. I mean, not only will I drag her by her hair out of this party, I'll ask her to focus on why you text my sister those bitter messages about her current boyfriend or how you just asked if she's still in love with you. Norman, it'll get uglier than the text messages you send. Angela may try to keep the peace, but I'm not. I'll make you regret every single decision you've made if that lady walks into my home to try to get a rise out of my little sister. Norman panics as he walks away. He calls, Babe, uh, I'm sorry you can't come. P please tell me you're still at the hotel lobby or something. Daniela is watching him as he's on this call. Norman closes the phone. Norman says she's around the corner. Daniela says, kick her out before I kick you both out and you don't get to see your daughter age up like you missed her last one. Norman sees the taxi pull up and then he pats the like the car like that, basically. I don't know if you heard that pat, but like he told him, go back, basically. And the car leaves the property. Norman says to Daniela, she's so humiliated. I mean, she even dyed her hair for this party. Daniela says, I don't care. She did that to herself. And trust me, she doesn't want to be here. She just wants to keep up appearances. Norman rolls his eyes at her. Daniela says, now that we got that out of the way, why do you send my sister those messages? She may not confront you about them, but you know, and then he interrupts her. Norman says, it's my daughter's birthday. Can we have some decorum? Danielle says, that's rich coming from you. Norman walks away. I mean, the man who was trying to plot to get a rise out of Angela on the lowest keys of keys is talking about decorum. I know Daniela was pissed, but of course she has to act like she's all happy and cool because it's almost time for everyone to gather around and they could have Malak, you know, age up. Y'all, Malak has aged up. We're back home. I hope you enjoyed that birthday. My goodness, where has the time gone, y'all? Oh my gosh, she just looks like a bigger version of herself, right? <laughs> and obviously, Angela is trying to get her in that movement skill. She don't play. Mother don't play, okay? Angela carries Malak up the stairs. She still can't use the stairs yet. And she's like, what pajamas do you want to wear tonight? And she said, I want to wear yellow. And so Angela says, okay, I'm going to read you a, a bedtime story. Once upon a time, there was a bumblebee. She's like, oh, bzz, 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 bzz. <laughs> Malak says, mom, turn the lights on. I'm scared of the dark. So Angela turns the lights on, obviously. And oh my god, y'all, I know it's pretty late. They were partying. Y'all know how it gets. <laughs> y'all, she's so cute. Oh my god. And yes, she's still on the pacifier. She's still very low on her skills, y'all. Okay, so don't be too hard on Malak, okay? Oh, Uni. I love Uni and Malak, the dynamic duo. Angela is like, okay, Malak, you have to sleep. Uni, you too. Aww. And she's like, okay, Uni, good night to you. Uni says goodnight back to her. <laughs> and so then Angela just makes sure that, you know, Malak can go to sleep. She holds her baby in her arms. She's still a baby, y'all, okay? I know she's in the toddler stage, but she's still a young one, okay? So Angela holds her daughter as she just sings a little bit of a song for her. And she gets tired enough. She'll put her in her bed and let her go to sleep. There's some 
movement of objects i have to do y'all oh my god it's a little rearranging so that she can have some toddler type of stuff in her room so yeah y'all i can't believe it melak actually aged up and yeah she's sleeping in the day i told y'all the party was well there was a it was a long one everybody had fun you know melak did fall asleep don't worry <laughs> but yeah this is a good one angela goes downstairs and just as she was about to like get ready to sleep, her grandma calls her. To be quite honest, Angela got some angry calls from relatives wondering why they couldn't come to Melak's birthday. Angela promised it wasn't about not inviting them, but she just felt bad because they already went out of town when it was for her art show. So, you know, Grandma Lilith, who's on the phone right now, says, I don't want to be their grandma. But baby, you have been in Brindleton Bay more than you have been with us in Willow Creek. You only visited us once when you were in San Myshuno many moons ago. And you didn't even want to stay the night. I know you were mad at us at the time because i didn't want you to bring melak's father with you but are you still angry at us about that angela says no not at all uh, i mean i was angry back then because i wanted our family to meet the man i loved brindleton bay is just a ferry away and i'm so sorry grandma but how about this i needed a nice reason to be away from my home and you know my job is remote i could stay with you for a few weeks with malak and my dog uni and we can go back together for charla's birthday grandma lil is very happy with this she says oh that's perfect okay okay i'm gonna set up your room and i'm gonna get you some doggy treats Ooh, grandma is happy oh my god okay y'all so i guess angela's gonna have to stay with her grandma for a bit that's just gonna make her happy and like i said a lot of relatives called I think Angela probably just assumed, you know, why would they want to come out of town? You know what I'm saying? So she was like overthinking it, you know, because again, they did budget out and she was just kind of like, you know, they're like, why do you care about our money? We'll show up. Just invite us. <laughs> Hours later, Angela goes into um, yoga meditation because she knows what Norman wanted to do and bring Aaron to the party. So she's just trying to focus and she's just been honestly mad and i have her doing the anti-angry yoga routine so that she could just breathe but honestly all she just sees in her mind is flashbacks of everything from think of even like episode one to like now like just every moment since finding out norman cheated to now and the disrespect Angela is just trying her best to keep the peace. Her daughter deserves the world. Why can't he see that? Why does he have to be so petty? Does he not see what this could do to her if her parents argue and get mad at each other? She just is so mentally exhausted. She doesn't know what to do. <laughs> One thing I noticed about Melak, that little babbler is babbling. If y'all remember, that was her quirk when she was an infant. So she's kind of breezing through the communication skill. I think she did age up with that. I don't know if I told y'all, but she got the angelic and clingy trait. So I think at the moment, because she's still very babyish, right? She's still like barely a toddler. <laughs> I gave her the the clingy trait and you remember we already discussed this about how because of her stays with Norman she has become like so attached to Angela she even gained her first toddler trait which is loves to be held and remember I told y'all that she gets sad when Angela put her down when she was a toddler so this is going perfectly with her storyline so Angela's telling her we're going to Willow Creek in a few days that means we're gonna be close to Papa and get to visit Papa more often and oh it's gonna be so cute y'all I can't can't wait for Angela and Malak to go to Willow Creek to stay with grandma and grandpa and of course Malak to have some papa time even if you know how Angela feels she's still so mature can Norman relate can Aaron relate is the question Angela has not noticed where the loves to be held quirk came from so we'll see with time where that goes Cock 
be careful with my heart, oh Say I'm not sensitive, but I can sense a fit right for me Don't let your head get in the way Can't be defined by your mistakes You know you're trying, you try really hard But sometimes you fall Yeah, sometimes you fall As you could see, Angela arrived in Willow Creek with her grandparents, her maternal grandparents, aka Mama Addison's mom and daddy. <laughs> and yes, oh my god, y'all, I was able to use a placemat on a toddler's thingy uh, thanks to the Better Build By, and now I'm obsessed. I want to do this. <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. But yeah, y'all, oh my god, they of course were fishing together and they made the fresh message at home it's nice and of course they're drinking an old-fashioned but yeah in all seriousness they are just enjoying the meal and angela needs to go to the bathroom so i'm like okay let's just go ahead and follow angela to the washroom while angela's in the bathroom she notices her painting is there and it just melts her heart like oh my god it's like right facing where the bathtub is like she could see that the vision the grandparents are trying to watch it while they're taking a bath like the relaxation of that painting that probably brings to them and she's just thinking oh my god oh, that's so sweet you know and she's probably also a little critiquing herself like oh my god i was an amateur back then painting i'm so much better than i am back then but at the same time she's so appreciative of that journey and you know by the way a lot of her family who bought the painting which was like 95 percent all of them have the painting in their home it's so cute like if you ever visit them in the future with me you will see that but yeah she's just looking at this painting and she's just so appreciative like wow what a journey and now she has that brindleton bay art show to work on so yeah that'll be an event for season two grandma lilith says angela come out Let's go ahead and dance and have fun outside. Summer nights in Willow Creek. Oh my god, Willow Creek is such a classic. For real, my goodness. I was so in the feels. I love when I see siblings slow dance together. It's just such a sweet thing. It's like, you could tell this interaction is no romance there. It's just meant to have fun. Also, Daniela is getting married. Huh? Oh my god, Grandma, are you okay? <laughs> oh my god bless her heart i was gonna say daniela's getting married so maybe it's also practice for her you know elder gameplay is so slept on i just love the coziness of just watching elder sims just grow together in, the, in these moments of their life just enjoying themselves it really puts something for me i love hanging out with the hill family over in brindleton bay and now i'm loving the malloys in willow creek so yeah y'all and now it's bedtime i just wanted to show y'all where they sleep they sleep in the attic <laughs> and there's where my lag sleeps y'all saw already daniela she's sleeping on a lounge chair kind of thing you know and here's where angela's sleeping and it's a bunk bed it's the next morning and of course angela is trying what her grandma's habit is which is cross stitching now and then i just saw grandma joining her and i'm like oh my god grandma lilith you know they actually have the strict family dynamic and it's because of that previous experience like y'all saw that when angela visited when she used to live in san maishuno because san maishuno and willow creek are nearby so yeah i just thought that was really cute and angela's so ambitious for using the large one this is autonomous by the way so i'm confused but like i'm loving it I love that they get to do something together and Malak is watching TV and I was surprised that Angela is watching it. Maybe she's just trying to like look what kind of show it is because Malak only like plays with toys. <laughs> I'm going to be real. I don't think I've ever seen Malak watch cartoons and I think Grandma's the one who put it on for her, you know? So Malak is playing with the grumpy cat like grumpy grumpy. <laughs> so cute and grandma has the cat friendly lot trait so cats be just come into this house angela says oh my god let me just keep it real with you i don't know why i accepted this job so basically she accepted a job from a local person who wanted like an app app icon for digital art and she's just nervous like you know when she accepts jobs it's usually like 
random stuff but this sim said they wanted to meet angela in person so they could just look at like the how her vision is and she's just really nervous about meeting with the client which is going to be on friday right now it's monday so yeah angela's been working on it she's just been going back and forth but let's fast forward to two days later well, if you remember, Daniela has been staying with grandma and grandpa. So she drove her sister all the way out to San Myshuno and took her to the club. Y'all remember this club from that episode when Angela made her appearance again in San Myshuno. And she's hanging out with her bestie Chanel and her husband Shane. And she's also hanging out with Jacob. So yeah, she's just like, you know, she kind of wishes Xander was there, obviously. But, you know, she's just been having fun. And I love that for her. Oh, my God. Is that Enzo? Norman's brother? Okay, that's random. Maybe he's just looking at Angela like, oh, my God. I, I kind of know her, but I don't know if I know her. I don't think he's seen her on social media. So maybe if he looks at her properly, he would have probably approached her. And Angela, she didn't even notice him. She was having fun. So let's have them meet another time for real for real but yeah they were having fun partying just doing their thing it's san maishuno i love san maishuno for this reason you just have fun and you do your own thing period grandma <laughs> Grandma Lilith had the girls dressing up like they someone's auntie. And y'all are about to see what I mean. She took them out to this restaurant in Willow Creek. <laughs> Angela's face, girl. <laughs> yeah, she's like, girls, what's stopping y'all from looking like this? They're like, society? <laughs> y'all, come on. Y'all had your grandma dress you up before, right? Or y'all never listened? I have to know. Now I'm curious. But they ordered some food and oh my god the vibe of this restaurant is so nice so many families were out with their loved ones spending time together oh my god it melted my heart the vibes here was perfect perfect representation of willow creek family wholesomeness cuteness for real but yeah i think angela is really enjoying it <laughs> yeah her outfit is adorable <laughs> like i like it yeah but her, you know her and her grandma are getting closer which really meant a lot to me because of the strict family dynamic now i will be playing with them more because you know the timeline she's going to be there for is not that long but just a little bit you know so let's just say that you know when angela comes back i'm hoping their family dynamic gets better you know and while grandma was out with the girls, of course grandpa was going to have to do something with his precious great-granddaughter, Melak. They went to the Magnolia Park and y'all... <laughs> wee! Wee! Melak! I'm playing with you, grandpa! Oh my god, my bones! <laughs> Bless his heart. Y'all know though, he's still working in his career as a doctor. His wife was a nurse practitioner and she retired and she's just been enjoying her days, cross-stitching, doing whatever the hell she wants. He still wants to work and he doesn't have that want to retire like his wife did. So yeah, oh, so cute. I love him. Y'all, it's like eight days later and Angela's been having a hard time with her client. I might be all the way real. He just keeps rejecting the stuff that she keeps offering as the logo and she's just been going through it she's like trying to talk through her awkwardness and she feels like she's just been heavily critiqued by this sim she's almost like is it even worth it but she wants to see this project through because she does see their passion and love for what they do so she's actually on her way to go meet up with them and she's taking uni with them they're kind of a little informal like they had their pets around too so she's just kind of like you know what like let me just go ahead and do my thing and just take my pet and you know she's been working on her confidence and honestly her it's getting boosted she's feeling herself you know so she's gonna go ahead and leave in a few minutes she has a really good feeling this logo will be accepted. She's like, yeah, I did this. I did this. I've been working on this for days after days. I, I got this. You know, I feel like that's what she's saying to herself. Like, if it's not this one, maybe I'll just walk away at this point, you know? No, what am I saying? No, the money is good. I need this. I mean, I'm just going to pay my rent, honey. Okay, I need to pay this off. And I want money to save up for a home. I have to do this. I have to do this. Okay, I don't care. No matter what, I'm going to give them their logo. Uni, where are you? We're about to leave. Uni. And they left. And you know what? I could tell y'all that this was accepted after many rejections. Angel is really happy. 
And so when she came back home, she was like, you know what, Uni, let's just do a little circle around the block. Let's walk together. I love you. Grandma and grandpa took Malak. They went to their own place. And you know what? For her, she just wants to enjoy some time. Enjoying the outside air. It's just so beautiful out here in Willow Creek. Obviously, Angela's going to enjoy it. And y'all know my girl got that loves outdoor tree. So this is important for her, you know? So... Angela is, you know, coming back home right now. She's literally about to go back inside. She's very happy, very confident. She's just feeling the absolute, like, high of herself. And she hasn't felt this good in a very long time, you know? And I'm really proud of her for how far she has been in her journey. So she's just getting food ready for Uni because obviously those little treats aren't going to fill Uni's meal up. And when she does that, she decides to go upstairs and do something spontaneous. Dang it, how do I work this again? My god, it's been so long. Remember the girl who made an aesthetic day in the life of a stay-at-home girlfriend? Well folks, here's your update. Thank you so much for watching and listening to this. My name is Angela and I wish you all a lovely day. And the word traveled quick. I mean, Byron and his wife, Zuri, were in the middle of an argument. She was like, I want to live in an apartment. I don't want to live under your parents' roof or my parents' roof. Nobody's taking our marriage seriously. You got to do something. Byron gets a call and he's been ignoring it. Ding, ding, like it's been ringing. And she's like, you know, answer your damn call. And he's like, well, you'd, you'd get mad at me if I answered if I didn't. Like, I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> and so he gets the call. I swear to God, somebody better be dying. Why are you calling me? What do you mean check social media? What do you mean Angela's coming back? She hates social media. Do not lie to my sister. Why would she post something? And what do you want me to do? Like, I, I, he's kind of moody, but they're like, watch it. And so when he watched it, him and his wife, Zuri, sat in silence and went to sleep, literally just huddled together like this. <laughs> but he does whisper to her, I promise we're going to move into an apartment. Over at the 245 San Apartments, Leone gets a call and she's like, what's going on? Oh my God, I didn't even remove my makeup. I just fell asleep after this shower. I should have. I'm so jumbled. Oh my God, who are you? What's going on? Look at your phone. She's like, what, what, Brandy, what is going on? Look at your phone. I would not be calling you at this hour. Look at your phone. Oh my God. And she's like, okay, oh my God. All right, I'll check my phone. And then when she looks at it, she's like, oh my God, I smoke one for my girl. <laughs> it's about time. Let me call Daniela because I have a feeling she would have been the one to call me, not Brandy. Girl, what's going on? Why are you blowing up my phone? This is not the right time. She's like, girl, just look at the link I just sent you. She's like, Jacob, one second. Jacob, one second. Wow, Angela. I did not expect that from you, sis. Uh, that was quite a video. Wow. I, I'm at a loss for words. But I'm proud, I think. Or are you proud? H how do you feel? My goodness, Erin, you are so hot. Oh my god, they would die over if I posted this on my story. Oh my god, I'm so hot. Oh my god, why do I keep getting notifications? Oh my god, I, maybe I should post this. They would gag over this. They would think I'm the hottest girl ever. Okay, okay. Oh my goodness, now I'm getting a call. Let me just answer. Erin's agent called her. Erin? I need you to look at your phone. What's going on? Why are you not answering my call? Uh, Aaron's thinking, it's late, obviously. I mean, I'm not working. What do you want from me? And she's like, I need you to look at what I sent to you because obviously it's about you and no one else. And so she was like, what? Ooh, okay. Well, what is, who cares about a video about me? Like, oh, people are going to talk about me. I'm obviously like the most cutest girl in the SimTalk streets. Aaron's agent said, I am not in the mood for this. Right now, I have to work on damage control for you. She's thinking, it's not that serious. What, what do you mean? It's not that serious. It's never serious. What do you mean damage control? I, I don't want to hear it. What, what on earth are you saying? Look, is this slander against me? I haven't done anything to anyone for them to make a video against me. I mean, I'm not some like, you know, scammer. I'm not doing anything that's illegal. What's there to say about me? 
I need you to watch it, Aaron, and stop talking to me in circles, okay? I'm going to have to be working tonight overnight, and I'm going to have to have you go on a morning TV show and make a statement. That's how serious it is. You are getting canceled on the internet, Aaron. She's like, what? I, uh, what? And so then she's like, it's not, it's not that serious, is it? What the fudge? What the fudge? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Oh, no, 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 no. This is my nightmare. My nightmare is coming true. I, I can't. I cannot do this. Oh my god. It's so horrible. Oh my god, everybody's dragging me in the comments. I mean, half of this stuff is not that true. I mean, it's half true, but it's not. I promise you, I'm way better than what this video is saying. Angela! Ah, you bitch! How dare she? I hate her. Aaron, what the hell is that? Come here. What? I'm watching sports. There's no reason for you to be screaming like that, okay? I understand that one time you got a 1 million likes on a post, but other than that, she's like, look at this. He's like, oh, okay. The video title, where have I been? Life update. Okay, press play. Remember the girl who made an aesthetic day in the life of a stay-at-home girlfriend? Well, folks, here's your update. Norman only listened to five minutes and he's freaking out and she says oh it gets worse for us honey okay and he's thinking okay i need you to plug this on the tv i don't know if i can watch this through a phone i need to see it properly my hands are shaking and she's like i know i could feel it as they both listened to the video they felt their life was over maybe it was a little exaggerated for this first night the gravity you know how it gets social media witch hunts it's not looking good for them. I mean, we never even talked about how he has the same bumblebee tattoo copying Angela. Ooh, child, she exposed everything. <laughs> See y'all for season two. Yes, this series got picked up for a season two. Ooh, I love y'all. Thank you so much for watching Growing Together Season 1. Oh my god, finally I get to release this video. Now, if you are a new person on this channel, I do not upload videos that are all like what like this long like for the whole LP but if you want me to do that for older LPs you could request that in the comments like if you want high school years all of that in like one video or whatever LPs I've done in the past and you're just kind of like you're not sure how to navigate my channel I could do occasionally like a video where it's just like all my LP episodes I don't know if that's what you want though like I'll be shocked <laughs> But thank you so much for watching this. I'm so thankful. Season 1 is a journey for this Let's Play. And Season 2 is on its way. Yes, it is. And it's going to be here around the first to second week of May. Yeah. And I have it already penned on my calendar. And I actually have goals that I was supposed to like release videos surrounding growing together. And... I do have some great news. I have a machinima that I will be working on. At almost like, you know, machinima LP style maybe. But maybe more so machinima. And it's about the Smallwood family, aka Lorelai's family and her brother Lucas. We're going to look at their journey and their story. I feel like it's important to know some of these side characters. I haven't re like created stories for everybody. I'm not going to lie. I do have like everybody has their own story. But I mean like details like this, you know. Maybe... We'll visit Rosalie or something like that in the future. Who knows? Thank you so much for watching this marathon of season one. And I don't know if I had it as a premiere, if it was just randomly playing throughout the day. I mean, I was thinking of doing that, but I don't know if I did. If I did, then hey, if you've been watching here on and off, or if you caught this and you're just randomly listening, I hope your day is amazing. And in general, if you watch this at a later date, thank you so much for watching. My name is Sasha and I wish you a lovely day. Take care.